And we're back. We're back. Look at that. Boy, oh, I sure do. I sure do like that Batwoman that episode. That Seems was really good. Yeah. I was legitimately impressed by <laughs> by Das going back and oh yeah, finding all the kidnapped <clears throat> ones. Holy that is shit! Impressive. Oh, that is amazing. I was like, wow, how many times has it been? And then it just keeps going and going. And I'm like, wow, it really is just like the writer's like emergency escape hatch button for a plot. And so they're just like, oh shit, we need something to happen. Boom, someone gets captured. And they hit that button a lot. They hit that button a lot. That and Das remembered them all. Or do you think he had the help of a he wiki or something? I don't them. know, because no, he's, he's he a pretty big Batwoman that. fan, so. Yeah, he, is a, he has an encyclopedic knowledge of Batwoman plot lines. More so than the writers. Absolutely. <laughs> Certainly. Um, <clears throat> also, we're joined by the meme repository. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm here. Hi, 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 hi. Hello. And hi. M. Hello. Hi, right, there you go. Hi, hey. Dream's yep, done. they're here now. Yep. <laughs> we have <clears throat> the potential for a lot of uh, different potential things to cover. I'm, I'm just thinking, <gasps> you know, with, with who we have, it's just obvious that we could probably talk about basically anything. But True. I would like to shake it up, which is truly what we would be doing by doing this, and talk about it about Marvel. Shake it up. Oh, oh Marvel. Oh, I think you're right. What was that? Fringy said something I couldn't hear. We haven't yeah. we haven't done that yet, I think, uh, <clears throat> all day. Genuinely true. Talking about other stuff, video games, Lewis. <laughs> We've talked a right. lot about Lewis, it's true. Yeah. Lewis. 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 So, in what way are we going to talk about Marvel? We're going to talk about, uh, it'll, it's been a while, actually. A content creator that is a favorite of the show, and he is talking about good old Quantumania. Now, oh, I love oh. Quantumania. <laughs> yeah, you guys might That's be one familiar. one of my favorite movies. Um, so, this, this, is, this is the wonder... Oh, wait a minute. Is everyone in the watch together? No. Um, yes. The, the, um, uh, I will provide the link. There you are. Wonderful. Uh, <clears throat> there we go. Thank you, sir. This is... Uh, someone said film Roberto? No. Film Romento. Oh, oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to check in on what he out. believes to be the case for good old Quantumania versus Ant-Man. This is a video called Ant-Man Quantumania, How to Build a Cinematic Cash Grab, Anatomy of a Failure. Oh my. It's so, very video essay-esque. How to build a cinematic cash grab, Anatomy of a Failure. Yeah, this is going to be giving us insights into how Quantumania was such a fuck-up. Well... He's but why wrong. are we watching this though? I mean, surely we'll. I mean, we'll. It'll just be us going. Yep, yep, that. And I that, think it's about yep. time we covered a video we agreed with. They've all been pretty bad today. Okay. So. Yeah, they have all been pretty bad. And this is Filmento, so we don't have to set the bar high or anything. I'm sure you'll clear it unless he says something mean about Lewis. Or he won't. That would be. I, I doubt Lewis will even come up in this video. Hope so. All Ant Man all the time. Yeah, let's delve in. <clears throat> we begin with 2015. 2015. Uh, the music's pretty loud, do we want to <laughs> talk? I'm surprised he got away with the music. <laughs> if he's played it for a chunk of time or not. Look at him. Oh my god. I guess he's covered now because he's got the... The yeah. kazoo. Well, wait, the yeah. Have, uh, yeah, how familiar are you with Ant Man 3? Uh, I haven't watched. I've seen the uh, previous two. You saw Waller's video on it, right? I've listened to about uh, an hour of it so far. Wow. So I'm. Uh, All right. Well, you know. Uh, I used to think okay. you were a true fan, but that's okay. Yeah, I was sitting <laughs> there you know, when you release a 40 minute video, I watch it straight away. <laughs> <laughs> It's a long video. Wee. Holy Didn't expect to see your protege again after what happened to you. Anatomy of a failure. He's got a filmento book that goes over all right. the film perfection. 
He Once wrote all the a film book, video. Ant-Man oh and the Wasp Quantumania is the 31st MCU movie, in which everyone's favorite ant-oriented Marvel superhero gets sucked down to the mysterious quantum realm to do things we all love to see. Things like wandering around aimlessly and stumbling into quirky half-characters without real substance. And hey, no, no, Bev! Bev is hey, great! Is hey, cool. no. We love Bev. Bev is great! Veb, with yes, this Veb podcast alone. stands for Veb. Efap is a Veb. We're big fans of Veb. Efap is a Veb. Yeah. We, we are Veb. <laughs> he's Veb, and he's interesting, and he's a he's a zany, wacky fella. That's right. This is the Veb Club. Before. We've got jackets. We are pro Veb here. We are pro Holt. Being hit on by living broccoli. So what's your story then? And as a whole, Quantumania is another not so good new MCU entry. Oh, to it's add awful. Oh, <laughs> not so <laughs> another not so good. Uh, that's not very generous. Very generous. <laughs> Look what he did to him. <laughs> he gave oh, him look, the wrong tomatoes splat. Kang, take tomato off the tomato. visor. Take off the visor, Kang. It's yeah. it's Gauss Bloompy. The list, probably one of their worst so far. There are yes. things to laugh at, sure, but even those, mostly for the wrong reasons. It's basically oh Marvel's oh own Black Adam oh and goodness. Shazam too. By far the uh, biggest no, reason. No, it's not. Black Black Adam is better than this. Absolutely, yeah. 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 <laughs> true. Black Adam Shazam, is. Shazam is better than this. Not by much, but yeah, no, Shazam's, he, really he, Shazam's absolutely better than this. Shazam yeah. 2? Yeah. Like Shazam, 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 even Shazam, I mean, Shazam 2 Shazam sucks, right? But, it's terrible, I, but it's, it's a better than this. It's better than this. Oh, yeah. Shazam I'm thinking had, about it. What, what was the best part of Shazam 2? You know, if you, if you had to be like, if I you had to sing remember. the praises of Shazam 2. There was something in there at some point, maybe. Oh. Uh, at the very beginning, when they turn everyone to stone, that's kind of spooky. Okay. Maybe. I remember um, that scene not making any sense, though. <laughs> It didn't. You're that's right, part of what makes it so spooky. That's, that's is how little sense it makes. <laughs> what is you, what is the scene in that film that's like has no flaws? When Wonder not, Woman appears and saves you know. Shazam, that was a great scene. <laughs> I legitimately don't remember <laughs> what scene. You're guess, talking uh, about. Oh, Wonder this Woman video came out before the Flash, right? Because it feels like the Flash might be a, a good example to point to in DC of like, yeah, this is oh, <laughs> this is about as bad as it gets. <laughs> There's not much rank going on here. Mm -hmm. For its failure being that it's a shameless cash grab. And before I unleash um, the rage of the MC fanbase... No, I wouldn't call it a shameless... Shameless... Crack, that, <laughs> a shameless cash yeah, you grab. Wouldn't, you wouldn't call I wouldn't, it that. I wouldn't yeah. call it that. I don't think I would. Well, heavy um, <laughs> at the very least, it being a shameless cash grab isn't why it's bad. That what about is a shame correct. Cash you can have shameless <laughs> cash grabs that, that are good. Oh, uh, who was that? Who died? You okay? Who died? Oh my god. Oh my gosh. You, did you knock over <laughs> some anime? What happened? Eel deer? Are you okay? <laughs> no, no, my. Just a cup. It's oh, all okay. good. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, that's good. good. It's, it sounded very loud and dramatic. It yeah, did, it's because it it's made of steel. That's why. Oh. Steel cups. Yep. I feel like My every MCU movie really metal. wants to make money, and they're all pretty. Absolutely, you know, they all want to make money, yeah, so they I don't do quite understand. How Which you is why highlighting yeah. this one as a cash grab just feels like. Eh, what else is? I mean, any more so than like any of the other ones that they made over the last couple of years. I mean, what, they were, they were what, grabbing cash with Endgame. Okay, they were like, well, let, let me, let me ask this: yeah. What is the ca the cashy grabby <laughs> cashiest grabbiest? <laughs> What is the, uh, the cashy grabbiest movie in the MCU, do you like think? Like a legacy sequel from like 40 years ago where they bring back the old cast, like um, those sort of things. Well, multi Maybe. multiverse feels... Uh, Love and Thunder probably, pretty, uh, right? Taika was just oh, like money. yeah, he didn't give a shit. Yeah, he definitely didn't... Yeah. Meanwhile, mm, I think be, um, one could argue that Peyton Reed and Jeff Lovedis had some level of thought that they'd made art here. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. Uh, obviously, Tyker, I think, wouldn't have told you that. He'd be like, this was a goofy bullshit thing that I did with my friends, and they paid us millions for it. It's crazy. Like the Adam Sandler approach, I guess. Mm -hmm. right. It's too much. Let me explain. The reason Ant-Man okay. Quantumania is a cash grab is because it's not an Ant-Man movie so much as it is another Marvel movie that happens to feature Ant-Man. It... That isn't actually... That uh, is not what so makes it a cash grab. That doesn't make any sense. There are a lot of yeah, films that are in the MCU that feature Ant-Man that aren't about him that aren't 
well, the yeah, he's in cashiers. Civil War. Yeah. Well, the, the really awkward the thing is, you can't remove Ant Man or any of the Ant Man world from this film and still have it be recognizable at all. They are like a hugely important part of the film. As there's five Ant Man characters, and Janet like is you know tied at the hip to uh to Kang. Like it, it usually it feels like when we make a statement like this, it's that. You could remove them specifically, and it would it wouldn't change much. But you remove them, you change the movie completely. Could one argue you could switch out Janet for anyone and switch out Ant Man for uh, anyone? Well, sure, but I mean, I, I guess the you need uh, you could you could make big you'd have to make big tweaks though, right? Because they want to make a big deal out of the shrinking tech as a uh, as a, a big plot element. But I guess you'd have to figure out, you know, it's in the quantum realm. I think that's the, the big thing that's difficult to overcome. Which is definitely is tied to Ant-Man, yeah. In the, yeah. the Ant-Man sort of realm. The, I, I guess the only thing, the only thing I imagine that would be appealing to is like that Kang is beyond Ant-Man in terms of his relevance to, uh, to the MCU going forward. But uh, like, that doesn't seem like a, that does you know, it, it would almost be like with Thor, right? Thor and Loki, Loki being set up for Avengers. Um, I guess you make a better argument there, obviously, because uh, Loki is a Thor villain, but um, I would say this is not the source of this film's problems. Mm -hmm. Also, can you call this movie a cash grab if it didn't even do a good job? <laughs> of yes. to make money. Yeah, yeah. A, a cash grab is attempted yeah, in, cash in how grab. it's made and what they're wanting. Yeah, it doesn't have what to do you succeed. Make money or not yeah. doesn't make it a cash grab. <laughs> Some <laughs> things fail because they are cash, cash grabs, grabs. You know. Okay, I suppose. Damn right. Yeah, you guys, did. you don't have to be so mean. Jeez. <laughs> It wasn't made because the filmmakers thought there's more to be done with this character and more to explore with this world. No, it was made because Marvel is a machine in need of another movie and... Uh, it's true, it's I'm just that they I'm used to... Yes, fault that, is them true. For... that is true. They used to yeah, be able to yeah. do that and tell the stories, that's the thing, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah, it what it I'm saying does, is that yeah. them wanting to keep pushing the MCU forward isn't the reason it's bad, necessarily. Yeah, I'm not going to blame well, it for wanting to keep making movies to make money. Well, you well, know, just because they want to how well, his argument is. there isn't so much that it's, it's meant to make money, it's that it's meant to make money without pushing the character forward. There's nothing else to say, right? There's no story that needs to be told. That's his argument. The, the thing is, you can find more stories to tell about Scott you or, yeah. you know, Hope or, or yeah. uh, Cassie. They made a lot of bad choices. Uh, I would, film. I would absolutely agree, absolutely. But that yeah. is his argument: is that the, there was nothing else left to say <laughs> about Ant Man. Is that what uh, he was, uh, was it? I think so. Yeah, I think that's I, what I he's saying. It's rolling back. Yeah. It okay. wasn't made because the filmmakers thought there's more to be done with this character and more to explore with this world. Yeah. No, there you it go. was made because well, no, he said that's what it wasn't made because they thought that. Yeah, oh, which, not the, that the, is the filmmakers. Yeah. He, like he's describing that their motivation would not have been let's tell more Scott stories. It was let's make another Ant Man movie. Or well, let's make another movie and Ant Man will oh. be in it. Which uh, it speaks to a problem that I feel exists with especially Disney, which is that the project exists before the idea for a story. It's mm. like we are making an Ant Man film. Let's find the people to make the film, regardless of whether we have any ideas. Yeah, yeah, because we're gonna yes. change our mind on what we want the story to be like eight times mm -hmm. in the process of making it. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Marvel is a machine in need of another movie, and Ant-Man is one of the established characters they have left, and the Quantum Realm is another mandatory CGI world they can put him in. That's a mandatory CGI how the project world? began. With Marvel, I don't know how it works with every project, but like they knew they wanted to do something in the Quantum Realm. They wanted to do a complete tonal shift from the other two. So they wanted more of like a sci-fi Quantum Realm adventure, and then they wanted potentially to use Kane the Conqueror as the villain. And because of that, no matter... None of that has anything to do with it being a cash grab or being no. terrible. No, it, I don't it, think he's going to have like... much to prove it's a cash grab beyond the fact that it's just a Marvel movie that's making a lot of money, or rather, yeah. cost a lot of money. Uh, You're I mean, not going to catch Marvel like the fucking writer and director movie. saying like, you know what, fuck this one. <laughs> like we don't know, we're just <laughs> doing stuff. Meanwhile, the one you would find the most evidence for that for is probably Thor: Love and Thunder. Well, yeah. he didn't give a shit at all. No, he didn't give a fuck at all. And that's why it ended Ooh. up as bad as it did. But if I, this movie was good, you know, and it took place in the quantum realm, and it was a sci-fi adventure, and it had Kang in it, but it was all good, 
Would he be calling exactly. it a shameless cash grab? I don't think so. Well, the funny part no, is right, that exactly. I, there might be a validity to calling it a cash grab still in that environment. Maybe. Who knows, right? Like Even the, so, yeah. You're like, we want money. Also, give it to artists that can make it good so that it makes more money. <laughs> like, okay. We'll get something good, I guess. Yeah, because <laughs> Disney, Disney is like um, the, the creatives, or, or sorry, the, the executives up there, they can say do a thing, but the actual oh, well. creative people can, you know, really do something with it, and they can care about it. Especially because, you know, their name is attached to it into perpetuity, so... Ideally, you think they would give a shit, but I know. mean, the, the thing is that his argument here makes no goddamn sense, okay? Because it's just the ideation phase. It's saying, hey, we want you to make a movie about Ant Man and have it in the quantum realm with this enemy. And, and that's his argument for why it's a cash grab is that they gave them a basis for a story and said, go make a story. That's not enough for it to be a cash grab. Certainly not as a standout to all of Marvel, you know? No. Yeah. No, because so that's the commissioning they... phase, isn't it? Isn't it? I feel like there, there, there is definitely room for things to go wrong with, we are going to have these projects happen, and especially if Marvel says you need to set them in these locations, because if, if you have it be, you need to make an Ant-Man film, it needs to be set in the quantum realm where Janet was, and you need Kang, that already presents a challenge for you, which is, why didn't Janet say anything? Uh, as a problem that you now, it's like, oh, well, she did say something years before, you know, like in the, in the timeline, it's, uh, it, it's just like, you don't have total freedom, which doesn't necessarily mean that you're screwed. Um, but you can be locked into certain problems, especially if you don't have access to other characters that you might yeah. necessarily need for your story, just based on this premise alone. How much fun Quantumania may be for some, or how cool it may look to others, it doesn't matter. The movie could never survive the fact that it shouldn't exist, that the cash I, grab... Yes, it no. can. What? I don't... Can. Yeah, I disagree with that. Wrong. It shouldn't exist. Like, what? There's plenty... There's probably, if you look through film history, there's probably plenty of really good movies well, I mean, that shouldn't, quote-unquote, shouldn't have existed, but the people who were put in charge of the creative process worked hard and they came out with good movies I, and there were good um, actors and good was baffling for a long time as a project that existed yeah you know? that shouldn't exist a for, show for a about time, andor like, that andor, one guy really and then and look at how it turned out it turned out great mm -hmm. say all that but i'm looking at the nickelodeon slime <laughs> <That's> <laughs> just, sure. it, it is pretty overwhelming it is an overwhelming <laughs> I think this is the rotten, right? The rotten symbol for rotten. Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, it's rotten. Oh, I see. By the way, rotten looks I want to know. Blend my in homies real well. Okay. A lot of people felt that Terminator and Alien, those stories are told and done, and they're great, and they don't need sequels. And then, is the famous story not that James Cameron put the 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 word Alien on a whiteboard and then drew a dollar sign after the N making aliens? And then they were like, oh my god! And, I didn't know that. And so if someone if, if, imagine he said in that moment like we are gonna be doing a cash grab, lads. It'd be like okay, but you could still make something great, like one of the greatest movies of all time, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> it's yeah, you can yeah. totally do it. And if someone said like, but this that with one and done, Alien is a st told story. It's like okay, but I could do another one. It doesn't matter how good it is because it shouldn't exist. Yeah, that's it's yeah. such a weird thing. But I have a problem with that. I mean, like I, I, I like the Lego Movie. I think that's a an enjoyable film, and arguably, yeah. it's the cash grabbiest of cash grabs. Before yeah. it came out, there was certainly the feeling of wow, really, but they turned it into something really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't even think that I think his core premise here is immediately flawed. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I basically, because it always comes down to whether it is actually good or bad, how well written it is. If mm -hmm. it was a great story, you wouldn't be saying this. Even holding everything else true, if they somehow pulled it together and mm -hmm. made it work, you'd be saying it was, it, it'd be good, and you'd feel it was good, and this wouldn't matter to you. I think he puts the cart before the horse, because it's like, why is this movie, why don't I like this movie? Because it's a cash grab, instead of just going about what made the movie shit. I, I mean, yeah, he's, very... like he's justifying it in his head. This is a yes. cash grab. That, that's why it's bad. Not that it's bad, and yes. it's a cash grab. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's but going through it's all the reasons that this shit would take like six hours. So <laughs> yeah, ain't nobody. Who the fuck would do that? And no one with a life, certainly. But uh, <laughs> he's using the, there's like this three prong element of after the movie's out and after the fact. It one 
wasn't good as a movie. It was terrible. Two, it didn't make money. And three, not many people will ever defend it. And then you're like, oh, pretty safe to call this one a cash grab. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's squarely in that kind of territory. Yes. Aspect poisons everything here. Ant-Man the character isn't Ant-Man anymore. Ant-Man the movie isn't an Ant-Man movie anymore. And the whole thing basically exists just mm. to serve the new villain in a superficial manner. Does it really serve him? <laughs> not really, from what I saw in your video, Mola, not really. It is fucking not. No, it He's doesn't. A cloud. He's a cloud no. character. Win. Yeah. Well, do you think the writers think that this served Kang? Yes, yes, they do. Process? But they yes, also think they it do. served Ant Man. And remember, they th remember the writer thought that this was Janet Van Dyne's Unforgiven. Ugh. Oh, oh, Ken my oh Jesus no Christ! He, he said, said that. that they didn't yeah, make that good. He did. He did. They yeah. also compared this film to Lord of the Rings and stuff. They said it more than once, oh. by the way. Oh, yes. Oh, well, I guess there's a spaceship-looking thing in it. I guess. <laughs> They compared Modok's death to Boromir, but they said the main difference is that no one likes Modok and that he doesn't deserve anything. They uh, they didn't realize that they had unwitting that Modok was unwittingly the best character in the film. He goes, <laughs> he has an arc. He has an arc that is somewhat coherent. By yeah, and, total and fucking accident, I'm sure. Yeah, and what seals the deal is like, I'm bad. Um, maybe you shouldn't be bad. And then he goes, You're right. What what a great arc. Like I said, the best no, he, interpretation no, I have he, of that is that he was already, he was just looking to turn. He didn't want to be a bad guy. And he was looking for a reason to be a bad guy, and he saved the multiverse, and they fucking laughed at him. To be fair, he's got a big he face. Say, he does have a big face. Yeah, because in the commentary they said we should have had a joke where, like, they tried to close his eyes, but they were really heavy, so it was hard. It's like, dude, he just saved the multiverse. Who cares? Yeah. Funny face, man. Yeah, who cares? He's got a big head. He, yep. he saved more people than Tony Stark. He I did. Mean, he <laughs> saved. He saved infinitely more people than Tony Stark. And, it is uh, by the way, you can tell by their attitude. They ain't gonna tell Earth about that. They ain't telling anybody. Yeah. No, he sacrificed no. be in vain. Well, no, no, not in vain. He saved. It. It's just that nobody would know. <laughs> Which kind of makes him even more he of a hero. Yeah, the fact that he's an unsung hero. Mm -hmm. He is an unsung hero. And so today, what I thought would be useful to do is to look at Quantumania through this cash grab lens and try to understand why it's Ant-Man in name only. Why exactly its hero and content and point of existence are ruined. Okay. As you're showing the villain oh, yeah, flick away Ant-Man and the Wasp because they've gone super small, losing their powers, but... Also, were you having the same thought that as me that we're so familiar with the visuals in this film that that felt like he was breaching the time that limit? Felt that felt too long. Yeah. yeah I was, I was watching that. I'm like, dude, no, that's too Believe long. me, after that's fucking, uh, like, a full, however long of me and Free having to do this to avoid copyright, it's like a trigger. It's like, how dare you play well, that yeah, much of the fucking much, clip? If, if the clip is like four seconds long, I'm already feeling like, oh, Jesus. Like, yeah. oh, no, that's too long. Not only to learn why it failed, but also to know what to look out for with your own movie. Because honestly, why did he put it's man on too long. It's too long. Let's pause. <laughs> Also, yeah, I guess we're uh, going to learn how to avoid the failure that is Ant-Man. We're going to avoid cash grabbing in our own movie. This was made by a DC double agent Ooh. working at Marvel. No, oh. this, was, this was written oh. by, this was written oh, by my Marvel, God. clearly. It's that's that's funny as fuck, yeah, quality. because you know that if uh, Jeff Lovelace and uh, Peyton Reed heard that, they'd be like, I, I, no. <laughs> like, no, I'm... no, I mean, that's 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 silly. It's, it's in keeping with Phase 4 shitty quality. Yeah. Fits right in. It was a DC. We're talking like a, it was a paid like actor. A DC oh, sabotage operation. Well, it's, it's so funny if uh, if it was true though. There was a double agent. He got all of his sabotaging plans in, but they just happened to be things that Loveless and Reed agreed with. <laughs> he was like, I were really let's, good um, ideas. Yeah. let's make it so that Scott doesn't want to help people anymore." And they're like, "That's great." And he's like, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> Great. <laughs> and it's, it's also kind of funny the notion of like DC sabotage when this year has been a fucking disaster for DC. Yeah, the DC guy and goes back to, them. you know, DC HQ and he's just like, I sabotaged I'm, them. And, I don't wait, know. We're I, making the, nobody. Oh shit. No, it makes sense. Unsabotage us. I, I think you guys need to give this theory a bit more credit because let, let's <laughs> consider DC makes shitty movies, right? So they think, all right, well, somehow we can only make terrible movies. So if we plant 
one of our creatives within the competition, they'll make shitty movies too. We can't bring ourselves up, but we can drag them down. And then that <laughs> that guy is like, you want me to sabotage them? It's like, no, work really hard to create great things. That no, will Max, sabotage great. them. You're great. You know what you You're usually great. try yeah. to do? So You're so Apply good our this. usual standard and it will work. No, no, be bad ironically. Yeah, yeah, do, go do that. Because if you yeah, try to deliberately yeah. sabotage them, you might make something good by accident, so... <laughs> Don't do that. Oh, why do we, we play this guy? Believe it or not, may not be too far from the truth, because the couple low-ranking people I know at Warner's have told me that there is an ex-DC Warner's person now pulling the strings. Really? Oh, oh he's got the inside He's got sources. Is this like, is this like, That's a lie. Is this like, trust me, bro. Oh my, we're at that That's, level right now. That's trust not, me, dude, bro. trust me. My contacts yeah, at Warner Brothers source. assure me yeah. the saboteur is at higher <laughs> levels of operation. Yeah. I shan't he reveal says low name. level. My he says, oh, they're tell low me. level insiders, though. Like, <laughs> why would they have some but, guy? Why would Warner Brothers insiders want to contact Filmento specifically? Tour. I just don't understand. Yeah. That just means they used to work at DC. That doesn't mean like yeah. they're actively. They're pulling the strings, they're, buddy. They, they have they have a permanent allegiance, a blood oath to Warner Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I will serve you. I will serve you beyond the confines they're of like this a job. Soviet in the next life. With them all down. As Marvel, a person you have heard of. So Ooh, even though oh, it may get oh, me in trouble, oh, is it, I'm is gonna it do you? a filmento exclusive <laughs> expose <laughs> say of who that is. Oh my god. Is it you? Okay. That's exciting. What I don't want to get too much trouble, and because in order for that expose to make sense, my cash grab argument has to make sense first. No, it doesn't. <laughs> you could have you could have just told us who it is now. You don't have to wait till the end of the video or anything. No, That's some no, bullshit. You gotta stick around. Whoa, you just Jeez. dangled the coward in front. It's like I'll I'll reveal. Yeah, but little does he know detail, we were gonna watch later. this whole thing anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so Buzzfeed <laughs> jokes on him. Uh, yeah, we showed him. So here's why Quantumania is a cash grab and how to not make your project the same. All right, Ooh. here we go. I love that he always frames his videos as writing advice because he has some of the wildest. <laughs> uh, well, the the, uh, the book that he's Look. written, I'm pretty sure, is is structured similarly to the. Yes. Uh, it's all like videos. lessons so, like, he's come each, to learn across yeah. all the movies. Each chapter That's will this. be like this film, this lesson, this film, this lesson, and the, the chapters like a page or two War long. and the Vietnam War. Oh, <laughs> that's not I mean, something to learn. Maybe. Yeah, dude, that Does was his crazy. Book <laughs> mention the Vietnamese. The man's He's... got some opinions, you know. That's Does. exciting. And you know, he didn't even need Nebula to upload those ones. They weren't censored. He got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Gimmick man. Gimmick man. Wow, that's not clever at all. Firstly, the reason Ant-Man the character isn't Ant-Man anymore is because he has lost his defining personal specificity to the point of becoming his a defining, uh, sorry, His defining personal specificity. His defining, defining term. personal specificity. His defining personal specificity. Oh, that's 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 a that's a bobism mm. right there. I feel like that's <laughs> you know, a bobism. It is a bobism. Um, that's it a bobism. really is. <laughs> it's unfair because the answer is so fucking straightforward. If if this were a decent script, it would just be like Scott isn't Scott. How do we know this? It's like, well, his arc in this film is learning that he needs to help people. That's absurd. That's not Scott at all. Or you could just say he lost his defining characteristics. Yeah, yeah. that'd be it. No, he's lost his defining specificity. specificity. <laughs> no, no, I, is it? I think is he going to talk about? Oh, Ant Man can't shrink anymore. That's why he's not Ant Man. Is, is that what? Well, he, he can shrink and grow. Well, well we're about to find there. out. It, obviously, yeah, so but, far we've talked about how he worded that was confusing as fuck. But yeah, he's just trying to sound smart. <laughs> yes. So oh, with a gimmick boy. used for whatever Marvel wants. To introduce what I mean, look at the beginning, where you may notice that the things that made Scott Lang Scott Lang oh, don't well, exist anymore. Oh, oh, it's basically yeah, just long. a guy living his life with this the. This is pretty long. That... Do you want? Do you want to put like the copyright? But he's. <laughs> it is a worry. I will. I will. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. It's, yeah. But okay. people, people like acknowledging that he's a hero. But but that makes sense though. Well, sorry, that I didn't catch exactly what you were saying there. I'm just gonna roll him back. Yeah, I what I mean, I at the beginning, where you may notice that the things that made Scott Lang Scott Lang don't exist anymore. He's basically uh, just a guy living his life with the added fact that he's Ant Man. He can he can uh, do that. Uh, That's okay. He's what? allowed to do that. Uh, I mean, yeah. he, he, he leads a life that is normal. Well, he did that in the other movies too. <laughs> 
Yeah. No, that makes him not a not Ant Man anymore because he's got well, a real yeah. personality. It's just impossible. The opening well, of Ant Man and the Wasp. The opening of that had nothing to do with Ant Man like tech or superhero stuff specifically. He was just hanging out with his daughter. Well, yeah, yeah, if I was Ant Man or whatever, the weird, yeah. yeah, I'd be hanging out with my family, and then the, you'd have the the stuff of whenever I go out in public. People notice me, they maybe pay for my food, they call me, you know, this, that, and the other. Hey, it's Ant-Man, oh my gosh, they ask for a selfie well, or whatever. Th- but, this yeah, is that particularly sense. awkward. That doesn't happen to real this, celebrities. All of this stems from him being Ant-Man and having saved the universe. Yeah. All of what's happening here is about him being Ant-Man. Just not, he's not doing Ant-Man stuff right now, but it's all having to do with him being Ant-Man. Mm-hmm. How does it feel to defend this movie? Uh... <laughs> uh, well, the thing is, it's this film was awful, but like, yeah, you can still be wrong in the way that you say that it's bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, we know how hard. that works. Yeah, with people loving him for saving the world with the Avengers, and with how dare they using him with Avengers, and basically every scene being about him being a hero in the MCU. Why are you time Wait, traveling? What's okay. the problem? Okay. So... In the MCU? No, in universe, though, you mean. Like, as right Maybe that is what he means. The... I, I'm just waiting for okay, him to tell okay. me what's the problem, Captain though. America. Uh, he has the Avengers need me. Absolutely. Oh. How did the Hulk turn me into... Also, dude, the music. I say, yeah, yeah it's music. loud. Are we so is careful with this? The music not... Yeah, why, why is the music so loud that it, like, drowns out the words of what you're trying to... Or is the point God. references here. America. Not insane. References. Which can be funny yeah. and kind of the point here, but it also leaves Scott himself <laughs> in yeah, yeah, the kind of the point. point. That's not <laughs> okay. This it is, is so weird because I agree, film it, th- that it book is, is written by and as Scott Lang talking about his values in this moment, which by the way is one of the few moments in the film that's okay. He's like, I want to hang this out with my daughter and I will save the world when needed. Yeah, that's Scott but Lang. He just said it. It's it's Here's my part of the point. Book. It is the point of the. Oh, I'm confused. Yeah. <laughs> Is what exactly is it that separates him as a person from the noise of all the other MCU heroes? His daughter is a big he thing. A book. His daughter is. It, I mean, I, I, a good version of this would play really hard into the angle of his connection with his family. The Langle. Um, the Langle. The Langle. Yeah. Langle. I think, and, yeah. The, the, and that of all the MCU people, he's most positioned to lead somewhat of a normal life, or he's one of them anyway. He's got a big family. He's very, like, almost uh, chill and personable, powers, you know? charming. He's trying to inspire people with his book. This, this is all very... This is all... It's weird to pick on this part, because this part's probably the most solid stuff for his character until they mm-hmm. fuck it all up. Yeah. yeah I'm not... and, and then there's also that the film seems to misunderstand what's happening here. The film seems to think that Scott is an asshole yeah. for writing a book and doing inspirational speeches to families, you know? Like, trying to inspire kids to, to be heroes in their own lives. Oh, and did you hear as well that it's apparently law now that he was asked by Hawkeye and Hulk to make this book? Oh, oh is it? Yeah, wow. apparently they asked him to do an account of it. That's in some kind of fucking new thing they've released, which is just it, it, even more funny, because they all rip into him in this as if he chose to write the book, but now he's if been he told to, to write it, yeah. Yeah. So it's just, they keep making everything worse, but that's fine, whatever. <laughs> That he's fun. Oh, people ask him why. Uh, apparently, it's something to do with like, so we have a, a, an accounting of the events in a public sense, and they figured Scott was the best one for it. I don't know. That's you know how this works. People, people, this they people they hire people. They did this with Star Wars, where they've got to like bind everything that's made by all these disparate teams with no understanding or respect for each other. And so he's like, why did Scott write the book, and who told him to it? It's like, oh, fucking <laughs> Hulk. <laughs> I guess I don't know. He, he wanted it. Oh, that's well, someone we bring out whenever we need someone to fucking yeah. do whatever. Others are funny, <laughs> plus many other things. Okay, what are we doing? Scott's funny, but so uh, is Tony. Like, but okay. they're not funny in the same way. <laughs> and they're not funny in the same way. Exactly. See, yeah. in the same universe. Look at the characteristics he's got for Tony. Billionaire, asshole, arms dealer. He hasn't been an arms dealer for the entire... The entire billionaire isn't a personality thing. trait either. No. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. It's a little bit more complicated why isn't, than that. Why isn't like why isn't actually like selfless in here? He's a pretty like when it comes to the big moments, he's very selfless. Yeah. Well, and there's a lot more to Scott than funny. He's definitely yeah. got more going on than funny. He's a family man, like big time. Well, he's That's one of the most selfless characters as well. Life. He's yeah, he's incredibly humble. You could I think you could argue he's the most selfless character in the MCU. He's so humble, like, <laughs> compared to a lot of other characters. 
that he's an ordinary guy pulled into a crazy situation. Well, others are that. In plus. a way. Stalin is an ordinary. In what oh, way are you oh, a person? Oh, orphan, oh, orphan isn't a character. Orphan trait, is a characteristic. <laughs> ordinary. In love with a green alien. Yeah, everyone is, I don't is think, that. I don't think he's ordinary also. He's not ordinary. He's not ordinary. He's very ordinary. His father was a Aren't god. Aren't you half celestial too? Yeah, I mean, this for me, this like, do you understand what he's trying to do here? Is be like, see, everyone else has these traits, so this is you know boring to say that Scott has he's these. Nothing. What the fuck? Even though he has them, even if we agree that they shared the same traits, having these differing traits from different <laughs> characters in this unique configuration is unique in and of itself. I love the idea that you're like this man is funny. This man's an orphan. This man's <laughs> you're like, wait, I'm sorry, what? Like, <laughs> oh my god. This um, man's gay. Also, yeah, <laughs> Scott, like, if you're going to say who is the most, like, down-to-earth character in all of the MCU out of the heroes, probably would be Scott again. Probably Scott. Probably is, yeah. yeah. Also, why doesn't, does he not think Star-Lord's funny? I don't, I don't know, apparently. Well, maybe know. funny is under not the enough dot, to dot, be, dot. He's not as, he's not maybe. as funny as, yeah. he's more an orphan <laughs> than he is funny. He's an orphan is more funny. orphan. <laughs> <laughs> the orphan part it, really it, does get in the way of the funny, you know? Yeah, if we pull down our, our character chart on, on the graph here, you can see that the blue line representing funny is far lower than the green line, which is his orphanness, which is way higher. Or just team leader, like, I guess so. Yeah, he's got leadership qualities to him. Many Which makes him just like Captain whole. America. Why do, why do they have, like, genius for Tony? Like, that, like he's know. an incredible engineer. But as a person has nothing to distinguish himself from all these other people. He absolutely. What are you talking oh about? God. It's yeah, so oh, untrue. Damn, I'm, that's that's really lame of you. Scott is unique. Sorry, he is. There's there he's is a like bigger Tony, difference between like Scott and Tony than there is between Tony and Stephen Strange, for example. Yes, yeah. they're they're a lot more alike. I would say Star Lord, in Tony, and Stephen all have the ego problem. Whereas, like, uh, like as in, that's a flaw for the character, you know? Yeah, Scott doesn't yeah, have it yeah. at all. That's what I mean, like, he stands out. He really does. He and does, included, even though his he, films don't. And, I mean, a lot of it's probably just Paul Rudd charisma coming yeah. in to average that character. He included yeah. Tony Stark's, uh, like, arms dealer pass, but he didn't include, you know, uh, Scott's thieving. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Traits. Mm, yeah. Well, and I will give him a little bit of allowance for this, but most people don't even know that Scott's like a, an advanced engineer, like that he's able to do he's some an incredible shit. Engineer, isn't yeah. he? That's yeah. what I'm saying. Most people don't even know he has those abilities. Yeah, but I mean, if you're going to make a video on Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania, you should probably know about those we things. You should probably watch Ant-Man 1 too, right? It seems yeah, like he may but... have. He had some clips in there. That's true, yeah. With the exception of being Ant-Man. And to bring context to this, even though Scott was never the standout MCU character, he initially had these specific oh, aspects about him that he made lost them. He's lost the characteristics, I see. I see. Okay. Him. Him. He was an ex-con master thief. Okay. There um, you go. Th this is... Mm -hmm. Well, so this is where it's going to get complicated, right? Because do you have to bring that in in the future uh, iterations of the character, especially if he's far along and he's doing different things in his life. It's like not necessarily Does he have to be stealing things if he started out as a thief. Does he needs to does he need to be using those abilities in every or, you know, one well, of his outings? Well it feels like you could take advantage dead. of the opportunity, but you'd also be it's a way to show that he's moved on from that life that's not him anymore, you know? But the skills are transferable, I suppose, in terms of, you know, I would want to take advantage and... of it for sure. But the thing yeah, is the most important aspects to take from him are obviously gonna be his relationship with his family and how he feels about yep. you know his selfless acts. And they fuck those exactly. up. Exactly. <laughs> like the idea that it's like we needed to see him do more thieving. The funny part is they awkwardly fucking try to shove it into Quantumania, if anything. It's like, I need you to steal they something to for say... me. It's like, no, you don't. That's not at all oh, what you need to have. He's not stealing it. It's your property. It's your. He's not even stealing it, though. Engine. He's just shrinking it. That's all he's doing. Well, that, no, that's what I'm saying. It, it's not. It's yours, and you're getting him to get it for you. It's all theft. It's it's your property. Like <laughs> he barely even has a chance to steal it. He, the main act is shrinking it, and then Kang would have picked it. Kang should have picked it up as soon as he shrunk it. To be honest with you. Yeah, exactly. He should have been open up his portal, and be right there, and grab it. Who struggled to make things right with his distant daughter? So you could argue that the struggling dad aspect was carried <laughs> through. 
It shouldn't yeah, well, have been <laughs> a different kind of struggling fatherhood. Well, instead no, the of... struggle is that he uh, he's too busy writing books than helping people, even uh... though writing the book and doing the tour is helping people. And also, he saved the fucking universe. That's but, what I mean. It's all know... tangled up right now. This is not... Yeah. Um... And who had to steal something to fix things. To steal something to fix things. I feel like that's under Master Thief. I don't know why you're adding that in. It's like also a not a characteristic. Category. He had to what, steal stuff to make things better. I, again, that's wouldn't that be Master Thief? Wouldn't it should that be, just yeah. go under that category? Well, but if you're trying to argue that this this is a problem, it depends on what, how we're categorizing all of this. Because when we say he's humble, he's um, you know selfless, he's fun, he's he's charming. I feel like these things describe his characteristics, you know, as a person. Saying he's a master thief, like okay. Or that's Tell the same thing as like, it. yeah, what, that doesn't. What kind of master thief is he? Is he a gentleman thief? Is he uh, like a rogue, sort of a uh, sneaky? Or is he like a shadows? brute? Yeah, but exactly. no, we don't really is get. Is he doing it for noble reasons? Is he a Robin Hood thief, or is he a you know a selfish thief? And then like felon life, like why would we kleptomaniac? Why would we want to push well, felon life? Is, is that he's, he's definitely yeah. not a klepto because he remember he stole. To try and get money back to people who right, but, uh, but, but is that didn't get it. What he's trying to say here is he trying to like position him as if he's some sort of a kleptomaniac. I don't think so. I no, think he's just it, saying that thievery is a big part of his character when it's not the it's not the biggest. Well, but this is the uh, thing I was trying to say about the evolution of the character. Why would we have him like risking felonies? That's mm -hmm. not something that has to be a part. Of. He just saved the universe. Like, why would you know what what happens to him now doesn't necessarily entail. Felonies. I don't know why we have to have that. Yeah, if he doesn't need to steal anymore to survive, like he did. Yeah, and if you said, well, in the first he? one, they have to steal stuff from, like, the Avengers, and in the second one, they have to steal stuff from some places. Goliath? I can't... Yeah, Today? Goliath, I guess. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so you're just like, okay, but you don't have to make the film about that. No, you don't have to. You can always... Like, the traits that you start with don't have to be the traits that you end with. You can always feel free to evolve and tackle new challenges with a character, reveal new uh, dimensions. Well, and this one just mentioned as well, he doesn't even want to do those things, so... No, no that's the uh, struggling dad part of it. He's a thief because he's a struggling dad. It's 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 the felon life part is part of Master Thief and struggling dad, because he does it because he's trying to make <laughs> enough money to yeah. be able to see his daughter. So, yeah. <laughs> I'd... Oh, I don't know why it's the third one. Oh, what? No, Hello? I think it's Rags, he's gone. That's a you problem, Rags. Yeah, you, you bamboozled uh -oh. me. See you, Rags. Bye, Rags. In a second. Ready? Hello. Wait, no, no you, Weekend it's Warrior. It's not going to work. It's not going to work, Weekend Warrior. <laughs> you're, you're trying to bamboozle me. <laughs> Hello? I can... Yeah, it's Rags. <laughs> see, look at that. <laughs> rags, disconnect. Go on. Off you go. Oh, it's gone for M. Oh, I'm here. Wait, what? I'm... So it's just me, Fringy, and Cap right now? And meme, maybe? Uh, hold on, let's, uh... Yeah, it's me, Cap, see. and Fringy are the only ones left, apparently. Oh, wow, okay. We're in Singapore, right? Yeah. Oh, girl, Hello. everyone's back. I, I was scared. I was lonely. Well, thank you, Singapore. All right. All right. Anyway. I thought you were trying to saying? trick me, Weekend Warrior. I thought no, you were no. trying to yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Fringy, you're disappearing. Hello. And then they're oh, dying no. space warping. Fringy, like, come back. <laughs> That's what separated him from the pack. Boo. Wait, wait, wait. Is. Wait a second. Is Scott Lang a kleptomaniac? No. No. I. He's... No. No, he stole because, because I was he was about trying to, say... to get people's money back to them. It, it was. Cause... It was. Uh, he, he's not like a thief as a trade. That's not like his lifetime trade. Is I never I never imagined him to be a kleptomaniac. And I know that I don't I don't really like kleptomaniacs because well, I like I like Bill Mento hasn't said he's a it... kleptomaniac either. No. Alright, I was wondering because someone had mentioned that he someone had mentioned that, but I forget who it was, I suppose. Cause I don't I don't like kleptomaniacs. Because I like puns, right? One of my favorite things is puns. And it's really tough to tell kleptomaniacs puns because they take things literally. So. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we can carry on. Days of breaking into places and stealing shit are done. What do you want me to do? I want you to break into a place and steal some shit. Yeah, but that doesn't mean oh he has to do goodness. that in the third movie. It also yeah. doesn't make it as defining characteristic. No, and it's not. It isn't. It is, it is, it is a consequence of other things. Mm-hmm. 
whereas here, all that is gone. He's not a thief stealing anything. Or it's a so funny because the film awkwardly does force him into that. Yeah, the film awkwardly says that he is a thief. That's why he got brought down. You got to bring that up. Your video is an honest otherwise. Well, Wait, so that's, that's, that's oh, no. it's, it's, it's twofold uh, weekend we got on one hand he's saying that like that needed to be in this film and it's not which is not true it doesn't have to be in this film but secondly it is in this film very explicitly yeah. so it's in the end right it's like the second act he's he's like you got to go and steal something for me and then he's yeah. like oh geez well I, i'm told you're a very good thief so it's like oh fuck off oh my god i told you that Modak. why did you say that name a dad needing to fix things with his family or in any real meaningful way involved with the law. He's pretty much just Paul Rudd being Paul Rudd. Why, why do the phones say call from inconsequential? Because his that point- was jail calling. Yeah, about his daughter, by the way. About his daughter, yeah, which is like family Which is, you stuff. can't ignore That's that. You can't be like, him. this film doesn't have him running from or getting involved with the police. His daughter is, sure. It's like, well, that sounds like conflict, doesn't it? Yep. Why can't we do this, that? The the daughter of a hero like him getting involved in police stuff. If this film was written well, like that is a you can whole, use it. like yeah. that could have been the central family conflict around which the film is kind of based and uh, from which thematics spew forth. You, but yes, he's yeah, uh, he's all over the place right now. This is what I feel like happens when you know it's bad, but you can't figure out why. He's mm. not a thief stealing Very anything or a dad needing to fix things with his family or in any uh, real meaningful way. He absolutely, he the absolutely is a dad who needs to fix things with his family, according to the film. The problem yeah. is that the drama contrived in out of character, and it, it's like it, the film doesn't even recognize what well, it's, it's all, created. It's all front loaded and then never dealt with. Yeah, like it was quite, quite terrible. All of them thought very low of him. At the beginning of the film, yeah. and we never got to resolve it. We just made jokes about it. I was like, okay. He's pretty much just Paul Rudd being Paul Rudd with the added fact that he has this gimmick of being Ant Man. And the main issue. Yeah, stop saying that's gimmick. gimmick. Stop saying gimmick. That's like, oh, Iron Man's gimmick is that he wears his iron suit and he's got gadgets, or oh, well, what's another hero from the MCU? Hulk. <laughs> Hulk's gimmick is he's big and green and strong. It's like, okay, that's not really a, a gimmick. Or if it is, then I guess it, you can't say it derogatorily because it's just something everything has. Yeah. Dude, this lack of defining personal specificity creates is wrong. You keep it's saying that, but you don't know what it means. Personal specificity. I don't even know what he means. <laughs> <laughs> that it leaves Scott without purpose and thus the story purposeless. He's he doesn't have he purpose? purpose. He needs to get out of the he, fucking quantum realm. He has purpose. At, at least, uh, you know, if you want to read the film's intentions, he definitely has a purpose. It's just again, it doesn't really make any sense, <laughs> and it it contradicts earlier films. Oh, God, yeah, but to say sense. he doesn't have a purpose is wrong. Yeah, it's wrong. He has a purpose in this film. Um, it's to reconnect with his daughter. That's he's like the point. Missing That's what the all of the, you, the point is. The actual flaws. Like he's he's just saying things. Like a stick in a river carried wherever Marvel wants the river to go. He happens to be shrunk down to the quantum realm by someone but, else. He happens but. to be. A he happens to be Which, shrunk down specifically because he is Ant Man. Yeah, that's why it happened. They want daughter, his expertise. Yeah, the quantum, the quantum tech angle is there, and it will be because of the family that so, he is a part of. And, and he's showing the, the because the... Cassie made the tech as well. Which again, that was stupid, but you know, because she made it, that they're there in the first place too. He's about to use the quantum jelly, son. But like, he he fends it off. How is that not yeah, examples right. of his agency? Is it just because yeah. he's like, well, you yeah, he was attacked by it for no reason at all? Look here, that's what he says. He's like a stick in a river carried wherever Marvel wants the river to go. He happens to be shrunk. Well, no, that's not a good example because a river is only shrunk down to the quantum Pocket. realm by someone Pocket. else. He happens. Also, I mean, is he really complaining that the inciting incident is something that happens to him? That instead of like something. Yeah, he didn't choose to jump down to the quantum realm, so the film sucks. And that's not something I'm sure there's another film where he said that this was good, that the oh, he probably has, yeah. is beyond the scope oh, of the, the be hero. Yeah. It gives the hero a sense of vulnerability. Which is, <laughs> why do I sound like Ramon Salazar? But he, yeah, he would have said it he would have said it something he would have said it in a different way.
Yeah. You can flip it. Point. Anyway, if you don't have rules, right? You can just say whatever you want. Creatures down there, and then he happens to be captured by the locals, and then captured by the villain's henchmen, and taken to the villain. Nothing about the story is driven by or even... So you're not going to mention the times oh, where he does have agency then? Is that how you make no. that argument? Like, I mean, it's cringe, but when he's like, I'm not gonna let that man do anything to my Cassie, I'm gonna get him. And then he goes big and fucking full frontal assaults Kang's HQ himself. Like, are we just not gonna talk about that? Well, he's not. Like, I fucking hate it when videos do this. Like, that would fuck up my point, so we're not talking about that part. Fuck you. <laughs> okay, yeah, I just we need also to keep this under out. 20 minutes. This is just us. I, I just feel sad because the editing here is very good. It's just in the service of a very bad script. I like some of his editing, yeah. Yeah, the editing's all, the editing's great. The, the the content is the 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 point is poorly made, poorly executed. Oh, and someone just pointed out, god damn it, that's true. Why didn't I say that? Um Scott what? jumps in after Cassie. Oh yeah. yeah that's right. I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. But that's right. Yeah, yeah, that that's true. right. He's not sucked in. He's just So yeah, you're just so life. wrong. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Well, the, he only did that because the opportunity was presented by someone else. Um, yeah, he didn't make the portal thing. open he's just himself. He's reacting to the things around yeah, him. Yeah. yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, he's but that really fucks up the stick in the mud thing, because that's him being like, I'm going to save my daughter, here I go. Yeah. Dependent yeah, he's not a stick in a river Scott. anymore. Scott is the hero. The hero could be anyone. Put Scott on vacation and give him... We went over this before he even brought it up. You can't just have anybody. The whole point is that it's Ant-Man. I, this is unbelievable. How many times am I going to defend this movie when I just released a video <laughs> this, this about how it's one of the worst time. movies this, ever? This is it. Yeah, this is it. This is the obligatory defense you can't just of have the thing that you just spent months of your life. You can't just have <laughs> Captain America here. That doesn't make any fucking sense. How, what's, what's he going to do? The whole point is you need the shrink but tech. I'm, the criticism is that Kang can just take the shrink tech off him. He doesn't need Ant-Man. But he does need mm -hmm. Ant-Man's tech, so he can't just have Captain fucking America suit to someone else and the story would still function mostly the same no it wouldn't is that super smash bros music it is it's uh super smash brothers ultimate music okay all right i because i i i haven't played that game much but i was like oh that mu i i, I recognize the other variants from the other games it, basically like, every yeah, smash brothers game has a really great main theme yeah ba -ba -ba -ba. they just have good music in general ba -ba 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 -ba. even well, if, course, not even just the amazing yeah but Nintendo even music but even their own, yeah, like the... Song their own really music's cool. great. It's, uh, and, yeah, and especially good. a lot of the... Like, Brawl had so many cool mm. variations on that main theme. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's really good. We can help each other with Ant-Man. Shut up, bitch! <laughs> that's that's kind of funny. Yeah, it is. <laughs> the main hero doesn't that's why it's matter. frustrating. Movie What's I mean? Like, it, great. Yeah. He's the, the, what, what's happened here. He's like he's recognized the film is bad, much like everybody has, but somehow is screwed up finding the actual problems. Yeah. That's kind Being of hero doesn't matter. The movie isn't made because of them, but instead just to be made. And to be fair, the writers seem very aware of this, since when Scott meets the villain Kang, he's instructed to steal something for him. I thought you said that's not oh, a thing wait, in this movie. Wait. Oh, oh no. you're not allowed to bring that up. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. You lied to me. And I was like, yes. He lied to me. Oh, he was happy about this. Oh, okay. Okay. What's he going to say? Well, Scott Lang being Scott Lang actually matters. Great. Except, okay. of the course, paradigm. it's just Free. theory dust. When I steal something, I usually know what I'm stealing. It was a multiversal engine core. Then Janet blew it up. Right, so essentially, the villain wants Scott to dive into his ship's blown up engine to shrink it back down so he can use it, which is not stealing. Stealing Good. is taking. Yeah. Okay, what well, uh, you? Yes, yeah, true. Sure, just... this is a re this is a really minor point, though. Yeah. Well, let's see where he's going, but I mean, he's right. Yeah. He is, is right. That is. I still feel like the earlier part of the video is a cash fucked. Um. Because he made yeah, pretty definitive yeah, statements, and now he's like, okay, yes, it, they say it's here, but, like, it's not, it doesn't count. Something from something. Because now what you're highlighting is just, also, well, it's just badly written. It's not yeah, that they didn't involve he's the to aspect you're looking to us, for. Remember, the whole point of this is that he's trying to prove to us that this is a cash grab. So this point, in some way, is supposed to relate to this movie being yeah, yeah, a cash yeah, grab, yeah. when this is just a bit, this is a bad line. This is the problem. He, he, he told us, Scott Lang, he, he's a thiever. He's going to be doing some thievings. And you're like, okay. 
Um, and then he's like, but they don't do that in this movie. And you're like, oh, and that's the problem. Cash grab, not paying attention to character. Now he's like, okay, yes, they did, yes, that's there, but it's not really what I would classify as thieving. And he's like, so your issue isn't the... <laughs> That they screwed up his character. Your issue was just that they badly wrote a section where he He's had to said steal the something. Wrong word. Yeah. Or, or just that they they didn't just they didn't write it well. The phrasing is not. Yeah. The fr like if some thing, spooky yeah. weird set of demons had the the call and Kang couldn't do anything to them for some reason. He's like, you got to get in there quietly and steal it. That was the section. They just rewrote it to be that or whatever. It's like, would you now think the film is good, or would it be about how well they mm -hmm. executed that particular scene? Yeah. Someone without permission. It's breaking into someone's house or walking into a store to. No, that's not stealing. Stealing it? No, that's break. That's that. That's trespassing. Well, you're describing trespassing or breaking and entering. You're not not stealing. I'm fine with him trying to acknowledge the, in and among the act of stealing from somebody, you'll need maybe need to break locks or something. Maybe. That's obviously because well, this scene is him stealing from Hank. Whereas diving down into a CGI space to help someone with a problem is not that. Which, again, makes it painfully obvious that Master Thief Scott as a person has no value in the story and that wait, the story... Well, so wait, the reason you why can he's... use the skills of a... The, the no. skills of a Master Thief might be very, very handy in order to retrieve something that is yours. But he needs Scott's tech. It is... It does belong... Yeah, I was... Like, cause see, you'd like, be like, yeah, but it's nothing about Scott's character that he needs. It's like, it doesn't need to need Scott's character. Yeah, but the way the f at least the way the film is written, it, it Scott is the is the guy for the job. So I I I don't get the character specificity bullshit that he's saying in the intro. It it doesn't like he seems okay. To be up so go ahead. No, it's like okay, Scott and his companions have the technology to do the thing. Somehow, that's not the specific character trait that Filmento is saying earlier, right? It's so conf this video is so weird. It's so bad. He seems, the, um... he seems to be operating on the implicit assumption that it, for it to be an Ant Man movie, it needs to have cool heist shit. And if it doesn't mm. have that, it's not an Ant Man movie. Not just it's cool like, heist well, shit, but have... like moments in which his particular uh, proclivity for it is what helps push the plot along like scott particularly yes, and it's like well you haven't demonstrated at all that you couldn't make a story with this character where he's <laughs> yeah. not stealing shit it's like but you just assume that because it's like well that's the defining trait so if he's not stealing shit then it's not an ant-man movie i mean i would like, think oh. that the defining trait is the fact that he makes himself smaller right yeah. and that is something that he does do in this film <laughs> and is needed to do that if, thing. If anything, you can maybe make the argument that Kang is lying to him about needing a, a Master Thief just to get him involved. I mean, you, you could maybe make that argument, but he's not in this. He's just saying, oh, I need a Master Thief, but actually they're not stealing anything at all. I don't, I, I, you give me the worst film. Hey. Videos, man. <laughs> <laughs> we all have to go through this every goddamn week, okay? But, um... It, it seems to me that Filmento is trying to say that Kang should have needed him for something characteristically non-related to his tech, because that's... Who cares about that? That's, like, superfluous. Ah. Wait. Mm. Orphan again. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I appreciate the fact that he managed to point out that this isn't actually thieving, but the... I still think it's at odds with his uh, point of view that this film, to be good and not a cash grab, needs to have, like, a moment that involves... Thievery, when it clearly the director and writer thought that they had that. So it's obviously about the execution, not about the presence. He isn't in any way built on him, aside from the fact that he has this gimmick of being Ant Man. That's, that's not a gimmick. Yeah, so that's another reason why he's very wrong. Being like, Ant Man is a gimmick. It's, it's, it's so tiring. He's actually, like, he's talented at being Ant Man. So. You know, you can still argue that that's a, a use for the uh, the reason why he has the tech, or the reason why Kang wants him to do it. Which is something you could have put in the movie, by the way. Kang could have been like, I could take your suit and give it to my robot people, but I, I know that you're better at using this shit than they will be. But they suck at it like everything else, yeah. so <laughs> what's the point? <laughs> and it could have been a neat part of this, you know, thing, if they're trying to have a Cassie be the duet person, then they could have, like, made it a thing in this movie where he actually has to teach her things throughout it, and 
learn about the whole process of getting big and small and momentum and this and that and the other thing something but they they do that for like four seconds so that's checked off the checklist fuck it and so the point is that the only way to avoid being a cash grab on the character side is if there's defining value left in the main character to explore whereas with scott lang Defining value left in the Ooh. character to explore. But you could have static oh, characters. I or... just understood his point, and it's so stupid. <laughs> oh, well, please yeah. tell the rest of us. Translate. Translate. Translate the stupidity. His point <laughs> is that the character of Ant-Man, right, uh -huh. isn't uh -huh. in this film. <laughs> it's really yeah. stupid. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I can say it in a way that is not... As stupid. Um, I believe you. <laughs> it's okay. Like, you can do go it. Go for it. D just play it back for me one second, because I, okay. I, I had it. I'm going to say it to you. Man. And so the point is that the only way to avoid being a cash grab on the character side is if there's defining value left okay. in the main character yes. to All right. explore. So he is saying that by having Ant-Man by be Ant-Man and mm -hmm. do Ant-Man type things, that is not a defining character or a defining part of the character because he's not playing non Ant Man uh, um, guy. I, I forget his character's name. Scott. Um, uh, but, but Scott. Scott. So, so, so he's not playing Scott. He's playing Ant Man, and Ant Man. That's that's but his Ant argument a, here. What? Ant Man is a. Gimmick. Can you? Th this is what he's saying in this sentence: is that because he's being Ant Man, and not Scott. <laughs> there he's not being there's not enough characterization because he's being ant-man oh my god not, that's Life what he's fucking pain. saying okay i get it is, I is that what he's saying also are you okay uh, are you okay no! <laughs> okay i i get the i get the impression you got to where you are because of the whole like he's not using scott characteristics he's just using ant-man tech and that's why yes! you've done him wrong which is incorrect yes. as an assumption because Scott and Ant-Man's tech are fucking intertwined. There's nothing wrong yes. with Scott being required because of the tech that he acquires, which is, by the way, why he's dragged into Civil War, which is totally viable. Yes! Um, yes! But what I got from this part is that he's saying... Is he about to say that there isn't anything left for Scott's character? I just want to let it play a little longer. Of being Ant-Man. And so the point is that the only way to avoid being a cash grab on the character side is if there's defining value left in the main character to explore. Whereas with Scott Lang, that well here is already dry. Whatever purpose Scott once had has already been served at the beginning. You're, you're, to the wow. You're not serious, are you? That wow. Can't yeah, be. there it is. We, th we thought this never was... never be a motivational speaker. We thought this was a position he had earlier, but I don't think he'd quite said it, but now he has. Scott's dry. There's nothing else to do for him. How yeah. bereft of creativity do you have to be to think that just because he's progressed as a character, there's nothing left to explore? It's funny because this comes shit. up in my video, and I said that uh, it's it's like a tough thing to do, but you can still always you, you you might think he's peaked because he saved the universe, but that doesn't mean there's nowhere else to count. You just got to keep it within character. What can we do for him next? Yeah, what he has like no he's gonna still keep left though. He's only like he's Ant Man. Gonna... I mean, he's he's got a lot of years left to live in his life. Things yeah. nothing left to learn, though, right? People around him and to him. That's just like, but there's always room to grow. No, hey. no. See, we well, so it. so See, we did it. There's so the, this is the thing, the right? Of, like aging into a mentor role. There's so many things you could do. Well, isn't the interesting idea that the fact that they've almost got some of this is that he directly inspires his daughter, who loves him, by the way, and respects and understands him, who then starts experimenting with ant stuff, and he's like, oh shit. Maybe don't. And then she's like, well, what do you mean? I want to be a hero. And then, you know, this, that's easy conflict. He's like, I don't want you to be a hero. Like, you don't understand what kind of life that means. And that, that you know, you can have a big, big old flames there. There's plenty more for him to do in terms of being a parent. It's fucking unreal to me. They're just like, hey, he's done. He's done. Come on, he's done. Yeah. He's done. He did his thing. That's it. This his reminds me of like over. the logic when they made the sequels when they were like, come on, there's nothing left for Luke, Han, and Leia. They're done. They're old. <laughs> it's like, what the yeah. fuck? I can't think it's of bizarre. anything to do with this character. Also, please buy my book on writing advice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, oh, please. No, think, one, no one read it. I think his book is probably shit. What? No. What? No. Really? Rags being an old mean old Mr. Fish and Chips right now. I'm being a big old meanie. <laughs> big old meanie face. I am and just... Your book is stinky. I'm... 
You know, it's not often you get to say that you're flabbergasted, but I'm flabbergasted. I'm I'm going to be fair to him. This is something a lot of people end up saying. I think it's fucking retarded. Like I said, when they were making the sequels and they were like, we're going to make it about a bunch of new characters, like, because the stories for Han, Luke, and Leia are obviously done. And then they fucking ruin their stories in those sequels. It's like, thanks. Well, he he did say that earlier, too, that introducing Kang and having a video, a movie that introduces Kang is inherently bad because it's not about Ant-Man. And it's like, but he's introducing a new character. What's the problem? You can have new characters! I think that a lot of people would probably tell you if Tony survived the snap where he killed Thanos and everything, that that would have been a bad move because there's nowhere else to take him. His story's complete. You know, that's probably what a lot of people would find intuitive. And it's like, well, there's obviously other things we can do with him. There's obviously going to be more challenges to to provide any character. He can react to the thing that he just went through. Exactly. This, this, yeah. this is what I mean. You could you could have it so it costs him like feeling in half of his body and he can't even move it. Imagine doing that to Tony and then he like starts to replace parts of it with, you know, tech, like Iron Man yeah, stuff. I, it's, it's an e- you know, there's obviously Tony. potentially more stories to tell, but I think a lot of people intuitively will be like, well, no, that story's done. That character is done. It's like, okay. And to be fair, I might even roll that out in certain circumstances, especially if they've got a very, very, like, thematically strong death. Like, to undo it just to carry on the story would be lame. But Scott, Mm -hmm. he's ready to go. You just gotta think of something instead of just going, I give up. It's funny, isn't it? Phil Mento, Phil Mento at the boardroom would have said, I give up, there's nothing we do for him. And then fucking the chuckle fucks that made Quantumania said, how about we make it so that he doesn't want to save people anymore? (laughs) Yeah, it's that's like, fun. They'll love like, that. Okay, both of your ideas are crap, so let's try something else. Yeah. We could brainstorm for more than six seconds before we commit to the idea from our multiple hundred million dollar movie. Yeah. It feels like you could just easily draw from real life, where you go through a big, massive, life-changing event. It's almost like the quote-unquote peak of your life at that point, and then life kind of, I know this is kind of a miraculous and um, shocking and and uh, just really hard to think about. But life goes on after these events and things happen and people continue to um, reflect on their experiences and settle into new positions. And then they do it again. And then they do it again, but in new and different ways as new situations come up again and again. And like fiction can work like that. Like uh, those poor television writers, you know, having to do that. All the time, like I, I wonder how Phil Mentor would react to like, a, a, like a television character in a long-running show that has had to go through multiple character arcs throughout their journey. Like, does he think that that's that does that does he apply the same logic um to um that he's no. using for Scott there? Like, I, I'm so lost here with his logic here. The point where by the end nothing about him has even significantly changed. It's funny you say Doesn't that. Doesn't have to because the movie itself believes that there's been a significant change. It's explicit. <laughs> yes, it God does. says, "Wow, thanks to Cassie, now I know that people need help even when I don't think they do, or that I don't feel the problem myself." Whatever the fuck he said. Clearly That's right. The film does believe he's learned a lesson, yeah. a lesson that he never had to learn. It's not even a lesson he learned in the first film. It's a lesson he's always. It's, it's something he's always believed. It's like a basal kind of human position, really, you know? For the most part, a lot of people recognize that there's trouble a brewing even when it's not happening to you. He's in this movie only because he's Ant-Man and because Ant-Man is a property Marvel can use to make a movie, which they did. I mean, that's the case for he all of them. He says it like that was so final. He says it like he just... Did. Like, Right? He knows he's got us now. He did it. He gave us the excellent point that he made. (laughs) Oh, boy. If you look at Scott's daughter, for example, her core being here is all about being sort of anti-establishment and standing up for the little guy. Kind of hard to see through all that tear gas you fired into the park full of peaceful protesters. And so, I don't believe you. Maybe they deserved it. I have not enough information to operate. You should not be able to walk out of here after destroying police equipment. You're a terrible person. I hate you. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, Rang's got a lot of resentment for her from across the whole movie, not just this scene, okay? <laughs> That's if true, you but to make it's a movie all starting. Her, it can't then oh, be about yeah. her using the Ant-Man suit to stop a new super-powered serial killer or something. You what? don't need her for that. No, the story has what? to be built on what? who she is, and I'm the gimmick so, should evolve along with it. Oh, a government agency is tracking and spying on ordinary people. What the fuck? Well, now we're doing an ad. Yeah, we're doing an ad now. Yep. 
Yeah. The, Wait, uh, uh, wh when did this happen? What was the Cassie thing? I didn't even... I what year is it? I don't know. Well, we could go back and... Saying, with Cassie. Cassie. He was yeah. saying that she, if she's going to be the next Ant-Man, she needs to have her own personality, and it's driven based off of that, and not off of the, quote, gimmick of being Ant-Man 2. Huh? I, but, I mean, so the film would make the argument that it is based on her characteristics. They're wrong. Yeah. They've invented new characteristics for her in this film that aren't congruent with uh, who she was before. But it's absolutely driven by her perspective. Like her I can only tell you what he's being, saying, man. No, but I, well, no, I, I know that. I'm just, I'm count. If this is the case, then it's worth bringing it up as a counter. Like her perspective on, no, we need to help people. We need to, you know, just because it's not happening to you doesn't mean it's not happening. That's not built on the gimmick of being an Ant Man, like, like with the Ant Man powers. That's her opinion. That's her yeah, perspective. Yes. So, yes. like, that's not that's not the thing to criticize with Cassie. Is that she is very inconsistent were to make a movie with her, it can't then be about her using the Ant-Man suit to stop a new super-powered serial killer or something. You don't well, need I mean, her for that. No, the story you don't, is you because don't, you don't need her. I'm so confused. You don't need her for that, but you can use her for that. Just because you don't yeah, need not? to be that character doesn't mean you can't use them. He's somehow separating yeah. the character from, like, being <laughs> Ant-Man from being Scott and being Ant-Girl from being Cassie. <laughs> Like, for some reason, <laughs> these are very separate things to him. Build yeah, on who she is, and the gimmick should evolve along with it. Oh, a government agency is tracking and spying on ordinary people <laughs> with new technology. Yes, music again. true. They are. Oh, they are. Oh, this, this music might cause problems. So well, what are we going to do about it? People to hide their IP yeah, Morbius 2. Morbius 2. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, the government is geolocking oh, websites and streaming content based on. Oh no, what? that's oh, a no. thing that I don't approve of. On region to oppress oh, and divide people. Kang so she is doing this. This is all Kang's fault. I knew it. And access everything everywhere, all by using PIM technology Boo. to create this blue. Canada. Why would you even pretend to be Canadian? I'm mainly posing for the music right now. Yeah. Um, that would be a story. How do they get away with it? On. It's not fair. Yeah. It's not I'm fair. Wait, what? I don't know what's happening. This Ant is kind of Girl, this is kind of deep button. fried at this help point. Help me, somebody help! <laughs> it's a little deep fried, but it's without the fun or the cleverness. <laughs> oh, and the blue button is real, by the way. So if you want to Apple safely button. encrypt your internet data and change your IP, Canadians, what what's that on the right? Between... The, an Oreo? Is you, an, Oreo you gave an Oreo a really that's... British thing? It doesn't feel what's very Oreo? British. What? No. Uh, Oreos, I was about to say, well, Oreos are from uh, the UK? Are they British? No. Or, uh, uh, let me uh, say, wait, where well, were know. Oreos invented? Disco, Oreos right? were invented in Chelsea, New York. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> then he's, he's wrong. Very wrong. In 1912. No, no, right. Well, British people America, like Oreos. <laughs> exactly. Because yeah, well, we it, won't hold it, it does feel it weird not to have a more classic like British biscuit be... as opposed to an Oreo. Yeah, or like scones or crumpets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anywhere in the world to surf the web without being seen by government. <laughs> That's racist. All right. Uh, uh, this, uh, no, this is, we have a ma we have a maraca <laughs> and a sombrero and a trumpet. And we have the Mexican and... flag, which I think is just called the Mexican flag. Internet providers um. and unlock all region divided. Oh no! Whoa. Go back to the stereotypes of the countries. I wanted to you see them. Doing, get it for yourself. You, we're it's called with private those. internet access. The new best evolved. Yeah, yeah. Wow! Empire. Private internet access. They re <laughs> they really <laughs> were splurging on the naming department budget for this one. VPN, which protects millions of users while yeah. going without storing Oh, Whoa, look at them go. With servers oh my gosh, take that, hackers. Each yeah, get, get fucked. Right yeah, now, yeah. Get it for you guys are nameless, though. So I'm gonna be you. you with the like below. You can protect an unlimited amount of devices at the same time with just one wow, subscription. Wow, that's a lot of devices. Look I can many protect my PS5. Oh. You can protect your PS5. And look, Using, the lock is uh, smiling at me. Internet access. He's a cute little Oh, hey there. Hey there, little locky boy. And there's even a 30-day money-back guarantee, Ooh. so check it out. Okay, yeah, Iron on. Man Quantumania. Iron Man Quantumania, okay. Oh boy. Hey, uh, hey. the reason this coming. isn't even a proper... I just, I just wanna, because I was curious, um, so that, that VPN was started by uh, the guy who was in charge of the Bitcoin exchange that got hacked. <laughs> oh. Well. 
have to know Yvette's the sponsors. So, so, uh, super trustworthy. Super trustworthy. Her Ant-Man movie is because most of its content doesn't require it to be an Ant-Man movie and could instead be done with countless other properties. That's um, that is uh, that um, was a point that you made earlier. Um, but like, I don't know why it's called Iron Man Quantumania as a point as well, but also that doesn't this this isn't necessarily a problem that it could have been someone else. Um, with you know sufficient workarounds. If, is if the metric yeah. is, could the problems have been solved by another hero? Then yeah, of course we could have switched out. You could do that with all the movies. Captain Marvel could have well, replaced just, basically yeah. everybody in all their movies. Exactly. So therefore, every mm -hmm. movie that isn't Captain Marvel has redundant. It's for me. It just seems like a really weird metric. It's like Iron Man could have done this. Like okay. I mean, I so guess he could have, but he didn't. He didn't though. It's Ant Man did because it's about Ant Man. Yeah. Yep. For context, the thing that made the first movie special was the fact that what happened could happen only because it's Ant-Man where the hero can shrink down. Um, okay, so, the thing about that is, you know, when the Yellow Jacket fight, like, and then the destruction of the buildings, like, it may have been easier with an Iron Man suit. Yeah. It might have been. I think a better point to make is that the first Ant-Man, and this is true, the first Ant-Man film way uh, is much better at leveraging Ant-Man's uh, central powers. It's way better in terms of dealing with scale and shrinking and yeah, growing. But the way he's framed this is like solving the overall problem. And it's like, yeah, yeah we, which we could do that a with a lot of metric. them. Well, it just seems like it makes it really unfair for the characters that aren't super duper powerful. Yeah. Like any problem that Daredevil had could have been solved with Iron Man flying in and, you know, punching uh, Kingpin in the face and, like, knocking him out instantly. Exactly. Scott was writing and developing a relationship with an ant. Top speed, Anthony, let's go! He was running from everyday items in massive form like water in a tub. He was fighting inside a briefcase and even on a child's this, place. So, so the problem is now is... Film ...making better use of yeah. its gimmick, for sure. Yes. Which it does. It absolutely does. Um, and there's an argument to be made that having it set in the real world is easier because... These are household objects that everybody has some familiarity with. So seeing like a train set but small, or seeing a uh, like an ant even, right? Like an ant, but uh, it looks really big. That's easy to grasp compared to quantum flames. Yeah, but obviously he framed it as like Iron Man could have done this, which is weird, especially because uh, they yeah. all have, didn't they all have to shrink to go into the quantum time travel shit in oh, Endgame? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, they do. That's right. All Ant this was possible only one. in an Ant-Man movie, probably mostly thanks to Edgar Wright, who was a big Ant-Man fan and understood how to make it special. Wait. Ah. Uh, oh. Wait. Yeah. Uh, okay. ah. <laughs> so, wait, I thought, okay. I thought Edgar Wright didn't direct uh, the first one. No, a lot he, of people he, believe he that. Writing credits. Yeah, a lot of people believe the best parts of Ant Man are probably him. Which I believe. Uh, I think that's okay. true. Yeah. Gotcha. Whereas in Quantumania, all that is gone. There are no ant relationships or interactions with everyday items in any way or anything like it. Mostly, there's just generic superhero. This is true, but it doesn't make okay, it a cash he... grab. Yeah, it's no, true. But, yeah, it does he need to interact with ants? He he said, oh, he, oh, he doesn't interact with ants. Does he need to do that? Is it that a defining part of the the specificity of well, his personality? Well, it is. He doesn't interact with ants. So, the ants me. save the day. The communist ants. It technically he doesn't interact with them, just not in a way that's satisfying, I so guess, or interesting. Side. It's just, they just win, yeah. Well, yeah, because he had Anthony, his friend. Right, but he said it. he doesn't interact with ants in this one. And that is part of his argument. It, it's if, strange. <laughs> it is if strange. we were to say what 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 do we need to have Ant Man doing in his movies? Like growing and shrinking. It's like of course. Like what else? You're like um, will you, will do you want him talking to ants? <laughs> like, I mean, you know, it's one of the main uh, quote unquote powers. Sure, I, I'd probably include it. Yeah, he could. That could be part of the whole. Well, I, mean, I think the fun of it is is like with like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and stuff like that. Is what if we shrunk down people or ant-men or whatever and they have to interact with normal objects but the scale is so crazy that it makes them seem uh, bizarre right? right one of the cool things about ant-man was like the him in a bathtub running away from water as the faucet gets turned on that's just yeah. like interesting and fun because for us it doesn't mean anything because you know we're big but if you shrink someone down, it turns it into a whole new scenario. And yep. that's fun. There's a relatability to it. And at the same time, it's not relatable, too. You get a bit of both. 
And that, right. that's part of the fun of it. Fighting on top of a little train as it goes around, you know. Even they even did this in fucking Night at the Museum. The little Roman guy and the yeah, yeah. Uh, and the cowboy. Yeah the, yeah, the train and stuff. Even they even did it in those movies and it was fun. So yeah, more of that. Because everything is so alien that like none of it is relatable in a sense. And they don't do anything clever with the size the thing stuff is- either. That's not even necessary when there are, because of, you could say, due to a lack of imagination, there are a lot of, basically, substitutes for common household objects in Quantumania. There's, like, regular-sized buildings, regular-sized objects, but they just didn't take advantage of those opportunities. Yeah, in the Krylov fight, if Hope had shrunk and ran across one of the tables, yeah. you could have alien drinks that would look really interesting because they're blown up now. Exactly. But they didn't do that. Stuff. Yeah, and the main culprit behind that is the idea to set this movie in the quantum. Oh, that would have been really fun, like a bar-themed sequence where he's like on an alien bar top, and there's all kinds of different colored fluids splashing everywhere, and mm -hmm. different sized glasses that he's you know running around and that are flying through Tentacles. the places, and maybe he's cool. yeah. like he runs inside of a patron's clothes and out the other end, or you know something like that. You know they, they could have done something really cool, but instead they just sit around and. Flume blazers. Well, yeah, she just goes blast, 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 blast. Yeah, like, that's it. Okay. Like, we did well, nothing with our power set. Which is why, here. for the record, it's not as simple as simply saying they set it in the quantum realm, and that's the problem. It's like, you can still work with the quantum realm. In fact, Black arguably, you have all of the potential to work with. But they're not very creative, unfortunately. No. The no. realm, which may be the single worst idea in the Oh, what if he what if he fell into a the you have like a, a glass and it's got a bunch of ice in it and he falls in and as the bartender is pouring liquid into the glass he has to like escape it before the thing fills all the way up and he gets swirled around in it like a like a Sonic <laughs> Sonic the yeah and kind it, of avoiding <laughs> the water like he has to climb he has to climb up the climb up the ice and yeah. get out of the glass and it, maybe he has to shimmy up the straw or something and of course it's the bombastic music and the loud sound effects and pure panic and then it pans away to normal size and it's totally normal yeah like you it know, cuts to Bill Murray just slipping in. through the straw yeah like that. yeah oh yeah yeah yeah. Oh, it's just, you know, it, what a fun, what a cool, fun power set it is to get, you know, shrink really, really tiny. To completely yeah. waste, yeah. yeah. But, oh, well. Or we can shoot lasers at each other, that's fun. So far, most likely made by the XD. Oh my god. <laughs> simply because it makes oh. this being an ant man <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right, he has a promise oh to fulfill. Oh my god. He has, right. to, he has to make good on his word. Yeah. Be redundant. Man movie, redundant. Look at the story and the plot in a broad sense, for example. Okay, let's do Scott's it. daughter has built this device sending a signal to the quantum realm, and then someone uses it to shrink Scott and his family down there, which could happen with anyone as the hero. It I mean, I mean, so, in a very technical sense, maybe. Could, yeah. Wow, well, but the thing is, is that because the engine has been blown up by Janet, they do need oh, yeah. shrink tech specifically, which means they need these people. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, this is all, this is is all quantum realm technology, which these guys have already been fiddling with as of End of Ant-Man and the Wasp. Like, I don't know, this feels this like, you know, if Tony Stark were doing this, he would have been sucked in too. And it's like, I, I think we made a point about how any scientist fucking with this might have been fucked, uh, sucked in by uh, MODOK because he doesn't seem to be very picky about it. He was just going with signals. However, it does, you know, stand to reason that these guys would be doing it since they were doing it the last we saw them. This does connect directly to the technology that they were invested in. What's weird about this is, like, you know, this problem could have happened to any of the heroes. Like, okay, that, why but is that bad? It happened to Scott. It, yeah. You know. It makes more sense that it would happen to Scott because of the reason I mean, Kang, just outlined. Kang can be dropped into anyone's story. Why, like, that doesn't make it bad. It could be that Iron Man is checking up on Scott's family while Scott is on holiday and I then mean, it could be, gets... but it's not. Yeah, why Why do you say this like, <laughs> you You must bind Scott to the story, it has to be him, otherwise, like, there has to be, Modok had to suck his particular DNA down. It's like, that, why? It doesn't have to be that way. Drunk down with them and do the same I'm stuff. He would use his armor down. to fight whatever creatures get his are there. Sucked. This is dumb as fuck. Yes, Iron Man could be all the same things Ant-Man, because Iron Man is just Ant-Man, but way better other than he can't shrink. Obviously. 
He'd get captured mm -hmm. by the locals and then by the villain. He wouldn't be captured, he'd kill them well, all. Well, he wouldn't though, so it'd change, <laughs> it'd change yeah. things a lot. He would use as many, many I think MODOK's gonna do against Iron Man. And he'd be coerced by the villain and ultimately fight his army with the locals at the end. Mostly, this movie could be called Iron Man... Yeah, it would be if you Iron replaced Man. everything with Iron Man. <laughs> yes, if you replaced one of the characters, it would be different. I agree. Yeah, he's yeah, on, he's on a point there, yeah. Quantumania we did a and good job. Same, which defeats the purpose of it actually being Ant-Man. Yeah, it would. It would defeat the purpose of it <laughs> being an Ant-Man movie if you decided point, to replace I mean, Ant-Man with Iron Man. It would be weird if it was Man. called Ant-Man and the Wasp Man would just show up and Iron Man isn't and Ant-Man isn't. That Boy, that would be strange. Yeah. I guess it's a good thing they didn't do that. And also, sure, like, very I... poor choice of visual back there showing giant man a very Ant-Man specific capability. <laughs> Mm. while yeah. trying to make the point that it could be anyone. <laughs> yeah. You understand oh. the Quantum Realm choice. Hey, Ant-Man's thing is that he gets small, so let's make a movie where he goes to this small world. I get it. But the, I mean, that's not horrible as an idea. I don't know why we're saying it Especially is. Especially when it's being teased multiple times yeah. across the films. But the act where Janet came from in the end of the previous that's movie, right. why would this not... Yeah. It, it's not, an, not a crazy progression of ideas, they just didn't do very much with it. Actual effect exactly. is the opposite. Now that Ant-Man is in this small world, it just takes away from the fact that he can become small. Like when everything and everyone is small, it kind of by default means that it's but funny he can because smaller than they can. Yeah, it's funny because the when opposite. he says when now everything is small is and then shows a like normal sized everything, this is all this is all relative. Yeah. So normal right now everything's normal. Because remember, Ant-Man shrinks like four or five times. Yeah, and we just went over how, like, if he was to shrink and run across Laserface's body, it would look kind of crazy and interesting. Yeah, exactly. Because it's all relative. Well, like, when every Look at all these crazy characters. If he was to shrink and run what across character? that, like, sphere hedgehog thing, like, that would be crazy, too. It would look weird. Look yeah, if he ran across the bar. The to be made of how does Ant-Man deal with this bizarre world that is beyond what he's used to in terms of size and how things work? Even though it's a bar. Even though it is, <laughs> yeah, even though it is absolutely recognizable as a location. Yeah. Everything and yeah, well, you have a good point there, Fringy, because as we all, as a lot of people probably know, when you, you know, as you said, when you get smaller, things get weirder. And so when you're getting smaller relative to the already quantum sized things, you're going to be dealing with things on their smaller level that you're, that's not going to look the same as if you shrunk um, on the macro level. And so that's yep. going to be a whole new range of challenges to deal with. They don't do it in this film. But the potential Uncle. is there. Again, if they were more creative, they should have messed around with physics and had that be something that was challenging. That going small here messes with physics in a way uh, that's really did. unpredictable. Probability storm. Oh, uh, uh, holy shit! <laughs> that 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 was so bad. Name yeah. one thing about tell. that that's not scientific. They didn't tell him, like, the fact that Modok didn't even tell him about it, and as soon as he gets in, he's like, yeah, I figure I should probably, you know, explain what the fuck is happening. Ignore them, they're no. just other yous. Th that's, oh man, that's, again, like, how? How do you write that? You just see someone, like, there are clones of you spawning from you, and it's like, just ignore them. They're not you. Even though they look like you, they sound like you, they bear all of your memories, they're you. But they're not. It's cool. Thing and everyone is small it kind of by default means that nothing and nobody what know. a bad way to make that point when oh, not yeah. true at all yeah everyone oh my god syndrome is the water brothers oh my <laughs> god they sabotage the movie everyone's small oh, cringe <laughs> no one will be Oh my god. When everyone is small, okay. no one would All right. be. It's such a weird thing that he's trying the to say. The idea that, like, DC destroyed nice. Marvel and it's not that they both destroyed themselves. <laughs> I feel like the real video is here Here would be like, holy shit, guys, I have inside information that someone who works with DC he's lying, has rags. been planted into... Yeah, I know he's full of shit, but, like, it's just... That would but be... You know, true. this... This reminds me of all the, you know, those, those like ghost hunter and uh, th those kinds of the, those shows where we're looking for the monster, yeah. we're looking for the monster in the swamp. We're finding oh, Bigfoot. Or, yeah. And then you're like, oh, I wonder if we're going to find him. It's like, no, they didn't fucking find him. Cause if they found the him, it would be all over the fucking him. news. <laughs> well, yeah, all, all over, over the, the news, news everywhere. It'd and we would have known months ago when they filmed this shit, exactly. not when it aired. Like, obviously, they're not going to find Bigfoot, because if you believe in Bigfoot, you're a retard. And there's no <laughs> fucking way that they found... No, all of this is fake. And this isn't... Why is this on the History Channel?
I, because no, it's, it's historic, planet, isn't it? Though, some of those shows are on Animal Planet, right? Yes, yeah, some of those shows are probably on Animal Planet. Animal Planet. But a lot of these shows <laughs> on, like, oh, me and four other rednecks went into the the, the swamp to look for Mega Gator. Is he going? We're going to find Mega Gator this week. And this is, on, this is on History Channel, and I'm like, bro, I mean, bro, Mega Gator killed live in a house that looks like it's from the '60s. That doesn't mean that this is the History Channel. And then they have a really oh. amazing CG render of this creature. <laughs> well, you see, Billy really Bob the other like. day told me that he was out in the swamp one night hunting gators late, and then he heard this weird noise, and it sounded like a kadook a dig up a dook coo And they don't know no critter to make that kind of noise. It must be the chupacabri. It was like no one is, uh, is gator hunting a thing, <laughs> hunting alligators. Absolutely, it's a thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah gator right. hunting is absolutely a thing. You have like bag limits and everything for it. Yeah. Mega oh, wow. gator versus Bigfoot. Like, Hell yes. Yeah, I was just thinking, I, I want that now in my life. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I need Rags to be the narrator for his his mega gear. <laughs> Whoa, gator time. <laughs> and even though Scott can still adjust his size compared to his new surroundings, what? not uh -huh. much um, can be done sorry, with it. Sorry, that's a Oh, boo. He said not much can be done with it. Not true. Oh well, there's a lot. Why do you writers a think of that? I know, isn't it crazy? I don't get it. These are writers. You, you, we are known on the internet as some of the most like restrictive film reviews because everything has a correct way of doing it or whatever. But simultaneously, we have to listen to this shit all the time. Where they're like, "There's just nothing you can do. Nothing you can do about this." No. Nope. Like, Why don't you think about shit. it for twenty fucking seconds and come up with four or five possibilities instead of just instantly admitting there's only one other thing they could have done and they couldn't have done that. So what they did was okay. Isn't this the ultimate double whammy? There's no way to take the character of Scott Lang. There's no interesting way to use his technology in the quantum realm. It's like, oh, so okay. defeatist. Yeah, this crap. Would we call this negativity bias here. Now buy my writing book. <laughs> no, <laughs> like no, it clear, it's clearly shit. It's basically an alien world without a familiar conception of size. There are no everyday there items. There are that can you don't. So one of the problems. So one of the problems oh, with the quantum God realm is that it relies too much on like familiar things, like for that you know the vast majority of the aliens are humanoid. Uh, oh, they have, like, shoes. cities that are built in a way that's very similar to, you know, Earth cities with crazy flying stuff around in the side. Like, it's it's within the bounds of something that humans can really imagine. Um, obviously, there's, like, there's rocks, there's trees, there's animals running around. Like, there's definitely uh, a there's recognizable a, There's a bar. It is here. a straight-up bar. It's not some kind of insane exactly. construct that all of us are like, what is this? I can't understand it at all. It's funny, right? They show he's showing like Anthony and Ant Man on newspaper. Someone hold me. It's like you can have an alien reading an alien newspaper. There's nothing wrong exactly. with that. Exactly. Yeah. I just like God. Imagination. Yeah. Come just on. A, or just just commit to it being a floompy world that's kind of like ours, but just different and weird. But like, don't try and do this weird half and half garbage. Just like be like, yeah. It's well, it was the worst world. of both worlds. The quantum realm isn't that alien. Or at the very least, the alien parts of the quantum either, realm we either didn't or. get to see. Well, it's because all of the important people in the quantum realm are humans or very similar to humans. Like the only, it's that's why Veb stands out so much. He is mm -hmm. a wacky looking alien guy that's very different from anything that exists on Earth. Yeah, that's why I've I like him so much. Yeah, but he's like talks and he's kind of funny and he has Which, a fun yeah, voice. It's, and he's, it's a fun you know... little contrast, right? That he is very yeah. incomprehensible visually, but yet he's this. He's just this cute little fella, you know, just talking about his yeah, enthusiasm. Yeah, he's got his little eyes, and they look around. That's right. I've got my little I, hands. Dude, I, and I really like, like Veb. He's one of, I like of, Veb. of all of the characters that have been introduced in, like, Phase 4 and 5. He is really high up on my list. Which just goes to show <laughs> oh, the no. strength of the writing in, yeah. in these phases. <laughs> that Veb and, has and, skyrocketed and, uh, to the and, top uh, of I the think list. It was, I think Jeff Loveness was the one who said it. He had an arc and a character payoff. He got holes. The man got holes in he his pursuit of justice. That's right. He has a more congruent story than the vast majority of the characters. He didn't get assassinated. He became whole. <laughs> he hasn't been assassinated yet. <laughs> yeah, I am become Veb, the destroyer of worlds. <laughs> <laughs> the destroyer of holes. Becomer of holes. Be used in a new way by playing with their proportions. The proportions are all over the place anyway, which is why look at those. The That's comprehensible. That's come to play is in combat. Whoopie doo.
It is the well, no, no. Is how the, they use it in combat is what the interesting part can be. I I agree that having it only be in combat and not much so for traversal is a missed opportunity. Yeah, sure. But like combat is still that's like saying whoop de doo. It's like no, not whoop de doo. Like I mean, in Ant Man, like they're show, you're showing the scene where they were throwing like Thomas the Tank Engine stuff at each other. That's that's fine. Could fighting. have had Cassie was captured. Scott wasn't because they got separated on the battlefield. And Scott's to try and break into the, you know, prison. He's doing some shrinky dinklers. Yep. He's looking around, all kinds of crazy things. And then, you know, Kang defeats him, and then we carry on with the film. But, like, we could have had all that kind of stuff in there. They just didn't do it. Yeah, and we it would have played into his heist knowledge. He's like, I gotta break Cassie out of the prison. And he, he shrinks into the little panel in the wall and has to fidget with wires and brothers are like really yeah. big and he's tiny alien wires or something exactly. or he has to he goes small and Appears he has to within, run on like, some sort of electricity of <laughs> something they could have done something that would have been yes yeah, it, it, it's definitely worse i agree yes it's yep. worse yeah, yeah. No, it, it definitely uh, there's there's the something thing that's is, been lost along the way yeah, yeah. I agree if we'd never gotten the point. thing on the left the thing on the right would still be bad like yes yes, yes it would be bad it's bad Isn't without it the comparison it's bad new... on its own you could have had a boss the, fight yeah. well <laughs> you can't have the boss fight because kang wins <laughs> instantly that's the problem it's yeah. funny how the Dude, visual effects these... are so much worse what happened I've I've seen so many cutscenes yeah. better than the VFX in this film. It's ridiculous. It's so rushed. They were rushed. It's like crazy, and probably had to redo a bunch of stuff over and over again. It's better with some yeah. contrast. There are a couple exceptions. A couple scenes and moments where this being Ant Man factors in. Moments okay. like Scott's daughter shrinking down into a vent to escape the floating head. Moments like Hank Pym's end showing up to save the day. <laughs> oh no! Uh, don't that's say terrible. Uh, uh, oh, no, okay. come on. Don't do this. Oh my gosh, this reminds <laughs> me of the bad part of the movie. Yep. Oh, he's Those playing the good. portals music for that. Yes, he is. Yep. <laughs> but maybe they should have lasted a bit longer than one second and been used for more than just one Ant's Ex Machina twist. You say that yep. like it's not the most important thing that happens in the movie, though. Like, it is, well, use well, it for more than yeah, this. It, it's like, this is the, uh, this is the thing. It is the most consequential thing because, like, it, 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 they win the battle. They would have lost if not the ants. It's like you said in the video, the ants are the only thing that mattered in that final battle. Yeah, to the point where she, if she hadn't called them in and if Ant Man had waited, they could have just let the ants do everything. Exactly. But, wouldn't would have lost been... so many soldiers. Nope, that's right. They wouldn't have been vaporized in order to let Cassie escape. <laughs> Apparently, they passed through some sort of time dilation. They live thousands of years in a single is day. That, uh, is that the Banjo Kazooie like sound effect there? I heard well, it sure. from a game. Might be. It's effect. familiar to me, definitely. Yeah. I don't like I don't it. Know, it's, I'm, yeah, I don't know. Oh, oh wait, no, like a, it sounds like a that bee tail, that's trapped in a bottle. Yeah, that, oh yeah, that was under the tail. Was under the tail. Yeah. Sands? I think it's yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, is that Sands from Undertale? Yes, yeah, I think so. it might be. Oh my God! It sounds from Undertale. Stealing scene where Scott dives into the villain's blown-up engine to shrink it down. Now, yes, there are some nonsensical derogatory aspects here as well. Why does Scott oh, yeah. have derogatory to shrink down Derogatory is probably not the right that's... word, but derogatory. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nonsensical for sure, though. That's consistent with his character. The, the scene itself is derogatory. <laughs> you know, it's like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm trying to think of what word he meant to say. But okay. I think he's just saying that shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, there are shit aspects of this scene. So why yeah. do you say derogatory? I don't know. Because he, he's English is very difficult. That sounds like a negative word. Think. Yeah, he's, that he's implies good. negative emotions or something. He's bobbing into it up. the villain's blown-up engine to shrink it down. Now, yes, there are some nonsensical derogatory aspects here as well. Yeah, see, why I think he's just saying it sucks. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, nonsensical yeah. would have covered that. Why? Just why did you choose the word derogatory? No, you've got to throw in another word. You've okay. got to have two or three words to describe it. One's not good enough. Nonsensical down to an engine that's been yeah. made massive, and what's with the arbitrary cloning stuff? Fair enough. But that aside, this scene is still, if not the best, then at least the most deserving scene. No, it's the best, most deserving scene. It might be the worst one. What does he, what does he mean, worst. most deserving scene? What is he saying? I don't know what most deserving means. But my God, this might be the worst scene in the film. 
I think he means most deserving of like being called an Ant Man movie. Like, what the it, probability it storm? Is it is it because everybody. of the part with the ants where he controls them all to make the ants together? Pile? Yeah, maybe. I so. yeah. We, it's we, an Ant Man scene we, that can we, happen we, only we, in an Ant Man movie. Uh, um, it can only happen in an Ant Man movie. Well, well no, because, because this has nothing to do with Ant Man himself. It, we we're outside of the bounds of logic. You could give this and remember, to anyone, and it wouldn't they, make any more. Ant Man failed. It didn't work. Wasp flying was the what succeeded. Yeah, Iron Man could have done that. He could have flown up. Accounts because the Wasp is part of Ant Man's franchise. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. This is this scene is this. this what do you, what do you reckon? It what what would be the a worse scene than this in this film? This is probably the worst one. Oh, this yeah. is probably the worst scene. It's fucking and, bad shit. And, and, I just yeah, I hate it's... his entire thesis here that like the only way this is a you can have good scenes in this movie is if they couldn't have happened in any of to any other character in any other movie. Like if, if the whole movie was just a character drama that happened on Earth with Scott and his family, and there were no shrinking scenes at all, you could still do really interesting things. I just don't buy this idea that like, well, all this like the whole movie needs to only work if it's Ant Man or else it's not an Ant Man movie. It's just so stupid. Yeah, no, nobody buys yes. into that. He he doesn't. Well, They're, he's definitely contradicted this in another video for sure. What are his Probably. rules on making an ensemble movie? <laughs> well, yeah. And you know what? Forget I asked. I think um, if he was to make the argument that the part where he controls all of them with the ant tech is why it's an Ant Man only uh, scene, I would just that be like, was horrifying. I was about to say, that's fucked up. Mind controlling all the other Scots. <laughs> and it didn't work! True. Basically, once Scott gets a grip on his sanity, oh, he man. and his clones oh, start that, to pile so up bad. and work together mm. to get up to the <laughs> engine to save. Yep, he's literally praising it for that. Good job. So it is not. Wow. It's the worst Scott's thing daughter. Possible, As in, but... Scott and his clones are functioning I'm like... very distracted exactly. by the... Uh, like the... Yeah, yeah I know. Work. It's genius, isn't it? I know, it's brilliant, yeah. Now, maybe I'm hyping this up a bit too much. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you are hyping it up. That is an understatement. But the point is that this... Any hyping of this scene is too much. ...is a scene you <laughs> yes. want to look for in your movie. Instead of... No, oh, God. If this scene is no. in my movie, God. I've failed. My past I self forgot. He's trying to me. convince people that this is how you should make a film. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, this is all underneath the umbrella of... His original point was this is a cash grab. So I think he's oh. forgotten that as well, but <laughs> it's somehow I remembered it. Building whatever generic scenes that any movie could do, use the specialty of your movie to do things that no one other than you can do. Use the specialty of your movie. Yeah, it's no, it's <laughs> like the, the quality of being special. I don't think that that's not specialty. What he wants that's to not... say is as simple as... Make sure an Ant Man movies. Or uniqueness. Ant Man is the needed for his Ant Man stuff. Didn't you already say the yes. problem was that it's Scott not being needed for his Scott stuff? Yes. Uh -huh. You see, Iron Man could have been sucked down there, and Iron Man could have still blowed up Kang. It's just stupid. You need to, you need to be yeah, shrinky. Well, mm -hmm. It's funny that we say this is because sure. there's another thing about the MCU that's inevitable. You can't keep Ant-Man's tech to him, uh, especially with how the Pims want to spread it to the whole world. I'm sorry. Especially when you have so many fucking ant people in the family. It's, it's just not an Ant-Man only power at this point. They shrink and grow their cars and houses. Mm -hmm. Why the wouldn't the Iron Man of the world have a shrinker as well? I don't, I don't know why not. Fuck it. Everybody should have everything at this point. It would suck. I'll give you <laughs> but I mean, it sucks anyway, so whatever. The only way an Ant-Man movie isn't a cash grab is if it's actually built with the fact that it's an Ant-Man movie. You've I mean, it, would that. Still be, it could still be no. a cash grab, such a, even if it was... Yeah, yeah that's such terrible an logic. An no in every way. It's terrible. It's terrible. I want right? to make a movie. Make it an Ant-Man movie. Make him go big. Make him go small. Make him fight with salt shakers. Do it. He goes inside of a toaster. They have a toaster battle. Do it. Quick. Me. And then, like, what if it was the Ant Man equivalent of the Force Awakens, where it's just spamming the ant imagery at you? <laughs> you know, the or the opposite. Away shrink. Like they, they find some like indie oh, movie oh, dude. director who wants to do like a character drama, and they're like, "This probably won't make any money, but like, oh, they have a really good idea or something like that." So they do some sort tiny. of very grounded story, mostly people talking in rooms. There's no shrinking involved at all. A lot of people might not be into that. 
but like you could do that with these characters. You mm -hmm. could. <sighs> Make them go tiny, but not too tiny. We got to save some room for the sequel. Meh. I'm just blown away by the fact think... that it's like a cash grab right up until you have something to do with Ant-Man and the Ant-Man movies. Like that's the boff, the cash grab. <laughs> that would that would mean that the emoji like the movie, of a cash grab. The emoji movie is not a cash grab by his definition. That's true. <laughs> this is what I mean though. The line thing, 2019 is not a cash grab because it I, has I, lines I, in it. If it was definitively I can't believe provable. You poked a massive hole in his argument with two seconds of thought. That's incredible. <laughs> I would never, never have imagined this from a filmento thesis. That's unbelievable. If it was definitively proven that T2 and Aliens are both cash grabs, we're like, I don't give a shit. They're great. They were good, though. Yeah, that's the thing. It's so weird to, if, to focus all of this around all the this. Movies, what he wants to say yeah, the is that Quantum Mania was shit. They're good, but he has to like yeah. he has to have something profound to say. It has to be go. It has to go further than that. It's like, can't just be bad. No. That's, that's something I talked about at the end of my Quantum Mania video. It's like it's just bad, man. Just bad writing. It's so mundane and lame, isn't it? That it's just bad. It's just shitty writing from shitty writers. Because he has to prove, guys, that he has an insider that sabotaged this fucking thing for money, right? Oh, yeah, we're still, we're still got that. waiting. Yeah. Still waiting. Any yeah. moment, any second, he's going to tell us God. who it is. God. Apparently, I'm on fucking yeah. dial up. Look at the way he's loading this meme. <laughs> what is this? Why is this happening? Like, <laughs> it's, 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 what the fuck? <laughs> Take your time there, Internet. Knows. Jesus. There yeah, you go. sound fine. It's, it must be a Discord issue because you sound just fine. I guess so. That's about Today has not been the day for technically sound production. All about Kang. Oh, so this is going to be All about, about how the Kang. movie's bad because it focuses too hard on Kang and setting him up. Go ahead, oh, tell boy. me about how this movie makes Kang look good. Yes, <laughs> all about Kang. Thirdly, the reason Quantumania is a cash grab is because it shamelessly uses Ant-Man's value to generate value for something that isn't- Why does it make it a cash grab? Why, why does it make it a cash grab? And what's wrong with having a good villain? Well, well I mean, what, what's wrong with building a villain in inside one of the movies? Yeah, you could totally do that. Thanos is yeah, built up in I, other they, movies cool idea partially right. before he comes up in mm -hmm. Infinity War. Well, I mean, Loki's built up in Thor before he shows up in Avengers. So weird that, and and then just to be instead of being like a sign of the movie being shitty is that you know time is taken away from the hero in order to build up a villain for another film. That's an argument of some kind. But to then say and that's evidence of it being a cash grab. It's high praise, Mahler. <laughs> oh, I mean, if they manage to pull that off. Ant Man, like I already mentioned, <laughs> Scott Lang has no purpose or agency here. And you were wrong about both of those, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he gets maybe if you just say it, it'll be true, man. Someone else and know. taken prisoner by someone else and brought to the villain by. And you didn't mention the part where he goes fucking ham on the buildings at the end of the movie. You keep ignoring that part. Yeah. Why are you doing that? No, he filmy? had a clip for it. Actually, he did. Come on, so, film. Yeah. Kind of... You got to acknowledge <laughs> the big agency <laughs> there. Oh my god, you're getting big mad. Who? <laughs> You're, you're molding. You. Yeah. you. I am? Molder what did I do? Are you? Yeah. You, you, were, you were saying, fill me, you know? Why, why aren't you showing the big ant man? Well, your that's, name is Fringy. Sounds... Does that make me angry when yeah. I say your name? <laughs> His name is Nevis Fulmento. Yeah, you're frolling. I can call him fill me. What's wrong with that? Have you? <laughs> I'm just Should saying. we call it's, you it's Molder just, now? It seems a bit angry. Oh. You have me you call, call you me... bad, but, you know. You I didn't rag, mean dude. to upset you, Fringy. I'm sorry. You didn't upset me. From now on. Call me Raggy Poo. I'm Raggy upset Poo. that you're upset. We can all be bold together. Raggy Poo. <laughs> we can all be bold together. Now I'm just imagining a bunch of bold people like joining hands in song. I am, I am become bold. <laughs> Someone else and then used by the villain. He's a plastic bag in the wind. He Stop saying that. What? He's a plastic <laughs> he's, bag he was in a the stick wind. in the water, now he's a bag in the wind. He's a plastic bag in the wind. He's not in the driver's seat he's doing stuff so much as he gets driven along to react to... Except when he doesn't. Yeah, but we don't talk about those parts. Choices. But he he even this, even this is not a good argument for what a cash grab is, because if that's yep. true, then then Fury Road, where Mad Max has absolutely no agency yeah, for the first half of it, is a terrible well, fucking Can we just film. say Big Lebowski is apparently the with, biggest cash grab in history, then? Your film is with passive characters. Are they... Are they uh, cash grabs necessarily because the character isn't driving the plot. Immediately. Immediately. Yeah, 100%. Like, easier opinion, man. <laughs> oh, no. 
weird stuff. I am Peb. You just drank me. <laughs> Look at him. What? Without Yay. any real sense of yeah, where he I'm is, or even what's going on. Most <laughs> Without any real sense of where he is or what's going on, is that another requirement for cash grab? Lee, this I mean, whole this, movie again, seems this is to bad be... writing that we don't know where he is. Well, were you talking about the film really or the it. video? Yes. <laughs> no. It can be both. <laughs> Because yes. you understand, like, th this video is a complete mess because he's like, conclusion, yes. Quantumania bad. Why? Cash grab. All right, so every single mm -hmm. thing I spot that's of interest means it's a cash grab. Mm. Michelle Pfeiffer's in this film. Cash grab. Cash grab. Be about something or someone else. There are these constant ominous references to someone with the mom freaking yeah, out Yeah, the villain of the, the film. <laughs> what time is cash grab? <laughs> cash grab. Oh, my God. A lot oh, of this man. hinges on the meta, doesn't it? Because if you didn't know that Kang was going to show up anymore, you were coming into this. You just have no... You, you'd have no awareness of this as a problem, mm -hmm. potentially. Something I should have told you. And with multiple characters talking about, quote-unquote, him. He will burn the world to find you. you didn't Dude, I hate that line so much. Yeah. I, it's just no, so lame. Burn the world to find you. Is he out? Yeah, so... What a, when she says world, what even in her mind does she think of? <laughs> yeah, but like what is like when I think of world, I'm like, oh, planet. Well, and, yeah. and remember, yeah. Rags, this is after she's the sun, but... confirmed definitively that there's a world above or around her own, but she doesn't care. Yeah, no, nope. doesn't matter. Do you love the idea that if aliens landed, we poke like with sharp sticks at them and said, "Are you spies?" And then we find out they're not, and then we lose interest in them. That'd just be crazy, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be crazy. So quickly, it becomes clear that Ant-Man is playing second fiddle to the new big bad of the MCU. You you have what? a lot of second explaining to, to do. Are you, insane? <laughs> you have a lot of arguments to make. Good luck, sir. Kang. We learn about Kang's backstory yeah. of being exiled and trapped. Like we do with many villains in films. Yep. Kang's motivations of dimensional domination. I mean, Motivation I for your like villain, to yeah. He... I would like to know what his motivations are, yes. I feel like that's pretty straightforward, too. Kang's actions of pushing the plot by yeah, pushing yeah, others, man. pretty much... Uh, what, like like the villains of the other Ant-Man films? Well, like, everything we Obadiah does in Iron Man pushes Iron Man. Yeah. I mean, oh, isn't that yeah. a good thing when the villain is, like, actually having an impact on the plot and the main character? I I'm sure you so, would have made yeah. a video talking about how that's a good thing. Yeah, which it is. film perfection, yeah. how to make an effective <laughs> yeah. villain. And he's going to talk about how the yeah. agency of the hero is affected by the villain's interests and push and pull on the mm -hmm. plot. Not here, though. Everything here revolves around Kang. What? No. That's not true. Okay, okay. This is a post credit but scene. But is it bad if all of the events is of a film a revolve grab? around a villain's interests? It's a cash grab because of that. Like we, we just watched War. The Black Cauldron. <laughs> Doesn't everything revolve around the Horned King's interest in The Black Cauldron, huh? Mm. Eh? <laughs> also, yes, Infinity War would Harry. be the more relevant example. That's probably fair. Yeah. <laughs> I think for me, it's right here, though. It, it's not a question character. of whether or not it's bad film because it... It's a, you know revolves around them. It's a question of whether or not it's a cash grab. Yep, because exactly. That's the premise so, no, of this Fringy, video. Fringy's absolutely right. Because yeah, of course it's a bad film, and you know, but is it bad? Be or is it a cash grab? It, very specific. Mm -hmm. And oh, I think that yeah. he has not shown in any way that it is. And his argument here in this part, his part three, is that it's a cash grab because it revolves around the bad guy, which that's isn't a, even that's a fucking famous... stupid. It's a like, famous again, common it, element of cash grabs is that they revolve around the villain. Infinity War yes. way more revolves around Thanos. Like Thanos is arguably He's the controlling main everything. Yeah, film. everyone's I think, I think reacting he gets to the him. Most screen time. He gets a huge amount of development uh, in that film. What is, um, like the pivotal scenes are all around him. They talk about yes. him constantly. Thanos yes. is coming. Oh, you know him. Like he, he's coming, and he's gonna cause trouble. Oh, yeah, chat just highlighted it. Empire Strikes Back. It's the oh, Empire no. after the Rebels, Vader after Luke. That's what's happening in the whole film. It's yep. re reacting and escaping mm -hmm. from the good, the bad guys. So, does that make it a cash grab? <laughs> the funny thing yeah, is, yeah. This it probably is. was a cash grab. They probably were like, "Let's make some fucking money." Star Wars and is they huge. Wanted to make a lot of money with uh, with yeah, with uh, Infinity War. You know that was of planned course. out ahead of time. Before there was a clear idea of what that plot was going to be, and they wanted to make a lot of money, and they succeeded. God, oh, this is so stupid. Mm -hmm. 
which you know this scene was so bad stupid. idea you want to build up your new villain yeah but yeah. the problem yes. is that it's done by someone else's movie which just ends up ruining but what is the villain movie. isn't if the Where villain we... isn't the, the main character of the film it's always going to be developed in relation to the hero in someone yeah. else's story well, yeah, I mean, the Iron Loki Man example too. would come up. He was developed fully in Thor's movie. Mm -hmm. Where else would the villain fucking appear? In right? his own movie, called Villain. Yeah. In his own movie, needs... called The Villain. Well, let's rewind. Movie. We have to have a Thanos movie before we have Infinity yep. War and all that stuff. We, this have, is, we have to have this that movie. This is remarkable. Why did he say this? I don't what know. Is, what is no, they end up saying no, crazy no, things no. to try and advise people. And it's like, stop, this is terrible advice. <laughs> Or it's Someone's going to follow his, his advice and I'm going to be sad. Why would you say this? This, I, I don't know. He Both just sides. like a thought Ant Man is ruined it. because in his own movie, he's reduced to being a passive vessel. No, he's not. You keep passive. saying no, that. He's not passive. He's, he's not passive. passive. He is active in this film. You, I find that. this annoying because, he, as you pointed out, he's used the visual, the big visual of, look, I'm the biggest Ant Man ever uh, and I'm going to beat you up. And then he starts beating everyone up. That's a thing he does. Well, he wasn't I mean, forced you know, to do that. Obviously, the film got uh, obviously chopped up a lot in the uh, the editing. But I mean, the ending was definitely meant to be that Ant Man was going to sacrifice himself to trap Kang in the quantum realm. That's yeah, how's a that for That's agency a pushing Cassie through the portal and fighting and Kang himself? Exactly. In the film that we yeah, got, he's still making that choice. Film <laughs> Kang, so it would have made it a catch. Uh, yeah. This thing mostly for someone else. Like, why do you call it Ant Man Quantumania and put him in the center if he's not the center? If he, he is, he is, the center. He is. Kang is not the center. He gets You're the most screen time. His what? main character. It this... begins and ends with him in the yeah. uh, of the normal world. Well, it well and he learns Kang his lesson. He learns that helping yeah. people is good. I, yeah, I guess technically. Yeah. Maybe. What? What is this fucking art? Oh my. My brain is becoming dumb. What the fuck is happening? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm kind of yeah. <laughs> like what? Well, he wants a Kang centric film. No, he's saying it is Kang centric. He's saying it, it is Kang centric, and that makes it a cash grab. Don't it's, you understand? Yes, yeah, no. Don't you understand? Oh, well, it's, yeah, I don't, because it's not Kang centric. Oh my, understand. yeah. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> This is what you is the over to be. Oh, yeah, because you're using this property to advance something totally else. They do that all the time. Something it's fine. Totally wait, wait, Every Bond wait. film. Every wait. Bond film ever. I mean, the vast majority of all villains are yeah. going to fall under this category. Like, the vast. Can you believe they fucking majority. developed Veda in Luke's film? In Insane. Luke's film? Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be like grab. upper, like, probably yeah, but... like 97 plus percent, not, if yeah. not more. Yeah, Probably Baller more. or Fringy? Did you say Loki earlier? Yeah, Somebody that's, said uh, Loki, I right? meant they said that Fringy bringing that one up is kind of perfect because it's super yeah. early on, and Loki went on to be the villain in Avengers. In Avengers, which they knew, they knew that that was going to be the case. They were developing him in Loki to be the the villain in Avengers, so it's the same. He, the, the only argument you make is well, Loki is more directly connected to Thor, but I mean, still, it's building him up for a subsequent appearance. So by his logic, then those movies are bad. Am I understanding what he's saying correctly? Well, no, not that they're bad, but it's a cash grab. It's a cash uh, grab, yeah. So but by his logic, like, grab, nothing yeah. makes sense. By his yeah. logic, it's all just fucking nonsense. Can you believe they developed Magneto in the X-Men's film? Right, Magneto, perfect cash example. Grab. Well, it's just basically the majority of villains. Most films are about the protagonist, not the villain. I mean, some of them focus a lot on the villain. Silence of the Lambs focuses on, on Hannibal Lecter so much, right? And uh, Clarice is basically not in it. But she's clearly the hero of the film. So by this argument, Silence of the Lambs is just cash another grab. cash grab. Yeah. <laughs> and on the other hand, Kang is ruined because the movie doesn't go all the way and actually put him in the center either. As oh, I'm sure... wait! You're not allowed to <laughs> say that! You don't get to funny. do that! Oh, He's the center no. of attention, but the film doesn't go all the way in making him the center of attention. How does this, Come on. Do how does this clarify how to write? You're not allowed to do this! <laughs> does Help this me. Sucks. Wait, this... uh, he also Help has me, a boy. book on writing? Yes. yes, I'm saying this whole channel is this whole channel Help based me. on writing advice. It's about writing, and specifically, we'll break down this so you know how to do it better. That's oh like the premise of these God. videos. By the way, <laughs> let me see the light not, again. Not trying to be too much of a dick to him because everybody has their way of approaching everything. But I have a feeling that he decided early on, I'm not just going to review films. I got to make it sound more important than that. 
it's got to be like, no, this Maybe. is a grand lesson to take away from this film, be mm -hmm. it a failure or a success. Because every film fits into failure or success every time. Which is what really is awkward. With... Like, they Have don't. It's this? not a binary. It's not like success or failure, you know? You can succeed and fail in a variety of different ways, and it depends on what the objectives were of the creators, too. We see yeah, this so right. happen a lot. A lot of people that we cover on EFAP, these, you know, YouTubers and stuff, they are channels about giving writing advice and teaching us how to write and tell stories. And they're all just, they suck <laughs> so bad. And they give this, this bizarre, just strange yeah, advice this, that makes uh, no sense. This is not helpful. Um, this <laughs> like, is anti-helpful. You know, compared well, he to just, the He just gave advice that goes advice against like, the majority of storytelling. Yeah, but he and it's it goes unrecognized. Like he doesn't realize that that's what he's done. Like again, you as much as we talk about how it doesn't give you everything, the standard you know three act structure, hero's journey, character should grow. Like this is th that's way more useful to you as like basic, standard, generally useful writing advice compared to these crazy like rules that are being like invented in real time. I don't see how this could help you. I feel like this is only going to make things... Like, if you if you actually took every single piece of writing advice, you, you'd end up with so much contradictory, conflicting, like, uh, advice. Well, on like, yeah, you then. couldn't follow his rules because they would be contradictory what? and too confusing. You just... He is... I would say that he's indistinguishable from, like, AI-generated writing tips, but I think he'd be I, worse. Uh, no, I kept thinking it, too. I kept thinking it. The things he's saying, it sounds like he put it in a chat GPT, and then he was like, make this sound smarter, and that's it. Yeah, uh, le yeah. I'll put this in a chat GPT, and then I'll narrate it horribly, and then I'll <laughs> get some visuals, and that'll be my video. And I'll call yeah. it writing advice saying, because I'm a fucking charlatan. You saying his video is a cash grab? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my, well, oh my well, God. He is, well, he is the villain of his video. So, the thing is, anyway. is that this particular piece of advice is so extraordinarily bad that I like, uh, because the idea here then is that your villain should be paper thin and completely undeveloped. That's what he's arguing for, because if your 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 villain isn't completely undeveloped, then he should have his yeah. own goddamn film. The moment what kind it of has bullshit? the the moment it, it it catches the tiniest whiff of development, then you're undermining the hero's presence, and that makes it also, a cash grab, and you suck balls. Yeah, if we talk about like giving writing advice. How many people who'd be watching this who have like ambitions of writing are going to be in a position where they're going to be writing the thirty first century and like a big long running franchise and need to understand the nature of how to avoid <laughs> writing a cash grab film? Like it's so hyper specific <laughs> that most people yeah, are never going to have to deal with. Like the average person who'd be watching these videos would need like writing advice on how to write their first standalone story with their own characters you know Basic what i mean like it's stories it's, yeah and you start yeah, off with exactly. short stories and just write yep. a couple pages stories. describing things learn how to mm -hmm. this is like you're learning how to write not even like tell stories but how do you write how do you, how do you convey information convey in a way ideas that, yep. through text yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. Uh, it'd style. be like grammar, like formatting, basic things like that. Like before we oh, start, yeah, I mean, before we start writing our own little Lord of the Rings here, little Tolkien, aren't you? You know, here's how you write. Here's how you, you know, spell and format things basically, and here's how you describe. Uh, yeah, but that's and, that's boring, rags. Yeah, that's boring shit. I'm yeah, gonna. Though, uh, we're gonna talk about the next Marvel movie. Even and, though it's you know, super essential, you know. Yep. You gotta work on the foundation. Elements of style. Like super this, useful just book. the way. The way that he narrates, right? Like, he is really shit. And I feel like if you're going to be a writer, if you're going to be someone who puts, you know, thoughts to texts and conveys concepts, that you would you just be better at the basic elements of a video, you know? Well, I mean, English like, is clearly a second language, so he's getting there, maybe. I don't know. Like, maybe. A specialty doesn't mean the, having the quality of being special. Like, how could you... <laughs> how could... Like, why... How could you say that? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Yeah. Um, also, I just find it funny. We're going back to this video being a cash grab. He does have a a villain in this um in this uh, video oh, okay. that's both yeah. um the focus, but also not the focus at the same time. This Warner insider. Brothers saboteur. Yeah. yeah. This what are we gonna find out about? To be honest with you, that's that's the main main hook left of this video now because. 
the Kang <laughs> stuff is shit as well. Yeah, but using this property yeah. to advance something totally else. And on the other hand, totally Kang something is totally to else. <laughs> something totally else. Leave him else. alone, Rex. This, Leave him this alone. man writes books. He writes, Leave he, he him writes alone. books. And he sells them for He's money. He's already dead. It, they're not something even just writing totally books. Something totally else. It's not just writing books. It's writing books about and writing. Selling them. Yeah. About writing. It's writing about books writing. about writing and selling them for money. He charges yeah. money for his books what was about the, writing. What was the tonalism for like some more big or something? More bigger or, or... Um, chat help me out. What was it? More he, something. Uh, like is it huge bigger or was it like more... <laughs> it was something uh... like that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was something. Yeah, chat help me help me out. Pop here. quiz chat. Huge more. I, it's huge more. Thank a huge you. more amount. Yes, that's huge it. More, oh, yeah, more. Huge, more <laughs> huge more. I love What's it. What's the right more. Huge, more. <laughs> huge more. It sounds like something <laughs> Oba would say. Take thy big from off thy heart, and take thy form from off thy door, huge boy. He doesn't go all the way and actually put him in the center either. Aside from short backstory moments, we don't even meet him in person until much later on. I'm so fucking confused by you. But, <laughs> like, at but, least but, the whole problem was Zeus in the center, but, but now he's not really... <laughs> Guys, this is an alien? He's at the center, but he's not at the center enough because we only get a few moments here and there. Also, you know... It genuinely came across a as, hero. um... Ant-Man movie, he needs to be in the center instead, Kang is. But if you really want Kang in the center, you should have done it this way. It's like, wh uh, what? What? <laughs> have, him, have him shown up sooner? Why? From Apolline. Yeah. <sighs> if, even then, you know, the, from... the Lord of the Rings, like the, the trilogy, it would have worked without neat. the intro. It would have been, if you took out the intro, right? Which you should never do, because it's great. But it would have worked without it. And then you could have had the Sauron reveal like later or mm -hmm. um like even in andor right you don't really get the reveal of the empire being a thing until like not even in the first three episodes really they're just sort of spoken about you know you don't have to have a quick reveal of your villain they could they could show oh, we up get a later. scene with uh wait oh do, oh do we get the scene with the uh the the bureau the uh is that in episode four I uh, I don't think the Empire really gets involved in the story until yeah you might be right four. about that yeah yeah, yeah because it's I just think the so. private it's the security force that's right that's, uh, that's involved right. Yeah. in yeah really yeah. low level the Empire at the is just talked about and referred to you know. I just got a notification by the way on the Batwoman episode top comment I seriously thought this series was dead it's like Dad going out to buy milk and actually coming back it's incredible. <laughs> 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 He he's like, I got like my Robin milk. <laughs> what, what year oh, is I, it? I had a flat tie, you know, like it's, it happens, but I sorted it out. Anyway, that needs, to be on our, that needs to be on our list of movies to watch is Jumanji. Because I watched sure, it as yeah. a kid and I'm curious. I haven't seen Jumanji in a long time. So uh, I no. That. Yeah. Outside in, we get a sense of his history and intention, sure, but never through his eyes. Apparently, he was uh, exiled for being. I'm so yeah. fucking confused. Is that good or bad? <laughs> What? I don't know what? anymore. Yeah, his and then is why is it good yeah, or bad if it's good or bad? Ex yes, exactly. Tell me if it's good or bad. Tell me why it's good or bad. It's yeah. important that you tell me why something is good or yeah. why something is bad if you're giving advice. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just... It, no, we make it simple. We just go, that doesn't make copy. sense. There you go. Yeah, I Someone need to know why I'm doing GPT. something. Not just trying to copy something without understanding what I'm trying to copy because... We've seen that recently, and that doesn't work out it's well. It's a cash grab all the way down. ...a bad guy, but we don't really get to see why. Apparently, he wants to destroy timelines to stop something bad. He does say why. God damn he it. say why. How do you make me do this? It's so horrible. <laughs> he, yeah, why, this, why? Very, this very Mahler, scene, defend it. he says, oh versions of me are like children when it comes to handling time, and they're going to fuck everything up. I got to stop them. Janet says... So really, you're doing this because you want to fuck him up for revenge? And then he's like, yeah, kind of. Fuck him. And then she's like, yeah, well, you're going to kill a bunch of people in, in, in the middle of all that. And he's like, I don't care. That's what the film did. It's shit. Very shit. Should have been way better. But that doesn't mean we don't have a motive or we don't understand what he's doing. It's just crap. There is a motive. It's just crap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> May I nitpick? May I nitpick for a second? No. Sure, he got no. the title yeah. of the movie it's wrong in the title anywhere. of his video. Oh, Ant Man Quantumania. Yeah, it's Ant Man. Yeah. Do you know why I think Maybe he did that? It was because, yeah, he probably felt long. it was too long and it, it makes the thing clunky. Oh, it might actually be too long. It might be longer than the uh, the I title think... like, limit. It may very well be. You might be right, yeah. Now. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because he has to put his anatomy of a failure in there. Ant. Right. Yeah, because he <laughs> would have to do Ant Man and the Wasp. Why wouldn't you just call it, it a cinematic cash grab anatomy of failure? It's like, what, you need the how to build? A well, I mean, I mean to be fair, you know, the Wasp is like, she's barely a part of this film. Yeah. So it could be understandable. He actually was just thinking, yeah, Ant Man Quantumania. What do you mean, Ant Man and the Wasp Quantumania? You could have just. He didn't I'm even Matt have to w. have the, the, the Ant Man. Oh, yeah, but that's, that's, the the title. Title, no. that's definitely, you need that for yeah, algor I guess. algorithm. Yeah. Could have called it Ant Man really get... 3, Cash Grab Failure. He could have called it Ant Man <laughs> Anatomy of a but Quantum. He, he need that Quantumania. Yeah, I guess the, of, I think the, yeah. Quantum of a Failure. Except to see <laughs> what? Quando, he never quando. grows beyond the shallow, ominous references surrounding him. I he never grows beyond the shallow, ominous oh, references. I like about to play the clip where he does explain it's... his motives. Oh, he's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> references of him, it's him. Oh, oh he's going to play yeah, them all right. over each other to make playing. it seem like it's not coherent. It is, it's just thin, yeah, boring. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. right. This is his motive rant, isn't it? Yeah, he's, yeah. he's yeah. He basically says, like, I want to kill all the people who fuck me up. I hate them. And I'm going to yeah. kill a bunch of people yeah. in the process. It sucks. Yeah. It's the... Yeah, it's just like it's just like so many Marvel villains. They're so happy to just make them murderous psychopaths, and that's it. Time, you have no idea what I have lost. We don't care. Let me tell you. We don't care. The result of which okay. is um, no. It's, it's kind of funny though. No, I mean I kind of agree. I don't care. Like yeah, bit, yeah. nobody really cares about his motive because it was so yeah, shit. Yeah. This Why do we not care? Point we is care that he does Owen. have the motive. Yes, yeah, I yes. Agree, <laughs> I agree. I agree. Uh, like no. he's 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 immediate. <sighs> yeah. It's not Dunbelu. Are you anime yeah, noising? It's not convoluted, <laughs> and it's very simple. But there is a motive. Yeah. It's there, yeah, and he's exactly. even saying, "I don't even care about your motive." But it's fucking there. Yeah, but yeah. he doesn't yeah. care, about, care it. about it. Yeah, yeah, that's but, different. But it's, than... If you don't care about it, it doesn't exist. Yeah, but it's a cash grab, also. So. That's that's yeah. thematically Damn not it. very appropriate for it this got movie. Me. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's where right. The hero right, yeah. isn't allowed to be the hero, and where the villain is. You did not fucking establish you the hero not. isn't allowed to be the hero. You can't even make he, that argument. He does two of the biggest the hero things ever. He goes huge yeah. and takes on the entire like army, and he stays behind to fight him to the death. Exactly. He's he oh, saves. He saves Scott is very much a hero in this. It's just they fucked yep. up the characterization. How did, you, how did you not bring up? How do you watch this film and not think that's weird when he said? Cassie taught me that I could care about people or whatever. I didn't know that was like a red flag to you. That's too shallow to carry the load either, to the point of becoming yet another mandatory Scare blue marble CGI. Remember guys, it's a cash grab if you focus on the villain, even if you don't focus on the villain. It's a cash Our grab if you CGI. To end the universe, which may make him Multiverse. cool, but at this point, not much more. And to explain this further, I'll give no, you a Kang's successful cool. example on both sides. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck are we doing now? Oh. Okay. Oh. Even though the Joker in The Dark Knight steals the show, the movie... Don't you think that Batman huh? is basically trailing the Joker throughout The Dark Knight? And he's reacting to everything the Joker's doing? This is a cash <laughs> was, was that a cash yeah. grab thing? I don't know. He's always yeah. Batman's movie. Batman... Batman killed the fuck out of that driver, okay? <laughs> like, no, he yeah. didn't. No, he didn't. <laughs> He's fine. He didn't because Batman doesn't kill. Oh shit, you're right. He's doing things which prompts a situation leading to the Joker's rise. With word out, we hire the clown. Batman and his actions are always at the center. It's always anchored in what he thinks. I don't know that that's well, except true. For, except I don't all the scenes it's... where we watch Joker doing things. And, well, Batman's always Joker reacting to Joker. Robbery. I don't know that this counts. Yeah. I feel like this has the same qualifications. You're just making shit up as I you go think along. It... And in fact, I'm pretty sure that all the this is an argument works. that people make about The Dark Knight is that it's the Joker's movie more yeah, so than Batman. that's true. That's a perspective that's around. That's not a perspective. The only person who thinks that about Ant-Man is you. If anything, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is Modoc's movie, okay? He's the one right. that dragged them in there. He's the one that got all the things in place for Kang and Avengers Attack. The and he saved the multiverse, true. Uses. Whereas in Infinity War, even though it's an Avengers movie, Thanos is the central character. The movie begins yeah, the and I wonder if you came up with that or if you just took it from what everyone else said. Ends with mm. him. It shows scenes from his perspective in addition to him speaking about his perspective. It goes over. I mean, so it's a 
Ash grab. Well, but there are scenes where Kang is the POV. I was about to say, you get he? about the same or amount of Thanos be, as you do right? Kang. It's just better written in Infinity War. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, that's the thing. Infinity War has to balance a lot more characters. Mm. No, and also, I have a question, guys. So, everything so far, what he's saying is this is a cash grab. When did he <laughs> say then that this being a cash grab is bad? This uh, I think it's just baked into the premise. Yeah, it's like it, leaning and... onto gimmick as a word. It's got the negative connotation. Cash grabs are bad. Gimmick. He would is probably bad. look at you weird, uh, like all cash grabs bad, are bad. You know? yeah, yeah, what are you but... talking about, you fool? But <laughs> but every so there are a lot of movies based on his category that are cash grabs, so they're bad, right? He doesn't yes. realize how broad and sweeping his rules are. He doesn't yeah. know. He doesn't, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. Yes, that's just the know. That's the thing I would say. Does he know? And he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> he I'm just at the point where... are bad, yet I bet he would... Wait, I want to I find out about this. We've only got like a minute left for this yep. like, saboteur. Oh, God, you're right. Brothers. Hey, but... Okay, no. oh, but God, before that... Right. Yeah. It feels as though at this point you just take a movie you think is bad or like fails the box office, right? So what's like the newest thing that's failed? Let's just go with Indiana Jones. Uh, Fuck it. What's wrong with Indiana yeah. Jones? Like clearly, what's wrong with it is uh, there shouldn't bad be. Writing. I'm just like, well, not don't pick like an actual thing. Like pick a, a made up thing. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, oh, it's, it's like the cash grab. Because because the, the fact that this one, the fact that space is mentioned at all, video. space should never be mentioned in Indiana Jones content. Oh, yeah, just, just say and the, then and the, then he's the, like, the, if you check out the first Indiana Jones, there's no space mentions. Same for the second and third one. They mention space a bit in the fourth one, and that's considered bad. So clearly, my formula <laughs> is correct. <laughs> I've nailed it. Correlation equals causation. Yeah. It's just if we were to follow this video though, right? The problem with the Indiana Jones would be the fact that he doesn't spend enough time as Dr. Jones and instead is this weird Indiana who is not the same thing. <laughs> yeah. We call him Dr. Jones. <laughs> Meanwhile. And remember, that's Jones. the first 10 minutes of this. Well, yeah, because this is split into three parts. It's like the, the Scott's characterization is not relevant. Ant-Man's not relevant to this compared to like an Iron Man. And then the Kang is the center of the movie, but he's also not. Right. <laughs> and then all of it's a cash oh. grab. It's, it's, it's a fucking wild yeah. video. All in on the choices and sacrifices he has to make to get what he's after. I'm sorry, bro. Gonna be careful on the music there, you never yeah. know. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> the audience may not agree with Thanos, but they are brought into his head to yeah. view the world from the angle I do. he views it from. I mean, you can uh, you can make this argument for Kang. I just don't think it's... it. The problem is bad writing. It's not what you're talking about. And in this manner, you have to decide which way to go and go all the way. If you want this to be an Ant-Man movie, then keep Ant-Man at the center by making him cause things to happen and by... He really shouldn't have brought up the so Dark Knight because... Be active? Saying the Dark Knight well, was the hero movie is so fascinating with how much Joker is in that movie and how influential Joker yeah. is and how iconic. It's and, like, a lot mm -hmm. of scenes devoted to him. And you know what, going back to Mahler's point earlier... Ant Man was the one who jumped into the quantum portal to save yeah. everyone. So yeah, and, and so and this sentence, to save so this yeah, this sentence doesn't make sense already. Well, he's he's trying to construct yes, with, like we with, need to make it so he has a reason to go to quantum realm. It's like, oh, you mean like he does? But the, like like the movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's so this well, is so weird. Oh. Making it be about him instead of reducing him into a spectating role in his own movie. Or if he wants to do that. He said the best scene. What about you said that what did he say the best scene was? The quantum the probability clones. flame? The quantum probability matrix hole, whatever, and that's all him. It all is. Him, him and the wasp. <laughs> he said yeah, he says I I just don't it's it really it really is just like a, we only like have a, a really bad AI generated. Bring we have many like hours, kit. okay? <laughs> no, I'm Wait, saying so, we only so... have a minute for him to to talk yes, about the mole. Well, it, it, obviously he only needs a few seconds because he's going to say their name it's and then he's going to show the IMDb it? page and it's going to be amazing. So what? By actually... his logic, by his logic, Scott should be the one who jumps into the portal. Goes directly to Kang, saying, "I have, I have knowledge of your problem. I can Where's fucking Kang? fix it." And then, and then he fixes it, and that that makes this is so weird. Like, See, like the, there's there's the a problem, push and pull. In, I can in, describe like, the problem, right? Okay. I know what your issue is. Right? Yeah, yeah. You are you are saying the word logic when you say his logic without <laughs> including quotes around it. It is his quote logic. 
And that's the important part. You have to understand that his idea of logic in this video is not what we would describe as the uh, definitional idea. It's so weird. It's so like, did he, did he write this and go, what a great video. This is, he never read it. Script. He never read it till he put it on here. Oh my God. Go, you know, like you know how it. It, it, it's like those challenges where you have to draw something without looking at all your lines or you have to draw a picture without your, your, your pen ever leaving the paper. That's kind of like <laughs> what this is in terms of scripting. Yes. Yeah. But he never looked down and he just is like, that's fine. It's pro it probably and looks like a house. See him from inside out instead of reducing him to a set of references spouted out verbally. Because otherwise, it's quite clear that you're using what? this thing with inherent value to generate. It doesn't have inherent value. Shut up. But we're not going to get into it. It's not worth. It's not worthy of the discussion. Artificial value for something that may or may not have Artificial true value well, I thought, later on. I thought, what the like, fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> I, I mean, like, I, he's actually just saying words. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I feel like I'm, I, I feel like this is contradictory, but I'm not, I'm not very You're probably right. right. I'm a little gassed out on Filmento now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. It's almost I just want to shit. find out about the Warner Brothers guy. Yeah, let's find yes. out about the Warner Brothers guy. Oh, we no, no, promised. That you promised. Is a cash grab existing yeah, so you, that... you said that a lot. I don't agree, but that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Yada, yada. Yeah. Yeah. Want all the Filmento no, video no lessons books, in one no place? Books. The Filmento book? No, my Get my your brain. fucking book off the screen now, Molton, please! It's called Anatomy of Film Perfection. Oh, that, I just want to get to the Warner Brothers saboteur. Come on, we're getting there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do the thing. Can keep filling. Tell oh, me. Yeah, Here we go. Ooh. I promised to expose that yes. DC double agent pulling the strings at Marvel. Right. Mm -hmm. Then again, simply by using that topic, I got you watching this far. So oh, maybe you I'll talk about it more shit. in some other video Fuck later. You. On, if I've ever. For now, no! Wow, no! what a piece no! of shit. You're actually wow. just a fucking liar. Did he actually mock Browders? Oh, well, it got you watching this far, so I won't He mocked Browders. Again, we had two of these I in this anniversary? You. Are you kidding me? <laughs> We've been tricked twice. Yeah, made Mark a powerful Brown, enemy today. Mark Brown did it because he's incompetent. How you do this to us? He did it to Malice. <laughs> Why would you do this to us? Wait, wait. Is he gonna DLC the identity of the person? He's DLCing it, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Shock. He's just like, I'll tell you in a different video or something. How could you? Maybe. We didn't get to How know the secret you? of Mario's jump. We didn't get to find out when plot armor is good, actually. And we didn't get to find I out the Warner Brothers you. double agent. <laughs> I swear to God. What you is all of this? Along. We you all knew me up was... just to knock me down. <laughs> yeah, we love you. you can't, they can't keep crap. getting away with video. this. With your dumbass rules. With it. Your nonsense is, though, guidelines. What did you do? This... Sorry, <sighs> sorry, Rex. Where did you no, come fine. from? I was about to Where give him his fucking go? knife back, but you carry on. You go ahead. We all view knew this... he was lying. I love that he. View... It's it's that he was had the gall no, to be like, "Ha, ah, I... I tricked you." I thought he was gonna give a shitty answer, not that he'd say, "Lol, I'm not telling you." Bye. He fucking exactly. gave us his motive. He said it made you watch this video, so I'm gonna use it to make you watch something else. And again, that's the thing. Using that's the topic, my problem you... with this because imagine that's some watching slime. this as an actual viewer. You're a fan of this and he fucking does this to you. He slimed you. He does not Nickelodeon even slime. Yeah. Go. Yeah. No, Nickelodeon mm. slime is fun. Okay. Yeah, you can happens. still slime you. It's like if the slime was acid. <laughs> this isn't fun. Don't besmirch the good name of Nickelodeon slime. <laughs> I'll have you know that there are times where if I were Nickelodeon slimed, I would not find it fun. That's well, that's I... circumstance, not the slime itself. You can't blame the slime if someone misuses it. I'm saying he slimed you, which makes the sliming bad. The slime in general, you can do whatever. Yeah, but Nickelodeon slime is different. He Nickelodeon slimed it's, you. It's no slime And it was in a time that you did not want to be slimed, Rags, and that's why it's bad. Oh no! This changes everything. <laughs> Watching this far, so boy, that's right now. Yeah, maybe right now, I don't want to be Nickelodeon slime. What a if dick! Ever. For now, though, to make sure- He said, if, if ever. ever. Oh my god. You. Oh my yeah. god. We yeah, may never you. find out all three- Those are dumb. the three grand secrets of EFAP now. The Mario's jump plot armor in this thing. Ridiculous. Sure, you don't How get exposed. You do don't this? forget to check out I... private internet. Oh, no fucking oh. chilling. No. <laughs> Why? Why would I give you money? Why would I yeah. give you money after this Ooh. pile of shit? 
Boo. Fuck you. Get, get, the the you are oh, get a Get a job. Boo. Go back to the Boo. Fire Nation. You know, Someone Joe Mento is one of those people <laughs> who should be grateful he was born in the 21st century or whenever. Because man, oh, whenever. <laughs> Go back Jeez. to the womb. Go yes. back to the shadows. He'd be slaving away in a mine somewhere. He was born <laughs> a century ago. He'd suck yeah. at it. <laughs> now, since we were on the wonderful topic of Marvel, I feel it's easy to get into the topic of the death of sincerity in blockbusters. Oh hey, my that's God. Okay. Yeah, all right. Mm. Okay. 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 Wow. I'm yes, going okay. to pee. Oh, you look interesting. Um, I'm gonna I... be back. Uh, is this Dune Part Two? What is this? Well, I, I am also reason... going to pee and feed my cat. I'm kind of agree well, with that. You... I think the death of sincerity is a good, is it's. Uh, I'm 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 leaving now. Oh, very good. <laughs> that's what oh. that's what that means. The death of sincerity is the Word. equivalent of I'm leaving now in blockbusters. I'm going to bed. Oh, okay. That's what that means. I see. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks, well, thanks for, for jumping me. on, dude. Yeah, we appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, it was something. Which video was, was your favorite? Twice. It was bamboozled. Yeah, you got both bamboozlings. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, it was something. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks, so. thanks for joining Enjoy. us. Congratulations on five years. What's the gift for the five-year anniversary? Did you... Wood, I think. Wood? We all get wood. <laughs> no. I'm already there. Hey, man. Perfect. Congrats, and mm -hmm. enjoy the rest of the stream. Thank you. Well, thanks, goodbye, dudes. Goodbye. See you Boy. around. Boy. So that last video, man, right? Like, it's not like... <laughs> Not only did he move the goalposts so many times, it's like there wasn't a goalpost. And I'm not entirely sure there's a field. I think he knew as well. He knew what he was doing. He knew what he was up to. That he ending. did it all the same. Doing that at the end, just like, how can you make, <laughs> how can you make a video about cash graphs and then do that? Yeah. <laughs> like, there is no self-awareness. None. Zero. Well, but he he's he's a writer with integrity. He can tell when something is written without integrity, you see. Yeah, of course. Sure. Anyway, buy his thing. Yeah, buy, buy his him, book um, and his know. sponsor. And tune go... in next time, and maybe he'll give you your the industry secrets. Where is I'm gonna go get some available? booze? I need booze from in me. hell. <gasps> I'm gonna just check Filmento. Ilmental. Available in all shitty bookstores near you. Yeah, it's Is that the Amazon. fourth time we've covered him now? Remember the first time? Yeah, everyone was mad at us. That was for underwater. Yeah. Well, it happens a lot. The first time. Oh, this, that was, was the first back. time it was underwater? I think it was underwater. Yeah, because oh, there was all the comparisons. Yeah, he said it was an alien ripoff. Yeah. And then his whole video, he kept advising it how to be more like alien. <laughs> like, it's, just, it's just classic Filmento. The, an My interesting goodness. channel. I just don't get it. The guy's got like 800,000 subs. Well, the thing he just covers every single new movie that comes out and decides if it's a success or failure and then makes up okay. from what he gathers after one watch of why it was a success or failure and then just shoves it in. Tries to comb it all up into one solid bit of advice, like a lesson about filmmaking. Quote unquote print advice. Done. Right yeah. there. Oh, I uh... wish there was a way to get. Like, if you could have an AI take all of his videos and scripts and just, like, condense no it down way. into a paragraph, like, what would it say, you know? Why would you do that? I don't know. It. I I don't know why I would... Like, Oh, there's a two-star rating in Amazon about his book. I, oh, I, I no. Just know that high. Oh, that high. Puts into written form what is already on YouTube. Nothing new. Lots of typos. Less entertaining. <laughs> Oh, Would be no. more interesting if he did pre-production script doctoring rather than post-viewing critiques. Okay, but there are a lot of. I don't know stars. how you have typos in the modern age. The, you know, there's yeah. just no, there's no excuse as a writer to have typos in your book in yeah. 2023. You'd, there's, there's, you don't have an excuse. Maybe they're the there kind no that excuse. can like slip through correction things. Um, yeah. but I don't know. I guess I want to fucking May, read it like, for you. Maybe grammatical mistakes, sure, based on your style. Like when I type, 
I, I can, I'll, I'll use like maybe sentence fragments because the way that I type is to suppose it's supposed to reflect how one might speak. You know, that's pretty normal. But if you're like writing a book and you have typos, it's like, wow. what, what's your excuse? Did you not well, see the put squiggly out red line under your words? A book that advises on writing. You're going to want to get someone to check that before you publish, you know? Like, make sure. It's There's not a no book on editing, Mauler. Let's be clear. <laughs> it's a book on how good you are at writing. You better make sure you write okay in it, you know? Yeah, that, there it is. How much? How much is it? Ten bucks, Kindle. Um, ten bucks. It's a Kindle. It's not even scam. a physical version. Does it come in a hard I guess bag? that makes sense. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. We hope yeah, so. It's all, all right. Available uh, for <clears throat> it's just a Kindle. <clears throat> yeah, it's just a virtual release. Let us look at the death of sincerity, shall we? Alrighty. The death of sincerity. Well, that happened. The death of sincerity in block, but of and in oh, shouldn't be can I nitpick? But that's can fine. I, that's fine. Can I, can I nitpick? Absolutely. That's the first Haken chick. She's not in a blockbuster, though. So that that's just my nitpick. So. I guess a triple A game is kind of like blockbustery. It is insincere, sure. though. I agree with yeah. that. It's just that you 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 went two out of three. That that's my nitpick. So I like the fuck one here. Nitpick. Yeah. Oh no, this person has a video in defense of the last Jedi. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> that's okay. Oh, I, I was just, It's okay. That's fine. that's fine. I'm sure they've grown as a person since then. It's fine. They've been on an arc. They've gone. So on recently an arc. I was scrolling through Twitter and I came across this one tweet posting this clip from Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Alright. That's not it. your let's decision watch. to make, Ethan. Oh wait, Fringy's not here. Never mind. I, we gotta wait. Yeah. He's right oh, there. Fringy's back. Well Meme's not here. Meme isn't here. Um What's that? Oh, it, Meme said he's here. He's just muted. It's fine. Meme, I've just received special revelation from <laughs> God that Meme wants us to continue. I see. That's incredible. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. I am Thanks a field agent. That, God. I know uh, the risks. Carry More on. than that, I am your friend. We're gonna we're gonna do this the classic way of just playing three or four seconds and then pausing for. Wait, it's not. Amount. What is it doing? Mm -hmm. What are we? Have we? Has it started? Yeah. Has it not for anyone? Oh, else? oh maybe I, I have. Fresh, I have yeah, to I'm refreshing yeah. too. Let me refresh mine. Okay, I'll pull this back as well. Refreshing, refreshing. Being. So recently I was scrolling through Twitter and I. Is it working? Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. I, yes. I got it. Nice. Good. Sweater, Came across this one. That tweet is an interesting this sweater. From yeah. Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. That's not your decision to make, Ethan. Yeah, Ethan. I am a. Gonna have to be very careful, you see. I'm gonna go yeah, little, 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 and then, yeah. then we can play more of it. This is from Rogue yeah, this Nation. This was like the. This yeah, this is the scene, scene that we that said movie, we liked, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Field agent. I know the yeah. risks. It's more... the only time Benji gets to do yeah. something as a character. It's really and... a shame that he didn't get to have more than this. More than that, I am your friend. No matter what I tell the polygraph every week. Now, you called me yeah. because you needed my help. It's fucking I'm annoying to watch polygraph. Simon Pegg act. It's like, you don't get to do this anymore. He doesn't get many yeah. opportunities to act. It's a shame. He's, he's, yeah, really he's kind of like goofy guy, but he's, he's like, no, really he's good. good. Yeah. And you still do. Man's got so I am donuts. staying. Yeah. It's a perfectly serviceable dialogue scene, not exactly Shakespeare, but it gets the job done. I didn't see anything particularly egregious about it. And then I looked at the caption on the tweet, which just reads, What's with this Disney Channel ass dot? Oh, I recall this yeah, tweet. Yeah. That one got yeah. I recall this tweet. And then everyone was like, What the fuck is wrong with you? This yeah. is a good scene. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So me too. Wait, Mahler, you wanted me to watch. Didn't did you want me to watch this and then say, "Don't look at the comments. Just watch this scene." And yeah, because I wanted it. to was know this... if, if you in isolation yeah. thought there was something wrong with it. Because I didn't think there was. And I was like, "No, it seemed a okay to me." Yeah, I like it. Dialogue followed by three crying emojis. Now I don't know this random Twitter person, and I have absolutely no intention of starting a beef with them. But this just struck me as a really weird. What and yet here we are. Yet, right? I was thinking it. Hey, boy, I'm not going to start a beef with him. Of... I'm just going to make a video have... about it. He wants to what talk about the what? subject, okay? It's unfortunate, no, wait, but that's the vehicle. Has, how come he has these multiple copies of all these books? Look at the books. There's like so many copies. There's the three red ones on the shelf. And oh, then yeah. there's like the one, two, three, four, five. He has so many multiple copies of books. Is he like a well, bookseller? Or a book if they're really good writer, books, or... you want to make sure you have more than one just in case it gets damaged, right? Maybe if you reread a book, you have to do it with a different copy, right? Or it's like some sort of a copyright yeah, issue? Yeah, it's like superstition. Right? You'll activate a ghost or whatever. If you... 
Is he okay. a bookseller just, or are these strange. multiple series? Look, he has two drums, Rags. Two. Maybe. Yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> has, yeah, like, maybe. But if they're the same in the same series, then how come they're like split up, right? Like the two paradigm books. Maybe they're maybe. different volumes, but it's not written on the side for some reason. I'm not yeah, sure. Maybe. maybe. Yeah, it's, it it's just multiple copies of the same book. That's strange. Oh, he has a book on dictators. Maybe he's maybe he's learning to become a dictator himself. Ooh, that's he's got the hands. Ooh, that's true. He's got the hands. Not really he's the got... not really the 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 look could work. He could. I think I bit, think that you, if you're a good enough dictator, you can set the look. Like oh, it really, yeah. Like, yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah. A lot from, of yeah, trailblazers out there. Kind of guy. Yeah, you know. That's you right. Know, our good old friend, you know, the hand, the mustache thing. He he rocked. No one is wearing that ever. Again. <laughs> well, that he, one might say yeah. he ruined that. <laughs> that like, he kind of, yeah. yeah so he he kind of yeah. did. Uh, the propaganda did. didn't help. It was quite a. <laughs> it was a very noteworthy thing about so, him. That was so, easy to make fun. <laughs> criticism to make. I gather that the idea is supposed to be that the dialogue is somehow corny or cheesy, which, yeah, that's Have something you can say about pretty much all the Mission Impossible movies. So that's weird. Not, not what? No? I don't think I would have called it corny. It's just, it's just a man trying to what? say I care about you to another man. I don't know why we yeah, have to call that corny yeah. or cheesy. I care about you, and I'm going to put myself in a position of danger, and I know the risks, and I'm going to do it because I'm your friend. And I mean, Fallout has a lot of not corny things in it. That's for I fucking almost think sure. that's a little. I mean, um... even Rogue Nation has serious stuff in it. Yeah. Maybe, mm. Okay. The, maybe the charitable thing is someone could say that it's corny, but it's not necessarily corny. Maybe that's what he's trying to say. I don't know. Uh, maybe, I don't know. but I guess that's the idea that he's fighting against here. Which well, I he's trying to figure out why they would call it Disney too. ass dialogue, right? Which because it's not. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually very sincere the way he acts. Right, so. it's sincere. It's the sincerity that he's bringing up here in, yeah. in the title. Yeah. Like I would say that that's a very sincere uh, um, monologue from from Peg. Yeah. I think maybe you there could be a person who looks at sincerity and says that it is somehow corny or cheesy, but those people suck. <laughs> so like <laughs> I, I don't I don't know. Yeah, movies mostly in a good way. But what's so particularly cheesy about this scene? The only explanation I can offer is that this Twitter user believes that Benji's sincere declaration of friendship to Ethan is like something you'd find in a Disney Channel show. Is it? I don't I, watch enough Disney Channel to say. A show like, yeah, a show like what? I, I, I've, I've, brushed, I've brushed against the Disney Channel a bit growing up because I'm the oldest of four, so it just happens. But I don't, I, I don't, I don't expect to see this kind of a kind of dialogue bits on Wizards of Waverly Place. Perhaps he's being gracious to the original tweeter. So far, I actually don't yeah. disagree. Well, but I mean, I, mean, I think he's probably right that the original tweeter thinks this, but I'd be curious to know what the original uh, tweeter's thinking about. I don't know. I suppose. It's a bit weird, you know? And that got me thinking yeah. about how Hollywood has basically spent the last decade training its audiences to reject sincerity in blockbusters as exactly that. As something corny or silly to be treated with snark I think I'd almost say, like, I'd add cynical to that. Um, mm. Oh, yeah. The way that the lot of this, you know, is... Can derision by the audience who are too grown up for such childish things as being concerned for the well-being of one's friend, I, I guess. If you're going to have a scene like this, you'd better immediately follow it up with Benji saying, God, I sound like something out of a Disney Channel show, don't I? Because the only way to be taken seriously as a blockbuster nowadays is to just have the Followed characters constantly talk about how... Yeah, this is definitely a vibe that everyone's detected over the uh, yeah. coming years, yep. the recent yes. years. Goofy I, so far, I'm, I'm right with him. Yeah, yeah. no, this is yeah, all fine I, so far. Yeah, no. yeah, so far, And that's good. basically what I want to talk about today. About a style of dialogue in modern blockbusters that online communities have recently started to sum up with a single phrase. Say the line, Bart! Well, that just happened. Yay! So what is, well, that just happened humor, exactly? Well, put simply, it refers to... Ooh, let me see. Let me see if I can guess what he's gonna say. Well, that just happened humor is the inability to juggle tones and a refusal or a... Maybe not refusal, but a... And a trying to avoid or undercut your own sincerity for the purpose of uh, comedy or casualness. 
something like that. I think. Well, I, I think what he was saying, based off of the beginning there, because I think you're almost there, right? Is that we have, as audiences, been trained to to view it as somehow uh, unwanted, uncomfortable that you can't say, you know, to your friend, "Hey, man, I love you. I care about you." I, I think he's saying that we've been trained for that. Which is that, but with comedy instead yeah, of well, drama. Yeah, that's the that's the avoid. Yeah, the avoidance of sincerity, like to mm -hmm. to open yourself up to someone else, or to express your emotions sincerely, or to have moments where people can. It's, it's I guess be in, honest uh, and sincere is is an something to be avoided. Opportunity to run away from criticism because you're self aware, where you're like, well, you, yeah, yeah, but I'm not really. Yeah, the film's in on it here, too. You know? The film's like, yeah, I know, exactly. guys, I know, <laughs> I know. I know, this is yeah, silly, like a film. It? Yeah. yeah, yeah, a film is trying to be a film too much, and not trying to be a story. It's just uh, right kind of not to very be brave as a storyteller. It's almost like you don't have as much faith in people accepting um, the earnestness of your story, so you use it as a shield. It's like, yeah, but that maybe that's cringe, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, that's kind of funny. That's kind of a trope, you know? The yeah, kind like of person who of doesn't confidence. hold to any position. Everything is always couched in, well, I think, or maybe, or I don't know, or I guess. So, like they, they will not hold firm to anything or say anything with any level of, I guess, confidence. They always, everything has a back door built into it. They're too wishy-washy. Mm -hmm. ...to a style of humor where something weird or shocking happens in a movie, and the character responds to it by Riley remarking, well, that just happened. <laughs> Why couldn't you make that a little quieter, man? Sound, sound balancing. Yeah. Ah, Most people ah, seem to agree stop. that the earliest example of this phrase being used was in the 2000 film State and Maine. Just gotta be careful oh for the old copyright. You never I, know. God, I hope, I hope he doesn't get shot. <laughs> <laughs> So that happened. Now, ironically, even though this is the go-to example that people tend to use when discussing how modern blockbusters are overusing this style of humor, that exact phrase... Is it? I've never heard this movie referenced before. Ever. Me neither. Mm. Oh, wait, or is he referring to the line, well, that just happened? It might be interesting that the first instance isn't actually exactly what the line is. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean... Yeah, kind of how people think it's like, Luke, I am your father, when it's, no, I am your father. You know, kind yeah, of like, at least yeah. one of those, like, it's in, an intuitive yeah. representation of a problem that isn't even, like, there is no line for that in the MCU. It's it's kind of funny, because it feels well, like there is, though. Well, yeah, like, it's, you know, I don't even think Forspoken doesn't have that line exactly, right? But it's, uh, it's a vibe. I mean, Ant-Man and the Ant, uh, Quantumania, uh, this has been a long day, what was it? A lot has happened today, is essentially that line. Uh, it's it's that you know kind of line. Well, you have that. Yeah, you have uh, cool. when he battles the uh, big yeah, uh -huh. yelly son. He says, "Huh, that was weird." Yeah, exactly. And then, of course, the um, I didn't know you could do that. Mm -hmm. is actually not as common in movies as you might expect, based on that fact. In fact, the line doesn't no, actually verbatim. appear in any Marvel Cinematic Universe yeah, films, yeah, but it go. does hey, show up go. in Denis Villeneuve's Arrival. <laughs> Man, the first half of this movie was cool. Yeah, that just happened. So if this joke isn't actually used in that many major movies, and the only recent example I could find was from a... And, and that one is Oscar definitely way more of a... That's not like a wink and nudge at the audience. That's just like the character expressing to himself disbelief at a thing that's occurring. Yeah, like yeah. that was actually really that's, weird. That's pretty earnest. Yeah. I think so. So. so it's kind of interesting, even though that's pretty close to it, it. I'd say that one doesn't fall into the category. It's doing the opposite. Yeah, even it feels it distinct. Yeah, it feels yeah. distinct. Seen science fiction drama from one of the most respected auteurs working today. Why has it become such a punching bag on Twitter in the last couple of years? Well, even if that specific joke doesn't pop up in that many movies, it still perfectly exemplifies the style of humor that modern blockbusters are becoming increasingly reliant on. Every yeah, yes. I think that's why the phrase has become the game. Wait, to... hold on, we got Avengers here. Yeah. What's, what's, uh... Uh oh. What's, oh no, uh, read carefully, what, dude. What are we about to say? Well, even if that specific joke doesn't pop up in that many movies, it still perfectly exemplifies the style of humor that modern blockbusters are becoming increasingly reliant on. Every character is a deadpan snark machine who constantly feels the need to assure the audience that they know what you just saw was weird and goofy, so you don't have to feel silly for enjoying it. It's basically a way of assuring the audience that you're watching a cool superhero movie that no that isn't a f I'm assuming that he brought up the Avengers there just to highlight the Avengers kind of MCU in general. Well, right now, it just seems to be well, highlighting the Tony Stark 
does the wry commentary that can be meta sometimes, which is true, and it's funny. Mm. Oh, but it's best. Yeah. It's funny. Well, it's the thing is, is that there is a place for meta comedy. Uh, I mean, if it's good, right? Like if it's if it's funny, consistently and reliably. A lot of this relies on if it's good, but that's comedy. Yeah, exactly. You know? But I mean, you know. well, because a lot of people point to it, right? The Avengers uh, kind of set the trend because it was successful and people found well, it they funny. They blame Joss um, Whedon for it. That well, that yeah, that it's 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 that style Unfairly. of humor. And really, like what you would say is Marvel humor is like a warped misunderstanding of the kind of humor and balancing of tone that existed in Avengers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, afraid to poke fun at how silly it is because it's for grown-ups. There are actually a few different subcategories of jokes that all fall under the "well, that just happened" banner. Examples include superheroes' name slash costume is silly. No one. Yeah, Superman. Yes. Yeah. This one is fucking annoying. Yeah, we'll poach it and we'll use okay, it Batman. in our multi-billion yeah, exactly. dollar we'll movie. We'll make fun of it too. Yeah, but we'll yeah. make fun of it because I hate know, it. We, we don't want to. Yeah. God, I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't call myself Super Batman. Character repeats what just happened to them out loud. I just move yeah. shit with yeah. my freaking <laughs> mind. Mind. Yeah, okay, that is something I do now. Dude, mm. I, it's so crazy that they just uploaded like a, a little clip mm. for their promotion of their game and it derailed the whole fucking thing. This will like, make the gamers really want to play dude, our it, video Dude, game. it ruined that game. I think that if they didn't yes. post that uh, teaser, people wouldn't have been as tuned into this as a problem. Because I'm pretty sure this line shows this up in, like, the first trailer for that game. So for a year, it was around, but nobody knew. But then you put it in that little uh, little teaser on Twitter, and it just Ugh. ruined that whole game. <laughs> it derailed the whole thing. It's incredible. Lesson in marketing. Sincere emotional moment gets punctured by a snarky quip. <laughs> I'm sorry, what are we watching? Because this is are this YouTube? this new? Because I hate it. Or the oh, oh, man. I haven't seen the Eternals. I'm sure it's great. <laughs> I haven't seen <laughs> yeah. it either. I have not. Neither is the I MCU. Not. Old classic. Character repeats another character's name, but incorporates the word "what" into it. The Illuminati. Oh, yeah, yeah, I knew this is it. Oh no, the Illuminati. But yeah, <laughs> these are all these are all good examples uh, of permutations uh, of the "well, that just happened" meme. I basically yes. agree with all of these. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. this would same, yeah. especially feels like so. The Illuminati is a comic thing. That sounds a little bit dumb, doesn't it? And then yeah, we, so get, we get Mordo Strange to deliver you, it. Normie viewer, you know, it's like Doctor deliver... Strange is like you. We get Mordo to Sorry. deliver it, and then he's like <laughs> the Illuminati. Very serious, very well acted because that actor is awesome. Yes. And then it's like, Definitely in the same man, genius this is a joke. little, this is a little too serious. This is getting a little cringe. Can we get, can we get, can we get old Benedict to be like, <laughs> Aluma, fucking what? <laughs> <laughs> what now? <laughs> and then the whole audience laughed because it was such a good joke. <laughs> Did anybody <laughs> laugh? And I don't think anybody laughed in the theater. Illuminati is a very difficult word to say. <laughs> mm. Sorry, wait, what did you say? Illuminati? Illuminati. Oh, you, you <laughs> there I go. <laughs> oh, Lawler, what are we going to do with you? <laughs> oh, Jesus. What? What the hell? Oh, that, that was loud. That? Just wear it's headphones when you edit. Fucking oh, mixing. Oh, Everybody, get your volume down while you, you can. you listen to this? Okay, Ow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this down. Yeah. Ow! I have to stop. <laughs> okay, back up, like, everyone. Oh, wait. Jesus, so I'm just gonna take that. my earphones out because I'm fucking in ear earphones. So I'm just gonna. I know oh, it's, oh, it's so pain. Sorry. Take care of your I viewers. I had to lift mine away from my my little doggy ears. Wow. Of this style of humor is generally traced back to Joss Whedon. Oh, please, please don't agree. Real please don't well, agree. Please don't agree. Style complicated, maybe. But like, are we going to acknowledge the fact that Joss Whedon's way better at writing it than these people? The, yeah. the now disgraced writer director who helped to popularize this style with his television work on Buffy and Firefly in the late nineties. Sure. That sounds like something out of science fiction. You live in a spaceship, dear. Obviously, we now all know that Whedon is a piece of shit, but as hard as this may be to believe... Boo! No, we don't know that. Boo! Boo! My stocks in this video just fucking tanked. It's technically true. <laughs> we, 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 well, we, all we have to go on is uh, the allegations, right? But, like, it's very... I did. I did. There's very little reason to assume mm -hmm. that he, he wasn't a dick to people. I think the, the conclusion, yeah. though, is just that... <laughs> yeah, like, he's far from the he's only one and middle. seems to be just one of the only ones that didn't get away with it. Yeah, I, I remember that he he threatened Spike when Spike got popular. 
And he's like, the only reason you're here is because audience is like you. And he tried to like go up against J- Jason Marsters, which is really funny when you think about how small Joss Whedon is in comparison to Spike. It's just just a funny visual thing to me. James Masters, and yeah, uh, well, whenever he tells the story, James, it always seems yeah. like he's having fun with it, and I still will yeah. never believe the idea that he hated Spike, considering how the story goes. Um, I don't think Joss Whedon would have let the story end the way that it did, and I'm deliberately avoiding being more specific right now, if uh, if he really hated the character, okay? I think there's more to it than that, but yeah. um, I, d- I don't have any it. trouble believing that he was an absolute dick to many people. Yeah. I'm sure that's yeah. very true. There was a time where he was one of the most influential figures in all of nerd culture. And when he brought his signature brand of self-referential quip-heavy humor to Marvel's first Avengers movie, the result was met with critical approval and box office success. And since Hollywood studios are always on the lookout for a formula that they can perfect for financial gain, this style of humor quickly became Marvel's default. Yeah, but badly, you know, copied. But badly done. I... I don't yes. think he's saying that it was done well. I'm I'm thinking he's saying that because the Avengers did it, it is everybody's the, I don't know, man. The impression I just got there was that he's saying like they had, it worked well, they've adopted it, and now it's everywhere, and that I assume that the way we're going here is that it's become, you know, uh repetitive. Right, itself. but I don't think he's saying it's bad in the Avengers. I don't think I think he's the, uh, I don't think he's made a distinction between it, uh, high quality and low quality of that style. He's simply described the style. Yeah, so far. Yeah. Maybe also, I just realized he actually has seven paradigm books. Don't you? He's got a lot. It's like a little. It's like a there's little. A, there's there's the top one, and then there's a second one down, and then if you look at the bottom, there's four of them, and then yeah, directly to the left of that, there's another one on the shelf. Yeah, by Winterland. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. And I there's don't know what's bongos on the other shelf. And I wonder how many of the other ones up there that we can't see, you know, the spines of are paradigm books too. I'm gonna guess two of them. Is this book just really good? Should we all it must read be. it? it must be really good. Maybe you wouldn't have that many if they weren't good. Wait, are the bottom ones even books? Look, it, it looks maybe look they're audio books. The, look, well, yeah. Look, it's it's like a it, it's like a paper like box that's open like a box. Top, yeah, see? yeah, yeah. Maybe he's filming in like a it's library. It's a DVD yeah. or a or something like that. The maybe DVD. he's a bookseller. The top ones are books. I, I really have that theory. It's a bookstore. Maybe. Or yeah, it's, it's a where. Yeah, a that would explain the bongo drums or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thank you, Rex. Always thank you. You got it. for the best. <laughs> Take for example the scene in Captain America: Civil War where the Avengers Careful. are all fighting in an airport because politics and shit. I won't deny that it's a fun scene, but it has a major. No. Yeah, it's a fun scene. Do you disagree, Wait, Rex? Politics. No, no. Bob, he said it takes place in an airport because politics and shit. Yeah. I wonder what it. I think that's a good summary <laughs> of, of I, all right, I guess War so far. Yeah. Major tonal problem. This is supposed to be a scene where the heroes are forced to turn on each other, where longtime friends have to betray one another for what they believe is the right cause, which makes it pretty jarring when they're constantly having exchanges like this in the middle of the battle. We're still friends, right? Depends on how hard you hit me. It's hard to feel that's, like there's that's any... Uh, that's not a great example. No. Not a great example considering the relationship no. that these two people have. Well, I'd hate to so. fucking yeah. roll out the extensive explanation, but you've got to... This was in my TFA part two. You've got to understand the characters and then the, the scenario, and it applies here. This is... This, this is a... If you remember, Iron Man, when he's approaching it and talking about it, he's pretty chill. He doesn't believe that we're actually going to be getting to the point where this is going to erupt into like fracturing the Avengers entirely. He starts to crack when they start when they're back and forth. Um, it's funny, you, you probably chose the worst example. Black Widow is the only one that simply wants them to be together. She doesn't actually care if they're fugitives or if they're working officially. She just wants them to be together. That's her motive. Hence why she switches sides. Because uh, she thinks that the side that would bend would be Caps when this first starts up. But then she realizes during that fight that his will never bend, and so that she would rather help him uh, do what he needs to do, and then she joins them, of course. And uh, even criticizes Tony, right? But, um, yeah, her and Hawkeye, they're fighting, but neither of them want to, and neither of them take this whole thing that seriously in terms of, like, we're not killing each other. No one's there to kill each other, except Black Panther on Winter Soldier. Something a lot of people tend to forget. He's the only one that's going to be trying to do killing blows. Everyone else is just trying to stop each other, hold each other, prevent them from escaping, right? 
Yeah. So yeah, well, they're having their sparring session, the which they've done like a million times in their lifetimes, and because we've seen it a couple of times, they fight. They're doing the fight again, and she's just checking like we're chill, right? Like this isn't actually serious in any way, shape, or form. And then he jokes with her too, because of course mm -hmm. this is actually fine. They they are going to remain friends. It's funny. Like I think the example is terrible because it's the opposite. That there should be a sincerity between those two. That this is not a serious situation. It's only once Rhodey is injured that it becomes a very serious situation. Yeah. 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 Exactly. It is uh, remarkably chill as a scene. Everybody is making uh, criticisms and jokes about each other during their fights. Nobody's doing killing blows. The only time you see it happen, I think, is when Black Panther goes for uh, Bucky's throat. Yes, because Bucky killed his dad. So yeah. Any weight to what we're watching on screen because the characters aren't treating this situation with the gravity that the movie wants us, the audience, to. Why should I be invested in seeing these characters fight when the movie has literally stopped in its tracks to it? You were never going to assume these two were going to kill each other. I don't know why you would have thought that. Yes, there's no way they'd kill each other. That would be entirely out of character. Yeah, the tenseness comes from the potential well, remember, of accidents occurring because of the power levels involved, but also we got to see if they're able to leave the airport. Right after this happens, uh, Wanda throws uh, Natasha away and then says to uh, says to uh, Clint, you're pulling your punches. She knows, like it's recognized in the universe that he is holding back, that he's not like, he's not doing the absolute most that he could be doing, because of course he wouldn't. This is Natasha. Yeah. He doesn't want to hurt her. Nope. Yeah. They're friends. Assure its audience that it's all hunky dory and they're still besties for the resties. Which kind of <laughs> helps the scene, right? Because then it does become serious when one of them nearly dies. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's something that, you know, there's no jokes when, uh, when, when, uh, Rody gets hit. It instantly, yeah. like, it's the stakes are raised dramatically. Yeah. Yep. It's a classic case of Marvel trying to have their cake and eat it too. There are so other I, examples I would have pointed to. Yeah, and I, yeah. You, you'd have to completely disagree because Civil War knows what it's doing. It doesn't make jokes in the finale. There's no jokes nope, in no, the middle of the fight. No jokes That's when finale, things yeah. it is not. Down. It is not a film that tries to have its cake and eat it too. It knows the tone of the airport scene. The tone is much more chill than the final scene. You got, oh, absolutely. Spider-Man and... No, it's night and day difference. You got all this shit with, like, you have a metal arm, you have the right to remain silent. Like, those two, like, they're not fucking around. You have uh, Rhodey being like, um... What does he say? Like, this isn't... This isn't gonna... This is gonna sting. Or this isn't gonna kill you, but it won't it's be... Tickle either. Yeah, like, you, they're being pretty... I don't know what the word would be for it, but they're, they're kind of fucking around a little bit. They're not... He, he's not like Captain America, stand down, Steve Rogers, I will arrest you, you must stop. He's more like, Cap, you really want to do this sort of thing, like, because you, you ain't getting past me, that sort of well, thing. Then it, remember, it, I think afterward, that's the part where, when they throw the truck at him, it blows up, and then he says, now I'm pissed. Because it's yeah. like, yeah, it's, it's getting worse and worse. Well, you, you've ever been like, I thought it was a water truck. Like, it, it, the, the yeah. scene is much more comedic than a lot of the uh, action scenes in Civil War's runtime. A lot of the other ones are, yeah, because uh, the the fight at the uh, the um, in uh, oh damn, uh, you, when Bucky escapes from uh, from the facility, I, I don't remember any jokes in that uh, sequence. No, I don't remember any jokes in the uh, in the so. sequence when they were fighting in the uh, when when Bucky was escaping in Bucharest. I'm pretty sure that one was played totally straight too. Civil War is not the one to point to for this problem. There, there yeah. are other, there are other well, no, Marvel films that definitely would apply the have your cake and eat it to in terms the, of you want the drama, but you also want the memes and the jokes. The final fight and the interaction between um, Demo and T'Challa, like, it's all dead serious. Yeah. There's, there's no, there's no quips well, coming in. It's like 15 minutes of just played totally straight and serious. And it's almost, yep. it's often cited as like the last time we did it in, in the MCU. It, uh, well, yeah, the only other instance would be that there are an Infinity War. Infinity uh, War. Like right at the end. It's, well, yeah, especially. Uh, it, it, I think that's fair, yeah. Infinity War feels. A lot of people pick that as the uh, the actual end of the MCU, right? Like, not. Yeah, Endgame. Endgame is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Endgame is shit. Um, <laughs> but it, the thing is, is that I agree with the observation that a big problem that films have right now, if you're talking about like Marvel movies or these big Hollywood blockbusters, is. They never want you to sit with a particularly intense feeling for too long. Yeah, it can never yes. be too sad for too long. You got to bring it back. You got to make it funnier. And, and like, even even when you get stuff that's sad, it can't be like as intense uh, as possible. So you end up with this like story that doesn't really have these dramatic peaks and dips that stay with you. 
like the really dramatic moments. Um, it's beige. And, and it's the, problem. The tone. Beige. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a good way of putting it. It's like a I, film is beige. I think it's weird I'm, because after Infinity War, they left us with like a couple years of being, you know, like the tone of the MCU was what happens after Infinity, you know, at the end of Infinity War. That's the state of the MCU right now. And the movie ends. And that's that's where they leave it. So I'm I like, think, man, I wish they'd give us a bit more credit. I'm not a I'm not a child. You know? I think there's a better example in a different film. Like the the thing that immediately comes to my mind is when Doctor Strange meets his love interest in his first movie and they realize that they can't be together and he starts to tear up and his fucking cape is like wiping the tears away from his face and he yeah. like go and he wipes away the 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 the, the cape. No, don't do that. Stop. And it's like you don't need you you didn't need that. To, yeah, like, that's actually the um the next scene. that's the visual I put in in the quantum mini video when I said that we've yeah. got a bit of a history of tonal fuck ups in in MCU. Cause yeah, that scene annoys the shit out of a lot of people because it's like the trying to be a serious Doctor Strange moment and then yeah. it, the film's just like tee hee, don't be too serious. Like that's the emotional core of his fucking character, and you just made fun of it. It's so weird. It's it's a it's and a it Poor writing choice. Not it obviously extends outside of the MCU as well. Uh, I'm reminded of the story of what they were trying to do with The Witcher um, with uh, Roach and, and how they were going to have a well that just happened moment after that. So it's clearly pervasive through the entire industry. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. In fucking Cowboy Bebop, they're, they're, the, the Netflix thing, they also have this like sarcastic um meta joking shit going on it's so annoying but like th i do agree with what fringy said the sentiment i agree with the example is not so much the best one yeah playing around with the idea of going to more emotionally charged places with these characters but also being too oh. afraid that they'll lose their audience if they ease up on the jokes even for a little bit to its credit the movie holds back on lines like this during the final fight between iron man and Captain. you say holds back i hope you mean like doesn't have any rather than like <laughs> you know. I, I i think so in america yeah. yeah but by the end it feels the need to end on this light-hearted moment from tony stark that it shows us he's not really mad at captain like america gonna... oh, totally so... no, he's very he's mad. yeah that's just not true upset. I mean, um, even they have to account for it later. Not not well, but they do even have to account. Well, I was going to say, I quite like Civil War ending with the uh, you know you get the scene of him helping Rhodey. By the way, not Scroll Rhodey. He's helping regular Rhodey there. That's yep, that's what's that's happening right, in that scene. Rhodey. And that's uh, right. Rhodey the person just sharing a human moment with each other after all the shit that's happened in Civil War, and then for him to get a thing from Cap saying, like, listen, I know what's happened, but call me if you need me, which is perfectly reasonable. And then, of course, as was mentioned, we do discover, which I think is in line, that he has not fucking forgotten this shit when they, they meet up again. No, it's, it's uh, the only good scene in Endgame is, uh, the only good scene, like, that is not compromised in any way, shape, or form by any other problem is them arguing when he gets back. And when the Avengers reunite two years later, we don't really have any sense that there's any real lasting animosity between them. Why oh, would there be animosity no, from Rhodey with this lot when they've... The only person you might be able to say has animosity for was Vision, but that was... Uh, the, he's on his team. They've been talking to each other since then. Like, and it was a mistake. Why would there be animosity from R Rhodey to these guys? That's just not fair. It was an accident. That's the truth, what happened in Civil War. The same year I don't think Rhodey's the kind of guy, even fucking scroll Rhodey, to hold it against the whole team of the world is about to be attacked <laughs> well, by Rhodey, triple space mutant. That's the reason, right? Because he wasn't there. He would yeah. just be lying. Liar. Ugh, he's not a scroll. Wait, no. Batman v Superman. Wait, what's, uh... what's happening here? Yeah. Here is Captain America Civil War. We saw the release of Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. Ugh. The second entry in what was once the DC Extended Universe, and the movie whose critical reception effectively dug DC into a hole that they've been trying to get themselves out of ever since. I... To this day, unsuccessfully. So <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, yeah, but... I kind of did. It ruined everything. <laughs> what was yeah. the point of bringing it up, though? I don't think I that was it. To... Hard to find yeah. out. Superman is okay. a particularly good movie. It's pretty messy nope. and convoluted, and it dedicates way too much of its runtime to some of the most obnoxious attempts at sequel setup that I've ever seen in a film. Agreed. But most of the negative reviews <laughs> yep. zeroed in on how dark and self-serious it was. So the lesson Hollywood ended up taking away from the success of Marvel and the backlash to Batman vs. Superman was... Audience like it when superhero makes smart this. This is definitely an era that happened, yeah. This was, uh... Yeah. Everyone noticed this because yeah. of Justice League. 
But it is interesting to think about this as a point when the Batman, which is very serious, is the most successful DC film, and and Joker as well, are the two most successful DC films since... Uh, since Batman v Superman, yeah, which are hyper serious, both serious. of them are. Yeah, they're hyper. Very they're, serious they're, they're very serious. Yeah, yeah. Morthouse joke, and they don't like it when superhero is sad. And this effectively led to an overcorrection. I will say the fact that the dead. critics were just like, "Oh, it's you know, it's 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 sad, or it's uh, it's not a happy go lucky experience." Yeah, it's like it's it's Lame. badly written. That's the yeah. problem, <laughs> not the tone. Yeah. Yeah, no, I by the way, that's fair too. Logan was a very serious film. And that's oh yeah, Logan. Yeah, that's right, and that that yeah, made Logan. a lot of money. Uh, yeah, was super successful. Dead and smug irony reigns supreme. I surely don't need to recount what happened with Justice League, where Warner Brothers used Zack Snyder's departure due to a terrible tragedy to bring in Joss Whedon and effectively turn it into a Marvel clone. I don't even. It's such a disaster, like that whole thing. Thing it's a Marvel clone is strange, I but I guess I'll concede. Sure, it's just like yeah, imagine it's closer it's to the Marvel vibe, corrected to try and but, emulate the uh, the more upbeat vibe of Marvel movies. But like, if mm. someone was to compare, even like just to like Guardians of the Galaxy or some kind of like Ant Man, it would just be like, I don't know what the fuck Justice League is. It's such a Frankenstein's monster of a movie. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think you can blame Joss Whedon for that one. But uh, <laughs> um, well, I'm could, happy to blame the, him somewhat. The change in direction and <laughs> yeah, like the change in direction from a very different thing than what was originally intended with the film, and not giving and not delaying it or like yeah, that yeah. Th- it, this was a this was a bad idea. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's cost them forever. Like the Justice League, that was a that was a huge blunder on their part. Because this is, yeah. you know, you be like, what was Whedon supposed to do? It's like, I still think he could have done better with what he had, but, you know. Whatever. Yeah, of course. Resulting in stuff like this. I take it back. I want to die. I hear you can talk to fish. Uh, no, that's, that's Snyder, that one. The that fish one, one was Snyder. Yeah, that one with Snyder. Snyder. Yeah, that was in the yeah. first uh, trailer for Justice League. That's his, not... No uh, way! That yes, just happened. That yes, just happened. It. Weekend that Warrior. Snyder is perfectly capable of cringe too, okay? I think it got cut out of the uh, I think it got cut out of the uh, Snyder cut though. That oh was in the original God. trailer for that film. Yeah. The, the, the Superman one was added in, mm-hmm. obviously. I, need... I think there's a lot of stuff. About you can tell this one's a reshoot a because his lip is fucked. Yeah. 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 CGI mouth. Like his dent is a little bit too big. Dostoevsky. <laughs> I like a, oh, God, that, bulge. that one's classic. I, I don't mind that one. <laughs> yeah, that's I, actually I, funny. I don't mind that joke. Yeah. I, uh, people, uh, I guess people could be polarized on that one because I think most people consider it the most hyper cringe joke, right? A lot of people do. Yeah, um, something's is definitely this bleeding. This, because this is uh, God, I, I forget which version with the, where the soldiers and the Humvee getting blown up too is. Oh, that was uh, that was that good old. Uh, after? That was the Snyder cut. Snyder cut. Yep. That that was cut out okay. because right. it looked yeah, weird okay. having Superman like lasering. Yep. Dude, that's one of like, my favorite fun facts that we didn't obviously cut out when Superman tried to laser to death the military personnel. That's so funny. <laughs> like, yeah, of Superman course he really cut that shit. Tried, yeah. <laughs> Why the fuck would he keep that? Hurt. We're putting that one in the basement. I don't even understand the physics of how my toes hurt. <laughs> I get it! Again, I'm not the biggest fan of Zack Snyder's work personally, but I can admire how he commits to this idea of looking at these comic book characters through him. <laughs> I thought you were saying I admire how he commits to misery. <laughs> <laughs> More mythic lens. And in our rush to dismiss that and make fun of it, I think we ended up sending the wrong message to Hollywood about what exactly we want to see from these kinds of movies. Well, so the problem I, I'm getting movies. from this video is he hasn't told us yet uh, whether or not it's about the quality of it. It seems to me he's just said, like, it's a binary. But they they, never they chose to do it or they don't. And the, the fact that they chose to That's... do it was a mistake. Well, he's not wrong. I um, think well, but no, a... but he's not right either because the the problem is how badly they've executed it. Right? It's not that they've done it all at all. All the movies were good. Yeah. Nobody like would the, care. Co- the conclusion needs extra steps, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, he needs more proof in the pudding. I kind of agree with the the sentiment that the Hollywood got the wrong lesson. But they I get do the ag- wrong lesson a lot of the time. Yeah, but I do yeah. agree with you guys when you say that you need. Like the Joss Whedon, when he does it, it, it's the proper way of doing it. I guess is is the right. I mean, he's not perfect. He makes shit jokes too. It's just the obviously his, his um, method. 
the people who were inspired by his style have been um, less successful. Not Correct. Because the thing is, it's not just superhero movies that are becoming reliant on this style of humor now. Oh, it's all that's... over Hollywood. That's why... He... Oh, wait. As Marvel became the dominant film franchise of the 2010s, more studios started to follow their example, to the point where it's this really big. just getting beyond power. Is he reading from <laughs> something? <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, like he I mean, at least he's bit. reading... At least his sentences make sense, and he's... The hammer was so funny. You know, yeah. Yeah, I'll he peaked. There was a visible pause in one of in the yeah. middle of when he was yeah, talking. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Like, you know, I'll take uh, it. Again, yeah, the, yeah the, the, compared to Phil Mentor's writing, yeah, like yeah. Way more oh yeah, this this is this is easily the best uh, Phil Mentor. No matter what video happens video in the last scene. few minutes, this is the best video we've covered. Yes, yeah, yeah, tonight. Absolutely. Compared yeah, to Phil Mentor, this guy's Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah, understatement. Well, he's not, he's fine. Yeah, he's doing fine. Does the back of your head look like a huge penis? The answer is yes! You must be Lloyd. What gave it away? The white pants, the trash dash, it just... It leans Lloyd. Um, so... Would both of those be examples of how it's a serious situation and you're treating it insincerely in order to try and come across cool and, you know, with it I for the sake of the I need to know the, the characters the in the situation. That's the thing. I've yeah. seen, funnily enough, I've seen The Grey Man and I've seen Red Nose and I don't remember <laughs> anything about either of them at this point. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, oh, no. <laughs> probably not the All best All I know is that both of them were the most expensive films that Netflix had made. Really? And, and yes. they were successful, Holy right? Fuck. Or at least I assume they were. They were. Both, uh, Red Notice was successful. I don't know about The Grey Man. Did I watch you cut a guy with a decorative serving platter? And when but you're that that's one, a comedy movie though, right? Renville is that's an absurd com comedy movie, isn't it? So like that's probably so, not yeah. probably not the yeah. best example, I don't think. No. In every movie is But maybe the context of that scene would match what he's talking about. I haven't seen it. Maybe. So. Yeah. Maybe. Relying maybe so heavily on jokes like this, it contributes to the assembly line feeling of the modern blockbuster industry. These movies are so concerned with being hip and cool that they feel the need to take you out of the story just to remind you that they are, in fact, in on the joke. 2018's Aquaman isn't okay. a masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination. It's I terrible. Saw it. Just say it shit. Say it shit. Use your words and say That's that it's terrible. shit. He said it's not a masterpiece. Okay that does not rule out that it's shit. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Just by saying it's not a masterpiece doesn't mean that... Yeah, exactly. That's a good point. Just say, I'm just going to start describing all films But, but also, films. I mean, if we're using Aquaman, because it seems like we're leading up to Aquaman... Let, actually, let's, let's see what's, what's said here once in the cinema and haven't really thought about it much since then. But one thing about that movie that sticks out in my memory is that there's this one scene in the Underwater Kingdom where the film just casually shows you an octopus playing the drums. This is normally where you might expect character A to look at character B and say something along the lines of, is that an octopus playing the drums? That's an octopus playing the drums. But no, the characters don't feel the need to point this out to us, and the so, scene isn't really played that heavily for laughs. This is it's interesting because, sure, in that instance, yeah, but like Aquaman's got a lot of like Marvel type of humor in it. That's definitely mm. a film that it's is like doing this. Well, but we still haven't done the job yet. Movies. We haven't told, we haven't figured out why one is better than the other. Well, yeah, why one ne is necessarily better than the other. If there was a really good joke about the octopus well, playing the drums, then would the characters have a reason to point out the octopus, or would it be normal uh, to them? Well, I, I guess maybe to Aquaman it would be, because he's not very familiar with the underwater world, but everybody else would be pretty chill with it. Do you remember so I the, guess it would just be him. The clip he showed maybe. when he was first referencing this sort of thing uh, from Avengers was when Cap was talking to Iron Man on the ship before Thor lands on it in Avengers. I don't know if it, the joke he was specifically trying to reference or not, but like if you remember when uh, uh, Iron Man says... Um, he was referencing when a particular thing happened. He said, when you were doing time as a capsicle. And then Cap looks at him like, you know, what? Like, what the fuck did you say? When you could be like, was well, so that one a valuable joke or not? The fact that he's like being, he's like making fun of the situation that was very serious of Cap gave his life, theoretically anyway, froze himself, and then, you know, has gone forward in time as a result, being unfrozen and stuff. And he's just described him as a capsicle. Like, but the thing is, like, it's a very Tony Stark line. You get the the Cap isn't exactly appreciating not taking that whole event seriously. What what I'm trying to say is that I need more than a binary of like, don't do it, do it. I I would prefer to know like when when should you do it, when should you do it? Because it seemed like he he kind of acknowledged that Joss Whedon at least was a progenitor or the person people copied. I don't know if he ever really touched on whether or not it was high quality, low quality, or anything else. 
Well, at the very least, there was a recognition that people enjoyed it when it seems yeah. like an observation that's being made now is that people don't like it anymore. Is it purely because it's oversaturated or is it because it's bad and oversaturated? Yeah, because obviously we would say it's because it's bad. But yes. I guess I would also caveat that the presence of it everywhere is making everyone notice it as well, more than usual. Yeah. Yep. Just Absolutely. this weird, fun, goofy aspect of this world that isn't ashamed or self-conscious of how silly it is. It kind of I would say Aquaman's and... kind of self-conscious. There are, there are definitely some of those types of jokes. I'm pretty sure they do the joke of talking to fish, right? Is there ever in, any in value in being self-conscious in a script? I don't know. Is there? Mm. Speaking of water uh, being blockbusters, yeah. another recent tentpole movie that was admirably confident and assured in what it was was Avatar Dude. The Way of Water. Oh, oh. No. <laughs> You guys are going to have a ball um, with this one. I have not I suppose, watched it. But, I suppose, but it's not a good movie. The first movie became a bit of a punching bag on the internet for years because it's kind of cheesy and unabashedly earnest. It's but generic. The did, that's no, the main, that's main that's main that's main not one. such a bad thing. Yeah. And then outside of Hollywood, you have movies like RRR, which is this unabashedly over-the-top and melodramatic action epic that's all about the bond between bros and features a random musical number halfway through, and it's amazing. But to be clear, I'm not saying that sardonic humor in blockbusters is inherently a bad thing. Okay, right? okay. good. Okay. All right, so what are you cool. saying? Even some Marvel movies have actually used it pretty well. The Guardians of the Galaxy movies, for example, use mm -hmm. it very effectively to communicate things about the characters. Star-Lord yes. has been stuck in a state of arrested development since he was abducted from Earth as a child. Which is funny, because the example used in Civil War with Black Widow and Hawkeye was to denote something about the characters and their relationship. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming he just did <laughs> most of the way there. Yeah. I hope so, yeah. So naturally, he has the sense of humor of a cocky teenager. Rocket Raccoon's entire arc in the second movie is about how he's afraid of being emotionally vulnerable, so he overcompensates with obnoxious jokes and an intentional attempt to push people away. In a way, Rocket is kind of a deconstruction of the snarky, quippy hero that we've become so ac accustomed to seeing in movies these days. But importantly, writer-director James Gunn mostly knows when to pull back and just let an emotion... Uh... I wish I could say that um, Guardians 3 is not a movie I would describe as knows when to play for humor, uh, play for drama, or mix them both. Well, would you say that the first two are? Much more so, yeah. I think this scene is, yeah, this scene is good when this is the funeral for... Absolutely, yeah. For, There's loads of them, dude. The, the scene yeah. where Drax is thinking about his uh, lost family, that's, 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 that seems perfection with yeah. Mantis. Yeah. Rocket like, and Yondu talking on the yeah. bridge. Yeah. The, um, the, there's a lot that gets to, but like Guardians 3, like we were supposed to find it funny when uh, Star Lord nearly dies and Adam Warlock picks him up. That shit was weird, man. Yeah, and and yeah, it's more like a fake out death. Uh, it's, it's, it's... Then, of course, there's oh, the. the thing. Yeah. Is that supposed yeah. to be funny? I mean, yeah, it, it, if you're going to really... reference the, uh, the painting and. and, and have Adam like yeah I think I think you're supposed to be like oh he's gone but one of the things that throws oh, me yeah. off completely I mentioned this um to Fringy recently that because when I was editing I was grabbing the clips for um Quantum Mania but Mantis's scream for Peter in that scene is so tragic it's like why would you have her do that and then not have it be serious it's so weird dude yeah and I think that a lot of people would say, well, ask James Gunn, he can balance comedy and drama. And it's like, I don't think he did that very well in well, 3. He didn't balance. Maybe he didn't give a fuck because he had the Disney, the DC money at the time. <laughs> I, don't know. I think he really cared about that film. I just, I don't know what happened. I, mm -hmm. I just think he made a lot of very bad decisions. Maybe he thought he was doing something great with that scene. It's, I it's think he possible. Was, yeah. yeah. Emotional scene play out without it being punctured by another joke. He trusts that his audience is invested enough in these characters that they don't need to be constantly winked at in order to enjoy watching them. So again, it's not necessarily a bad thing for a blockbuster to poke fun at its. So I guess that's how metric then it needs to be character driven. Yeah. If you do it. Yeah, which would rule out the Civil War example, but that is the yeah, the gist. Yes, it it should be. Character, which is yeah. pretty agreeable. Depends on the characters and the context. Yeah, it's it's. Which, yeah, it's, it's more to it, but that's that. okay. Yeah. Sure. But it's something. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. not bad for 12 minutes, I suppose. This is so the best video but we've covered. This is the best Definitely. video. For, for, yeah, for yeah, this absolutely. day, anyway, yeah. It shouldn't yeah, come at the cost of sincere emotion. There's something admirable about a blockbuster just owning how earnest it is, and not letting the worry that audience... Okay, d no, let's not. No. Let's not. No. Oh, oh, no. 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 Yeah, no. no, this no, that, film is... No. Cut the tape, cut the tape, cut the tape. Oh. 
Ron I, Matrix. I ain't given Matrix Resurrections points for being unabashedly embarrassing. No. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. Unabashedly I don't. I don't give people points for it. I don't get films points for it, okay? Resurrections was just so fucking uh, bad. It's hideous. That's, that's that, There, you want to talk about a cash grab. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly. They even say it's a cash grab. It's just... Oh, that's so terrible. Laugh at it or called it lame dictate how it presents itself. Because if a fairly standard dialogue scene from Mission Impossible 5 can go viral for supposedly being comparable to a Disney Channel show, then, frankly, it's no wonder that so many studios are instead opting for the Marvel approach. And maybe we could do to let these people know that we actually can handle genuine, sincere moments of emotion in our movies. I completely I agree with that. I would say that uh, yeah. things are changing. Uh, a lot of these, these types of films are starting to struggle now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would agree. Yep. I think his final thing would have been better if he would have said, "Yeah," and all the replies to that tweet were in it, it, incredible disagreement. Let's say almost universal there were a lot disagreement. That's, to that yeah, tweet. yeah, that's actually worth pointing out. Yeah, the the it's not like everyone agreed with that guy. The that yeah, bench man, went viral. Yeah, that tweet went viral not because it was an agreed upon sentiment, <laughs> but yeah. the opposite. It was because that was yeah really bad. But yeah, I think I, this I, guy I, has a couple of terrible because uh, we're done. This is the last second, right? I think this guy has some some terrible examples, um, and and maybe he misunderstood a couple of things, especially with you know civil war and things like that. But um, altogether, I, I generally agree with this. Yeah, video. I agree with the general yeah. premise. Um, I, I what just, I find uh, interesting, sorry, uh, what I find interesting is he is identified like the 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 problem, shall we say? But his mm -hmm. but his examples are inconsistent. Which I find interesting. Yeah, I think, I think I the main it's thing because he doesn't really understand like the root cause of it, right? Like he hasn't figured out what what it is there because he's identifying kind of the surface level stuff, and he's seeing these things like in Civil War, he sees it there, but doesn't really understand why that would be good in that situation or bad in that situation. So I'm not sure that there's a strong uh, analytical look at this, and perhaps that's oh. why he's bringing up these bad examples. I think we just need to expand it. I feel like there's uh there's a few other things that we need to talk about in this topic. Um it could have you know you know what I mean? Just uh it's some like additional a, um... things about like the nature of how it's good or bad. Is it just about yeah. whether it's uh directly tethered to character? Is this the standard for like all jokes? Uh can it simply be funny for its own sake or what happens if it's really funny but it's well, still undermines the Well, I think there's the, got to be more to doing it well than in line with character. There's got to be more to it than that, right? Yeah. I think there's got to be more. I mean, if it's a really, really, really good joke and it has nothing to do with character at all, yeah. whatever that looks like. He he comes across as like a like a med student who's still learning about diseases, but he can't quite like yeah. identify the symptoms right yet. Like he like yeah, I know the patient's sick. I've identified that there's a sickness, but I can't quite pin down like what it is or what the what the correct symptoms are and what the 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 medicine needs to be for it. But like we're we're getting there in terms of like yeah we've we've known there is an issue there's something going on here, yeah, yeah it's on the right yeah because overall I I think he's right right there yeah, is a, a death of sincerity with this and we talked about this immediately at the beginning of this he was right about it for the first two minutes, uh, it, it really just seems that the the problem with this video is that he's choosing poor examples because otherwise if he hadn't chosen poor examples I don't think there was any specific maybe one or two specific lines that he spoke verbally where we were like oh no you're fucking wrong so i think maybe it's just you know halfway there so the, well, i've never said that i don't think about a, a video on EFAP, but that's never, pretty high praise for efap right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, someone said it's bad it because it's, it weather. can be immersion breaking hey guys isn't that thing that just happened stupid it's like you can't conceive of any time in a piece of media where a character could point to something and say that that was dumb what just happened and it would, wouldn't be immersion breaking we do it in real life we point out things mm. that, that, well, that that's our show stupid. Mahler. exactly that's what i mean <laughs> It's like, this kind of highlights the point. Yeah, I, I actually wish that that is the problem. Go into more depth on how the difference between good and bad is determined on this one, because I think a lot of people intuitively assume it's a particular direction, when it's like, you really can't conceive of a single time that could work, ever. I don't know. Yeah, we, we need a deeper system than this. Yeah, because he seems to just say, here are examples of this thing that exists in media, 
And then he says, and it's not always done wrong, but I don't like it. And, and that's it, right? It needs to be by character. Because we spent eight minutes just showing examples of it existing. And then his, his takeaway was uh, Joss Whedon did this. And okay, sometimes he did it. Or I'm not Joss Whedon. J James Gunn did this. Um, and sometimes he did it okay. Mainly so because that there was the really... characters were written to deliver those lines in line with their like journeys and stuff. Right, yeah. So I don't really feel like there was... there. I don't feel like he had too much of a point beyond just pointing it out. Which is maybe the half that's... Well, it was just a small amount on what yeah, makes the difference it's... between good and bad at the end. Yeah. Oversaturation yeah. seems to be more so his point. Yes. Also, hi, Renee. Welcome back. Oh, it's oh, Michael. Hi, Metal. Hello, Did you have a nice sleep? Oh, we didn't. I didn't know. <laughs> oh, it was so good. It was so good. We were down bed and all nice and warm. my eyes. That's pretty so good. That's pretty <laughs> so good. We're moving gang, on gang. to the gang, next gang. thing. Gang, gang. That I was also made aware of through Super Chats, this next one. Uh, someone recommended get it, you this. Get Super Chats. God. I decided to check it out out of curiosity, and I was relatively confused and mortified. Which will make oh, a lot of Molly, sense to you when you find out who the video this is. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, no. 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 Calm down. Calm down. Right. It, we're okay. only checking out four minutes of it. Okay? Oh, okay. okay. I don't uh, have 40 minutes uh, to watch this. Okay. Quick. Yes. okay. <laughs> Calm <laughs> down. Before you start, I can use the loo real quick, and I'll be right back. Uh, I like how a lot of people in chat already know what we're feel? dealing with from that sound. You know, he he did the um, the... the Somebody made the SpongeBob thing, and he did a tweet about it. It's the only thing I've ever seen him do where I was like, "That was okay." Yeah, um, that was I don't funny. Know if you saw it. with the the stalker creating, and he called up uh, James Rolfe, and he was like, "They, they hate you." Uh, boy, yeah, that was the one time. I like that everybody was willing to concede he did a really good joke with that because it was mm -hmm. yeah, pretty fun. I remember getting it? like watching the like because I remember it was linked as like a, a got to hand him this one and I was like okay and I decided to watch it. I was so uniquely unimpressed right up until he called him and said they hate you and I was like ah yeah. that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> yeah, which one was this? It's a um, it's a tweet. A SpongeBob episode where they have like a character that's based entirely on nostalgia critic yeah. reviewing things and being an asshole. And then oh, he has a video of himself watching that, getting more and more like frustrated and sad, and then he calls up AVGN and says uh, the Spongebob episode hates you. Which is funny. Oh, it was good. good. It was good, because, man, I last time I watched Nostalgia Critic was, uh, was with you guys, I think a year or two? 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 Three years ago? Oh my god, I've been on here for five years. Um... <laughs> All those years ago, oh. being Doom Sausage Man, mm -hmm. right? That was because that was episode forty. Yeah, two hundred and ten episodes ago, I guess. Wow, kind of scary. Yeah, um, we watched Nostalgia Critic on one of these, and it, it, man, I hadn't seen one, and it was so painful <laughs> and so very, very bad because it's clear that like he just writes down as many jokes as he can. Uh, and looking, you know, hey, we're going to write down every joke that comes to mind, and then he does zero editing. <laughs> just uses Please, um, every one of them. He's an animated character, but in real life, and I'm pretty sure that's something he's aware of. Like, that's something he tries to be. Uh, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly, uh, there's, like, a, a notion of when you were trying to join Channel Awesome that he would tell people, like, if you want to be, you know, in the relative circle of being promoted around the thing, you need to be, like, kind of aping the style of, like, Oh my god, here we go, everybody! We're gonna be checking out a blah 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 and bouncing around. It's just like, I remember thinking to myself, like, fuck, you force people to do that. <laughs> like, that's so oh, mean. Man. That's how people kill themselves. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. <laughs> they shouldn't have to live this way. Don't make them. So, anyway, right. well, um, what we're King here to check out is, um, yes, this is his video on Lion King 2019, in which most of it is spent, I think, with him ripping into it. But someone okay. described what happens at the end of this video in a super chat, and then I went and checked it, and I was like, "Man, okay." So I'll just present this as though as though we just watched him ripping into that movie. We've seen it be ripped Very into uh, expertly mm -hmm. by YMS, so I'm sure we're familiar with the at least right. somewhat familiar with with how bad it is. So we can just skip to this is near his conclusion. It's like an empty jar marked fun, but there's only air inside. 
No, not even mm -hmm. that, because they sucked all the air out of it. I know it made a ton of money, and most people just see it as a harmless kids film, but look at it this way. Selling drugs to kids makes you money too, but it's still- You see? He just writes down every joke. But that's, every joke but, just immediately- we're, Well, we're not, at, we're, not at the, we're not at the end of the joke yet, so there's still time. It's still wrong. This- It's still wrong. Oh, I, I, no. I, I feel like a bad movie <laughs> okay. is a little different to selling um, drugs to children. Like, I feel like, I feel like different ethical lines being crossed, okay? <laughs> like, I, no, I guess I wrong. see the- I see It's the, still wrong. I see it's it, still wrong. but I kind of- I, I see the outline of a connection. Maybe. I see a jaw marked fun and there's nothing inside it. Yeah, like I see Disney. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I yeah. Just air. No, they took all the air out. I think the you know, like drugs are a little drugs bit too much kids. fun. It's like creative drugs. I Instead of drugs killing right brain cells, they kill it. originality. And judging by the success of We're their other crappy remakes, they're just as addictive. Though the technology is impressive, I don't get why people celebrate remaking what's already perfectly fine when nothing new or interesting fine. is added. Perfectly fine. Yeah, maybe I'll give him the benefit I, of the doubt there, but just, I think he means you know, things in general, things that are fine yeah. just to be left maybe. alone. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll give him the benefit okay, of the doubt. Yeah, I think yeah, Nostalgia sorry. Critic has earned a, a bit of. He's a, he's. He's a favorite of the show, of course. Everyone loves it when we check out his work. Uh, he's a huge fan of EFAP, I'm sure. Added. it. I While know. the casting is decent and Timon and Pumbaa get a few laughs, I don't see this one being as valued as the original. As of the course, saying yeah. goes, there can Docking. only be one king. I mean, no one talks about this. No, it's no, dead. I mean, it's no gone. one. No. People cares. only reference it as a thing that happened. Nothing the about the film itself is ever referenced. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. And I think it's obvious which one I, and other fans of good storytelling, see as the true ruler. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. And you know what? I'm gonna give the, the director the a piece one. of my mind! Yeah! Here go. Yeah, my desk has Skype button. One of the famous Nostalgia Critic skits. No. All right, all right. Oh, yeah, I mean, give me one second. I got somebody oh, bothering no. me. Oh my you god, know, it's I like hope a this photograph is important. I'm working Favreau. on Mandalorian season two. John Favreau, how can shows how old it is? Mandalorian season two yeah. wasn't even out yet. Oh. Yeah, but yeah, he, that's why time. it's so bad. It's so bad because John Favreau was working hard on it, and Nostalgia Critic interrupted him and threw off his groove. <laughs> I see. <laughs> the Nostalgia Critic, you You're ruined the one it. To blame. You're the one to blame for how insanely crappy season. Everyone's two of the upset at me. Was. You, you guys need to see what he says. Okay, something gets said here yeah. that's just. Uh, make something as terrible as the Lion King. Ugh, this again. Look, I'd love to chat and figure out how you got this contact, but I'm pouring my blood, sweat, and tears into this thing, okay? No, we've been talking about this for hours. We need to keep him an anti-hero. That's what makes him complex and interesting. Wait, is he talking about Din Djarin? Is, yeah, he he's think, not an anti-hero. Uh, they though. think Din Djarin's oh, no. an anti-hero. <laughs> no, he's what? just... Name uh, one no, dodgy thing that a... fucker does in all three seasons. It's, you know... Things. When he shoots um, a Jawa, <laughs> but I mean, they stole his shit. So. Jawas had it coming. I would have shot him too. I would have shot him more. You would have um, shot them all. I would. I just need. I. 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 I'm just. I just need one excuse, and not much of one. Um. I would just. Say I often leave my. I often leave my ship, let's laying around in the desert with mm -hmm. you know unlocked and parked, and I just sit there. I just fucking wait. It's funny. It took me like two <laughs> minutes to realize. Oh wait, that's Mando. Because I've never called him Dinjarin in my life. Wow, go <laughs> no show how much calls, you no know. No one calls him Dinjarin. No one calls him Dinjarin. Fake fan. But, um, yeah, no, he's, he's, he's like, boringly heroic throughout the Mando shit. Mm -hmm. And yeah. another Ooh, thing. Excuse me, sir, you're what? supposed to direct this shot for Lion King 2. Oh, I forgot I was doing it. Lion King 2? <gasps> you're not ruining the incredible okayness of Simba's pride! What's... Don't, okay. Oh, credible okayness? No, no, no. It's got it's got its moments, but I I fucking hate that movie. So let's yeah, but that's because you've watched it a million times. Yes, it is. That I just I just defended I just defended it too. Yeah, but you you defended it while also loading in that you hate it. So yeah. So <laughs> wait, 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 I'm just well, look. I'm just showing. I'm things. just I'm just showing everybody my bias. I'm just putting it yeah, out there up front yeah, so that everyone yeah, knows yeah, that. That's true. But even I, I, I mean, Roasty Toasty Princess is a funny thing, this you know, expression. but they're, they're, this okay. But, wow. Look at it. Look at the expression. It's a pretty this good one. a funny one. expression. 
<laughs> Simba there or there. You know what? Uh, right between the giraffe's legs, uh, underneath the ball sack. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. <sighs> what are we going to reintroduce Bill Burr? Wait, you barely give any direction. Oh, yeah. Well, I do these animal movies, so Disney will let me do what I really want. Well, as a critic, I question your creative... Hey, as a director, I got to pick my battles. Know what I mean? B but I don't... Uh... Look, do you like my remakes? No. Do you like The Mandalorian? Hell yeah! Well, I can't make one oh, without the uh, other. Uh, the money The Lion King made uh, would pay what? for six seasons of The Man no, I don't get no oh, because no, you no, oh, no, 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 I but I don't to create the piece. Do you like my remakes? No. Do you like The Mandalorian? Hell yeah! Well, I can't make one without the other. The money The Lion King made would pay for six seasons of The Mandalorian. But the original Lion King is still around. Well, no, the question oh, here, no, even, even from the oh, no, 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 is, no, 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 why no, did you no, make no, the, no. why is Lion King 2019 so shit? Why did you make it so shit then? Why is it so bad? Like, why why like, couldn't you have just copy. made it Then why is Mando so shit too? <laughs> Also, yeah. why is Mando so shit? Yes. Oh, yes, oh, that is well. Okay, well, let's see. Let's we'll see. We'll and look, here. all those animators had to work on a bunch of shit they didn't want to before they could get to that. You think everybody wanted to animate the Wuzzles? But your remake was so. What are Wuzzles? Just a second. I, I do not know. Is this an animal body part? Oh, the Wuzzles are. Oh, the Wuzzles, 1985. It's an animated season of. It's got strange creatures in it. Okay. Uh, Bumble cool. Bumble Lion, Butter Bear, Hippopotamus. Bumble Lion. Wait, how come Hippop? Oh no, it's the Hopopotamus. It seems to be a, a, an ungodly combination of a Hippopotamus and a <laughs> and some sort of a rabbit creature. Uh, <laughs> okay. We have an Elaru, which is an elephant and a kangaroo. Oh. A Moosel, great. which is a weasel and a moose, I assume. Mussolini. A Rhino Key, <laughs> which is a a rhino and a monkey, I assume. Mm. Like yeah, so that was. That was a thing I learned about today. All right. Carry on. Bad! Bad enough not to see any more Mandalorian? Yes, please, 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 please. No. You I'd rather see than neither of them. Yeah. Focusing on my bad else. stuff, and I'll do my thing focusing on my good stuff. I, which one? Tell me which one it is. Yes, that makes sense. I, I, I hope I this isn't being presented as a compelling calculus. <laughs> oh, I think yeah. it is. <laughs> I think I just, it I is. I want to sit down with these people who are delusional and be like, Tell me why the Mandalorian. No, isn't wait. Shit. Let's move past that. Let's assume that the Mandalorian is great. That. Why do we? Okay, sure. Why? Why does this? How is this logic like? Yeah. How is this useful? Well, yeah. How like, come the yeah, Lion I mean, King had to be shit? We had to make a film that shit. And hey, the original still exists, and it means that these films exist. Why can't it be a good movie that makes a lot of money? Why can't it be a yes. good remake that makes a lot of money? Even if we have to say that it's well, going to be a remake. You have to make money from movie. bad things to make good things. But that's crazy. Also, so are, if why, do we, why are we accepting this as the paradigm? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why he and, thinks this is true. And if the Mandalorian lost a lot of money, it doesn't matter how good the Lion King did. They wouldn't say yeah. keep making more Mandalorian if it was a money sink. Well, and also, why are we putting it that way around? Why don't we put it the other way around? That Mando makes the money that and enables them to make the remakes. They all make money. Well, they did. They all made yeah. money. Once upon a time. time. This time, yeah. Well, so I'm, I'm sure people are sitting at home it's like, oh, that new shitty remake is coming out. Let's go watch that so we can watch more Mandalorian <laughs> in the future. I'm sure yeah. that's exactly the it's mindset people one have one, to right? go into the cinema. <laughs> it's exactly right. It's not a one for one. It is not that you are trading in these bad movie chits to get good movie chits. That's not <laughs> yeah. what no. is happening. That's silly. I don't care. I have to get back to work. Sir, the scene. Looks great. Now let's talk about how our villain has to run a fast food chicken restaurant. So, do you understand now, Buster? I think so. In order to oh, be God, a cat happening. cow. Oh, that was supposed to be the cat's voice, but that's just his voice, so it didn't. <laughs> yes, the, oh, no, the, was, cat's, the thought, cat's not talking. I thought it's he just was sitting there looking around. Well, well, yeah, I thought he was talking to the cat because his voice was like his no, voice. No, the cat's talking. Yeah. I Look see at that this now. Cat. He's talking to yeah. Look at this cat. 
fish, Cal. You have to give the people what they want. Even if what they want is bullshit. Why? Why? See, what? I was gonna that's say there is there's so much to that's unwrap here. I'm gonna roll us back. Okay, we gotta oh roll my. back on this. Okay. I'm in overload. So, do you understand now, Buster? I think so. In order to be a cash cow, you have to give the people what they want. Even if what they want is bullshit. So, no, you don't. we're gonna see a lot more bear remakes, huh? Looks uh, like it, but in the long run, point. they help us produce the good stuff. And we'll appreciate oh, that. Oh, no. shut up! Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God! No, 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 no. Why are we so defeatist on this? No, no, no. What, a, what an awful... <laughs> What Lion King has argument. to be shit yeah. because people want shit, but at least it lets us get the good stuff, which is the Mandalorian. Which like again, seven... assu assuming that it's good, which is there's not. like seventeen ways that this doesn't make well, sense. Well, yeah, couldn't. I mean, yeah. why don't you just look at like I don't know Disney back in the nineties when they were just making good film after good film after good film that was funding each yeah, successive nice. you know project. Wait a minute. Why can't it be good films funding yourself... good films? That's not possible. You can give people what? stuff that is good that they like. Cause, yeah, because yeah, some... the idea that people wouldn't be receptive to something that's really really great, you know, at like that's the Lion King remake, but great. How like how is that going to make you less money? <laughs> <laughs> if it's a bad, you know, if it's a great film. You have to give people what it's, they want, and what they want is shit. And that gets you yeah, money, and then you can give people a, what they actually want, which is also not we, shit. It's so fucking... This, what? It feels like a false dichotomy. Like, you have to make bad yes. to make good, when you can just make good to make good. It could it, always be... It could all be good. Why, why does John Favreau have to make something that he doesn't have any interest in, in order no. to make the thing that he's interested in? The, the bigger question is, why the fuck does Nostalgia Critic think this is a good argument to begin with? I don't know. He can still yeah. try hard. Even but, if he yeah. doesn't really care, he can still Some try hard. Right. Right. Yeah, it's just, just say I'm that right, Lion right. King is shit, and that's the end of the fucking video. Okay. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. But at least it pays for Mandalorian. It's like, what? <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, yeah, like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like that drum joke. It's like that, but at least you get Mando, and Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. I think these cats agree with you on this. <laughs> I think the cats care for you. I, I think I'm ready to give the people the fluff they deserve. Not the fluff no. they deserve, Buster, but the fluff they need. That makes no, oh, no. sense. I don't care. It does not make sense. Uh, What's okay. this music? <laughs> <It's> custom, <laughs> epic, I don't know. Dramatic. Is that crooked? What a strange place for a, about to blow for a coat hangers. You know, like Why are you showing me this right after I get hallway. up usually? Why do you keep doing this to me? <laughs> to teach you, to learn you, to never wake back up. I, I, I walk, I was like, huh, I could get up and join the lads again. Or I could sleep more. So like, you know what? It's going to be a fun time going back to the lads. And then yeah. you show me nostalgia critic. And I just want to fucking jump over the bridge. Nostalgia critic? You trying to call him a cretin? Shut up. Did you do, we'll did the cretin, yeah. Soon. Cretin yeah, was that was mad. totally on purpose. See? Yeah, I definitely. Knew it. From the... What the hell? I oh, get it? Cow. Oh, shut up! Oh, like the Lion God. King. Well, if you were gonna do the lifted up, why would you do it like that, though? Where it's super closed up and it's straight up? Well, yeah, why? it's not the right angle. Maybe it's... You, you, you have the no... difficult part, which is having he, he a cat close by that you it's can hold now. up. He has no. You no. remade it, but shitty, like the Lion King twenty nineteen. <laughs> is, is this is this whole no thing a metaphor, <laughs> or is this like a stealth explanation for nostalgia critic? Like this this ending scene. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you know, you know, just you have to make the shit things to make the shit that you really want to make. <laughs> so he makes nostalgia critic. <laughs> oh my god, it's like meta. Oh, I get it now. Yeah. Wow. And kind of works. I was thinking he was like um, having some dissonance in his head. Where how come Mando is good in his head? It's good w while like while Lion King shit. Yeah, pissonance. Yeah, I think it's a good word. For <laughs> yeah, guys, don't worry. Little Mermaid paid for Mando season three. It, it, right. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> it barely paid for I don't, itself. But... I don't, yeah, I was gonna say I don't know if Little Mermaid paid for the Little Mermaid. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm starting to see a pyramid scheme forming. There you go, the cash cow. Well, wait, right. what? Well, there's still three and a half minutes left. No, that's it's fine. That, that, that's yeah, it. The rest is the like, the rest is like out and stuff. Yeah, stuff. That's I, I, I refuse. I, I, <laughs> I refuse. I was gonna say, I feel like you don't have too much exposure to nostalgia critic. That's oh, a little okay, bit. Yeah. that's fair. That's fair. I disagree so strongly with this concept that we have to have bad content before we get to the good. Yeah, yeah. just why, that why you have you... to have bad. 
at all. Just at is all. Any... You don't have to. I, I guess we watched the rest of the video mutually at some point. This is video? Like any... I, I was sent to this is... portion of it because I'm oh, assuming okay, the was... rest of this is probably normal. Because I was wondering if there's anything that leads normal up to this. Him? Because if not, this just comes out of nowhere. It's like, yeah, this is a really pissed movie. But actually, it's fine. It's like, wh what? Yeah. No, it's not. Well, I think this is why someone let us know in, uh, in Super Chats, because this was what would have been fucking bizarre to hear. It's like, yeah, bash on that stupid remake, and then suddenly it's like, but we need them. What? No, no, <laughs> no we don't. Like, just kind of reminds me of the, that game oh, studios my. need live service games to pay for their shit. And then we have like all these other games coming out that are single player with a microtransactions. Like, look how well they do. They do way better than your shit games. Like, huh? Oh, are you saying we can make money out of good things? Crazy. So, next up, we have a little video oh, no, from someone yeah, we've covered okay. before. Mm -hmm. um, oh boy! This this video is called "The people. Bad Movie Trend." Oh no. Uh -huh. And the uh -huh. thumbnail Wait. says, why do we like bad movies with Mario okay, on the front of okay. it? Okay. Oh, I mean, uh -huh. that could be an interesting topic. All right. Like, and, why, uh, is, why is there Mario's bad things bad that movie, are enjoyable? But, okay. The lad who made it is the lad who made the video about Marcus being a bad character in Arcane. No! <laughs> you fool! <laughs> hey, I retract my statement. He could have good opinions about this one, like okay? Him? Yeah, oh, maybe the Marcus those one already was text one on off. screen. Text on screen oh, wait, is perfectly it's normal. Doing the... Hold on. You, you know, you know. Bad I'm gonna. There we go. Wait, I'm, why I'm we... gonna. I'm gonna go. <gasps> gonna. All right. I'm gonna. Go. Uh. Well. All right. I mean, you know, I I, I can't I legally make you stay. So. Yeah. Or technically. Yeah. Or. Te <laughs> Or quantum um, mechanically. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Like you guys, you're doing this 24 hours. It's fucking incredible. I don't know that I have it. Didn't it's 5:30. You know, like for me. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, 5:30 a.m. A.m. I mean, that's that's sleep. you're almost at waking up time. That's fine. But there you go. You can stay easy. <laughs> that worked out real well. How about that? It worked mm. out real well. Every every minute spent in here is a minute closer. It's true. It's okay. true. Uh, I'm so happy to have been here for years. It's awesome that you guys are doing five years and soon six and then ten. It's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. We ain't even going to stop by the time we hit our 10 billion year anniversary. It's still going to be going. That's right. Right? Well, I, it's incredible. Can, can I come we back? We will have trained AI to respond to videos. Can I come back, guys? I have to walk my dog. So. Yes, you're allowed to walk your dog. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Master Mola. No problem. Go problem. <laughs> See you guys. Nonetheless, I, I am going to hop out. It's so good to be here. Uh, I hope that shortly my schedule will be better because you guys have invited me on several times over the past couple of months and I haven't had the chance. My schedule has been very, very uh, chaotic, but I'm really excited to be able to come back on. <laughs> you didn't give a fuck about your <laughs> <laughs> Once it comes back. It's fine. That's fine. He, he had to walk his dog, right? That's true. So, yeah. 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 Dogs are important, Rags. Like yes, they are. Would yes, appreciate they that. are. They are very, yes, they mm -hmm. should be appreciated. They put yeah. up with a lot of shit. Exactly. So hopefully my schedule will clear up shortly and I'll be able to be on a lot more frequently because uh, I do miss doing this. Well, good. Yeah, we want you back. So <laughs> do your thing and go. The and death of sincerity right there, right? <laughs> I'm not, the, I'm go. as sincere as could possibly be. All right, guys. I'm the definition happy, of sincerity. Happy we anniversary. always love to have you. Yeah. Thanks for jumping on, man. Absolutely, Absolutely. adore all of you. Have a good night. Bye. See you, later. See you later. Bye. 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 Toodles. Don't get shot. Do -do -do. <laughs> all right. Now we are back to That's this, like a, uh, this core cool group. Here as well. And yes, like ER these. is here in theory. Liar. That's Lewis. Schrodinger's R. Schrodinger's Lewis. Yeah, I'll make an anime noise. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> That's an anime noise. You can tell because it's shit and awful. All so. right. I suppose it's up I to like us. These other thumb I like yep. these other thumbnails here. One just says, Silco, where's makeup? It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah, yeah he's got that? like foundation or whatever for his skin. I was also going to say, this is the, uh, it's like the dead zone. 
the half 10 a.m. British time. That's got to be like the time where just it nobody's is. alive or around. But for some reason, 3,000 people are watching us. What are you guys doing? <laughs> You're They're probably wow, all from it's... Australia. Maybe. Aww. Yeah, because it's 4.30 in the morning here in Freedom <laughs> Land. So, geez. And here we are watching a video about movies. Let's movie do it. No, Let's find okay. out Let's the bad movie trends. Then, find all about it. Why did we start bad liking movie. bad movies? There's a moment in the Super Mario Brothers movie. So, why do we start liking bad movies? Are you going to go all the way back to when art was Stop first thing? Because Super Mario Bros. movie is definitely not a good start. Oh, is it not playing it's for not, you guys? No. Yeah. Not playing for me. Yeah, I, did a, I did right. a reload, so it should be fine right. now. Reload. Hopefully. Five seconds. We're at five seconds. Like, if you were asked, why did we start liking bad movies? The first thing you're probably going to want to go to is like, oh, you mean like, like so bad it's good? What do you mean? Yeah, that's else? what I would think of. But I mean, if you're saying well, that people the movie... like stuff, oh, sorry. Well, the the title has bad in quotations, so I don't know if that's supposed to be like, oh, they're not really bad, but hmm. I I I'm not, I'm not certain what that means. Maybe hmm. we'll learn. Maybe he'll educate us. Edgeable that would guy. be fun. Uh, I'm here to learn. The other thing would be like a Transformers type. Why would why is that popular when it's bad? If someone said something like that, at least when Michael Bay's ones were doing really well. Um, and I, I think our answer would just be that it appeals to like fundamentals for entertainment for an audience, right? It'd be pretty straightforward. Pretty much. Yeah. So let's see where he takes us on this journey. Movie when they're planning something about fighting Bowser, how do we do X? What's the plan? And then the answer is cards. And it reminded me of this. There's one thing this video needs. K-pop. Sorry. Kid. Do you guys remember that? It was horrible. Uh, uh, I don't remember yeah. that. that. That's like YouTube rewind. It was brand new to me. I know it's the reason why they don't do these anymore. The thing they don't do anymore. No, yeah. they, st they stopped because it became too cringe. The cringiness killed it. What, Everyone knew to make fun they, like, of it. Weren't they like super disliked? Uh, yeah, it, it, years in a row. it didn't benefit YouTube at all. It was just something everybody yeah. made fun of. So I just like that instead of uh, listening to the audience and just making it better, it's like, we're just going to stop. Do you remember the fucking, <laughs> like, the amount of time? I would actually like to get a number of the amount of times Will Smith has turned up in a meme video going, ah, oh, that's hot. That's hot. Uh, <laughs> yo. Yeah, it's, rewind, huh? ah, ah. <laughs> it's like the beginning of a Doctor Zook in the Medicine Show song. Casey, it was a really forced segue, and the snobby YouTuber. A forced segue. The carts is a forced segue. I no, mean, they obviously they wanted Rainbow Road, well, but they tried to give it a reason. Like, and you know, a it was a I can't believe I'm saying this, but it, you have the several worlds in the world, and they go from one to another, and they need to do it fast. They go with carts. I don't really have that much of an issue with that. I mean, it's they they gave it some. Ra it, it's not a great explanation, but it's something they could have done nothing. Yeah, but like, I, I guess what I'm saying is it doesn't stuff in them, it doesn't know? stand out to me when I was watching it as like, good God, that is awful. No, no, it, it really didn't. It was just like, okay, yeah, all right. Super analysis brain inside of my skull knew the supposed plot reason was really just we need to get to the next big Mario set piece. And everyone knew it. Surely everyone else would. Well, that's all films. We're trying to get to the next set piece. You're always looking for reasons to get to the next part. Yeah. yeah. Everyone saw how dumb that was, right? Just how I mean, good or I bad they are, you know? I, don't I, don't think I, need, I, need, I need to hear the argument. Tell me why this is especially yeah. dumb that they get into carts to get from one world to another. Yeah, tell me how this doesn't match the Mario universe logic. Because I'm willing to concede uh, flaws in terms of writing or, or stretches, but like an especially bad thing? I don't know about that was in pain just like me and then imagine my shock looking around the theater and seeing nothing but smiling faces totally locked in enjoying he's that guy the meme they don't know that <laughs> <laughs> i think this is dumb as shit yeah. well, I guess we do now. good job for some epic Mario Kart clips. I mean scenes. I had a comically bad Didn't reaction, and I've had bad reactions to scenes like this and movies like this in the past. It's not a learning mindset, which is embarrassing. It is too easy to see people enjoying something you don't like and do a proverbial Trumpian wrong. Something about Mario made me realize just how stubborn I was being. And let me tell you another form of this intellectual laziness on my part. My other reaction was like, ah, it's a kid's movie. Ah, it's Nintendo. It's a big brand. And if we're thinking critically here, this is an answer to who is enjoying it or who is 
is causing the enjoyment. And that's not what's bothering me. I want to know what the enjoyment is. I want to know what these movies are. Is it really that it's, hard to it's understand? It's super why straightforward. Like yeah. The Mario movie. Yeah. yeah. It's a very Mario simple not, structure. Well, it's such a simple, crowd pleasing, fun movie. There's nothing subversive about the Mario movie or anything. It's, it's just colorful, look at all the cool, simple fun references jokes, and sounds, happy, and bouncy well, characters, a, a basic story long. structure. It's it's basic really story. easy. It's it, it, if anything, you can make the argument that it is like you put into a machine, make a crowd pleasing movie, and then it turns out this. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, it's like almost optimized to be the most crowd pleasing, inoffensive movie. If you're a if you're a film analyzer YouTuber, I mean, like, come on, this should be like this is T ball level shit. Like, come on, man. What are kids getting out of it? How does that differ from adults or some adults, people like me? And then why do some adults, unlike me, still love this? Just because this movie is not my taste doesn't mean these questions don't deserve real answers. Not excuses, not rationalizations, real good answers. So let me steer us towards the answers by asking two uh, see, even look, bigger okay. questions. Right. These are questions I've had for a while now. The first is a truly bizarre quote from one of my biggest writing role models, Eiichiro Oda, creator of One Piece. The context here is that Oda was writing Strong World, one of the One Piece movies, and he was describing his initial plans for a story about Luffy's childhood. And it was going to be a real emotional story. That's what he said. It was going to be a real tearjerker. And then he says this. As I was in the middle of writing it, I started to worry. Is this kind of cushy story the thing I would really want to see? I don't believe I've ever written something purely for the purpose of making a good story. Oh, if that's something that that's happens in the comic, great. the overall story has to be longer. And then I don't mind a good story in there, among other things, as a dash of spice. However, oh. for something as short as a movie... If I just made a good story, it all came down to where I could fit in the kinds of things boys really want to see. Action and strong characters. I had just churned out this touching uh, story, uh, but no matter how good... Uh. I can tell he writes an anime, but carry on. <laughs> the story it was, the only people that would probably enjoy it were adults, and that's not my role. I, 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 wow. Um, There's so much uh, to unpack. That, was there a translation issue drop here? drop that on me, huh? There's so much to say. Like, I, I, I don't... It almost feels like... He's getting lucky. Yeah. <laughs> no matter how well, good I mean, a story it was, the only like people who probably enjoy it were like... adults. I don't understand. I'm, yeah, I'm I'm confused by the quote. Uh, I don't I don't know what to make. I don't I don't know anything about One Piece. Like I don't I don't know like how good or bad it is or what you know who it's made for. I just find this quote I, yeah, strange without any context. Yeah. I don't know what to do with it. I draw comics for boys. It wasn't the kind of thing I wanted to write anyway, so even if there was a call for something emotional, I didn't have to please everyone asking for that. Starting from scratch, mm -hmm. I fixed the theme on excitement, and from the planning to the setting, changed it all just like that. So oh. basically, oops. So you had a great story, a and then story, like, oh, which wow. you boys don't right. want. Let me get rid of it so I can write what kids do enjoy, which is a bad story, apparently. Okay, so he's well, as, as confused. That what, that's, that. not, that's not he what he said. He didn't say I'll write a bad story. He said he would write a different story that presumably he still thinks is good. It's just a different kind of good. The kind of good that would appeal to the He said he'd focus on action, boys. and yeah. when he said he'd focus on strong character, it was like, that appeals I mean, to boys? Mm -hmm. Did that mean strong as in, like, I of guess. strong constitution? Strong, like, just, like, like strong, physically strong, strong, or I don't know. Like, uh, um, it's a very confusing quote. Maybe yeah, like yeah. powerful characters and action. Because I, I can buy that. Yeah, the young boys like to see action packed scene. I mean, kind of everyone does. Adult um, boys like seeing that too. Part of the thing is yeah. that based on that quote, I'm not sure that that fits into the topic that's being had about it being good or bad. Because oh. I imagine that if you asked me, it'd be like, "Well, I'm still trying to write something good. It's just." different, you know, different way of going about it. Yeah. I suppose hmm. we'll have to see yeah. how all of this fits in with whatever the hell is going on. Let's say. So, mm -hmm. what the mm. heck, Oda? Really? Seriously? This is something I never understood with all these bad movies that come out. These reboots, these bad sequels full of fan service movies no one asked for. That well, these are not the ones to point to because everybody nobody likes these. and they failed. Yeah, nobody yeah, likes them and the, the box the, office the for them failed. Like. Transformers is always the go-to for this. Those yeah. will be bad. I get the appeal of the superficial things, the nostalgia, the fun, the Easter eggs, but why not also just make it a good yeah. story? Does good I mean, writing yeah. get cost more I mean, per yeah. word than bad writing <laughs> or something? I mean, I'd probably answer that with a yes. Um, it just well, it takes ultimately more time, takes more. Sure. Yeah, the time, time is yeah. money in Hollywood for sure. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, put in all I'm the fun focused. stuff and make it good, please. Yep. Okay, second question has to do with something I heard from this creator called Atria. Oh, that's where, that's where dev shops. He goes to Big A Discount Foods. 
Which is the by the dollar meat store. Well, yeah, he goes to the oh, meat no. store. He doesn't go to this place. Fuck this. This is way hey, too expensive. It does. What, big A discount foods? No, he's got to pick up like his plants and stuff. And crackers. Not well, crackers are plants, but you, you know. Please not use slurs on the yeah. stream. Yeah. yeah, what the fuck? Plants? Yes. Whoa, he said it again. Yeah. Just Who hears a plant? It. I'm Keeps sorry, Flora. Keeps on doing it. Keep Ridiculous. saying the P word. Chuck, listen to this. This is going to freak you out. People who have been in meetings with Netflix. Oh, this is the AI porn man. AI porn man. Atria. He got in. Oh, he got in oh. Yeah, he, the, well, I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. I better be careful because they all look similar sometimes. A lot of streamers that I do. <laughs> Wait, does his shirt say Lewis? <laughs> Wait, does it? <laughs> have does it? That I can't say, no, no, oh, it's, uh, no. Man. There's a hate. Oh, that was almost the most. Um, that was almost the most amazing thing ever in the universe. Okay, some people are saying it is him. So the the story being that he got in super trouble because he searched for AI porn of his best friend's girlfriend. I believe that's the drama. Oh. Okay, and he he, he like he had to do a stream where he was crying and saying that he'd failed as a <laughs> person and and stuff. And then he had to like donate or something. I don't fucking know. <laughs> it's, YouTuber <laughs> apology. Yes. Um, isn't it? Who's the other? Ludwig, right? That's the other one. That's the. It's. It was Ludwig's girlfriend or something. Cutie Cinderella. Is that the one? It's so difficult to remember all the names. Yeah. It, I. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Something about some. I just. But there's probably people in chat who can. Like, oh, if only had, we had Chud Logic right now, he'd be able to tell us all of it. He, yeah, he gave us all the encyclopedic okay, second question knowledge. has to do with Who something I heard from this critical weird. Atria. Mm. Listen to this. This is going to freak you out. People who have been in meetings with Netflix all over Hollywood have noticed that one show name keeps popping up over and over again, and I bet you cannot guess it. The answer? Emily in Paris. In every meeting Netflix has been having with talent, they've been saying, can we get okay. a show? I've never heard of this show in my entire life. <laughs> I've never heard. I'm going to yeah. assume the I've premise of the show... I've heard it's not very good. Someone named Emily who is in Paris. That's a safe You can bet. tell by the beret, the red beret. Oh, she's a red beret. Oh, wow. Show that's Ooh. more like Emily in Paris. This is their North Star. It hits a niche that they have been calling ambient TV. <laughs> ambient TV. Oh, is I see. Oh, I'm going to guess Putting that some... ambient TV is just something that you can have on. You don't exactly, pay much attention yeah. to it. Yeah, it's like easy listening without the having to pay attention to it. It's like Ellerman. I can Elevator follow it music. without following it. Yeah, that yeah, can yeah, content. It, the stuff you put on to fall asleep to, but that like, you don't care about, you know? Mm, not right. even to fall asleep to, just like I'm not even. It's like well, noise. It's background like noise second, in the second background. Monitor, right? Second monitor viewing. Second monitor. Or, I guess, yeah. Oh, maybe. TV while you're, you know, on your phone or doing something else. A classic. Yeah, th this is second monitor content while you're doing something else. Not even like, not even like at the computer. Yeah, I'm laying in bed on my phone and on my computer. On the second monitor on my computer is this thing playing just to maybe remind my subconscious that maybe I'm not alone. Yeah, I like to hear the voices. It's slightly structured noise. Slightly structured noise, I like that. <laughs> the idea that it's a show that you can kind of just have on. <laughs> right, so. Good they guess. want yeah. more of that. Background noise TV. So my question here is, what? Okay, so sometimes you answer a question by well, applying it's gonna be or more... discovering. <clears throat> it's going to be more... Playtime, yeah, people have more clicks on it, which gives them probably in turn more revenue, I guess. I don't know I think how the business model it, works. I, I it's think a fascinating phenomenon. It's both reasonable to be surprised by it and also to, to reasonably figure out why that's also something they would want. I, I, I could buy both yeah, reactions yeah. pretty easily, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah, deriving sure. new information, but sometimes you answer a question just by accepting that the phenomenon exists. What Oda is saying is shocking to someone who loves great stories, someone like me, someone like most of you, I'm sure. But if you accept what he's saying as true, that if you write a good emotional tearjerker story, it will appeal to adults and not to young boys. And young boys, I don't buy that. I think I, I don't buy that. Yeah, I was gonna say, dude, what Pixar, yeah, dude, what fucking some of them, some I don't know if we're supposed to be considered, um. Outside of the norm, no, though. No, Toy Story made tons of money. Come on, people love that, and people were emotionally moved by that. And even as a kid, people would have enjoyed it. Well, for I emotional, yeah. you know, mm. resonance. I find myself getting emotional at media more as I get older. Not yeah, less. 
My, yeah. uh, I'm getting. It's yeah, worth I, considering I as well that it wouldn't disprove shit to have Toy Story successful because that does have action and it does have excitement. Yep. Well, I mean, that's it's a good example, and the Pixar movies are a really good example of a, a balance that's that you can still make really great stories that are crowd pleasing films. Like Pixar films are crowd pleasing. They got a lot of comedy. They got fun, wacky characters, like a cute uh, style a lot of the time, like an approachable style. Uh, but they still have their like emotionally wow, so moments. That, if anything, it's a big yeah. So that I well, buy, I hate movies that try to make me cry. I don't even believe you. Damn. You know, like T two when when he's put thumbs up in the in the lava. That shit's fucking sad. Yeah, come on, don't tell me. Yeah, and don't uh, tell yeah. me you were like, I hate this. That'd be a good explain your position. Well. Explain. Yeah, and I think I think no, boys no. fucking adored that film, uh, especially mm -hmm. that moment because it was fucking yeah. Like I, I don't know, this this is way too. I disagree. I mean, if you <laughs> want to make the observation that like boys and teenage boys like want to see films that have more action, they don't want to watch films that are just people talking in a room. Like yeah, as a as a trend for sure. But I mean, definitely like people like good stories and kids like good stories too it's one of the arguments yeah. you know it's one of the reasons why it's annoying it's like it's a kid's movie kids like good movies like have higher expectations of content created for children yeah and also people who are very creative and putting like i don't know adult they jokes care. and something into into these kids <laughs> movies that you don't really get i mean there's a reason why you have all these posts online it's like Oh shit! I never realized this as a child or something. Yeah, Lion King Dude, as well. The, like, yeah, Lion King I cried when Dexter Jetster said, "Camino Saver Dart." <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's just it's yeah. such a perfect delivery. <laughs> it touched me in ways that I didn't know I could be touched. That's the prequels for you. I'm still in therapy. They brought a lot of people to tears. All kinds of I'm different giant. reasons. Yep. I mean, we're keep oh yeah, going. like there's <laughs> so many films. <laughs> Boys do just want to see excitement at strong characters. I mean, can you just apply what he just did earlier and say, like, why not have excitement, strong characters, and tear jerking moments? Mm. I mean, that's kind of what T2 was. It's exciting as fuck, it's what, super that's strong what characters, and it's super sad. That's what a lot of, yeah. of the. Bounce it all. Yeah. Have it all. If I'd you also like to that, point out that, this, that the stills of this scene. When you no, it's not fair. No, it's, it's totally uh, not fair. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he described a good story as being the role of a spice. That means he's seeing it as enhancing some other thing that's primary. So what is that other thing? Know, what I other... don't know if that's what... I don't know if that's what was meant. I'm willing I mean, to... I, mean, that was that was a, long, I think this is the reasonable though, interpretation. If, um, if you describe something maybe... as a spice, then it's enhancing something else, <laughs> sure. Uh... As a spite, well, part of it is I'm wondering because trans, you know, was something lost in translation? Well, but so assuming it wasn't lost in translation, that's a reasonable uh, thing to take away from okay. what he had. All right. Other thing is there, and once we do find that, then how are stories functioning in that way? How are stories functioning as spice? So Oda does explain what the main course is. He says that. Um, okay. I'm not actually not too. I can understand that too. I could understand someone being like, "I want to make a movie that's mainly just this guy killing people." Can you throw a story that can... That's what happened with fucking M.O.M. That's what they did with Michael Waldron. They were like, mm. we've got all of this shit. Can you write something <laughs> that puts all this shit together? <laughs> the story at that point is the spice, I suppose. I'd be willing to accept that. This. See, for boys, there's something special about seeing two powerful things fighting each other. Oh, God, this is actually making me think a lot about M.O.M. Because... <laughs> Imagine this was the logic. Aww. It's like, we need to have Doctor Strange fight Wanda, and the story's really not important. The boys will love it. <laughs> <laughs> the point is it's the kind of thing that gets their veins pumping. Now again, that may sound really superficial to us, but let's take him at his word. That is the experience, apparently. Excitement, veins pumping, and that does seem true. You can totally imagine a person, especially a young boy, just seeing a fight scene between two strong characters, no context, and it's exciting. There's adrenaline, blood pumping, and that could be a fun, enjoyable feeling. Again, no context, no story. Potentially, sure. Also, or, it can, or, or I can just see it as completely superficial, and I don't care about anything that's happening. Um, a fight scene in isolation doesn't necessarily have no story. No, yeah, you can tell a lot of story it. with how they work, what they do. I'll concede that we got no context because that's kind of like yeah, built in, absolutely. but no story. Like you know, typically, most action scenes will have story. So yeah, now, like what without can context, I'm still usually wondering, like, why, yeah. why? Okay, why are these two characters fighting? What are their, what are their fight moves tell me about them as characters? And uh, 
what what uh, are they going for the kill are they fighting each other out of necessity like what what's going on here there's still a lot you can pick apart without that context um and uh, that can still be a story in of itself so that's worth noting story due to that experience how can an experience like that benefit from a story so nothing earth shattering here stories evoke emotions stories make us care and stories are ordered they take events and give them structure interesting they take events mm -hmm. and give them structure um they take event story takes events and gives them order um, I'm, I'm willing to run with that sure sure that's a yeah i sure yeah i guess fight scene will naturally mm. get our blood pumping but if we care about the characters if it's all making us feel stuff if there's a structure that is designed to focus the power of these moments then the writer's taking an average excitement experience and engaging us more effectively in everything yep. we like about it okay structure yep. let me elaborate Sorry. a bit more on that Structure is designed to do exactly what I just said. It arranges the pieces so that they can operate efficiently at full capacity. But the way that happens is by creating conflict, withholding the solution, and then granting the solution. We get all these wonderful new itches, and the story doesn't let us scratch them just yet. And then at the end, we get our giant back scratcher, and it's so nice. That happens yeah, on a the general story structure. If yeah, it's good. Pretty common. Yeah. 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 yeah let's get, that can work as a metaphor for stories, I guess. I mean, this is much more solid compared to, like, Filmento's wacky advice uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wacky. Yeah. yeah my well, this, brain's not this, melting this is yet normal. this is normal this is yeah, yeah filmento yeah. is like 12 minutes and 17 seconds is when the ostrich should arrive <laughs> dude i was <laughs> always bringing my ostrich too early i i just that's oh, that's the issue yeah yeah that's why you're not writing the books exactly i have my ostrich insider inside the studio macro level and then that happens on individual level also with scenes with beats a bunch of little tinier back scratchers so two things are happening here number one we feel all the moments involved more strongly in terms of their own emotional impact because the structure of tension and conflict makes us want the emotional payoff that we're getting more it's a hunger is the best spice type phenomenon here and then number two with that impact of all these emotions we gotta get that we gotta take that ring to the end zone <laughs> <laughs> Emotions, we get brand new emotions, unique emotions that only come when you have structure, namely completion, satisfaction, and catharsis. And we love those feelings. And we especially... I mean, the the higher and more potent versions of them, I suppose, because even in isolated scenes, you can get those ex experiences. Depends on You can, but if we're talking about the big, you know, finale, the, uh, the resolution, the good guys win, save the day, they're happy, you know. Yeah, which is obviously the end. there's yeah. equivalents for this across all genres. Like even big spooky yeah, monsters sure. chasing you, and you kill it in the second hour. It's like yeah, we mm -hmm. love them when they're associated with other emotions. We love with empowerment, romance, happiness. So here's the thing: all those emotions, all those dynamics associated with the structure. I don't think we care about any of that anymore, or at least we care less about it. Why would I sit and wait for your stupid back scratcher when I can keep scrolling and find another back scratcher? In oh. Um, oh, okay. Um, um, I feel like we're spinning off uh, into a very yeah. different conversation now. Yeah. Mm. Um, like, it's, I feel like this is going into like people being super ADHD and unable to focus and yeah. just wanting like content, content, right. content now, 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 an unwillingness to have. Well, well, and, to I'm man. sorry. I'm going to go to bat for these people too. These people still like movies. Yeah. If, if it's yeah. good, you know, if it's good, I think that's like, the deal. Yeah. That's 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 going to be really unless he, unless like that... his point is going to be that this generation who like this stuff like Mario because it somehow is built the same way yeah. these are. I I guess hmm. oh, I like that the Mario movie is just not. But I mean, I would say that the Mario movie again is way more conventional. Like it, yeah, it, that's a hyper conventional film in terms of its structure. Well, and, and and beginning with the brothers pulling them apart for a significant amount of time and then bringing them yeah. together to beat the but like that's a really normal example of what he was just talking about with the. Uh... The oh, completion sort I mean, of thing, right? The catharsis. The fact, that, the fact that they don't get the invincibility until the end. That, you know, they could yeah. have gotten at the beginning. They could have jam-packed all of that into the beginning. But again, it's still that normal storytelling structure. I, I would say that, I mean, it's a quick movie, but I mean, a lot of animated films are like an hour and a half. You, you mm. know, like, it, it's the reason why Across the Spider-Verse is kind of rare, because it's over two hours long. And that's uh, more uncommon for theatrical Western animated films anyway. Yeah. Immediately.
Why even get all itchy in the first place seems kind of stupid. When I hear people say, oh no, look at young people, our attention spans are getting shorter and shorter. In a sense, true. But long form content oh, is God, on the I rise too. It's just that the true, type right? of long content is in true. these forms that aren't as itchy. It's mm. podcasts, mm. i.e. conversations, it's live streams, i.e. personalities, it's friends having fun, it's Minecraft. Oh, it's hey look, that's us. Hey. Yeah. Hello. Hey chat, that's oh, you too. God, we're a Minecraft. It's endless Cheer, quick populations, it's endless scrolling. Take a farmer from. Didn't he say <laughs> earlier? Um, because he just said clips. Didn't didn't he describe <laughs> mistakenly, quote unquote, the stuff that was going on in Mario as clips, and then he said, uh, I mean scenes. Oh, did he? So I, I think oh, this is going to okay. be about how Mario is TikTok or something. I mean, there Jeez. are scenes in that film that are not, like, easy to present out of context for people to enjoy. There's a lot of the connective scenes between the big, you know, potent payoff moments. Well, because, why uh, I don't think it's a good example. It's worth thinking about as well, because you remember he was talking about how disconnected and, like, crazy the cart sequence is. It's just like, oh, I just sc it's like I scrolled up and now I'm watching the cart sequence clip. Right. I assume. Yeah. I'm maybe jumping ahead here like 100 years ago, they would not be able to sit for 12 hours a day playing Minecraft or watching TikTok. They would not have the attention span for that. They would not have the well, patience. Well, wait, no. That. Wouldn't it be the opposite of that? Wait, that their I, attention I, span is so, so high that they would want a more focused activity? Yeah, Minecraft yeah. would be like... I, I thought the point was that our attention spans are getting shorter and that this guy from 100 years ago, he'd have a very long attention span. It would just be too fast, too much. Not I mean, I feel like wants. there's a lot more to consider there, too. Like, I don't even know if he consider the value of doom scrolling or, well, yeah, regular scrolling, like, even. I'm, I'm gonna go back to farming, you know? I'm going yeah, like, he's, he's like, I want to see farming. how old Bessie's <laughs> doing. I don't care about your whatever this is, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Mario. But they absolutely would have the patience for being in pain until they can get relief from that pain. They would have patience for itchiness. Um... Oh, I, mean, like, so I think we're really starting to stretch the metaphor's usefulness at this point. Um, well, we're just talking about mm. delayed gratification now, aren't we? Yeah. That they're willing yeah. to wait for Which something is, better. Not, but you know. a, a, an itch is an is active that, discomfort that... Is that like, a, is that like is. A, a generation thing, an education thing, an age thing? What, what, is, um, uh, what would be the assumption? Yeah, mean, a technological advancement I, thing? Makes, I think it probably is the way that people consume media has changed a lot. It used to be, like, I mean, you know, you think about decades and decades ago, right? Even in the 50s, t TV wasn't on all the time. You didn't have on demand. The films yeah. were on. The films that were playing were the films that were playing. Yeah. There wasn't really home media. There was TV, and you had to watch it when it came out. Like, it wasn't, everything wasn't available to consume on a whim. And it wasn't as much. It wasn't as accessible. So there was a lot more structure. It definitely it's changed nature of technology and you know standard of living. Whenever we want food, we can have it instantly. Whenever we want entertainment, we can have it instantly. Whenever we want kind of anything, we can have it immediately. Um, and even the jobs that we have, you know, they're they're relatively far more easier than they used to be. You know, generally speaking, um, we're a lot more, you know, you know, privileged and well off than we used to be. And I think all these sorts of things add together. And it does create this attitude of, you know, instant, you know, like we were saying, instant gratification. Right. I'm used to having whatever I want right now. I'm not used to, I mean, like we watched Snow White not too long ago. I came out in 1937 and you, you didn't have like TVs in your houses, really. You had a radio, maybe. Not in 1937, you didn't have a TV. You would have yeah, had a radio. Have a you didn't and have a TV. And there was no home video. There was no, yeah, you know. if, if you wanted to go see a movie, then you had to go to a theater to see it at approved times, you know, mm -hmm. where they were actually showing it. And if you wanted to have, you know, you didn't necessarily just have access to anything that you wanted. And even then, you still had it way better than the people who lived 50 years before you. It was like a, you know, entirely different sort of landscape. But um, I've just seen a comment. It feels like we have it backwards. We can consume it uh, when we want. So content should be more structured, more patient rather than background noise. No, I think... The point would be that because you have to engage with the media on its terms, it kind of demands a level of focus. You have to go see it at this time. You can't come back and watch it later. You don't have everything at your fingertips. Um, you kind can't like watch people, anything you want at any given time. So one of the arguments for why theaters are still super valuable for consumption of movies because the director gets to have some more control over how you're engaging well, with you it. You can't be sitting there fucking around on yeah. your phone, right? Well, I guess uh, you, you can be still. But... You can if you're a jerk, <laughs> yeah. but you, you know, demands you to pay attention in a way that like it, it back in the you know back in the 60s I, well people would have had tv on as background noise but like it was more of a uh focused activity because the show was on at that time and you wouldn't get an opportunity to watch it again 
like the scarcity of your ability to consume that media demanded a greater amount of attention, I would imagine. Yeah, and if I if I have to, you know, put on clothes, go outside, get in my ride, go to the theater, and spend an money yeah. on it, yeah, then then I have like an interest even to myself to make use of, you know, the time. Even though movies are like super mundane now, you know, and, and I think that's good in the sense that they're so easily accessible and you know anyone can go to them and that sort of thing. But even then, most people focus on the movie while they're at the movies because, you know, I came here to do this. This is why I made all these conscious decisions and expended some money, a premium money, you know, in, in a sense yeah. uh, of entertainment to go and see this thing. Yeah, there's those psychological cues in there that it is time to lock in on what is happening. And I guess the same goes for things like theater and stuff like that. Like you've paid the money, you've put on the clothes, you're, you're going out. Um. You know, back in the day, you would have the end of the broadcast day, which meant that, you know, you couldn't just watch it into perpetuity. You would actually have to sleep and have that additional structure there, too. You wouldn't, um, a lot of people weren't choosing their own sleep schedules all the way back when. There's a lot of, it's, it's very, it's a very interesting topic, actually, just looking at uh, how friction, how frictionless things are now and how a lot of us are having to add friction back in because it has been so taken away to our detriment. Um you're making yeah, me yeah. think of uh, something that is kind of related, which is I'm pretty sure that there's arguments being made that having too many choices is, is bad for people. People yeah, struggle when they have an overwhelming number of choices. Yeah. Um, decision paralysis, right? Yeah. That, that, yeah. Um, that less choices can be beneficial for people. Uh, and I imagine that, you know, when you, when you present people with like, you have access to more or less anything at any time that you want. Um, that it just changes the way that you engage with things compared to, uh, you, you can watch stuff, but you got to watch it this time in this location and you can't watch it again. It, it's that, that even though you want to, you know, pay attention and focus on something that simply having the option of, well, I could watch it later, that it, it, it just has an effect on, uh, on the way that you engage with that media. You know, yeah, how many exactly. times does someone say, yeah, I mean, it's the meme of where do you want to eat for dinner tonight, you know? And yeah. it's like, I just, like, whatever. And they're also whatever. You don't want to even, like, think about bothering to choose. To, you know, have, You'll like, go through all the effort of going out there, spending the money, spending the time, coming back. But even just making the decision of where to do those things is just like, eh, whatever. It's fine. It'll be fine no matter what. So, yeah. Also, we oh, are uh, two-thirds of the way through the anniversary. Yay! Nice. Woohoo. Woo Hooray. Much exactly We've eight hours remain. Bit. Yes. Yes. <laughs> a nice Wonder short way. eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> I wow, think that's the big difference going on today. All these forms of media still produce experiences we love with emotions yep, we they love. Can. They're they like can. what Oda's talking about. It's yeah. excitement. It's funny. It's chaotic. It's calm, romantic, dramatic, even meaningful. We're still getting even meaningful. <laughs> I just think that's funny. All That's of that, just without yeah. withholding anything from us first. And I think you look at how people consume media, and they're not really into completion either. Perfect example, my YouTube channel, or really every YouTube channel. People click off, that's how it works. I don't know that that would ever, that, that's just, that was a constant forever. I don't think there was ever a time where people were like, I must complete the video. Well, it's, it's, yeah. ne it's basically this necessity of everyone's going to see the first second, you know? And then it's just no one's, you know, you're not going to, yeah. the end necessarily it's just i guess i can understand you know. if we bought into the idea that people would give something more of a chance than they do now that if you don't grab somebody on a youtube video in the first 10 seconds that that's the most important thing whereas like back in the 60s a tv show probably didn't need to grab you in the first 10 seconds it could be like a minute you give it a bit more time maybe yeah well, i can believe that's true but i guess we have no stats for that yeah right yeah. now yeah i guess now though when there's when it's so easy for me to just Exactly. Go back, click on a new YouTube video, <laughs> yeah. boom, I've got another choice. Everyone's instead the of memes. like, well, there's only there's <laughs> only six channels and you know, whatever on the TV. I had yeah. to finish that video. Oh yeah, that's oh, right. No. <laughs> How's that for a right the trend. He defied the trend Don't because Lewis words. is beyond time and space. He's oh, beyond God. these concepts. 
People are watching clips nowadays, not entire movies. They read headlines, not articles. They scroll and scroll and scroll knowing there's no end to the scrolling. Because why exactly do you want me to stop the stimulation? This whole catharsis thing you're talking about doesn't seem worth it if I have to stop being stimulated. And to be clear, I'm not doing a whole society commentary thing. I'm not criticizing, I'm not judging. I'm at the stage I'm just observing here. This is the reality. This is my theory for what's causing this phenomenon. Okay, now we don't hate completion. And like we talked about before, stories still can provide structure which has other uses. And that is how we get the Mario movie. This is a suite of stimuli and moods and emotions that we identify as the Mario experience. And we use story as a spice to enhance that experience, to make us care more, to make us feel things, to so my my the the way that I would either agree or disagree with him is going to be based on when he believes this era started because I don't feel like the Mario movie is very different from a hell of a lot of movies I've seen in my entire life basically. Um, no, if yeah. anything, that's the biggest criticism someone would make of the film is you've seen a lot of films like the Mario movie before. Yeah, and so the idea that like this is this is a film made for this era, this uh, you know generation, I'd just be like I don't, I don't know if. I don't know. I don't know about that. I mean, you know, Shark Tale came out like 20 years ago. What was the biggest strength this movie had? It's like, well, the the IP that it's using, obviously. That was the huge you thing. I remember Shark Tale. I do remember Shark Tale. I remember Shark Tale. I'm I played the Shark Tale game. Shark Tale. Yeah. <laughs> I did too, yeah. I remember that. I remember Shark Tale. How could I ever, how could I ever forget Shark Will Tale? Will Smith Fish. To focus the emotional power through structure and give us completion at the end. Because why not? We can throw in a song for Bowser because people will like that. Yeah, see, okay, this is getting weird because... Oh, no, we're getting a little cynical here. Um, yeah. yeah, but yeah, because but... he's describing shit tons of films now. Shit tons of stories. It's like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll have, you know, like a sense that they defeat the bad guy at the end. We'll have a love story in there. We might have a song. It's like, okay... Well, yeah, because like, not... you could say that about a film like Aladdin that came out 30 years ago. Yeah, it's got the musical numbers, it's got the comedy, it's got the drama, got the romance, friendship. It's like, if we use the song example, right? Oh, people will love a song. It's like, yeah, but if the song is oh, shit, it's good. Yeah. they won't love it, right? <laughs> exactly. So if people will love a well, song, yeah, people, did people we need like to give the, them a song that they will love. These the Aquafina song hand hand. from the new Little Mermaid. I mean, that was a song that they threw in there. Calling out a song is being generous, but accepting <laughs> no, that no, no, no. is, we don't yeah, talk it's, about that. It, it's not just like we'll just throw anything at them and they'll eat it up. Well, like, um, no, probably Was there not. a song in the Simpsons movie? Uh, oh, uh, well, I feel like there was. Uh, like Spider there was Pig. Too. Spider Pig. That doesn't I count. I don't think that counts. But they wow. did like a, a reprise of it later on in Wait, the I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, freaky I'm, sequence. Does that count? No. This oh that. damn! I I don't know if there was there was a lot of you know music in there, but not the I don't know. Green Day was, was in there. That's true. There wasn't a musical oh, number. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, okay, that actually might be good enough to say Simpsons movie. It's clearly a movie made for the modern generation because it's a bunch of it's more so clips, just funny Simpsons moments. It's got a bit of romance in there for Homer and Marge. It's got a bit of like you know uh, bratty. Uh, criminal vaguely activity with Bart to throw that in for rogue behavior or something. It just feels like this like lame summary. It's like, oh, there's a completion. You know, there's there's steps along the way. There's it's a song. Reductive as fuck. Yeah, it just it's just it's just yeah. like are we gonna pretend like this Mario story in this movie wasn't actually structured? Because it clearly was. It was structured and it was it was okay. Yeah. Like, I feel like we really are heading toward the, like, isn't, isn't the Mario movie is just TikTok? And it's just like, no, it's not. And I don't know. I think <laughs> you can clearly point to the idea of delayed gratification of there are expectations that you have of things that will probably happen in a Mario movie, like getting the invincibility star, but they left it till the end because that would make it the most... Like, there, there's got to be a conversation for... Sure, there might be a an incentive to make things cathartic all the time, but there's always going to be an incentive for, like, a big catharsis. Because that's something that people remember is a really big, uh, like impactful resolution. It's and not I don't necessarily think you can the fake that either. I don't There's, think you can. You, you no. cannot have a one minute TikTok video, or a, 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 can they even be that long? Fucking hell! I think so. Yeah, live streams yeah. can be I long. Think maybe I think they can be like three minutes. You can't on watch like like once you finish the Lord of the Rings trilogy, right? Mm. Like payoffs like that, I don't think you can take those and scrunch them down into a thirty-second, one minute. I, I'd TikTok say that video. you can't because you talk about the Lord of the Rings. What makes it so great is all of the foundations, the building blocks, the scenes that lead up to 
the big moments that people remember. I think I think it's a problem yeah. with the way that people talk about movies is that I think sometimes we forget about the connective tissue, the building blocks, because what we remember are the you know the potent like it's kind of what we're there for in a lot of ways is the big payoffs, the potent moments. Um, mm. But the connective tissue is super important in terms of making it impactful. And yeah, I think necessarily that's not something that you can emulate in a minute. You can't emulate what you get from the Lord of the Rings in a minute. Yes, I think there is something inherent to the quality of the payoff that is in its foundation that you can't, you know, just... I, I, th I think I, the I issue is, like, are people willing to, you know... I, I think that. a lot of people would say, yeah, Lord, the, the Lord of the Rings trilogy is great payoff, it's amazing, but it takes me 17 hours to sit through, and but while I, it's, a, you know, amazing, I'd rather just sit here and scroll through funny cat videos for four hours. I think that's, that's the point that like he's instant making, hit, though. Instant hit, instant hit. I yeah, think, I think that is his point. Is it, yeah, I've... I've think a lot of it is yeah yeah we can throw in a story for a beginning because people will like that what about Throwing more story, a story. Whoa, easy <laughs> the story's getting a bit too spicy it's ruined see but like yeah for me i just be like no it's all story everything that happens in the mario fucking movie is story it is all story yeah yeah let's not forget the yeah, like story is the things that happen even down to like the it's carts yeah. telling you stuff about the characters who are writing them like i i, I don't yeah. i just don't buy this like no, it's clips with spice. Spice being story, or something. Yeah, I don't know. Can, when can yeah, a like a story news. distracts me when it's terrible, not when it's good? Ruining the flavor of the main course. Wanting more story in these situations is like saying, "I love the." So the main course in his eyes in the Mario movie is like action and characters being powerful. Yes. Yeah, I, I, stuff. it's. I feel like it's. Uh, I thought that the the guy who made One Piece said that the spice was the excitement, like the action, the excitement. Um, that the, the, that was additional to the story. The foundation was the story. Well, right, a lot of people in chat said that the good. quote was butchered, so I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, then yeah, uh, let's let's move past yeah. the quote then. <laughs> yeah. If we try and figure out what he's saying, irrelevant of the uh, the One Piece guy quote. Mm. The Lord of the Rings music, I wish it was all music. What? Hyperbolic, but you get the point. And I think what it used to be, what movies no, used wait, to sorry, be... No, wait, sorry, can we rewind? We're, uh, we need to go back, what okay, we're going all the way back here. We can throw in a story for a beginning because people will like that. What about more story? Whoa, easy there. Story's getting a bit too spicy, it's ruining the flavor of the main course. Wanting more story in these situations is like saying, I love the Lord of the Rings music, I wish it was all music. Sorry. Hyperbolic, but you get the from but the what if the story is all the... good? What does it mean to be all story? What does that look like? I, I, I thought it was all isn't story. Isn't the whole movie the whole story? Well, it, it isn't is. everything a part of the story that's in the movie? Or you at least, can say, I guess it should ideally, be. Yes. You can say <laughs> that the intent is cynical, but the scenes are still story. Whether or not yeah. you think it's achieving much, like a lot, or not much at all. Normally you don't put an action scene in there because like, oh, I really need a break from everything that's been happening so far. Because well, then we would just cut to a completely different scene. It's like, here's two random people that fight each other. Enjoy your two-minute break. And then we go back to the actual story. That's not how that works. It's We're in a weird like place. <laughs> because if he showed me Peach doing the course, and then he said, see, this is more of a, like, excitement clip thing. It's not story. I'd be like, how is it not story? It's telling you what... This, the fact that this is set up here tells you something about this castle, the, what she does for it. The fact that she's good at it tells you something. The fact that she wants to train Mario to be good at it. Like, there's loads of st story stuff happening here that's going to be relevant for later. I don't understand how we can separate it out. How oh, is it not story? Or is, is, mm -hmm. is that not a good example to point to? They wanted a Mario level in there. They wanted it with all of the standard Mario pitfalls and enemies and stuff like that. So yeah. it's contextual. That's why I chose it. Here's a course that you... Yeah, it, it, like that would be an example of, I mean, it's kind of the same with Rainbow Road. They knew that they wanted these things and they kind of tried to justify them. It's not like incredible or anything, but it's, you know, it's more than they could have. They could have just said, whatever, fuck it. Like it's an obstacle course because Mario the point and i think what it used to be what movies used to be and what's happening with these people what's happening with me is that i love stories and i grew up thinking of movies as synonymous with stories movies were primarily a medium for telling stories well they, they are were? they are so, so, what do you they mean? were they are they were they are they yeah they're more than likely are. will be <laughs> yeah yeah and, some and it's not like these movies were bland. Than there was still a whole lot of spice. There was music. There was fun. To oh, why are we? I don't like this. Well, these aren't <laughs> separate. <laughs> I'm getting. A it wasn't bit just lost. story. There was fun. It's like what? Do you, what? Stories can be fun. Music well, they, can be story. This is all elements of story. 
Yeah. I don't understand. Like in a, I lost. mean, a musical would, especially when, you know, like, yeah, music is story. <laughs> Nostalgia, cool visuals, ideas. Nostalgia, cool vi ideas. Ideas of the story oh, is no. comprised of ideas. Yeah. Like, <laughs> You're confused. The story probably happened because someone had an idea. We, we Holy are. Holy shit. Yeah, this is getting yeah, so I, hard to follow. Uh, hmm. Okay. These were all there to enhance the story experience, which the movie the was... The idea amazing. enhances the story. Ideas enhance the yeah. story. And so does the fun, it, by the way. And the fun <laughs> and the music. They're not part of it. They enhance it. Not like ideas the are, story but grows. From I feel the like ideas, ideas are the baseline. Ideas are before the things even like yeah, exactly. a thing. Well, unless well, he's I, mean, I don't know, know maybe what he's it. what is he referring to by ideas exactly? He showed like a lady maybe with a dagger things? or something. Okay, yeah, if he, he, I feel like he should not be putting like story and themes as separated. No, that the, the themes are the story. They're part of it. They're not like a thing in addition to it. That like yeah. I, <laughs> Hmm. I mean, they they might be <laughs> themes can <laughs> things can be a little a little broad. They can come out of it or they can be a part of it. Sometimes they're emergent. Sometimes it's you know it, think, it's subjective. But I do you think it's going to touch upon any of these whole things where they have mandated action scenes they have to have in any story? Yeah, that'd be a good one to point to. Something yeah. like that because that's where I would take this video too personally because mm -hmm. then the story suffers because hey now we have to have another action scene like in all the star wars series right now like oh we yep. need at least one or two action scenes and we need this to happen here and there is a vehicle so, to produce yeah. in a primary way but at the end of the day there's no rules and movies don't need to be primarily about telling a story that's uh, uh, I, that's wow I, that, then why they don't what? need no so wait wait wait, 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 wait now, now so an example down. of what <laughs> What what is a film that isn't about telling a story? Give me an example. Yeah. Well, so it, I understand if, what you mean. if we're gonna get super like baseline here and say that the movies refers to moving pictures, and you say like a series of moving pictures doesn't have to be a story, I guess I agree with you. But what world are you living in, where like we've got several examples of big movies that, that are just not about stories, that don't contain stories? I don't, I don't really, they don't but, need to be about it, telling stories. Like okay. But we understand Isn't that, colloquially like... speaking, they're essentially as synonymous at this point, movies, stories. Like, in terms of, it, it denotes the pictures, medium, but it's still does. always, almost always a story. Like, how many times have you watched a movie that didn't have a story in it? I don't... There's... Z I mean... I mean, the, if a story is an account of a sequence of events... What, and if what film movies are just moving pictures... And so I have like the only, the only several pictures with dots of. on them, and I move them around. Does that count as a movie? This is where I'm, like, why are we here? I don't want to be here. <laughs> the categorization. Well, and, and we know that we're not talking about this when it comes to the average film that somebody's going to go see in theaters. Like he's got no. visuals from Pirates of the Caribbean. Like I certainly hope that like this wouldn't be an example that's being pointed to, right? Of a film that isn't about telling a story. Yeah, be insane. For some reason, I don't Surely think he's going to bring up Wavelength, for example, which was oh, a 45-minute experimental film that's literally just zooming in on an orange wall for well, 45 minutes. Well, and it's tough, minutes. because a lot of those things might be telling stories still. It's like an yeah, orange yeah. rolling around or something, and, and someone steps on it. You know, someone could be like, well, yeah, this is where I'd be. I don't want to be here. I'd rather... What are we talking about? I'd rather stay on focus of... Why you believe the Mario movie is popular in relation to TikTok? I'm fine with you talking about that. I don't want you to talk about how movies don't need to be about telling stories because I'll get confused. <laughs> they borderline ne ne necessarily have to be about telling stories. Um, yes. Which I, just, I I I wouldn't go necessarily the the root of necessarily. It's just the the that's clearly the state we're in. I don't know why we're bringing this up. I don't know what this helps. And I'm already confused because I'm thinking about how he believes that. Fun ideas and music are things that help story out. Like they're separated from it. They don't. They're not in it. They just they spice it up. Or that story spices them up. It's this video is losing me. Mm -hmm. Even movie porn was has stories as a vehicle to produce in a primary way. But at the end of the day, there's no rules, and movies don't need to be primarily about telling a story. That's the main idea here. Those one and a half to three hours, you can use that time however you want. If you want to use it just to make me laugh, you can do that. If you want to use it to just show uh, two characters- Good luck doing that without a story. Yeah. 
Um, what, you, what do you mean? I feel Define like terms. Like, are you, are you saying like the fundamentally you can't even tell a joke that isn't a story as well? Jokes rely no, on narrative if, structure most of the time, do they not? If you if you have a joke that doesn't involve like the movie format, that would be like a, a picture, like a comic panel. Like can you can you tell can you give in, in the medium of movie, can you have a joke that is not a an account of a series of events? Well that, that's what I thought. I thought you were getting that at that. I was just clarifying. Well, it seems like yeah. the implication is a, a film that's just trying to make me laugh isn't a story, or it's not principally concerned with telling me a story. Yeah. Like it's a strange statement. It feels like there's hot, a lot to unpack. Yeah, hot fuss would like a, would like to have a word. <laughs> yeah. What does he mean by story? I'm just I don't know what his definition of story now is. No, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. getting I, I often wonder if we take these, you know, YouTubers who talk about this stuff and you ask them super insanely basic stuff like what's a story? And just to see what answers we'd get. Yes. Having a mm, philosophical yes. conversation, you can do that. If you want to use it to showcase music, do that. If you want to show how an Inuit family survives the winter, do that. And if you want to just do That's a bunch a of fun stories. Mario themed scenes and story. game elements with story function. I'm conv wait, sorry, were those not stories or was it, were those stories? The one with the philosophical are... debate. Is that on a story? That's do that. two people if you want to use it to That's showcase the the music, with... do that. If you want to show and how music the opera is a story. story. Like Phantom of the Opera is not musicals are telling stories through okay, the music. I'm so very fucking lost. I'm more the yeah. I, this is the most lost we've been, and we've been lost a couple times this anniversary. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. I don't know what's happened today. If you want to use it just to make me laugh, you can do that. If you want to use it to just show two characters having a philosophical conversation, you can Jesus Christ! Well, I don't know why you're I'm... saying just as well. Just. But this just is a, a story. It's like, a story. My dinner with Andre is a famous other... story. Why are we talking about it like it's not a story? What's two happening? Two people having have a conversation with each other is an account of a sequence of events. The sequence is the conversation. It's a story. It is. It is a story. Conversation is necessarily temporal. I don't yeah. understand. What, what, do we, what do we think he's saying? What do we... What, what I, do we I, I don't know what he thinks a story... Like, I don't know what story fundamentally is in his, in his, uh, in his world. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm, uh, like, I don't even... I can't even put into words what I think he might be thinking, because it's... I don't know. I don't know. I'm actually, yeah, I'm lost. I'm actually <laughs> lost. I don't even know what to, to uh, sort of clutch at. Well, I guess we press on. <laughs> what else can yeah, we do? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah. can do that. If you want to use it to showcase music, do that. If you want to show how Again, it's such yeah, a the, fucking weird musical, choice of visual. A really bad example. It's not even that. It's the <laughs> visual choice. Phantom of the Opera. Why the fuck would you choose that yeah. as an example of not a story? Yeah, you, you just unless, want to do music. I mean, unless, of course, he's saying that these are all stories, but that they choose to showcase particular record. elements. Well, sure, but I mean, stories are always making choices well, about the what they want to focus on. That's why I don't understand. Oh, any of this. I am lost. An Inuit family survives the winter. Do that, and if and you want to do a bunch of fun, yeah, yeah. You just described a story. And game elements with story functioning <laughs> basically as scotch tape to make it feel like one big thing. You are welcome to do that as well. If audience wants to see it, more power to you. These it's are not bad movies. So it's, it seems bad like the stories. idea is oh, okay. the, the story. Hey. Oh, whoa, okay. Did he just say Phantom um, of the Opera is a bad story? Yeah, hang on a second now. This is getting really weird. What do you mean? I don't think he knows what he's just done. Hang on, let's... Oh, I mean, fuck. All of those are examples of bad stories. Let's do the Mario one. Just the Mario one. In, in I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna be safe and roll it back to here. Do that. Okay? If you want to show how an Inuit family survives the winter, do that. And if you want to just do a bunch of fun Mario-themed scenes and game elements with story functioning basically as scotch tape to make it feel like one big thing, you are welcome to do that as well. If the audience wants to see it, more power to you. These are not bad movies. They're bad stories. Wow. But you haven't you haven't explained uh, why the stories are bad. You said you these. Just described it as Meaning gotcha. more than just the Mario one. He didn't say the. Yeah, but is he saying these in reference to films that are like Mario? That doesn't I mean, include this Phantom is, of the Opera? This is on he, him he for choosing those visuals, right? He just said My problem. Dinner with Andre <laughs> and Phantom of the Opera and that Inuit thing. They're all bad stories, but they're fine movies. But they're not bad movies. Which, yeah, which um, is insane. Again, it depends on how we define... First of all, yeah, saying that they're bad it's bad stories, like, okay. So a... um, okay. Mm -hmm. So there are good stories and there are bad stories. They can be differentiated from one another because... Is Which, by the way, that, I want to, like, for the record, that particular Phantom of the Opera might be terrible, but it's not, like, 
I don't think that's the reason for that visual. He was talking about films that uh, specify on music, or at least, and it's like, okay, so Fan of the Opera would be a like a musical. And, well, yeah, exactly. Like and so at that point, musical. are we saying that musicals are really great movies, but they're not very good stories? Which well, is about such a weird. They're showcasing the music, and the story is just there to facilitate the music. Yeah, like it's scotch tape for the music. Is what which, he's trying uh, to say, right? Which I think is insane. Mm -hmm. or, or, or would it only be applied in the cases where it's thin? So, like, The Lion King, sure, music is a big part of that, but the connective tissue is, is good. So... Well, yeah, he might tell you that The Lion King is a great story with music as spice. But, oh, How do we okay. differentiate I have the no idea. from the <laughs> I have no idea, right? Yeah. I have no idea. Is it the writer? Is it the artist's intention? Well, yeah, now that... we're getting a bit, uh, we're getting a bit philosophical there, you know? If the spice is, like, seasoning, you know? The seasoning is part of the meal. It's not a separate component of the meal, unless we want to break it down into all of the component parts, right? Like the protein, the vegetables, the sauce. I mean, hey, analogies. we've still got half a video to go, so let's see what else he says. Yeah. Uh, let's oh, help. shit, we uh, do, yeah. Just before we move on, uh, the only thing I can grasp onto, and maybe I'm wrong here, is maybe he's talking, maybe he's conflating um, good and bad stories with complex stories or simple stories. That's the only thing that I can even remotely think of that maybe that's what he's doing, but I, I don't even know if that is, that, if that's true or not. That's, I, that's not all a I can think of. That's not a great criteria in and of itself. No. But if story is not the top priority, it won't ruin the movie. Why would it? Because actually, if you're thinking... Story is not wait, the wait. top if priority, it wouldn't ruin the movie. The... Actually, actually, they're not they're even bad stories. Oh, um, okay, this is not a good thing to throw in after you, that. You gotta, yeah, you gotta, yeah, you gotta re-record yeah. if that's not what you're concerned Some, Somebody actually. said in chat, maybe he's afterwards. had problems formatting the script. This is just definitive evidence he's got bad yes. script formatting. If you throw this in at a fucking bracket... I think he wrote the script, said it, and was like, oh shit, I don't believe that. Wait, hold on. <laughs> and just put it, yeah. Actually, they're not bad. Even though that was your conclusion from ramping up with all of this uh, leading into that point. Just re-record it. Yeah, like, this is worth being clear on, because this is the fundament your fundamental take on what even stories are. Like, surely we'll be clear on this. doing it right? as well. If the audience wants to see it, more power to you. These are not bad movies. They're bad stories. But if story is not the top priority, it won't ruin the movie. Why would it? Because actually, if you're thinking about it, it's not even that these are bad stories. Let me oh, ask okay, you this. Okay, Ever okay, had the experience of liking a well, movie wait, soundtrack? No, now I'm even more lost. Yeah. So he didn't realize in real time. He, there's part it's of a his part of the script, script to say structure. they're bad stories, but they're not actually, even bad not. stories. I, okay. Oh, <laughs> All right. I need that um, game over tune from Mario to play in response. In listening to that soundtrack and realizing, whoa, there is a lot of filler in the song. I really like this one part, but as a song, this is a bad song. Whoa. Uh, because oh, it has I, filler. I, whoa. Oh, whoa. God, okay. this is painful. Oh, God. I don't, do we even want to? Uh, do we even want to? <laughs> The, there's so much filler in there this song. There's so much filler in this song. It is, it is complicated to talk about, you know, the way that you need to score for music versus on its own or in a yeah. video game or in any other medium. I don't think we want to delve into that as a whole topic. Yeah, we even though we're here all day, we do have a limit. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I just don't want to do that. The limit is the day. Music Soundtracks are structurally bizarre and broken. I, I no. What? Don't, don't what? just. You, you know, what are you doing? You can't just just say that. Structurally bizarre and broken. As music soundtracks are structurally bizarre. What? What does he think a concept album so, is? So as a movie soundtrack is, listener, this is hard to to as go music yeah. sound. Oh yeah, like or. Oh, I mean, I, you can oh. listen. You can just listen to the Lord of the Rings soundtrack, and you can notice the repetition of motifs. You can recognize the tones of the songs and the sort of vibe they're going for. But it's a little like the like idea it. that they're, some, they're structurally well, bizarre and broken is, I mean, that's bizarre. There are some soundtracks, where, like, so for instance, if you listen to some of the soundtracks for Marvel movies, there's like weird structure to those because the, the music is composed to fit like a way that it's already been cut compared to if uh, the film is cut to match the score. Um, it Like, it or depends like, on the process or 
Uh, a lot of the a lot of the music in Snow White is just to act specifically to work in tandem with visuals. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's, some of well, that will sound very bizarre, but that's because mm. it's not trying to just be a standalone piece of music. It's often like to be like sound effects or to you know enhance visuals and what's happening there. Well, it, yeah. part, of, part of it is like you got to recognize the way that you know film scores come together. Sometimes it's like how is it cut together does the score proceed the, the you know in editing is it edited to match the music or is it edited and then the music matches and was it edited with the music in mind like what purpose does the music serve in this particular scene versus that scene sometimes the music isn't like at the forefront and then other times it is at the forefront like saying as music soundtracks are structurally bizarre and broken that's way too sweeping of a statement that's so broad. Yeah. Like, that's, and I, I imagine that's, it's wrong in almost every example I, well, yeah. I don't like this particularly because I, I listen to a lot of uh, like video game, film, TV soundtracks. Same. So and a I lot don't of my like listening it. from games and <laughs> yeah, from movies. I, I, well, like I, I mean, you have to conclude as well. Sound, he said soundtracks. It's not just films. He's talking about games as well. It's soundtracks joy. has to include video game and and video game. Yeah, like saying that video we're talking game about music, the Mario movie. Mario. Was we are talking about the game. Mario movie. Yeah, but he's talking yeah. about soundtracks as music Soundtrack are structurally is bizarre more and broken. Than just yeah. yeah, soundtracks yeah. Are for more than just films. Obviously, so TV shows games and games are going codes. in. Yep. Yeah. Yep. There's a particular sure, quote I like about um, soundtracks. I think it was it was either John John Williams or George Lucas that said it, it was um, a really good um, a good film score is the kind of score where you can take the visuals away and uh, the other sound effects and stuff, and you just listen to the music and you can still tell what's going on. It telling it's telling its own story through the music, and then that enhances what's well, going on. That's an interesting observation, but you think about, like, for example, Looney Tunes music is very specifically scored to to uh, accompany specific beats. It, you, you brought up with Snow White as well, right? There's a lot of these musical, like, flares, flourishes, these small little bits that accompany individual character action that, if you remove the visuals, it's uh, it's not necessarily going to be, it's, it's just not going to be the same experience, necessarily. Um, yeah. It's complicated when it comes it to the purpose of a, of a score. Um, for a film or, you know, television show, short film, animation, uh, animated film, you know, or animated short uh, video games. Malformed, yeah, it's dysfunctional, sure. but that's not the priority. It's not its job. A soundtrack's job is to just hang in the background. It is to no, be no, fuller. No, 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 kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me. No, 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 This is insanely retarded. Why would you say this? Where the soundtrack is like the focal point. I mean, we, it's like a sentence that you have to, like, take one by point by point. A soundtrack is supposed to. It's like, well, we've already fucked up, haven't we? If we're going to pick the boring choice, the Avengers theme playing, like, that is, that's meant to be a focal point of the scene. When, um, when yeah. the Avengers theme plays in full for the first time. When the Witch King's riding out from, uh... Oh, fuck, what's the place called? The... His house, Minas basically. Kirithunga? No, um... that's the place near it. Fuck, why am I blanking on Mina that? Mina something? Somewhere? Mina Smogel? Is that where he lives? Maybe. Um, well, in any case, when know. he fucking rises up and the music goes, bram, 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 bram. Like, a, you think it's supposed yeah. to be filler? <laughs> like, what the or, fuck? Or, you know, I mean, mm. Duel of the Fates. Like, oh, I was just thinking like that. that's not, I mean, a ah, shit ton of Star Wars music. There's so oh, many yeah. moments where, like, the music comes to the forefront. Yeah, there's plenty of scenes in, in, you know, depending on which films we're talking about, where the music is not meant to, where it's meant to hang in the background to uh, not draw too much attention away from what's happening in the scene. But there are heaps of, like, a lot of the big moments that people remember in films are moments where the soundtrack, like, goes right to the forefront, where it's, it's, it's like, it's super inextricable. Damn, why'd you say this? How does oh, he God. think this... that, like, what about a musical? What about an opera? How does well, his remember, brain handle remember, these musicals, <laughs> musicals are different. They're not, they're not, uh, they're not the same. They're, they're not, oh, they're not purely about story. Because he said this about soundtracks, just as a whole. Soundtracks, which, uh, God damn, why did you say song. this? And yeah, as mm -hmm. music, sure, it's malformed, it's dysfunctional, but that's not the priority, it's malformed. not its job. A soundtrack's job is to just hang in the background, it is to be filler, and then to jump out at certain points. And Oh, there you go. Okay. It jumps out okay. at certain okay. points. Okay. At certain point. 
Okay. <laughs> the, to be but fair, still, it makes a lot of sense he would have said this because it's just like, how could you go through life watching so many films without realizing that there are parts that get highlighted for fuck's sake? How so. are these people with these channels saying? I don't how know. Do say this. I don't. It's not right. They're well, because not, by the way, this, this covers everything. This like, what else can music do other than not be noticed, be noticed? You know what I mean? Noticed. Like, yeah. Do music things. And, and you still said. You still, you still said the soundtracks are disjointed as a general statement. I'm broken. He did, didn't he describe it I'm as broken? broken? Yeah. Music thing. Which, exactly the same with story in these movies. I don't what? like this what? at all. <laughs> I, oh, so the story is supposed oh, to be... Where did you go? Where did you go, Bray? The story is supposed to be in the background the... filler sometimes, but sometimes it's supposed to be noticed, like, big time. What is happening? What... It's I guess we'll have to find when, out what what is how does he okay. distinguish these two things? Let's right, see. Sure. Okay. It is yep. filler. Right. It is supposed to be in the background to not make noise. The background Story to what? What is it in the background of? The back yeah, to what? Oh, what in the what to an background to what? Statement. We're just talking about like seeing what? Bowser. Is like see it's like, Mario like stuff. Like you're showing the scene here where the penguins are running out and they're getting the snowballs. That's story. That is story. Yeah, but it's in the background. For Fringy. example, uh, yeah, it hangs in the background of. The penguins running out and creating snowballs. That's what I'm saying. Is he down, actually but... gonna argue that like they're the pushy penguins of Mario's world, and that that's what's actually happening here? It's a it's a TikTok level appeal to people who like Mario stuff. In the background of that, there's some story that this is a kingdom and they're defending a thing and blah blah blah. But that's not really important. At which point, you could make this argument for every movie ever to not make us feel things. And then, at certain points, it jumps out and does story things and makes us feel story things. Good that God. is good it storytelling. Story. What oh. the fuck? I, wait, it, this is a good I'm story go functioning in a supporting that. role. Help it's so me. confusing. Functioning perfectly me, as a Kenobi. secondary thing, as a supporting thing. Okay, change gears. There's another side to this. I'll be honest, it's not my favorite thing, but it has potential. I can understand it. I can relate to it. Let me ask you this. For any gamers out there watching yes. this, have you ever had that one conversation when you meet someone new and you're like, hey, I'm a big gamer. Are you into gaming at all? Yeah, I love video if you games. Say, tell oh, someone what games bit, do you play? No, no. FIFA. Oh. And I'm not talking down my nose at FIFA players here, but... There you are. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah. It's, it's okay, you can do it. Often, not you can always. Do it. This it's is fine. not we all about right, So this is going to be about that... how... I love movies. Yeah, I love movies too. What do you like, Transformers? Is that what we're doing? And Mario, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Mario. Yeah, These are soccer yeah. fans who have found Bad a completely new way to experience their love of soccer. They can play the game themselves, they can watch the game, they can talk about it, and they can play this virtual version of it. And all these different ways of engaging with this hobby, it activates entirely different parts of the brain, we get different emotions, different types of experience. Having this variety expands my love of the thing. And that is absolutely great for these people if it can be that. And then, sometimes, it works a little differently. And this is the thing that's not as great in my opinion, if only because it's a little more compulsive. Sometimes it's not really about experiencing it in a new way, sometimes it's just experiencing it more. Sometimes Sometimes soccer mm -hmm. is a bright part of your life, and you're just looking for more time spent. Did you say that this is not necessarily a positive thing or something? I was getting a little um, lost. You experience there. more of something that you really, really because like. Because they consume it one way or another, even if it's bad, or something like that. Hmm. Spent in the sun and not in the shade. More minutes with the brightest thing in your life. I can't always go to soccer games. I can't always be watching interviews and highlights and talking about it. Yeah, so I play some YouTube. FIFA and that's an easy access way to make me feel like I'm still in soccer world. This is also what's going on here with movies in my opinion. How did we get three uh -huh. movies out of the Fantastic Beast series? Um... I, 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 I don't know, know enough about it. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I guess they're making enough money. There's enough material to work with. I'm not exactly Harry certain. Potter's popular. But... How, how does that make sense? Because they realize Harry Potter fans just want to spend more time in that world because that is a bright part of their lives. Same with all. Okay, or maybe they made more. a lot of money. Hang on a sec, though. Like, this this is just. Huh? This is not a new phenomenon. This is just forever. Yeah. 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 Like, I need to understand I mean, what, what makes this. Like, well, yeah, what does this have to do with anything new? All the bad Star Wars shows, arguably the bad Star Wars movies as well. What's what good is just being able to spend more time. Well. Does this not does apply this to the prequels? Part. Whatever you're about to say? Mm, with the franchise the I love. More time bad. in the sun, less time in the shade. Okay, next category. Okay, well, what, 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 uh, what, 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 what did we just learn there? What was that? I, I, don't, I don't know. know. I don't have FIFA answers. is I for like. Sports fans who dip the toe into video games mainly because they want to play sports. He didn't say it, but it sounded like he was trying to get at the idea that they're not really gamers. They're more 
they're not in it for video games yeah. they're in it for you know equivalent soccer. being you're not in it for movies you're in it for harry potter you're not in it for movies you're in it for lord of the rings or something like the the ips but like where are we going i don't know anymore you're not in it for the movie you're in it for mario is that is I'm and super movie, disclaimer, yeah. this is the one I really don't like. This is the what if category. What would Pac-Man be like as a movie? What would Barbie be like as a movie? What would no, Scooby-Doo be like? This is adaptation like if it... then. I was, was about to say, there's well, video well, game adaptations. We get all kinds what's, of different what, results for this. I'm but so what does this have to do with like the bad movie trend in terms of stories being structured where story is barely connective tissue and then it only shows up at the... By the way, doesn't Mario fit into this category of like being a good story by his definition? Of like the story anymore. exists in the background for the set pieces. If we want to even yeah. cordon those off and say that they're separate things, and then it shows up at the big potent moments. You know, well, what um, saves Mario. What are the like, limits on the what if thing? Because it sounded like you were saying like what if, and then like could we just say what if uh, the Shining book was a movie? Does that count? I mean, what if Barbie is a movie? Is it like a doomed concept? No, of course no, not. That's not, why it's a really not, weird... Not at all. It was about Velma, and she was super unlikable, and there's no Scooby-Doo. What would Ghostbusters <laughs> be like with a female flavor? Or more accurately, what would female be like with a Ghostbusters flavor? And again, if you enjoy... That is a weird sentence. Um, oh. that's not fair. That movie's terrible. It shouldn't be seen as, like, <laughs> yes. a female uh, with a Ghostbusters skin, and that's why it's awful. It's like... <laughs> I negatively enjoy what if movies. In general? Um, you like this, um, lucky you. I negatively enjoy. enjoy. Does he mean so bad it's good? Or does he mean uh, that he I doesn't guess. enjoy it? Oh my it? god. No, no, There's too exactly. much. What if? What, what if Barbie is a what if movie by his criteria? So that's a film that he would negatively enjoy? Or did he like what, it? Like, proper? Just to clarify, Maybe... negatively enjoy. Does that mean like The Room? I, does negatively I enjoy just mean he doesn't enjoy it, but he said it in a really weird way? Well, let's maybe he'll explain himself. Well, someone said, "Like, does that mean really dislike?" It's like I don't think he's that insane to describe dislike as negative enjoyment. Negatively enjoyed. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would think that too. But look at the sentence right above it. You like this, lucky you. I negatively enjoy what if movies. I yeah, this is a weird one. We'll have to keep going. This stuff more power to you. This is just the opposite of what I go to the theater for. With this category, you are not going to the theater to get a good story. I You're going you to the theater. You don't that. know that oh, before. You can't, say that. you can't say that. No, no, I go as far as saying Suicide he's just Squad wrong. Didn't need to be bad. Also, why is Suicide like, Squad people... here now? I just is, is this he a what if? Birds what if the Suicide is Squad that a what so if? Like every DC film is a what if film because it's an adaptation of a comic book. Christ, be, yeah. you are not the watching this to get a good story. It's like, okay, if you say so. Well, I mean, you are watching it to get a good story because it's terrible, but, you know, people wanted it to be good. <laughs> Theater to get an answer to a what if. And no, what, what does that mean? You're getting an answer to a what if, not a good story. <laughs> how come those can't, how come, why, why is a what if just like necessarily not a yeah. good story? That's if it's a stupid. positive experience as an answer to I... that question, you're satisfied. What would it be like? It would be fun. It would be interesting. It would be all this. I think what is really might getting be good. Me... Yeah, but what's getting me about this is that the root of a lot of the greatest stories we have is the fundamental question of what if. What if X happened? Well, yeah. If you broaden uh... it out, every single story is a what if. So I don't. I need him to lock this down a bit more because saying what if Barbie were made into a movie why is that any different from saying what if the shining book was made into a movie or what if mm. you know d-day was made into a movie what if the last of us was made into a television show exactly I don't understand where the lines are it's creative variety mm -hmm. you didn't think of what if Michael Cera was a Ken ooh so interesting he's not a Ken well he's not a Ken he's, he's not, not a, a Ken. Ken he's an Alan yeah, get it fucking right. The only Alan. <laughs> Respect Alan, he's the best character in oh, the movie. Oh, it's very interesting, and I liked him in the movie. Yeah, he was kind of interesting. Yeah. I don't even know what... Has he seen Bobby? Like, this is getting weird, because well, Bobby has not. a story. It definitely does. It does. And also, Bobby is well-regarded by a lot of people. Like, well-regarded. Not, not us, but yes. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. More of yeah, what-if not... scenarios. What if this guy would be Barbie? But that's like... What if Barbie would be That's so weird, like, though, because... Barbie. As Meme pointed out, like, a lot of writers will start with that shit for their stories and have loads of it floating yeah, around. Yeah. What if, what if there was a dinosaur park? That'd be nuts. Crazy. Yeah.
even. And to be fair, the way I can relate to some of this is that this is all very much what a lot of fanfiction fans love about that medium. And that was a medium that I used to really, really enjoy. Fanfiction is excellent at serving these exact purposes. But you those are what-if movies. Don't so use the word excellent while Rings of Power is on screen. <laughs> uh, fanfiction is a very broad yeah. description in of itself colors within a familiar thing you get to spend more time in the sun and you get the fun what ifs and some fan fiction i like how it, that's the, he's very she hulk how dare Please. you luckily he's talking to people who fucking hate all these things or at least think they're shit but if he was talking to someone who loves the ball as stories and he's like we don't go to these things for story do we they're not story you know? they're just they're sitting there like oh they're, they're fun and they're, you know they they're, answer they're a question yeah the not, she also you know, what if stories. mando's stories a what if the connected tissue in the background oh my god people do want great stories but some of them do want just that and at the end of the day there's nothing really wrong with using stories in a different way like this and the more you think about just that phenomenon we have always used storytelling in a variety of non-prioritized ways cultural so, stories uh, but i thought that the i thought that the premise of the video was that something's different now stories in non-prioritized ways are myths what is about to happen oh, but Please don't bring them I into this. I'm scared. Mm -hmm. I'm scared yeah, it's, for my It's too hard to follow. And at the end of the day, there's nothing really <laughs> wrong with using stories in a different way like this. And the more you think about just that phenomenon, we have always used storytelling in a variety of non-prioritized ways. Cultural stories, myths are almost always primarily about transmitting values and ideas. And they you mean like well, stories? That's, uh, that's <laughs> that's, that's stories about <laughs> transmitting that, that, that's that, what's that's that's ideas. Like fundamental storytelling. Language. I just don't get it. What, what, I don't. I don't understand. What What would he say is the purpose of a story? That I don't know. I don't know from, what he means. From, from things story. like this, right? Like I'm like conveying some kind of theme or message or uh, virtue, some value. Like what 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 exactly is a story, and what is it achieving if this isn't a story, or like a second? That the story is the secondary purpose in this case. I don't know. It's just, just so funny, insight? like, you, you look like, at the definition of myth, and the first thing that comes up is a traditional story, especially when considering <laughs> the early history of a people, yeah. or explaining a natural <laughs> or social phenomenon. It's like, hmm. come on, dude. The term mythology oh, is... I like is, definitions is like, and everything. It's linked with storytelling. This is getting a little hard to follow, like I said. He's got his whole own language. He probably does have a book on Ryan, to be honest with you. They hmm. use stories Hopefully. just as a medium to engage people. They use it just as a, as a medium. To make some I... <laughs> I'm just to make us care. just care more about them. I like how that's songs. I like how that's our new like low key insult. Is like oh he has to have a book on writing. <laughs> tell stories. You have commercials that tell stories. Comedies I really do think are a very close analog here. In comedies we do not care if the story is weak as long as it helps. The I a what, uh, what is uh, what? Uh, Come on. I mean um, we don't care if the uh... help me help me. <sighs> A lot of these bad movies are like comedies, but instead of funny, it's nostalgia, or Star Wars, or Genderbend, or Mario. Just like with comedies, we want more of our lives to be spent laughing. Apparently, nowadays, we want more of our lives spent in proximity to the things we like. That energy, those vibes... How does this, how this is, is, this how is this any different, different from, from any era? How is it different from any era? Even if we want to make the point about nostalgia bait, like, this is very different from the points that were being made earlier about attention spans, or... The purpose that a story, like story, is supposed to serve in a film, you know, is a story just the filler, and then it comes out in the point. You Imagine know, the really I just like moment. started saying to you like, guys, like, um, when Alien came out, it changed everything because people didn't care about story anymore; they just cared about being scared. That'd just be a bizarre statement. Yeah, I don't even know like, what to do. I don't with even that. know how to statement. untangle whatever the hell that means, and it's like. Oh yeah, and then Aliens changed everything because it wasn't about story anymore, and it wasn't about horror. It was about Aliens as a franchise. Now I'm just like, I still don't know what you're saying. It's like, Alien 3, that was a combination of the horror franchise with Aliens mixed in with story as a background, and now Sigourney Weaver's Ripley as an iconic IP in which to delve into and understand, and that, that is what created the franchise of Alien 3, Something. I just be like, franchise please stop Alien talking. <laughs> like, I can't. There, I can't do this. this. Um, I think people really need to be careful when they start talking about meta elements and story and things. You know, as I guess narrative elements, because it creates a lot of confusion. Um, and I think a lot of people use these things and they don't quite know what they mean, or or like they know what it means in their head because they're them, but. Like conveying these ideas to other people, it just doesn't quite work. You need and... good definitions. 
Yeah. Good, you need good definitions. Don't confuse your terms. Be clear about what you're talking about. Be a good communicator. Yeah. Keep your meta a lot conversation. Of this is we have to do a lot of work to try and understand what he's. And don't getting say at. that. That soundtracks, as a general rule, are disjointed and broken. Because broken. Oh. that's just fucking bizarre and wrong. Or yes. it, well, it takes, he only, he only it said as music film, they are broken. That's all he said. Totally chill. It takes a film critic uh. on YouTube to be this stupid. <laughs> get sideways to get. I mean, my my biggest frustration with all this is just how hard it is to understand him. Like. You couldn't yeah. have maybe made this a little easier for me. I, I just, I'm having so much trouble. <laughs> I, I, I'm i lost, and I'm not even sleep deprived, so I can only imagine what you guys are going it's through. It's a bit of a struggle at this point. Like, this this is really disjointed and bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Vibes, that makes a lot of sense to me. Okay, changing gears again. Are you Great. ready to uh -huh. turn off your brain? Never. No, I Turning can't do that. Turning off your brain is another phrase you hear often associated with enjoyment of bad movies. And this category <laughs> has been a thorn in my side ever since I started becoming interested in writing. And I'm sure this is something that a lot of you can relate to. You've probably had this exact conversation. Oh, okay, maybe he's... Yeah, okay. Okay, maybe. Yeah. Maybe we're back yeah, on the train with him. Maybe he maybe agrees with us hope. on this. No, no, no. Maybe okay. there's hope before when you finish a movie and there's something you didn't like and you start talking about it and the response you get is oh you you think about this stuff way too much me i don't need any of that complicated stuff when i watch a movie i just want to turn my brain off i don't want to think i just want something simple easy and mindless stop it with the analyzing this isn't that kind of movie so <laughs> I have always had a hard time understanding this line of reasoning because it's not that I like complicated stuff. I just think what they're calling simple is actually just bad. Like, uh, why are you eating that rotten apple? Well, oh, you always sure. thinking, always analyzing these things. I just want to turn I my brain off. I thought you said that there wasn't a problem no, with that, people that engaging with like those. It's disgusting. Uh, you remember oh, when man. it's like bad films, I'm, I'm like, it's not a bad film, but it's a bad story, but that's okay. Like, wasn't that the general conclusion was that it's okay to go into films with those kinds of, um, preferences how can you also hold this position if, if like you feel like there really is a problem with turning off your brain when you go to watch something because you just want it to be simple mindless fun i feel like there's a contradiction here but i can't quite i can't quite zero in on it i i, I feel like we're listening to his diary it's just a random thought after random i thought guess they were that... listening to his diarrhea ah yes that too mm. that too and it's gonna make you sick. So what does it mean to turn your brain off? What's the enjoyment there? And what type of story is this category where it's like, no, it's not that kind of story. It's not subject to, I don't even know what. You're not supposed to think about it? What are you not supposed to think about? Okay, so one thing I do notice about this characterization is that it's often said about formulaic storytelling. And when I think about formulaic storytelling, I think about Blue's Clues. Some of you may have heard of this phenomenon. Kids How did want we to be get to visually and mentally- Oh my God. Um... I don't, know, I don't know what else to do other than Can just. Can I call a friend? I, we we I, let him keep she going. He needs to sit down in his thinking chair and think because this is really going off the rails. They simulated, they want to explore. So, kids' TV shows would naturally show a lot of new content to kids, new episodes every day if possible. And then along came Blue's Clues, and they completely reversed that paradigm. Every episode would premiere on a Monday, and Nickelodeon would air the same episode on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, and on Friday. They would do just one episode for a week straight, and kids loved it. There was a comfort in repetition. I don't have to work as hard to understand. It's not a mess of brand new stimuli. I have to sort through every single scene. No one is the same episode every day. I'm mm -hmm. not trying to. It, pro it, it probably also helps that they're kids. And kids but are. You know what's funny about this is very easy to entertain, but yeah. What's happening here is like someone says, you know, Schnee watches Fast and Furious with a friend, and he's like, "That didn't make sense. That didn't make sense." And the guy goes, "You can just turn your brain off." And then she's like, "Hmm, you know what you've just said makes a lot of sense to me." And your he's like, "Wait, why?" On. And he's like, "Well, because." This is kind of like that thing they did for children. Like, you're entertained just like a child. <laughs> I figured it out. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Would you like, thanks, I'm not man. saying there's anything wrong with the way that you engage with media. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's like, nothing you wrong with it. Whatever way you want. I'm not looking no. down at you when you're playing FIFA. No, you know? no, no, I'm but you're like a you child and I don't want to be your friend. So. <laughs> but I am going to make a video about it. 
to figure out the plot. I'm not trying to figure out what's coming next. Who are these people? No, I know that. When I know what's coming, I can expect it and it will come. And that feels nice. It's actually a very similar phenomenon as the backscratcher thing we talked about earlier. But here it's not the story itself generating anticipation and tension. It's the story formula. So even if it's not repetition per se, like Blue's Clues, even if it's just formulaic storytelling, that mindless action movie you've seen a hundred different versions of, that formulaic rom-com. I feel like a home way better example to point to would be the general uh, structure of sitcoms that uh, non-serialized. It's, yeah. it's the same broad story structure each time. There's a conflict, there's a resolution, but the characters never permanently grow or change. There's always going to be something new each episode that they go through. Like, if an example of not literal repetition of the exact same, like, story beats, but, uh, but a general story structure that people like. I mean, you know, Futurama made the observation. People don't want to see things change. People don't want to see the status quo change yeah. in, uh, in good old single female lawyer. They, they want that familiarity, that comfort of things will yeah. always, you know, th there's a, there's sort of this general state that things will always remain in forever. Well, we say that, <sighs> but also some of the most popular TV shows of all time are ones yeah, that people want to see. Evidently, that was not the case. You know, things have changed now. We're, yeah. we're in much more of an era of serialization. Yeah, um, the only theme that's fucking tying this video together is repetition, familiarity, nostalgia, like those vague concepts, but there's no overarching... There's no, there's no connective tissue between any of the other points. It's just that general theme that he's tying back to in completely disjointed ways. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. It's tough to follow. It is. Mm -hmm. It's very tough. Hallmark movie, you know what's coming. You get to wait and see it happen. There's that satisfying moment when you're like, oh, here comes this scene, and then it comes. He's about to say this, and then he says it. What you're enjoying is your mastery of the formula. It's nice dealing with something that I already understand. So that's really Dan interesting. That We've talked about this a couple times. Uh, the, 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 there's two times this will happen. One direction is the... We've understood or followed a lot of what the story's put down and that we're seeing one solid, you know, ending of how it would go for a particular thing. And if it happens, we're like, ah, oh, sweet, you know, everything built to that. Nice one. The other side of that is when it's like, this is so crap and so predictable. They're going to go there and then they're going to do this and that's going to happen. And then it doesn't I'm like, yeah, there you go. I wouldn't describe it as enjoying our mastery of storytelling when we predict something in a positive sense it's more so just uh i feel like the film gave you all of the setup for why things would happen and you can follow the cause and effect you know where yeah, it'll I'm end glad up. the thing happened not that i predicted it would happen the joy comes from it's happening um and then the quality therein um and, yeah. and w what if i enjoy like i generally enjoy films most on the first watch through um but so i don't see how I don't, I don't, well, maybe I don't, it's, yeah, you know, it's the meme, right, of the the person's, like, watching the horror movie, don't go in there! I think it was a Family Guy joke, right? The spider that's just yelling out its prediction. <laughs> oh, I knew that would happen! Like, yeah, I think there's an element of people feeling good about making accurate predictions, even if it's, you know, not that impressive, because something's really formulaic. I, I think can see that. But... Both of them can, pro the, the two that we split them up into, both can provide, like, enjoyment. We'll, we will laugh if mm. we predict a Batwoman plot point like oh she's gonna burst through the window <laughs> and then she's gonna block yeah. all the bullets with this stupid cape and everything will be fine yeah, some of that comes down to competence of like ah uh, yes the accuracy of that yeah but um, same, yeah but you know when we predict it on what we consider to be great storytelling like i said oftentimes it'll be like we're celebrating how well written the thing is in terms of like they set exactly. this up they set that up that's gonna be there that's myself. there that means this yeah i never think of myself as a participant in in a way like i'm yeah, that's strange. I, I, I've never considered this, and now that I have, I don't agree with it. Um, mm -mm. Not generally. Like I said, I yeah. never would have looked at it as I'm enjoying my own competence. <laughs> Bit of a interesting way to yeah, describe it. Yeah, it's like... Uh, yeah, like, we're really good at predicting Batwoman, you know, plots. It's like, eh, it's not really... That means I'm not going to pat myself on the back too hard for that. But. Confirmed. <laughs> it's a nice, comforting feeling of order to end your stressful, chaotic day. Okay, final okay, category, because everything nah. up until now leaves one specific phenomenon unaddressed. There are people, we all know people like this, there are people who cry at every sad scene in every movie, good or bad. They will swoon and gasp and sob in every romance movie. They will uh, leap out of their seats, cheering for the heroes in every disorder. action movie. It doesn't matter if the writing's terrible, the characters yeah. are bad, the plot is dumb. They just get super, super engaged. 
This is not a sad scene in the movie. Why are we using? He's this? just <laughs> fucking. This is for memes. No, like, this is excited. He said uh, people oh, okay. jump out of their seats. Let's fucking you know? go, Jaja. Okay, okay. Let's fucking go. Yeah, but Jaja, let's yeah. go. No Misa go. Misa go. And the weird thing about yeah. this is this is not ambient TV. This is not a comfortable formula. This is really intense emotion. It can even be negative emotion. And it's this phenomenon of being able to feel intense emotion in stories that I don't really think are capable of delivering it. So how does that happen? What is going on there? Um, how is this person connecting ways. to a movie that is fundamentally broken? So my theory is that when the are we even going to talk about what makes a movie fundamentally broken? Or do you think? Well, isn't the easy that? answer immediately just they don't think it's broken? They don't think it's broken. Yeah, they've latched onto something that they are projecting onto the film for whatever reason psychologically they're doing it. They're doing it engine is dead but the car is still moving there's got to be some other force at play that we're not noticing like gravity something else must be producing that effect and this is probably my i mean i mean we're, we're fundamentally we're talking about people's emotions which are not necessarily by any means rational well he's he's labeled it as speculative rags really speculative so here comes the really speculative. Now. It's important enough to put. Well, it in I mean, we can give our answers first, right? Like there, there are going to be people who could say like that story was terrible, but I don't know, man. Just watching a father protect their children, like it just, it just gets me. It just gets me every time. That sort of thing. Like everyone has yeah. those sorts of things. It's. It, is, it wouldn't surprise me at all subjective. that anybody could feel impacted by any particular emotional moment in anything for their own personal reasons. It's just like normal. Everyone's yeah. got their own. Uh, biases and experiences that make them tap into things yeah. at different levels. All I'm trying to get at is that, like, I wouldn't ever see it as some kind of bizarre... I don't, I don't know if you'd ever go, like, um, this, the writing here isn't very good. Didn't you notice Mr. Taking it super seriously? It's like, they probably didn't. <laughs> like, that's, that's probably what's going on. Not? No. Yeah. Well, it can be as simple as just, like, if you're, like, sometimes you just get really busy and then you watch a movie while there's so many other things going on in your brain. So your brain isn't really expending that extra energy or power to l focus on the um, actual writing of the film. So the emotional moments are hitting not because they're well written, but just because you are so distracted by so many other things going on in your life that you're not really paying attention to the um, details. So the moments are just hitting well, just on the, on the sheer, yeah. Uh, what would you think? Another worthwhile thing to probably say is that just because someone even cries at a particular movie, uh, that doesn't mean they think it's great. They could end up being like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, this, yeah. The, this is just something that gets to be personally or whatever, it's still shit. <laughs> like, it, it could Absolutely. be that simple. It, I'm, I know it's happened to me. I see something that's not good, and I know it's not good. Like, And I, I'm conscious and I'm like, yeah, this is shit writing. But there is some element either of the visuals or of the concept that they're doing that just gets to me emotionally because... I wish I don't have like I don't actually have control over my emotions, and there's so yeah. many parts in the subjective tisms of the brain that it's just like, I mean I just you know I can't. I, also just, yes, all emotions doesn't have to be crying, of course. You could be yeah, super absolutely. angry at a thing and not even really realize why, or it, 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 you know, like I mean, yeah, part of it. a lot of people yeah, get very irrationally angry at Jar Jar Binks when he's a hero. <laughs> yeah, he's a hero. <laughs> like. Uh, a lot of this, you know, a movie, no matter its quality, could just help you to be processing something emotionally that that um, you you haven't yet um, really come to terms with, um, because you're seeing something approximating something you've been through going on on screen, even if it's not the best written in the world. And that can be a complete that's a completely irrational response, but it is something that will happen nonetheless. It's just how neurochemistry works my most speculative idea in this video, but this is what I think is going on. I think people who get big emotions from even the most broken stories are getting those emotions directly from the characters, not from the greater narrative. It's purely through identification. It's like the emotions are How contagious. is the narrative like when delivered you see someone to cry us? And you start well, it's like, normally, narrative is delivered to us through what the characters do, so probably that's going to be the case. It could also be, however, it could also be, like, the music. Music can play a huge part in sort of getting our subjectivisms to start going. But I think that almost, I think the vast majority of a lot of the things people will feel from a movie is going to be from the characters, because the characters are the agents doing the things. That's how the story is delivered to us almost, uh, not almost exclusively. Is he trying to split primarily. up, like, the emotional state in isolation versus how everything, you know, came together to get us here? I think he's try I think he's he began describing projection, but he's doing it in a way that's conflating it with character. So I don't 
I don't know. Character. Yeah, I. It doesn't surprise me. This is not a grand revelation that the the characters that do the things of the story are going to be the subject of most of our attention and uh, from which we will draw most of our subjective experiences. I mean, that's that seems kind of mm -hmm. that seems like yeah, yeah, because they're the characters of the story. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Start crying automatically. Except it is more than that. I think it's not just the subconscious neurological stimulus response thing. I think it is conscious identification. Again, independent of the greater narrative, they are zeroing in. Say it's a scene of a character losing a romantic partner. For me, if the narrative doesn't make that romance, well, like I understand what's happening. Uh huh. Like if if someone like if if there's a husband and wife and they're happy. If I watch the first seven minutes of Up or whatever it is, it's like I I consciously understand what's happening. And then there's the other elements going on, all the background processes that are happening, but I It's don't... good. If the events leading up to it weren't compelling, if the characters themselves are not compelling, I'm gone. I'm not in that emotion. But for these people, I imagine... I'm, I'm relatively yeah, the same, but I, I wouldn't, you know, rule it out. There's going to be times yeah, where I'll probably get caught off guard, so to speak, yeah. or that mm. something that appeals to me specifically. Very, yeah. very specifically. And they're thinking something like, wow, how would I feel if I lost my romantic partner? I would be in such pain if I was in the situation these characters are in right now. The situation matters. The emotion comes from that, not from the story machinery surrounding it all. Kind of and I don't know characters. what role the story does. Yeah. So, now yeah. he's saying yeah. situation. It's going to be a combination of the character in a place. In the context, Which yeah. is both character and plot. Which is the narrative stuff. Which is narrative, yeah. <laughs> I don't, this is... So it, it's this, you gotta, with you guys, story. you gotta redraft your videos. You gotta, you gotta look them over. If you're trying to pass yourself off as a knowledgeable person, you gotta like not fuck up like this. Well, this far, and I'm, I'm just what a, what a mess. Tough to pull yeah. it together, you know. Does play for these people? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's also still important. Like I said, super speculative. But in general, that kind of identification. How would I feel if I was in this spot right now? That seems to me like an accurate description of what's happening. Okay, to sum up, there are six. No, wait, so, oh, oh, are there are six oh, categories oh, of enjoying the bad movies. No, 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 no. Oh, God. But wait, you oh, said it wasn't God. a bad movie. No, hang on, hang on. I'm going back it's to the bad, one the the thing bad. you just said. So, so his, spe really his speculation is people put themselves in the situation and then like, oh, that's sad. I'm going to cry, for example. Why would you go that far instead of just saying, oh, maybe they, as, as we already put, as you guys already pointed out. <clears throat> sorry. Um. I just had this situation in my life, like, a parent died, and then in this movie that's fucking piss and shit, someone's parent dies, like, oh shit, that happened to me, I can relate to that. This brings instead, this memory Why would you go to that way? Of my mind. Instead, of, instead of going all the way around, and say like, oh, these people never had this situation, but they're so into this character for some reason, that they imagine themselves in that situation, and then they relate to that even though they I, can't I that, because it didn't happen it's i'm so confused that's a, I, I think the problem is it's like you've gone past a simpler answer which is no they think it's good like they actually think it's well written like that or that yeah <laughs> they yeah. think that the film is achieving what it set out to achieve and that there's no problems to speak of or that if those problems exist that they're negligible that's a way more likely explanation than pure mm -hmm. identification even though i think that that's a point that can be brought up but i still don't really understand be. what that's to do with the bad movie trend that that would have been since. Well, can I remind time. everybody that he but said come... he said that the Mary movie among many are good movies but bad stories, but they are exactly. good stories. But now they are bad movies yeah. again. But bad is in exactly. quotations. Are we supposed to believe the bad in quotations means title. good? I'm... Well, it doesn't mean actually. It doesn't actually well, no, mean bad because then he would have quotes that... around it. I don't know that there's a point that's that's been made at all about a bad movie stemming from these these priorities. It's always it was a bad story, but not a bad film. And it's, don't it's, ask me what makes a bad story, because I... We are we, mixing I terms, know. and we are lost. We, we are, we are stranded at sea, and I don't know how to get back. Six categories yeah. I've talked about today, six types of enjoyment of bad okay, movies. Number summarize. one is that a feeling or an experience is the entree, the story is the spice. Emotional experience is the entree, story is the spice. I don't get it. That's a weird it's analogy. Who, who the, says... And this is a type who, of bad movie. This is, this who is the determines title. which is what? And can two people watch the same movie and one thinks one thing's the entree and the other thinks that same thing is the spice? Well, the, the emotional experience will stem from what the story is. It has to. It has the to stem from what happens the entree, in the story. Right? Well, I, I, I don't really understand it as a premise. Like, the emotional experience is the thing and the story is the spicing on top. The emotional experience you get from it 
must stem from the events that happen in it, who's in it, and what they do. It has to. Yeah, it's got it to be swapped. come from it's what happens the in the story. The story's like got to be the entree. You need, this, you, need a, you need it. I I, well, I, I don't know what it means to well, say the story is the it. entree and the emotional experience is the spice. It's just a broken analogy through and through. I, like, I don't... I don't. I don't get yeah, it. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I don't think this is a good analogy because entree and spice are specific. Remember, two Rise, he said that exist outside of me, but the said, emotional experience is inherently subjective. Did music, yeah. ideas, and fun are uh, spices to story, or vice versa? But, but, yeah. So th this is entirely broken. This is broken. It's broken. Because it's if it's, if it works vice versa, then bottom. what's the point? This isn't a. This isn't a. So he's talking about six categories. So are we to assume that the next categories are just these things? Oh, these are just the topics. These are how to enjoy order. bad movies. I think these are, these are the unquote. topics. Yeah. So this was topic number one. So one way sure to in, one category of enjoying quote unquote bad films is to prioritize the emotional experience when the story is the spice or something. Right. And this if is its I own separate category, but it's also analogy. a super category that um, the others belong to. No. This is its own category and a super category the other categories belong to, by the way. What does I, that mean? I, I, that's helpful. That's real great. So it's it's one and then, thing. you know, two will be two, one, and three, three, one, four, four, one, that, because no, one applies to all, all of them. Oh, Number two is that his story is delivering real. a different experience of a thing I like. My Different what? experience. Uh, this so is the FIFA that, thing. That has, with, that has to do with the bad movie trend. Yeah, like, that's why you can like the Mario movie because it's bad, but you like Mario, so it's okay. It's bad, but it's a different thing that I like, so you can get our different it. experience okay. of a thing. Okay, but okay. okay. Well, this is what I mean. Like right. at this point, he's just he's just shooting in the dark because you're like, why did anyone enjoy the Mario movies? Some guys just like I liked it because I really just like colors and I was high. And it's like, well, you got to throw <laughs> that in your categories. I liked it because of the colors. Favorite video I game like it is I was a movie. High. This childhood toy or this board game is a movie. That's so interesting. That's so fun. Number three is more time in the sun, more time with my favorite thing. Number four. How isn't that I, the same as two? Like that's the same as two. That's the same. Yeah. Uh, I feel the, like yeah. Those, those and, and four and no. What if the what if was also because what if was Barbie? Oh my so god. Yeah, you're right. The what if was Barbie. Barbie. <laughs> was what if? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Fucking yeah. hell. And she, yeah. And she Hulk and Ghostbusters. Yep. Those Sorry. were what if. Yeah. Yeah. These are, these are not categories two, three, four. This is category two. And remember, totality. one applies to all categories. Exactly. Oh, not at all confusing. <laughs> It's, it's like, like two and three are the same category. Anything, four has an overlap of examples with two, and what applies to two, three, and four. <laughs> I'd like to have a laugh on this one. Uh, maybe <laughs> I, I, I was. I this needed like to be a visual graphic. graph, not like mm -hmm. text <laughs> formatting. Four is answering what ifs. Number five is turn your brain off. It's formulaic entertainment that I enjoy. Oh, it feels like the, oh my god, four. I could summarize this in one. Why? 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 But again, why? Is why? It, wouldn't, wouldn't this still be the same of like emotional? Oh, oh well, I guess formulaic comfort. But no, but that's an emotional so experience. And story is a spice. Oh, but then again, they're all subcategories of that yeah, one. So yeah, yeah he did say that. that yeah, so yeah. Okay, that, that covered, covered his ass. Yeah, he sure just said they're all subcategories of each other, and therefore can't. Be criticized. <laughs> Order, right. I know it very well. And number six is engaging in the meaningful emotional content through identification. Which I put is, myself in the place yeah, of the again, characters it's... I see on screen. I feel emotions. I think it's time for this video to end. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> enough. I'm ready for it to be yeah. That not I'm from ready. the narrative. And that last category is the most different in my opinion. One, two, five are people enjoying something different. Emotional than experience than through like identification is different from a, a very different from emotional experience is the entree. How? How, how is it not a subcategory of, of that one? Isn't, isn't the. Do you have emotional experiences that don't have anything to do with how you identify with the experience? I don't- I don't know what it means. I don't even know what it- like, again, I'm still stuck on number one. What does it mean to have an emotional experience as the fundamental component, with story being like an unnecessary component? Like, the idea that it's the thing that's added on top. How is it not necessarily dictated by the spice? But it doesn't make sense, but- you know, like, the entree being necessarily dictated by the the seasoning. It just doesn't make sense to me as a as a analogy. And it's the the one from which all of them stem. I don't so what's get the main it. course if the emotional experience is the entree. Well, entree is main course, right? Like it depends on where, oh, we're, where we're in. Well yeah, in, in, oh, okay. you know, in Hell's Kitchen, the appetizer and then the entree. Oh, well, obviously I'm in Australia, too. entrees yeah. are the appetizers for some reason. Yeah, that's where I'm getting mixed up. Okay. Yeah.
stories. Very good. And then six is enjoying exactly what I do enjoy. It's getting the same meaningful emotional content, but just taking a completely different road to get there. And if anyone's wondering, there's another. Fi- oh no! Oh my oh, god! No. How about no. you go fuck no. yourself? There's a seventh category, and it's dick. fake. <laughs> which is the so bad it's good movie and i just think that's a fundamentally different thing unlike what we've been talking about up until now these are not broken movies they're not trying to be good they're trying to be bad in the process of doing that so they are trying to be bad a lot of the time so bad is good as the best ones are when they're trying yeah yeah it's when they're trying to be when they're trying to be bad it's it's like a different kind of thing it feels like because sometimes it don't work out, you know? It's a good movie, the and I just think that's a fundamentally yeah. different thing. Unlike what we've been talking about up until now, these are not broken movies. They're not trying to be good, they're uh, trying to be bad. And the well, I mean, yeah, that's wrong. Not all, but the, the room was not trying to be bad. No, but it also, wasn't. they're still broken. Mm-hmm. Even if they're trying to be shit, it's like, well, yeah, but they've still got, like, a broken story. Yeah. As you just say, that's what they wanted. Of doing that, they're creating mm-hmm. comedy. So they are doing what they're supposed to do. They're good movies, and it's probably worth its own what video the, at some point. Okay, well, oh, what the no, fuck's happening? No, well, you have opened this a too fucking confusing. can of worms. But I will say something. If, if, I, film was, if a film was trying to be what it is, and the Mario movie absolutely wanted to be what it ended up being, you have to concede that it's good. Then also, he basically if, just if, created the feedback loop of like, as long as you've achieved the goal of entertaining the audience, yeah, exactly. then you've created the good yeah. thing. And it's like, okay, exactly. so everything's good then. I find pretty interesting about these is that a lot of them are actually parroting the categories we talked about today, especially that what if. Oh. So in conclusion, if you are upset about the bad movie trend, I feel that it's not ideal for either of our tastes, but there are a lot of people who are honestly enjoying these movies. You I already knew that. Why this video did not help me. Then yeah, why you and I are not the same. We're on different <laughs> universes when well, it comes dude, if to someone, understanding and engaging in art and media. If someone's super chat, like, why do you guys think people really like the Super Mario Bros. movie? We just, like, I'm pretty sure we did talk about it. It's just like, people love Mario as an IP. Yeah. That's a pretty straightforward thing, and it's pretty faithful in a sense of if you played the game at some point and then you watch that, it'll feel familiar. Yeah, Very lots of great visuals, a lovely animation, easy to follow story, pace, good jokes, wonderful music, uh, performances that seem pretty yeah. passionate. Yeah, there's a lot to like about it. It's, L- it's a nice little story movie. in there about oh. brothers sticking together. Yeah. Uh, you got, All you got very, very simple. The animation's pretty top-notch. The expressions were awesome. It's nice to see the Italians win a world war for once. <laughs> you, we didn't need to describe those as the seven fundamental categories in which one appeals to all of them, two, five, and seven are kind of the same, but seven's a fake one, you can't trust it. For something. That's true, because uh, there were only six, we were just testing you. Did we have a second video with a fucking secret spy in there? This or... guy in Filmento would get along <laughs> so for well. the reasons we talked Maybe. about. And probably they for just more make reasons shit also, up. not a comprehensive list. At the end of the day, it's just art changing, which art will always do. And if we're being honest, it's actually one of the greatest things about art that it can mold to basically whatever What, that it's changing are. in a way where there's more bad news? <laughs> he just spent the whole video like, explaining oh. how they're all bad and people like them still. And then he's like, yeah. but this is good though. <laughs> I don't know. It just feels like a cop out to me. You don't want to own that you think it's shit and bad. Yeah. So, subscribe. No. One of the reasons I no. wanted to make this was not just that it didn't make sense to me. <laughs> I hope questions your like other this, there's this feeling the way people address it. Like they want it to be the shallow. Note, sorry if I dissed your favorite thing at some point in the video. I don't hate all the movies slash shows I used as examples with random online ratings, e.g. Y- no, there's dots. It's exemplary gratia. Phantom Menace will always have a special place in my heart. You know what? You know what I hate? Like, fucking capitalize your shit. Like, why... Stop. I don't want this to become a trend. I hate this trend of just nobody capitalizing things, and we don't give a shit about grammar, and we're not gonna put our fucking periods on EG, and Phantom Menace doesn't deserve capitalization, which even that movie does. And it's just, like, whatever text. Just fuck whatever. And also, it's not, it's not worth me saying, but it's worth me typing out, you know? Yeah. <sighs> thing you so cannot learn here. from. Like saying, oh, the Mario movie, this is not a movie. And I get why you'd say that, but it is a movie. So then what is it? What does this mean about what a movie is? Same thing with saying... Yeah, define it. Tell me what uh, a movie is. Yes, uh, tell me what a movie is. In the beginning, is. that would have maybe yeah. cleared things up. Yeah, I'll, I'll oh, take it. Man. Better late than never. Oh, this is not a story. Clearly it is a story. Clearly they wrote it as a story. They could have written it with absolutely no story. So what is the story? I don't think they could they have. Could have they written could have written with absolutely how? no story. How do you write it with he no story? Like, the event? A level. If it hasn't like, become evident already, Mario he doesn't going define story, story like we do. Not even close. Oh, oh damn. And you know what? If I you said, okay, well, how like, does he define, define it? Story. It's like, no clue. I have no idea what the hell I, he thinks story is or isn't. That's wild, too, to think that I, like, best faith as I could possibly be. 
I couldn't tell you what he thinks a story is. I yeah. legitimately have no clue. I don't think that he knows. He like separates story from emotion, things. from uh, ideas, from fun, from music. Wait, was that Eos snoring? <laughs> I, I I didn't see him light <laughs> up, but I saw him light up, um, and I heard like a. <laughs> oh, that was him. I I heard that too. <laughs> oh God, it's contagious too. Don't. Yeah, you know, I it. I don't know about you guys. I one, I just can't fall could. asleep at my desk. I I will always move no. to the bed before I fall asleep. I guess it's, the, the the time it would happen is probably anniversary, though. Yeah. Um, sometimes I can if it's like it's really, really late, time. but other than that. It's very cute, though. I can't that he's sleep. Nappy it's 6 a.m. The day's just beginning. Yay. Also, hi, <laughs> Chun Logic. Sun's almost hi. up. Hello. Yo, what's up? Hey, guys. How's it going? Celebrating. We're, we're dying hey a little bit. But, you know. Yeah, that video was tough. Word. Five years! Wow, woo! Five years is amazing. Good it shit. is, isn't it? Hey, yeah, five years. going strong. I've grown so much. I five what years of being total nerds. That's right. You're just jealous because exactly. you want to <laughs> be a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> you want to have a Nintendo DS while all the other kids play football. Listen, I don't yes. know what you're talking about and what's going on, um, but I just want to say. I really have come round on your way of thinking about the Marvel movies. I think a lot of your criticisms are correct. They all do. They all. They well, all. You, you do. did. They you you liked them like recently, and now you're changing your mind, or what? What happened to you? You've been on an arc. I, I mean, maybe I just held out hope a bit longer than you guys did. Um, <laughs> but I watched the uh, Ant Man recently. Uh, <laughs> on the flight. Why would you do that to and yourself? It was, well, there wasn't many movies on there, you know. It was like that was probably one of the better options, to be honest. And uh, we do have we ha just to to be fair, we do have a back catalog of many, many decades of movies to for you to peruse. So and games, okay. If you just to wanted to punish yourself, X3. you could, you know. Well, if it um, isn't, but yeah, no, it was it was pretty very good. Bad. You liked it? Oh. Modok, Modok looked uh, horrendous. I know that's a bit of a meme for you guys. Wow, that that's cruel. Ridiculous. That's based on a man's <laughs> face. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Um, disability, sir. Poor Corey Stoll. And uh, the, the, the kind of political aspects of it, like the um, Cassie understand. the cop car thing and shit like that. I, I watched Mauler's video on it too, so I've maybe, you know, got some takes from that I've stolen. But yeah, it was dreadful. So They're meant I'm to be fully stolen. out of the... Okay, good. I'm fully out of the MCU. I just think it's shit now. I don't know what else. Maybe a couple of gems to come. Who knows? But uh, it's a done deal, isn't it? Let's hope probably. so. Probably. Yeah, at this point, I'm just hoping they can get up to mediocre intermittently. All right, even then, <laughs> okay. that's hoping. the that's the watch together link. If I've only got you for about an hour or whatever, Chud, I got a perfect video. It's gonna be great, and it's oh, media related. Man. I'm not gonna let you get away with just talking about some drama related thing. We're gonna make you talk about movies. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> fuck, and one this that'll be suitable drama. for Mr. Glidus as well. How are you doing, by the way? Hi. Hello. 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 Sorry, my internet cut out. Hello. What, I've, got the, I've got the link. What's going on? Just jump in. <laughs> I'm going to ferry <laughs> you into yeah. the wonderful arms of talking about a movie thing. This is a short video, so don't worry. Okay. Okay, okay cool. Get some of your reactionary opinions on this innocent YouTuber who's just trying to make a living. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm afraid. Don't worry, it's a new oh, one. We haven't oh, covered yeah, this no. guy before. But his video is called oh? How Realistic Violence Ruins Movies. I think I've seen this video. <laughs> how <laughs> realistic oh, no. violence ruins movies. I like how it's just been non-stop for me, especially me, Rags and Free. Just like, <laughs> non-stop opinions that are like, why? I don't have, have time not... to be tired. It's have kind of amazing. It's an any... incredible strategy. Have you guys not played any Gothic phone in the night or something? No, we didn't do any Gothic phone yet. No. It's not impossible I'm... to do it at some point. Yeah. Crazy. I'm... I, I, I just assumed you would do a round at some point. But hey. There's well, we did the trolley, trolley, we did the trolley, trolley problem. problem, game. problem. Yeah. yeah, that oh, was pretty. No. Hard. Oh no! Uh, no! Why is that happening? Is it like? Oh, is it? Is it because it's been disabled, or it is it because be, uh, it's age it, uh, restricted? Uh, oh, no, restricted it's disabled. Or, yeah. It's disabled. <laughs> 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 that star destroyer is disabled. Hmm. What would be the oh, solution to that? I, I uh, know. ending the stream and sleeping. <laughs> What if you know um, that's not allowed, Rags? Can you do me oh, a really no. strange and quick favor, if possible, Rags? Is it possible for you to 
download it and then upload it and then see if we can play it then or if, <laughs> see if we can get away with it not being because i'm assuming the age restriction is making it so we can't play it on watch together right is that how that works um let me see Possibly. is it <sighs> I guess I don't know how to actually... Because the other thing that could uh, do it is that you can set it on your own videos so that they can't be played outside of YouTube, right? Is it just that it has uh, add yeah. and has verified one equals one at the end of the URL? Maybe. Uh, what, like so... on the, when you put it into Watch Together or something else? Because uh, it, it has, disabled. like, you know how YouTube sometimes likes to put additional shit at the end of the URL? So this one has and has underscored verified equals one. So maybe if you erase that, watch no, together and play ball with it more? I just I checked, know. and um, it's been blocked from being embedded. That's oh, the reason. So if you re-upload it super correct. duper quick, we can still watch it. Okay. He, he might try and Let's take see. the monetization from you, but I don't think that would matter. Because <laughs> it'll probably just delete it the second we get to watch it anyway. Right so I have actually, what this is, I've got a story with this one because I watched. This is the first video I ever watched of this man, and I watched and I was like, oh, I am really not super impressed with this video, and I almost didn't watch another video of his. And then he uploaded other videos, and I was like, wait a minute, these other videos are actually not bad. So I don't know what happened with this one. Hmm. So uh, let's we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what we think of this one. Playback unavailable. Yeah, it can only be done on YouTube. Interesting limitation. I don't know why you would want that. Maybe there's some benefit to it I'm not seeing or not familiar with. Cause... Is it because it's got violence in? Well, that was one thing. Well, it's, it says if you try and play it while it's in the um, Discord, it says play back when other websites has been disabled. So I assume that oh. you can get it to be played if you re-upload it quick. But I don't know why you would want it so you can't play it in any place other than YouTube. Maybe... I, I would have thought it's better for sharing a video if you let it be embedded. You'd think. And how many times is it embedded to where it really... Like, is detrimental. But, I don't know. I've Maybe done not. this to stop you and specifically you. Well, I know the... That did... that that that. Do you remember way back Wad Rags that uh, Ralph the Movie Maker's Joker video, he disabled it from being uh, able to be run on different sites, so we had to get a download and upload that one to be able to play it on Watch Together. I th and then he deleted I it. I remember that. Oh yeah, that was uh. All right, it's starting. The, it's starting the process. So mm. didn't even have to wait that long. <laughs> that see. video is the miracle of the internet. <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the flink new. I remember the good old days. Off. No monetization for this boy because it's it's we're gonna be transforming it, but not here. Is uh, this guy <laughs> supposed to be never off, here? Right? This will be what we call meta. Uh, transformation. We do, we make sacrifices to bring the people the content they sure. deserve. Am I right? Or am I right? Chud knows all about Processing it. Processing up to SB, nine minutes left. So, we'll see. It's, it says maybe nine minutes or so. I'm not exactly certain. But, uh, checking if it's got copyright, it probably mm -hmm. will. But I mean, is I it, I mean, we're realistic violence. Are we talking like, you know, oh, a bit of a punch up in a, in a movie? Or are we talking like Saw, you know? cutting I someone's eyeballs out or some shit. What's interesting is I think uh, what he means by realistic violence in the in the video is more so violence that is like inflicted on characters uh, without more attention to like a storytelling uh, satisfaction. You know, like a stray bullet versus one that's fired by the evil Dark Lord Galore Galath into the hero's weak spot or some shit. Like the difference, the, he, would, he would categorize them as, as realistic for the a stray bullet to catch you versus uh, sort of planned, uh, st satisfying narrative violence. Okay, before we watch it, am I supposed to like this guy or not like this guy? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> well, that's the fun. You can decide along the way. <laughs> Shut up, dear. Yeah. You're supposed to be objective. You're supposed to go in being like, like, you know what? I will treat like this everyone. man fairly. It's so much <laughs> we easier. Like, we like to everyone. Us, I like also, his just... other videos. That's all I'll to make say. sure. You know? No one, like, hold your breath. This has to, like, it's a video that has to upload and process and everything, so. Um, chat about some stuff while it's, uh, you know, I while it's, thought while it it's be, going. How, how many big gigs was it? Uh, how many big gigs? Uh, this is a, I, I, do, I went ahead and just downloaded it at 720p instead of 1080p. Uh, 75 megabytes. It's 14 and a half minutes. 
So it's checking right now, and it's often just like however YouTube feels on how long it takes to check copyright and stuff like that. Oh, well, but is it watchable uh, it already? It says it's 18... No, not yet. It's not It's not visible yet. It's still okay. 18 or 19% checking. Well, so. while we're waiting, look, everybody, the wonderful vinyl figures. What? Wow, look yeah. at them go. They look Check so them out. Energetic look, he's spinning. Awake. Look at him. Wow. wow. Oh, man, don't get Oh, what's sick. that? There's another one. It's the doggo. Oh. Chud, you picked these Whoa. up, right? Look at him go. What a chance. Yeah, I've, got, I've added them to my Funko Pop collection. Absolutely. You've added, you, you bought like oh, 10 of wait. each, right? I think I've yeah, got, got a got link. 10, yeah. <laughs> I think fucking Kibikin. Oh my gosh, is he? Yo, what an absolute fucking Chad. How did he do it so quick? Wait, what's happened? Five minutes. He did it five minutes ago. I don't know how he managed to do it, but I got a link. Uh, let's see if it works. I think Kibikin's the fucking Chad. Let me see. Oh my god! Yo! Oh god. Wait, it did worked. he do did he do a re-upload? <laughs> I like the title, by the way. I, How realistic violence ruins so. movies flume. He says, I always back up videos as you cover them. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 this is gonna be woke, isn't it? It's got a content warning. I can tell already. Listen. If it's woke, that's good, because I'm tired of the anti-woke, right, Chad? That's how we met. You were tired of anti-woke people. Enough of those yes, fuckers. Yes, that's true. But now you're a exactly. part of the dark side. I've become more racist, that's true. <laughs> Out of curiosity, have you, like, lost many friendships at this point? Pretty much all of them, to be honest. <laughs> Pretty um, much all of them. No, no, no. I've... No, I haven't really lost that many friendships. I mean, true friendships look beyond political views, right? Hell yeah. Um, but a lot of the leftoid types don't hang out with me anymore because they don't like the fact that, you know, I speak my mind about things, of a drama. I don't know. They just don't like me anymore. But it's all good. I'm having a great time. I'm sure you found right. better and stronger friendships. Isn't that right? Yes, exactly. By the way, I just want to point something out. I don't admit it's all about me, like I always do. But, um, you know, last time I was on, I made a couple of jokes about racism and stuff. I just want to be clear. I'm not, like, that racist, okay? <laughs> so if I say anything, don't take it so seriously, guys. I'm, I'm British. I know it's hard to understand sometimes, but that's, that's the thing, okay? No, so like yeah, it's all good. Out of 10 on the racism scale? Mm. With five being average racist? Probably I'm, only, like, a, a I mean, four. we're probably all... Uh, we're, we're all, all pretty... North of five out of ten, I would say. Okay. Generally, yeah. I'm. A, I'd say I'm cosmic uh, on the scale of racism. Uh, oh my goodness gracious! That means I treat all of you with that's disdain, so, which is a good thing. That is incredible racism, being yeah. cosmically racist. <laughs> that's peak. the only true equality. Uh, racist on a cosmic scale. Well, I mean, the videos. Uh, yeah. Well, do we? We okay. just got. We just got Dev being like, "Oh, just wait. Let me cook for a sec." Just does that? Does cook. that mean? Oh, more food. When More he says, let me, let me cook for a sec, do you think that means, like, it could be, like, seconds, or do you think he means, like, a fucking half an hour? You never know. I say, know. you know, I say, I say, let him cook, and we can... We'll catch uh, him up if he gets you. Is that, is that yeah. It? yeah. 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 I think that's fair. All right, ER, you ready? Uh, let me see. Uh, <laughs> CW. Uh, that's the really good channel with all the good superhero shows. This video covers violence and death, bluntly, to better serve the points being made. Sweet. Oof. We're wow. ready. Well, Do it. Yeah. Violence and death are the spice. Of story. Of story. Hello. I mean, it's not back. unrealistic we, when a dude just gets shot in a war film or when one character just sure. fights better than the other. Because that's how real violence works. The bullets don't care if you're only in the first act of your story or if some narrative threads haven't been resolved yet. They're not going to whiz past you until hitting you would maximize the emotional weight of the situation. And that's why virtually no violent stories try to mimic the actual qualities of violence. Because it's... Why no, that's why no violent stories mm -hmm. try to mimic the qualities of actual Which violence. is not true. Yeah, I'm definitely not with them on this one fascinating as it would be to decide who lives and who dies via a dice roll, your narrative would lose its structure pretty quickly. Pretty it's sure not, there are writers that actually... do it that way. Um, I'm not sure I'd be able to name any, but I, I'm pretty sure that when it comes... Actually, wait, wasn't, um... You know, like, the call-ins or whatever for one of the deaths in, like, famous comics or shit? Like, didn't they? Oh, are you, are you talking about, uh... I know the, that's not the, the same Robin? as a coin Make toss. Sure that, uh, Robin. But the fact that you would leave, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's got to count towards that's, that environment of choosing the death of a character. 
there's got to be writers who flip coins in history when deciding on maybe one of two characters who gets shot in a particular situation. And then, of course, like, that's not necessarily a bad way to do narrative. I don't like, because, like, what's already baked into this is that they need a grand, uh, thematically appropriate death or whatever, where it's like, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I've seen plenty of films where characters are unceremoniously killed and it's very effective. Mm -hmm. It happens. It definitely happens. Well, yeah. we were bringing up uh, No Country for Old Men earlier, and... That is a film yeah. that's probably the one mm. of the most famous for doing that. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, it's kind of funny, right? Because it's, it's self-fulfilling. It'd be like, uh, the fact that it's anticlimactic is why there's, there's value to it or something. And you'd be like, oh, so if it was climactic, it wouldn't have meaning? It's like, no, it probably would have as well. So, uh, hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it, there's so much to draw from any particular event when a character dies. But um, Is this about mm -hmm. plot armor? Is that what they're basically getting at? I think it's that, about, that it's actually about the opposite. Plot armor is an adjacent. Yeah, it's element. Part, yeah, because he's he's like he's saying that um no writer would want their character to just get shot by a stray bullet because that would suck. That would be lame. Right. Nobody want that. It's like well. Yeah. Also, hi Dev. What if they? Do? Oh, hello. Good morning. Welcome, I just rolled welcome. out of bed. We are now wow. stacked ten cast again if we count sleepy er. Sleepy er. And sleepy rags and sleepy Mahler and sleepy, sleepy fringy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I was going to talk about how tired I am, but I assume you guys are also tired. Yeah, oh, a little bit, a little it. bit. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. so, no one cares about you, Dev. No one cares about you. Oof. Oh my oh. god. It's not a big oh drama. God. Here okay, we go. Well. Wow, <laughs> this is YouTuber right, drama. I'll, YouTube drama I'll Twitch I'll just, politics. I'll just go. I'll just. <laughs> wow, he get oh, you won. Oh, Chud, you won. He ran. He ran. First Adam. Oh my god, Dev. Let's go. Collecting them W's. Is Chud two oh two nothing. <laughs> Chud Logic just hey, dominated Chud. that debate. Hey, how's it going? Nice. Yeah. Nice to find when I, to Yeah, you. Dev was crushed <laughs> in the marketplace of ideas. <laughs> Dev didn't stand a chance, honestly. Oh, God, he oh, came back. Yeah. Oh, he came back. back. Oh, oh, round two. He came crawling back. <laughs> <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> All right, everyone in. Dev's like, oh, I got out of bed for this, damn it. I'm staying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here, do you want to argue about chasing Chud since you do that every single time? So anyway, the video. I want to talk uh, about trying stuff. Come on. Chasing, chasing. <laughs> what's chasing? Is that when you have like a drink or what's that? Don't it's, worry about it. Look, go and look at Dev's Twitter, and that's chasing. Okay, there we go. It says there are twelve <laughs> people in the wash together, which means I assume everyone here is in there. I don't know at this point. Oh, a lot of people. I, I, I see oh, some yeah. buns oh. in a row. Is that is that right? Where we stop? Well, in any case, if you're not in, Actually, get in, because we're watching opinions. And that's yeah, what, that's yeah, what yeah. we do, okay? Yeah. This won't make much sense to people who haven't seen or read Game of Thrones, but imagine if Rob Stark just died in one of his many battles, like George R. R. Martin originally planned. Is just, this like, like took Game a of Thrones on VHS? He's, it's, 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 <laughs> it's an aesthetic, it's, it's a style. Well, I, I Let this like man the, yeah. exist like in his own truth, okay? Yes. I like his aesthetic, though, to be fair. Yeah, there you guy. go. I don't. Yeah. It's like the <laughs> thing, don't. but worse. I think a lot just... of people, you forget how shitty VHS quality was, because it was all you had <laughs> yeah. back then. Yeah. But for those of us who grew up with VHS, going back and looking at VHS was like, oof, man. It's I a was, vibe. You know, actually, He's creating a like vibe. Like going back yeah. to an old video game, it's like, ugh, yeah. wasn't this always so... Pixely and gross. <laughs> but the funny thing is, when that... you have the old memories, you play the remaster, and you're like, "This looks exactly the same." He's like, "It doesn't." <laughs> like... It doesn't. I promise you. <laughs> well, you remember that well, when consoles like the Xbox 360, they started having HDMI ports yeah, when those became a thing, mm -hmm. and then you were say. like, "Oh my god!" It's like, yeah. how could I ever not play with? This? I remember I had, a, I had a friend who was just like, "Yeah, it looks way better," and I was just like, "I mean, come on!" <laughs> and then I plugged in my <laughs> HDMI cable, and it blew my my mind yeah I, i've still got a, a vcr hooked up just for some old tapes and stuff and i mean yeah it still looks mm -hmm. okay depending on the tape you know you, you can get some decent quality out of those tapes a stunning endorsement like hey if yeah. you, i agree if, if the effect also helps evade youtube copyright i'm all for it so <laughs> actually hold on a second I, yeah, Chud. that yeah. grind yeah yes Chud. Steph. How? Wow! <laughs> you said already done with me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just, a, just out of curiosity, how come you always do like the VHS aesthetic on your channel? Is that your thing too? It's poor. Well, that's my editor DK that does that. Um, 
but yeah i mean i don't know i kind of like it i guess i'm quite old as well so you know it kind of fits in with my age too reminds yeah. us uh, reminds us of a simpler time yeah mm -hmm. yeah exactly yeah i, yeah, I kind of feel the same way too to be honest time. I, mean, a red game I, I might steal it from you i don't know whoa sure i mean it's like going to the video store isn't it you know you go to blockbuster get a rental yeah. uh you know yeah it's you don't, you don't do that anymore do you it's kind of remember sad. how randy yeah. he bought a blockbuster <laughs> and then he lost his mind <laughs> he's talking to the ghost oh yeah randy's lost his mind he went, fuck <laughs> you <laughs> heavily <laughs> just to this ghost but he's talking to no one Oh, also, a... happy anniversary, guys. Good Thank job. you. Thank you. Five whole years of pausing Hooray. almost every frame. Pausing, fapping, and eating. Mm -hmm. e e e Rob Stark <laughs> so, just yeah. died in one of his many battles, like George R. R. Martin originally planned. Just, like, Wait. took a stray arrow to the face or got overwhelmed by the opposing... It probably wouldn't be a stray arrow, but... I mean, force well, it could be, right? You know, yeah, I mean, the suggestion be, is that if it were. Potentially. Well, it's just, I, I know what he's imagining, right? It's like you're in the middle of a big epic battle and then all of a sudden, boom, hits him in the head, falls off his horse, he's dead. And you're just not ready yeah. for that. Yeah, because yeah, it could be like a guy pulls back a bow and it focuses on him and the arrow goes and goes into his eye versus like more randomized yeah, thing versus, right? yeah versus you absolutely <laughs> don't see it coming not even like yes as soon as it starts to play out holy shit i wasn't expecting this to happen but like so quick that you might not even realize it's happened which that doesn't happen often it certainly it doesn't happen so... often well and it's just funny story. because uh the first thought i have when listening to this is like oh, that sounds that sounds like game of thrones would do that it's exactly what would happen in game yeah. of thrones yeah yeah, yeah. Well, which is what you well, get when you do that he does get an unceremonious death he does. he does die out of fucking nowhere like that's what? true but it's, it's, a, it's this was this is the thing we were talking about out. earlier about climactic versus yeah. anticlimactic you know it's a very um it's the end of the season well, it was the ninth episode out of 10 and and it's it's a big event but I, I still agree completely. It's it's the kind of just like Ned's death. It's just like what the fuck. Subversive, I think, is the key word. It is not a death you expect to see in a TV show, but it is a death that would happen if this was all running in a way that you know very much can come across realistic. Die. Like, as yeah. you guys were talking about earlier with um that oh. other fucking video, um that completely goes out the window later on in the show. Yes. Is... They subverted again. Fast. I bet you thought you'd have realistic consequences. Well, now you don't. Subversion. <laughs> no. So there was um, I forget the name of it. I still can't think of it. It's a fantasy novel series that came out in the '90s, and it was basically the author basically novelized his um his friend's D and D campaign, mm -hmm. and in that you have truly random deaths because that's what happens in D and D, right? You just, oh shit! A character died like to nobody out of nowhere, but he, he he left that in the in the story, and the novel like the the story of the novel series just seems seems kind of all over the place as a result. So you you can see what happens to a story when truly random deaths happen, and it doesn't it doesn't seem to be good for it. Well, the idea the... of a death being truly random isn't like well, it's not truly random generally there's going to be like in the universe a reason for it it's just like availability oh, it, of information to the, the audience the, and mm -hmm. in terms of the stray bullet or the stray arrow all it would be appealing to is it's entirely possible that somebody could just get really unlucky uh and it just so happens to be a main character because i mean it's it's kind of the point was that was made before that you know in the real world the events that are playing out aren't playing out for maximal potency in terms of a narrative that's being viewed by an outsider it's just the things that happen. Yep. And that stories oh. are generally structured with those broader narrative objectives in mind. And a lot of the time that means characters aren't dying unceremoniously. Like it's it's the ending or the second act low point. It's not like completely out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, just the premise of novelizing a D&D &D campaign. I'm just imagining because you can k accidentally kill other players in that game because um, the only D, D game i ever played i almost killed someone because i kept misrolling um, magic magic missile so i kept shooting him in the back of the head <laughs> with my magic missile when i was m meaning to aim for the goblins and this was like right at the beginning of the campaign so i'm just imagining this novel where the adventurers are just you have this sorcerer and he just keeps hitting the other character in the back of the head with the magic missile while trying to aim for the goblin and that's how one of the characters dies. Like, is is the stuff like that happen in in those novels? Like, stuff like that. 
Um, I don't know. It, I don't think it was quite that bad. No, <laughs> but there's but there's definitely like like a few. Oh shit! In just a random encounter on the road, someone someone important dies, and it's like, well, there goes that character arc. Well, um, they should they should try again, but with the even more retarded campaigns. Ooh. Like if I'm if I'm writing a story like this, there is going to be a big part in you know of my mind that's going to be like, eh, do you want this to be satisfying to read, right? You know, that doesn't mean you have to bend over backwards to make everything, you know, super cathartic. But it's like, you want people to enjoy this, you know? You probably wouldn't enjoy writing it, so you don't have to do things that but are... But guess you complicated. You do things just for... Because of the whole, like, the... It does the, get complicated. As we've seen with Sitch versus, let's just say for the sake of the argument, Fringy, in terms of the Im uh, impression the No Country for Old Men gave them. It's like... Yeah. It's such a, like, the problem, because what we're going to get with this video is, of course, he's going to give us a prescription. He's going to tell us what we should be doing when deciding how to kill characters. Uh, I don't know if we're going to agree with it. We'll see. But, of course, uh, it, it seemed like Sitch would say you probably shouldn't do what they did in No Country for Old Men, while Fringy would probably say you absolutely should be able to. That's, that's a totally viable mm -hmm. option. But as many battles, like George R. R. Martin originally planned, just like took a stray arrow to the face or got overwhelmed by the opposing force and stabbed, you know, like so many people did in medieval times, the audience would accept it, I think, you know, because that's how war is. And the ensuing drama within the narrative would be gut-wrenching, I'm sure, but that's not the type of world Martin chose to create. Rob still dies, but it's because of his choices and the choices of other characters all behave. So, already... It's like, well, wouldn't it have been his choices that got him killed if he had died theoretically in that war where he's, Actually, he's in the battle? He went into battle. He, he was right. in the front lines. He didn't wear particular gear. Like if he took an arrow to the face when his advisor was saying, "Oh, Robert, you need to wear this bessine," and he's like, "I don't want to wear the bessine, but it protects your face. Wear the bessine." He's like, "No, I will not do it." And he's, "I'm you too proud for I want to, I want them to see Wait. the anger in my eyes when I charge them, and then he gets fucking shot in the eyeball." Wait, uh, is and, it and, the bassinet? I don't know. Is, is it a bassinet, really? That's probably the French pronunciation. Uncultured swine. Ah, uh, over all right. <laughs> well, that's a that's a really clever that's a really clever joke there, Mahler, to call the often the, the pig faced bassinet to to say that it was it's very yeah, clever yeah. that you were able to work that subtly in there. Wow, fantastic work. I'm glad I'm appreciated but, yeah, I mean, by somebody. Yeah, but ultimately, yeah, like putting yourself in a very dangerous position where you're going to be charging the enemy who are probably going to be shooting a lot of pointy sticks at you is, I mean, it's, it's a dangerous thing. So if he and dies so, in there, it's not like, you know, you want to what do is that. the fair counter that one might expect? And it might be, yeah, but that's more of like a broad choice. This is more of a specific cause and effect choice to get some killed in the Red Wedding because he essentially went back on a deal he struck with the phrase to marry the, one of his daughters and instead married someone he loved, knowing that that's going to cause significant political issues, and it actually gets him killed as well as his... It's, you know. it's certainly more complex, right? Yeah. There, there's a certain... Um, it, it, gives the, uh, it gives the feeling that it's more intentional and um, like constructed instead of, yep, he went into battle and he was got up killed. front leading the charge, and as a result, he got killed and died in battle. And, uh, yeah, so... Which is fine, perfectly fine in and of itself, you know. But uh, you can always spice it up with more details, like you know, why did he not well, wear the armor? He should have. Why did he insist on being at the front of the charge? Also, there's all sorts of stuff you can spice it up with. I'd say it's a failure as well on the script to just not the to to draw the line between those two kinds of deaths as one has his choices and one doesn't. It would be a mistake. Like you need to be more clear about what you mean if you're going to say it like that. Having according to their respective traits. Like going into GOT season three, episode nine, we know that yeah, Rob was raised on honor and principles and that he's just left the nest. And even if he did know who his true enemies were, he wouldn't expect them to break a sacred custom in order to win. I mean, it barely even feels like a writing choice to whack him. The character traits that led to this were planted at the start and they inevitably brought us to the shocking moment of narrative combustion. It's infinitely more satisfying than Rob dying in battle. Would that be unrealistic? No, but there's only so much drama you can- But remember, there's also plenty of ways that you can construct him dying in battle or a character dying yeah. in battle that is more you know far better than them being stat like for instance Patton Patton died in a car crash after the war like that's not very narratively satisfying <laughs> you know if he went out in a blaze of glory <laughs> charging just, against you know, the he's Germans like bleeding and out Lascaron. and you'll sit there like this is a very narratively satisfying, very satisfying <laughs> yeah so yeah. can ring out of it's
can ring out of, it's war, people die. And if that wasn't enough, Martin goes out of his way to make sure fights don't end like they do in real life. Given Ned and Jamie's established traits, their duel in season one was always going to happen. They're in the same place at the same time. They have gratuitous beef. As a writer, Martin- I, Okay, so I don't even think that's necessarily true. Jamie attacking him here could or could not have happened. You could easily, for those who don't know, the context is that Tyrion's been captured at this point. Jamie knows that, and Jamie's fucking furious because you shouldn't do that to Lannisters ever, and so he attacks Ned here. Now, Glidas, correct me if I'm wrong, but he was more than happy to kill Ned here. It's just that he can't because oh. he he can't kill him. Like it would be like a dishonorable kill if he gets him after someone else crippled him, right? Um, it's either that that stopped him, or just knowing. Well, I can get away with doing this almost. But well, if so, I killed him, that that is like, let's go to war right this fucking moment. I can't remember how they say it in the book, but obviously in the show he says to Tywin that he didn't kill him because it wouldn't have been clean. And I assume he was referring yeah, to the fact that... Yeah, he does say that. Yeah. The, in that scene with the stag corpse. So yeah, the uh, I don't buy the idea that there's no way you could have written it so that Jamie didn't attack him here, but simultaneously... Uh, you know, you can go. You can go a couple ways with some character choices. So I already don't dis uh, don't agree, but we'll carry on. Martin couldn't escape the inevitability of this fight, where one character would logically kill the other. So what does he do? He makes up some random bullshit to stop the fight. That's not random bullshit. Uh, if you watch the fight, Jamie's not dominating. Um, yeah, they're pretty even. Which is, uh, you know, a part of this. Um, as far this is stretching my Game of Thrones knowledge, but from what I remember. Ned is a pretty damn good fighter, but he's not going to be as good as Jamie Lannister. The only thing is, is that Ned doesn't fight in tournaments, right? And uh, does he? Is he something he says, or is it something we learn that part of that reason is he doesn't want people to know how he can fight? Yeah, um, at the feast in Winterfell it. in the first episode, Jamie's yeah. like, "Oh man, I want to fight you. It'd be fun to fight you." And Ned's like, "You don't want to fight me." So um, I'm not going to show you what I can. Sorry, do. this is important. I need to point about this video that no one's not yes. noticed yet. Okay. Yeah, true. it's called "How Realistic Violence Ruins Movies," and it's about Game of Thrones so far, which isn't a movie. Oh, right. that's true. Oh. Uh, should, yeah, you're right. That should probably movies. be stories, not movies. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Well noticed. I'm, I'm, YouTuber. I'm, I'm a little bit annoyed <laughs> that. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the flu. I just noticed. Yeah, why didn't you? Why didn't you read out that part? That was important. I just noticed that too. Yeah. <laughs> What, what is no the movie? I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? Movie <laughs> Just because you don't know what it means doesn't mean you can't read it out. Wimp is, is Wombo language. It's an important um, language, culturally speaking, that you should be familiar with if you want to avoid looking bigoted. I'm just going to say that. So um, yeah. It yeah. means very um, important person with big penis. Um, so, well, Mahler, Yes? So, so did, did you read the Game of Thrones books? I read up to Dance with Dragons, I think. But that was a while ago now, okay. so my memory is spotty on them. I wouldn't mind rereading them soon, I think. Do you recall how this fight went in the first book? The horse falls on Ned, right? That's why and his legs fucked up by it. I don't think he's stabbed by a spearman or whatever. Yeah. However, also for a good chunk of the fight, Ned is just outclassed by Jamie. Well, so wait, hang on. I didn't get to finish my thought on that. Yeah, what what I was trying to say like, oh, was that um, in this scene, if you're watching it, Jamie thinks that he can basically dominate Ned, and I think everyone believes that that's the case. Ned gets like a pretty good fight with him because of the fact that he, like, I'd say that's a justification that he is a good fighter and nobody's seen him fight, so it was like a surprise to Jamie. I think that's how it comes across in their fight. And you can argue that the guy with the spear is like, I don't want to even come close to risking Jamie getting hurt, and so takes the initiative to stab Ned in the back, or back of the thigh, whatever. And Jamie's fucking furious at that. It's like, you just stole my victory, I could have killed Ned, but now you fucked it all up. That's what I believe happened, and this guy's describing it as, we had to stop them fighting because of course Ned would lose, so we invent some bullshit like a guy stabbing in the back of the thigh. I feel like they gave reason for it. That Ned performed better than most people ever would have expected, but he wasn't going to win. But the guy like got worried enough yeah, that he decided to protect Jamie, which was unnecessary and embarrassing for Jamie. Okay, so what 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 excuse that the fight ends is more of an ass pull then? Is it that he gets stabbed, you know, in the back of the leg, or is it the horse falls on him? Wait, sorry, you asked, can you ask that again? So, 
I, from what I understand, the movie is saying that like the way the fight ends, basically they just had to make something up because otherwise Ned. Because otherwise Ned here. dies here, yeah. But yeah. um. So what what is what is the better excuse that he gets stabbed in the back of the leg by one of the soldiers, or that his horse falls on him? So here's the thing: I don't think you need much of an excuse for Jamie to not kill Ned here. Ned is incredibly important politically. Like killing him would be huge in terms of a, a political move. Like, I, I can buy that Jamie wouldn't want to kill him. At the same time, I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, the fight breaks out and the horse gets scared or hurt and falls on him and hurts his leg to the point where Jamie doesn't want to kill him because he feels like executing a fallen man is just fucked up honorably wise, especially Ned Stark. Or that this soldier feels uh, protective over Jamie and uh, hits him in the back of the thigh when the fight isn't going perfectly well, you know? I, I, I think all of those are fine. I don't have any issue with them. I don't consider them ass poles. Okay. I think I prefer, like, with just with my limited knowledge from what I've heard, I think I prefer the soldier taking some level of initiative. Uh, I think that just to me seems more satisfying than the the quasi uh, randomness of the sword just happening to fall on him or you know that sort of thing. That, that sounds of those two. I I think I prefer that one. I mean, who is this guy? Why would he do that? In the books, it was a horse accident. But either way, Martin... Like I said, I think if you watch the scene, the clues oh, are there for why this happened. Fall, though. Why, would, why would the horse fall? We've just shifted it to why, why would this happen to why yeah, would in that any, happen? However you fucking write this, the, the writer is still puppeteering all of it, of course. Like, so it's, it's weird to call it an ass pull, or that the horse is better yeah. when ultimately it's still the writer pulling the strings and all of it. You... You've essentially even like opened up a window as you've closed this door and like, well, what, what was the soldier thinking? Why would he think that? What is Jamie's reaction to it? How does he deal with a soldier? What does this create? You know, that I feel like that creates a lot more options other than, well, what are we going to do about this horse? Like, I guess move it over there, I suppose. Oh, unless someone just, you know, not as many options. Almost like blanked on this, but someone just said like, well, isn't it obvious why they did it this way? It's like, yeah, this is way easier to film, obviously, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Is, is stepping in and saying, no, 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 that's not how people die in this story. I'm not just going to kill a character because the other guy had a, a good move. If I kill a character, it's going to be for character-driven reasons. People die in Game of Thrones because the other character had a good move a lot. I don't know why he's saying it. Like, George doesn't write that way. He definitely does. Mm. So that brings me to example number two, the Suicide Squad. I enjoyed it for the most part, but I want to talk about one scene that really sticks out to me as a missed opportunity. Dare I okay, say is that even? Correct or not? Should he have enjoyed it or not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I enjoyed it, so I, I, I also like enjoyed it. Fine for people, yeah. yeah, it's fine for people to enjoy things. The Suicide Squad has a lot of problems, but it also does a lot of things great. So you know, it's uh, right. it's fine to enjoy. Noted. It. Did Noted. you enjoy it, Shadow? Have you yeah. not seen it? I think I watched the first 30 minutes and fell asleep, so that speaks for oh. itself, doesn't it? Oh, wow. Uh, wow. Were you really it, sleepy it that day, though? certainly says something. <laughs> Had you, have you eaten? Um, Were you malnutrition? To be honest, the, the bit about it seemed fine. Um, you know, I, I need probably need to watch all of it, but the original was a bit of a mixed bag. I don't know. I, I'll watch it and let you know, okay? The original. The original. A major flaw. So this character Ooh. is named Rick Flagg. He is a longtime military dude who puts his life on the line every day to support America's interests. But in the third act of the film, Rick uncovers a dark secret about the U.S. government. He feels betrayed yeah, and decides thing. to leak that secret to the U.S. media. Great, but now it's been can, spoiled. This is bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to watch it now. Watching it now is there? <laughs> this is actually good so that you guys will be able to give input on this because he's, he's giving you all the background. Uh, John Cena's character, Peacemaker, points a gun at Rick's chest. And Peacemaker was established earlier as a by any means American loyalist type. He reveals that the government tasked him with keeping the information secret and based on his characterizations and Rick's, we understand the situation to be plausible. So this is it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Peacemaker has this choice to make. It's, it's kill Rick or don't kill Rick. And this choice will have massive consequences going forward. So, what happens? Right. Man, is he just playing the whole scene here? I should probably put the cover up. I'm a little bit worried. I'm not sure. It feels like there wasn't yeah, many cuts. Not, so it's not scary. Yeah. Like, yeah it's, oh, uh, the ceiling collapses on them. So, you must be thinking this is to facilitate Rick's survival, or at least I was thinking that. Writer director James Gunn knew there was no way out for Rick, so he solved the problem with some random bullshit happening. And no, you'd be wrong. Whole, That's not random. It wasn't random. Thing. Yeah, it wasn't random. Going bullshit. around. There was a reason. There was Very a big reason that happens. So yeah. the two teams. Legit for, big. 
For people who don't know, for some reason, why he's left this out, two teams, two missions, one at the top of the tower, one at the bottom, the top setting yeah. explosives, they go off. So, um, it was quite random bullshit. Time. It feels like he's doing that just to justify his narrative for this video. That you, seems like complete bullshit to me. You'd be correct, because he's annoyed. I, I assume you guys have picked up enough pieces to know what the criticism is going to be, uh, at, least, at least people who've seen this film. Um, you know, I said, like, characters shouldn't be killing each other because one of them had a good move. It should be, like, character-driven deaths or something. Now, you know how the scene, a lot of people know how the scene between these two ends. And so he's already annoyed that um, uh, the falling building pieces didn't save one of them. It just kind of delayed it into the point of them having a fight, which I have no issue with at all. And it feels like he's yeah. trying to find an issue with it. I don't know why. I don't think he's got anything. Because for it, immediately after the ceiling Maybe fall, he mentions the rest of it. And also yeah, remember, it, 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 it separates the two from everyone else so that when they have the resolution of the fight, no one else can like... That's actually a fair thing to point say. out, yeah. yeah. And... Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, the explosion was not random. That shit was on a timer. It was going to happen. They could get up and start fighting, and it's very entertaining. Well, sorry, not at necessarily. What I mean on a timer, I mean narratively, because what sets it off is uh, Polka Dot Man, right? Because he's he's uh, defending them against different soldiers, and some of his Polka Dots go into the explosives and set them off. I think that's how that happens. Mm. Something like that, yeah. And then, I would need to rewatch I'm not 100% sure. Peacemaker kills Rick with a shard of debris. Why? Because he fought better. He had a, a good move. Yep. I mean, the, the fact these two are pretty closely matched. Yeah, it was really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was. It was quite and... a fight. It was quite so, a fight. So, but you, you still got your resolution then, the one that you yeah. liked. So, what's the problem? Well, now? let's see. Let's, let's see. Flat beat on And also, like, how exact... does he think fights are what? like decided? Yeah. Well, no, he, well, I remember at the beginning of the, of the video, he said that a fight could be decided just because one person was slightly better at fighting than the other guy. Yeah, so, but yeah, let's, let's see. Let's, he's let's he's clearly got issues with this, so we gotta yeah. find out what they are. Wait, yeah. Yeah. And and having a better move, how is that related to realistic violence, which is his problem? I mean, in, well, I mean, if you've got two people fighting, if one person wins, because like of a know, better move, that's a that's a reason why they might win. Yeah. One person mm -hmm. having a better move, yeah. Yeah, yeah what, what 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 do you mean is the dichotomy? I, I don't know what, what, he, what he means is that yeah, if if uh, you know Bob and Bill are fighting each other, Bob doesn't win because he's the protagonist of his life. He's going to win because he has a better move. That's more exactly. that's more realistic. Yeah, yeah, but I I think James Gunn did this for story reasons, not necessarily well, because we'll get we'll get into that. We ought to let him say it's not thing. first. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Kills Rick with a shard of debris. Why? Because he fought better. He had a, a good move. This plot beat on paper is exactly the same as it would have been if the ceiling hadn't fallen. But no, we just had to do this cool fight scene, even if it liquefied any sense of character agency. Fights to the I death... Liquefied Ooh. any sense of character agency. The fight character to the death agency. liquefies character agency? That's so some good pros. No, both of them are fighting that. to the death because yeah. of their character. It is... The, yeah, and this... Directly, and by the way, the Peacemaker power. gives him yeah. the out several times of, like, just... Give me the fucking thing. I don't want to kill you. Yeah, because yeah. he admires the guy. He, he does. He loves yeah, the so guy. it's 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 th this is the thing. This is this is like a really strong payoff in this film. It's great in terms of character. Yeah, because uh, Rick... I think he's saying that the, it's the roof explosion, though. That's what he means. The roof explosion is what liquefies character agency. Still a stupid point, perhaps. Well, but because it doesn't. The, the no, thing is, is that the, the, the event the event happens, but then they make choices because of that event. The yeah, agency like, is still intact. When yeah. we have, um, before the explosion, we have Peacemaker's got the gun on him. He has, he, you know, time's ticking on terms of like, give me the thing or I shoot you. The the roof falling down equalizes them. Neither of them has a gun on yeah, the other now. So now it's, it's all about the what equation. they're going to do next. Yeah. And the other thing to consider as well, it's interesting about it, is Peacemaker uh, absolutely does not want to kill Rick. Rick is disgusted by Peacemaker. He's like a corruption of everything that he believes America's supposed to stand for. These things are very important for those characters in this scene and for what's going to happen going forward, of course. Aren't real drama. You're only on the edge of your seat because the real drama happened earlier and now you're attached to the characters. Now, sometimes what happens is the action scene uh, will play no. out and it will be entertaining, but the resolution of the fight will be grounded in the character choice, which is fine. Like, Oberyn and the Mountain have their fight, well, there were, but no, I, don't, I mean, the resolution is grounded in a character choice, which is Peacemaker decides to kill Rick. 
Yeah, and well, and a key piece of information I think is that Rick is like throttling him, right? And he's like yeah. fucking staring into his soul, doing it. He's not even looking at the idea. That, he doesn't mind his surroundings, you could say. Yes. That's how into it. That's how obsessive he is to try and end Peacemaker's life. And Peacemaker very regrettably decides, "I have to end yours." Mm -hmm. Chooses to antagonize Tywin and taunt the Mountain instead of killing him, and the Mountain takes it. Yeah, and you can argue that the Mountain wins there because right. of a good move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, advantage it, I mean, of his cockiness and then Well, this is what I mean. It depends move. on how you want to draw these lines because I think these are very yeah. arbitrary at this point. Yeah, and you, you can know speaking of the arbitrariness, you could also make an argument for just the for just stabbing the guy and then taunting the corpse rather than the other way around, right? Uh, it's the easy answer. Oh, sorry, go ahead. It's just ar yeah, it's just arbitrary. Yeah. It doesn't feel like there's a good point he's trying to make. Mm. I feel like the easy answer in, in the end is just going to be, oh, it's probably more satisfying if you have like a one-on-one -on -one fight and somebody dies instead of someone randomly dying on the battlefield without any hurrah. Is that just all well, it's going to be? Right now he's being critical of a one-on-one -on -one fight between Peacemaker and uh, Rick Flag. Is it not also oh, yeah, you're right. uh, like yeah, a, mind. a matter of character that the mm. mountain has a better move? It's a, it, like, yeah, that, absolutely. That, that in itself yeah. is... That's what I was trying yeah, to say with Peacemaker and very strange. Rick Flag. Rick Flag is so obsessed with killing uh, Peacemaker, he's not taking into account the situation. You can't just strangle him and hope that he doesn't use his arms to do anything else. Peacemaker is desperately struggling to find anything to work with. He realizes what he has, and in that moment, he fucking goes for his heart. And what does he do straight after? He looks like he's filled with regret. Yeah. It's, a, it's a character choice, it's a desperate one, it's made because of... This is what I mean, like, there's so much going on and it feels like we're getting reduced to good move, which is like, I mean, okay. Advantage of this. Now, if I were James Gunn, I would have just had Peacemaker execute Flag before the ceiling fell because he had the jump on him and then there was a clear choice. So no, he doesn't I don't, want to, I don't no. think that matches his character. He doesn't want to kill Rick Flag. He he do, yeah, he's very hesitant. He really doesn't want to kill Rick Flag. He respects him. He could shoot him right there if he wanted to. He could literally yeah. just shoot him if he really wanted to kill him, couldn't he? Well, that's the, that's how you derive character. It's like, why didn't he? He's like, he doesn't want to. He's very clear about that. And so it's like, yeah, but you yeah, like, still. Yeah. And it's like, okay, but that's the point of the scene is that he's brought to his limit. He has to kill Rick Flagg by the end of this fight. If he wants to live. It's to be made, but if the studio forced me to have a fight scene, I would lead the fight to a place where one of the two characters has to choose between his mission or his life and I would let that choice Wait, play out. That is what happens. Yeah. Uh, both, of them, both of them decide that. That's both the of them, choice that they yeah. both make. And so they, they clash into each other. They're both yeah. basically making the same choice so they have to yeah. fight. That's, the only, literally... that's the only way you're going to resolve things. Oh yeah, dude. really the lead into the fight. It's, this is such a weird observation. Little King just posted the, uh, the quote, don't make me kill a hero like you, sir, please. Wait, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And yeah, this movie masquerades as an anyone can die movie, but that's only for the Wait, first what was act. That? After that opening battle where Jai Courtney gets helicoptered, well, our main characters are locked in, and those bullets, knives, tentacles, whatever. No, 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 no. The only one that's locked in is Margot Robbie. She's the only one that was protected in that whole movie. Anyone could have died at any point. Yeah, true. Yeah, anyone could have died. People did die. Polka Dot Man died. Yeah. Uh, Rick Flag died. Peacemaker, mate. Wow. Well, yeah. Peacemaker mostly died uh, yeah. <laughs> until he wasn't. Yeah. But yeah, that, no, I don't buy that. I've seen this criticism everywhere for Suicide Squad. It's like the only time they actually kill people was the opening. It's like, nope, they killed people after that too. They all miss yeah. until the right time, and to me... Also, what do you mean they only kill them at the right time? That's... What? <laughs> like, they don't die except at the right time. After that opening battle where Jai Courtney gets helicoptered, our main characters are locked in, and those bullets, knives, tentacles, whatever, they all miss until the right time, and to me... Do you know what I mean? They all miss until the right time. I'm surprised nobody yeah, else that, finds that it, egregious it, it, in it, terms of a point. Like, and that's just such a strange statement. Which is, how can you say they're all invincible except when they're not? Except when they're not, exactly. They, it happens, eventually. Yeah, they, they don't die until they do, yes. You can't structure a script with conventional drama, but also pick and choose which characters die because of random chaos and when. There's well, reason they, behind their deaths. It's not random. I mean, there's yeah. there's always going to be reason because characters are making choices. It's not just factors outside of their control. It's both yeah, I mean, choices they make and things that are beyond them. 
Yeah, Polka Dot Man died because of the, you know, they were fighting Starro here. Uh, their friend died because he was hit by bullets well, when there was the gunfight in the facility. If we could say as well, um, I would argue Polka Dot Man dies beginning. for the same reason he drew the courage to try and defeat Starro. He pictured it as his mum, attacked it, felt glorious of the fact that he finally stood up to it, wasn't paying attention, got killed. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's character driven. Yep, definitely. I would pay to see a version of this script where James Gunn literally decided each character's fate in each battle with a coin flip. I... I Why? No, th Play but that's not how it works. That's not how the world works. The world doesn't actually work with a coin flip. Like, what, do, do you think that if you have... Let's use the Vietnam War as an example, right? The, do you think that it was just a coin flip as to which side would win in a battle? I mean, when you have one side that has a, this, a much, much higher kill-death ratio over the other side, it wasn't because of coin flips. There's reason why fights are won. There's a reason why fights are lost. Like, the, the, it's not actually random. Sometimes it can seem that way, but it's not mm -hmm. actually random. Yeah, we've talked about this before. It's just like how much up. information you're actually uh, aware of. If, if someone got randomly poisoned versus we saw someone poison their drink... You know what I mean? Like, oh, I see how that happened versus what? They randomly got poisoned. The coin flips, like, you know, like I said earlier, you could write it that way, but I imagine most writers are still going to want to try and build story around the coin flips result. I don't see why you would think that's better for the Suicide Squad, though. And he forced himself to build the story around that. But instead, this property and most others don't implement random chaos until it suits their pre-planned emotional roadmap. Wow, he said that with such bitterness. Uh, yeah, yeah. He did. He really seemed upset. What if it came out that that is what he did? Yeah, so fucking what? Also, yeah. I feel like her, that's what writing stories is. You take chaos and you try and mold it into something. There's, there's nothing wrong with looking at it that way. And if if he's like, yeah, but you didn't implement true random chaos because aliens didn't randomly come down and abduct <laughs> Harley Quinn, <laughs> that should be a possibility, <laughs> right? And it's like, um. Why don't you write that story, man? <laughs> you go right ahead. I should ahead. have done that in Shawshank Redemption. Yes. I'm like, pick a lane, you know? The bad guys can't just miss until you feel a particular character has reached a good stopping point. And I... So when that character does get hit, it would probably be a good idea to put them in a situation where maybe they don't have access to cover. Maybe they get ambushed. Maybe the people shooting have really good equipment. Maybe they're well-trained. There's a million different things you could do to make it more believable why a character dies here instead of just randomly someplace else. Because you don't really want a movie where characters just randomly die. That would just be insanely unsatisfying and... I, I just Annoying. wouldn't watch that. It, would make, it makes no sense. I'm like, oh, people just drop dead randomly? I just... I'm, I just, I have better things to do. If you don't give a shit and you're just going to make everything random, I'm going to go do something else. Well, there's yeah. some movies where the main character dies at the start. Like Psycho is a good example, right? Where the main character dies, the supposed main character dies quite quickly. And that's quite interesting as like a one-off. But if like every other movie, because of the coin flip thing, the main star dies at the start, yeah, you'd be um, like, yeah, this is fucking stupid. I've come to watch that person and he's dead now. It's almost like the difference between a super ordered story, a, a chaotic story that's trying to be ordered, and then pure chaos. Nobody would like pure chaos, where it's just like everything is coin flips. It's like, does yeah, the character would, even walk through this door? Exhausting. Coin flip, yes. Just emotionally exhausting. Like, every time yeah. something happens, you flip a coin to see if a character dies. It's like, I just can't deal with this all the time. Jeez. Yeah. I say the flag death scene is irritating as opposed to implausible or ridiculous because I can't really take points off for it. Nothing. Yeah, because it's all cause and effect. It's going to be difficult only, to criticize yeah, you can it. You can only give it points. It only makes the film better because it works not just logically, but in terms of the characters. It's and it's really, a really good beat. It's really sad. Yeah, and the big thing about it is that you made me joke. care about a character I couldn't give less of a fuck about in the previous film, so good job. Absolutely. He's contrived, nobody is acting out of character. I can't tear it apart on any logical level. And if you tell me this wasn't an issue for you, then, you know, that's that's fine. I can't refute. There's no issue to be had. You I can't find a logical reason to not yeah. like this, and yet. Well, yeah, he's gonna, I can give you logical reasons to like it. He's gonna give us something, I'm sure of it. That you're not wrong, wrong. And maybe it would have been a little off-putting if Rick just got... No. That's really not the way this genre works, but personally, I think it's it not. I don't think that's the answer to that question. Like, why didn't he get executed? It's like it wouldn't be in Peacemaker's character. It's that's not why this genre is. It's not about the yeah, genre, it, yeah. Yeah, but again, genre is descriptive. It's, it, that's not how it works. Well, and but, fucking yeah, polka dot man thing. got flattened in a heartbeat. Like the what? That that's yeah. that's within the genre limits, is it? I don't know. How does that work? How is that different? 
It is so cheap to build a character with choices and then kill that character because whoopsie, the other guy just did better fight moves. Now I can already see him. Just did better fight moves is that very That character made but... choices throughout their life that made them have those better moves. <laughs> That's actually yeah. And also, and, like, if we can't use if we can't use um one character winning because of better fight moves, I mean, like, how do we like? What about Cloud City? You know, like, it's just like Vader won because he was literally the better, you know, Goldman. lightsaber fighter, right? He that uh, he was never Luke was never going to win that. If Luke won that, it'd be like you have to explain how it's possible yeah. that Luke won that. And it was because Vader had the better moves. It's as simple as that. Well, and what's and weird there is he gave resolving a fight between two vastly differently skilled combatants. Like if the one with the low skill won, you have to come up with a reason to justify it. Objection coming, which is what about Rocky and other sports movies? Aren't those built around fight scenes? And yeah, they Training are, but they're established variables that inform the outcome of the fight. Like Rocky has to train to become the champion when he stops. Yeah, that's part of having is... better moves. Yeah, Peacemaker yeah. and Rick Flagg's training comes into their fighting. Their motivations comes into their fighting. It's so weird yeah. how he's like There's identifying. Because, you know, yeah, like just because you, you don't see it doesn't mean that it's not there and that you can't gleam it. Yeah, it you cannot separate the training from the moves. Like, what what do you think the moves come from? It's, it's and, the and then there's even you know it could be a, a nature of like one person is more willing to you know d use certain moves. Like, the easy one in a fight would be, I don't know, somebody fights dirty, like, to get the upper hand or in an underhanded way. Or, you know, Pocket they sand. outsmart the enemy, right? Rather than just beating them in a, like, a fist fight, they trick them. All, yeah. all kinds of variables. Training, he loses his edge. Oh, look, another guy is training while Rocky slacks off. You know, I wonder what'll happen. There's a clear emphasis put on the mental component as well. In sports oh, movies, well, the good okay. guys have yeah, to clear. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> Your mental and emotional hurdles if they want to succeed. Those hurdles are well defined and they're often laid out at the beginning of the film. In Remember the Titans, for example, the characters overcoming their biases is explicitly tied to their success as a team. A clear line of cause and effect is established. Yeah, but by the way, that's not just mental. That's you being able to work as a team. That is a tactical advantage. That is essentially the same as having better moves than the other team. Also, there would film. be a potential alternative where way more of the film is about specifically Peacemaker and Rick Flagg's, like, you know, conflict, and that we have a huge explosive finale scene that's all about their fight, there's way more to it and stuff, it's like, maybe in uh, that timeline that would be better, but, you know, there's other things going on in the film, and what they did for what they had, I think was easily strong enough for the payoff they were trying to achieve. Because he's describing, yep. like... Films that are all about these, like Rocky is like all about the fucking Rocky fights, of course. That this film he's referencing now, it sounds like that's what all the film is about. Peacemaker and Rick Flagg's conflict is a portion of the Suicide Squad story. It's an ensemble movie. Yeah. And to unify means failing to perform. Uh, another argument against this might be the fact that fighting isn't just random chaos, it's a skill that involves rapid fire decision making. Yep. To which uh, I would yeah. say, yes. Yeah. However, those decisions rarely have any. Which, by the way, as we discussed earlier in this uh, in this anniversary, is part of training. It prepares you to be able to make those decisions too. Well, so what's it? What's uh? Of... What's the however? What's the caveat? It's this might be the fact that fighting isn't just random chaos. It's a skill that involves rapid fire decision making. To which I would say yes. However, those decisions rarely have anything to do with the character. Like, unless a specific fighting technique was They're tied training. to a character's arc and meant more in the grand scheme. It's just not true. The Even the That's motive it. to pull the trigger or to swing the sword is well, super this, important to the this, characters. Uh, this well, shot is interesting, right? Because what's happening in this scene is that uh, Bloodsport's losing more and more and more of his uh, nanotech yeah. as the fight goes on. His choices are being reduced, his options. And it's interesting to see what choices he makes. Well, yeah, he. Th what happens that. soon after this is he desperately wrestles away from them to protect uh, Ratcatcher. That's right. Mm. Character. Name of the story. It's not a word. It's funny because there's enough character happening here, and it's just him versus a zombie set. You know, it's not even yeah. him versus another significant character. A device with yeah. which to end another. Because I fucking love the the standoff he has with Peacemaker. Both of them, the hyper accurate. This this setup earlier with the whole I do what he does but better, and. Uh, yeah. You know, the nanotech bullets being stronger than what Peacemaker has, sort of thing. The, the, you know, the, the fact that the bullets hit each other exactly as a uh, yeah. contrivance, of course, but, you know, the, there's yeah. still plenty of characters to draw out of that. Character's arc, or to further the plot, really, in any way. 
This is a nothing beat. Narratively speaking, it is off the rails. Both characters are at the mercy of the writer when they should have been at the mercy of, of cause. Just wait a second, just wait a second, okay? Listen, yeah. like, <laughs> I, I, this, this is not exactly what you guys are talking about. This is something a little bit different. Um, okay. This background music that this guy's using for his fucking video, I feel like it's melting my brain. <laughs> it does feel like it, 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 it feels yeah, subliminal, just, like it would be in a Clockwork Orange type yeah, situation. Yeah, this is like if you put in a VHS, but it was slowed down to like fifteen percent. Mm -hmm. like, like, why did he choose this for his video? Why? Like, he he must have thought thought this was a good idea at some point. Why? It's, he I'm it's sure he did. Yeah. Wait, a couple of people I mean, said apparently just... it's the Dune OST. Is it? Is it? That's a great question. Uh, the old one, right? the old it should have stayed in Dune. It should have stayed in Right? From Presumably? Yeah, I have no idea. Because it doesn't Maybe sound like go. anything from the new one. But we need to rewind. There was a statement there. The plot rewind really in that. any way. This is a nothing beat. Narratively speaking, it is off the rails. Both characters are at the mercy of the writer when they should have been at the mercy of, of causality and their own. How is it they off the rails? The yeah, they're, this is causality. Because um, the yeah, causality is the conflict in the first place. The fact mm. that these two are at odds is causality. It's, maybe he's referring. This is flag. This is okay. Maybe he's referring to the fact that this could. There's there's no reason why Rick Flag couldn't have hit Peacemaker in such a way that he's delirious for a second and then he gets a, a you know neck slit on him and he kills him. Like the idea. I mean, Either one of them could theoretically have won this fight. The writer decided it would be Rick that would die, but I would still push back and say like they justified it properly. Yep. Yeah, it like it's, it either one sense. of them could have won, but Peacemaker did win, and there's a reason. Yeah, and why I don't know. Won. There is no just like the Ned Stark Jamie thing. There is no solution that isn't the writer still pulling the strings. Ultimately, they're always going to be at the mercy. The point is, are you getting pulled out yeah. of the experience? Are you very, very, very aware? That the writer is is you know that you've been pulled out of the story. You see it for what it is. You see the strings rather than this being a, a beat that you can buy into. Which yeah. I sometimes totally I wonder can. if um if you took like a history book but you didn't tell anyone it was actually history and you just like took all the events, turned it into a screenplay, handed it to someone, and everyone's like, oh, how come Balin of Ebelin or whatever? How come they won this sword fight against you know Charles the Chuffed or whatever? And it was well mm. because you know he was able to he was the better swordsman he trained longer and everything I'm like oh that shit you know ah like, oh, surprise it's actually history that's what happened and they'd be like oh I mean, goodness gracious you, this is an instance where obviously Rick Flag dying here and Peacemaker making that choice is incredibly potent well you know like um as a payoff. he used the o uh, mountain and Oberyn as an example of like how to do it properly the idea is the the mountain's defeated Oberyn is taunting. And he doesn't realize he gets too close to the body. He grabs him and punches his face to the point of like crushing his skull. So he, he's like, "You see, that's character." And it's like, "That's still not like I can still argue that's the the, the writer pulled the strings. He could have stayed mm -hmm. a meter away from the body. He could have. The writer pushed him he close enough to get killed. Exactly, because the writer is it's ultimately always the writer's pulling friends. the strings. Yeah. Yeah. The character. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess I understand the idea of in spirit that. A writer can recognize that a character has reached a place that logically means that this should happen. Like, I get that in spirit of uh, an instance where they're not at the mercy of the writer, but even then, the writer's always going to be making the choice as to. Yeah, and like I said, the... know, do I go for this payoff or do I go for this payoff? Do I, like, and, and, and writers have to make those choices. They have to because they're creating the sequence to achieve some kind of objective thematically in terms of character and in this case we've got a payoff that relies on peacemaker lives and kills rick flag and also i think we got to think about what this kind of line of thinking disqualifies from storytelling why would a character in your start why why ever train what's the point of ever practicing combat practicing marksmanship working on you know discipline you know being familiar with your equipment why would you ever do anything because that just means you're going to win because you have better moves, and so why bother? This is kind of this kind of goes into the the you know the stormtroopers being shit thing. Like stormtroopers are like professional soldiers with you know rifles and equipment. They should be you know good at shooting people, and they never are inexplicably right. And that's a problem when a lot of the times they should be winning because in essence they have the better moves. Um, I don't, I don't want to take I don't want to devalue this idea of a character and a work of fiction 
training and practicing and having better equipment and things of that nature, because these are elements of the plot and these enable characters to do things. Um, yeah, so and I, when they're really... this closely matched, I'm okay with the writer making the decision. And in this case, as far as I'm concerned, they both get really good hits on each other, eventually to the point where they wrestle to the ground. Rick thinks he's got him, if he can just, you know, choke him out. Very, you've seen the shot a couple of times in this video. He seems um, like he's seeing red. Like, and, and we know that Rick would be, because he believes that this is the only chance to essentially save America's soul by exposing what's been done by the government. Peacemaker is going to be a corrupt, disgusting piece of shit that's going to try and stop him. And he's now trying to kill him. So this is his one chance. And he's been stabbed. He's, uh, he's got to take it. He's got to kill him. And his focus is so hardcore on Peacemaker, he doesn't see that his arms are free. He's picking up something sharp, and then it goes straight into his heart, which is exactly where Peacemaker would stab if he wanted to save his own life. I mean, like, one of them's got to win. Exactly. A either way, it's like one of them has to win to explain how they won. Which one achieves it doesn't make sense. your objectives more as a, a rider, and can you justify it? Yeah, because you're not really going to be flipping coins if, like, if Peacemaker had to fight Ratcatcher. You know, like, you're not just going to flip a coin on who win who wins. I mean, the Peacemaker is, is going to destroy her. You have to come up with a reason how she's able to win if she does or if she escapes. And but is that he's what he's really asking for? It feels like he's asking for something really stupid, like he genuinely wants the coin flip. Is that genuinely I mean, what this guy wants? I think we're going to hear I, what he wants he as an alternative. It, but I'm not I, sure. I don't I think he, I don't this think guy just needs really to play D&D. But even that isn't like a coin flip, really. Yeah, true. I mean, there is someone pulling the strings, making character-based decisions, leading the world down a narratively satisfying well, yeah, you're, path. Yeah, you're positioning your character. You're, you know, like, I'm not just going to do random things and it's a random coins. Like, yeah, there's a an element of randomness, but you can control for the randomness in a sense. You can That's position a bit your like characters life. in certain ways. And yeah, some things are out of my control. You know, and, and plus, D&D is, like, the the rolling system of D&D is essentially an, is a, is an abstraction of a million little bitty things that have to be put it made into a game mechanic. It's like hit points or anything like that, right? Um, so. Um, okay, listen, guys. I'm sorry to go halfway through the video, but um, I've got to go and do my end stream now. Sure. It's okay. We Don't appreciate know. you jumping. Th there is drama to farm, isn't there, Chad? We am a. There is. Bye. Anyway, listen. Prop sorry, I'm quiet. not saying that to you know promote myself. I want you guys to have a good stream. Five years, great stuff, good shit. Thank I'm you. glad, I'm glad for you. Thanks for popping and, uh, in, sir. I'm sure we'll catch you again. Pleasure, bye, pleasure. Bye. Thanks very much. Have More. a good time. Cheers. See you later, bye. dude. Bye. Um, someone in chat said the writer could easily have just not had that thing available next to him for him to reach and stab Rick with. It's like, yeah, that's that's the point we've been making this whole time. The writer controls all of yeah. these elements. So that means if you if the writer wanted to have Peacemaker win that fight, he would have needed an alternative to that. The way that he chose was logical. It makes sense. Yeah, that's what we want. We don't want way. Peacemaker to go Alakazam and then Rick's head explodes. We'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, what? What difference does it make? The writer decided one wins. It's like, that's not... <laughs> no. That's not good enough. No. That's just not good enough. The idea that there's a shard of porcelain or whatever material it is in the bathroom after they've smashed the shit out of it, or whatever room that is, it's just like, yeah, I can believe there's something on the ground he can use as a weapon. Yes. Own arcs, no, which are coming. It's just as arbitrary as aliens invading. <laughs> it's just as chaotic. <laughs> An end. James Gunn could have written, Rick catches the blade and stabs Peacemaker, or he could have written, it misses and goes into his shoulder, and I'd be saying the exact same thing right now. Yep, or he could write it so that he no, very aggressively taunts someone and then gets his head exploded by a big man punching it. Like, these are all so, the writer's control. Is he just saying that fights cannot be. The, the victor of a fight cannot be determined by. Combat, like, combat skill? Because that's madness. It's unclear that's, exactly. This is, what I, th this is my primary issue with him, is that the line is unclear. Uh, like, like we said, the Mountain and Oberyn, that, he gives that a tick. That's good. Uh, Ned Stark, I think he's, he's, given, he's approving of that death. He, he does not approve of this one. Uh, he does approve of Rob Stark dying in Red Wedding. And it's like, what does that tell you then? It's like, it's confusing, really. I'm not entirely sure exactly what he wants. Because you're hmm. wringing these massive uh, narrative payoffs out of nothing. Nothing but... It's not out of nothing. How is this Those out are, of nothing? How, why do you think these two characters are able to essentially go toe-to-toe? -to -toe? 
Why is it even a possibility that Peacemaker could kill Rick Flag? Why is that even possible if not for reasons that stem from character that have been built up over the course of the film? Yeah, if it was a 12-year-old girl against Peacemaker, it's like, well, the, 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 the little girl's not going to win. It's just like, it, it would be a miracle if she did, and you would have to explain it. Like, it would, it would be nonsense. It'd be madness. Of course Peacemaker is, and why? Well, for pretty obvious reasons, why? Yeah, and these, these two are equal opposites, so to speak. And the, you know, the, the potency of him actually getting the killing stroke on him here is, 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 there's so much to draw out of it for him as a character as well. Yep. Your desire to kill one character or another, a sentiment I hear a lot is that good films make you care about the characters before putting them in harm's way. And now the action means oh, something yeah, right. because you want them sure, to win. Yeah. And that's Investment. true, but that's not the whole truth. Great rewatchable action films mm -hmm. don't just leave the drama at the door as soon as the action starts. They let the drama inform the action. If oh, I were please, please, watch, please don't fight put... between Peacekeeper and Rick Flag. You say Peacekeeper? Listen, he... I Peace heard Peacekeeper. <laughs> he, he, he said, he said great films. Great films. He'll be as soon as that eventually. fucking movie showed up. Yeah, I was about to say, did you just put fucking Pirates 3 as an example of like films that do this properly? That's interesting. The Pirates I don't, 3 or 2. Anything, anything like properly, that. really? Mm, I, I mean, most people do say they like that final action scene. I'm going to say I like it too. I can't remember how good it is, but it's fun. As for whether or not it does this properly, whatever this is exactly that he's talking about. The whole truth. Maybe. Great rewatchable action films don't just leave the drama at the door as soon as the action starts. They let the drama inform the action. Dude, it's actually hard for me to, off the top of my head, pick a drama or an action scene that doesn't have any drama from character in it. Mm. That doesn't have any drama I mean, from character. I guess, well, no John Wick, drama. right? A lot of the ones in John Wick is just him. Oh, yeah, they're guys. just empty. I think yeah, that's as close just, as you'll uh, get, yeah, because it's like, just a bunch of nameless people who are motivated, I guess, by money, and then he's motivated yeah. by survival. And it's like, all Not right. wanting to die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's as basic as you can get. But most, yeah, anytime there's like, named there's characters like in an action of, um, scene, right? Mm -hmm. Like John versus a, a lot of like uh, the, old kung... the the guy from uh, It Man. A, yeah. a lot of the old kung fu movies from back in the day have that too, where it's just fighting, just a bunch of fights, and well, because the, the spectacle was that they could actually fight, right? Like in the sixties and seventies. Well, yeah, sure. Um, and this kind of comes back to a little bit of what Schnee was talking about in the previous video. The uh, It'll make these things more potent when you care more. So, but, but like, this is the thing. The separation is confusing. And are we actually saying, like, the problem that the Suicide Squad had was it didn't model itself well after something like Pirates 3? It's like, can you please give me more of an explanation right now? Action. If I were in the theater watching The Return of the King in 2004 and some sweaty dude next to me leaned over and said, They win. I wouldn't throw oh, my God, hands up that. in the air oh, and leave. God. The question of who would win was never the reason I cared, because the action in that film wasn't just a break from the drama, it was the drama. Heavily stylized, yes, but ultimately built on a series of character payoffs that were satisfying, both independently and collectively. But all of this makes sense. Everything that we see here makes sense. Why are they here? How come these people are involved personally? It all like makes sense. This was all set up. I mean, this is the logic that is essentially, it's the same logic as who wins in a fight, they're the better fighter, because of reasons that led them I to become skilled, which is generally involving training. Why can't I describe the fight between Rick Flagg and Peacemaker as drama stylized as action? Don't know. <laughs> it's a very confused video. I can and I will! <gasps> yeah. That's what kept audiences coming back. That's how it broke the stereotype of so-called action movies failing at the Oscars. And on the subject of action films at the Oscars, let's talk about Black Panther. Okay. You could argue that what the child learns and accepts gives him the tools to win the rematch against Killmonger, but you'd be writing the film for Ryan Coogler. Uh, in reality, the script does nothing to connect to Chala's inner conflict to his fighting ability. They are two completely separate things. Um, you could easily argue that Black Panther wins here or T'Challa wins here because he embodies Wakanda's, like, fundamentals a lot more than Killmonger does. He's even more familiar with the technology. And he got the timing yeah. right on these this facility, which he's much more familiar with. You can easily argue that him being a homegrown, like, fully familiar Wakandan is why he was able to defeat Killmonger. And I don't even fucking like this movie, by the way. If you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I just don't... I find this bizarre, trying to draw every last piece of character out of all fights, just because you didn't... I don't know. I need to hear his uh, suggestions to understand the lines. Yeah. Why did he lose the first fight? He didn't fight well. Why did he... Well, so the argument for why he would have lost the first fight is they didn't... Like, they weren't fighting with these suits on, which made an extreme difference in terms of, like, defense and attack. They were... And they were depowered, right? They didn't have their, um... They didn't have the flower power. Uh, yeah, the, the flower power. Which meant it was power. like a, I don't know. I'm just guessing here. Was he? He was like an ex, uh, marine or navy seal or something, killmonger. Something like that. And one would likely argue he fucking wanted to win. Like he was furious, and they had a fight both depowered. Which I think that T'Challa was much less ready for compared to Killmonger. Killmonger's done it his whole life. Meanwhile, T'Challa. You know, I don't even know how long it's been since he's fought without the flower power. I guess he did it with the Umbaku, but I mean that was yeah. a close fight too. He nearly fucking lost. Sure. So you could, you know, there's there's things to draw here. Um, what I need is for you to tell me what it would mean for this scene. What would this scene look like if it was a character reason that he won? Win the second fight. Hell of a move. And for my final example, I would like to point out what I believe to be the only flaw in The Godfather. Calm oh down. So around halfway through the first oh. film, Don Vito Corleone is gunned down in the street by would-be assassins from a rival family. And despite it's being pointless. shot several times in the torso, he survives. It's not an impossibility that breaks the story, but it does make me wonder why. Like, why didn't those bullets hit his heart or his brain? There's so many ways writer Mario Puzo could have made this not a contrivance. To name a few, Vito being what? a veteran gangster could have anticipated the attack and worn protective clothing. The assassins could have intentionally flubbed it out of respect or fear mm. because they were... So, the problem here is that I'm not as familiar with Godfather to be able to talk about this. I don't know enough. I've been way it's too not long a plot I've seen those movies. Well, it sounds like he's saying that he's not happy with this choice because it was more than likely for uh, Vito to die, I guess. Yeah, he's and arguing he along the lines doesn't. of contrivance rather than whole. Yeah. yeah, and then I guess he's asking why it happened narratively, but again, I'd have to rewatch it. Paid off. Uh, the bullet could have hit a cross on his neck, anything. But what we get is a coin flip. That would He make simply lives life. because that's what has to happen for the story to continue. It didn't take me out of the movie. Well, but then in, in, in turn... If that would have happened, if they just shot him like twice and saw there was nothing really crazy going on, then you could have probably said, "Oh, why didn't those guys empty the whole uh, the whole pistol into the yeah. chest or whatever?" So, is is the what's happening here? Is he saying that this is a contrivance? It is plot armor, and he doesn't see what the purpose of it was. Is that, yeah, is that, I think so. That's, I, think I think that's, that's what's happening. Point. Movie the first yeah. time or the second time, and The Godfather is still one of the best films ever made. But this is a moment of weakness in the script. When trained assassins are sent to kill a man, and a point is made of how little protection that man has, and the assassins aren't impeded by anyone or anything, he should die. I'm sorry, yes, fight me. I understand that a guy like Vito could have survived in that situation, but are you really going to tell me that one of the biggest plot beats in the story hinges on? I mean, we also have the thing in like, I don't. The amount of protection you have available to you is not necessarily what you'd have in modern mm. times. Like bulletproof clothing and vests, and you know, bulletproofing cars and stuff. That wasn't as simple Isn't, as. I mean, you're no. arguing in favor of him. He's saying he should have died. No, it sounds no, like right. you're saying that in the that back then there was less protection. Yeah. Yeah or no? I I am, but I don't know. Like I don't. Oh, this well, guy, less is protection he... is his argument. He's saying he should have died. It's. He wasn't well protected. They made a point of how vulnerable he was. So does this guy who just that we watched get shot? Does he get killed or does he live? He lived. Oh well, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, well, I'm confused. I thought that was the point this guy's making this whole time. That's that's oh, why I'm, I'm not familiar with the like, movie. You're, you're you wouldn't need to be familiar with the movie rags. Yeah, <laughs> that's the whole point. And again, he just he just he told okay, you what happened. Right, well, yeah, that was so, his like whole premise of so the section. So what you were you were divorced from the whole context of that point. <laughs> I mean, a lot of it because I, I I was gone. I had the meat thing up, and I they got back from the loo, and okay, I came back and I listened for a bit. Good to know uh, that you are that racist. You won't listen to things about Italians. So that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess it's possible. Like, nothing else? If Vito had died, the rest of the film would have played out in a completely different way. Michael's arc hinges on this, and you're just gonna let his fate be a, a matter of random chance? 
You can throw all the tomatoes you want, but I think this is a fumble. I think this is a massive fumble. In real life, violence is often so random and chaotic, which is why I think a lot of writers think they can get away with making it so in their stories. But I'd like to draw your attention to the Aaron. Well, can this is why I need? I should have rewatched Godfather before the fucking anniversary. Um, the, how could we call this <laughs> random? That, that was a hit, right? Like they went for him. Well, I, I guess it's the random yeah. chances that it didn't kill him yeah, when he got hit by yeah. like so many bullets. Well, he but could have survived. That I, I thought his whole point was about realistic violence. Uh, but remember, his title is How Realistic Violence Ruins Movies. So I wonder if it's like that th this is the. Hmm. Well, but at that point, it would no, be about. This confused. is plot armor ruining the movie, surely, not realistic violence. Well, yeah, I guess being shot uh, by it, assassins it, like this that many times. A consistent argument he's making is that it should stem from character. It shouldn't. Because the examples he put before was. At the beginning of the video, it was random chance and one guy just so happens to be better at fighting it than the other. And those are like the two main points that he's he's criticized stories for. So it seems like he's making that observation that it needs to be derived from character. You need character informing it. Um, that it, it, it shouldn't just be random chance. But the Peacemaker one isn't. And this one, uh, his survival is arguably random chance, yeah. I, I would give him that, but again, I would call that plot armor not the result of realistic violence. Mm. Yeah, you need mm. to portray it in a way where he, like, if you were going to rejig around the, the, the script, then you could change it to where, you know, which is what he have suggested. It be a less, yeah, to do that. Yeah, that sounds like a good, you know, which means, to... yeah, like, I feel like it just doesn't help his overall point about realistic violence. And instead, it sounds like he's yeah, just the overall saying... point is bad. Yeah, for sure. Sorkin quote, yeah, it's the specifics little... on how it's portrayed that's the issue here. Literally yeah, changed oh wait, let's go back a bit. Them in chaotic, which is why I think a lot of writers think they can get away with making it so in their stories. But I'd like to draw your attention to the Aaron Sorkin quote that quite literally changed my understanding of writing. The properties of people and the properties of character have almost nothing to do with each other. Hmm. Uh, uh, they really don't. I know it seems like they do um, because we, we look alike, uh, 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 characters <laughs> and people. Uh, but People don't speak in dialogue. Their lives don't unfold in a series of scenes that form uh, a narrative arc. Uh, the rules of drama are, uh, are really very much a, a separate from uh, from what we know uh, from the like I said the properties of life. To extrapolate. Oh, uh, interesting yeah. observation. Um, I'm not sure what it has to do with the video, but I guess we'll we'll yeah. see how it ties in. Uh, well, like uh, you don't agree. I mean, it this is like basically you, you stories like aren't real. It, it's the way it would tie in, obviously, I guess, is that how people die in real life isn't satisfying narratively, so don't do it in your stories. Uh, I, I guess. Well, I don't, I just don't agree, one, though. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm not, I presume that's where he's probably going with it, but it feels like this, this statement is, is about something quite different. Like, for instance, the whole people don't speak in dialogue. I think that's a fair observation. It's pretty rare that you see a film where characters will stutter, have sentences so the, that are, The you know, issue I like, take with that... Strangely structured. I don't, yeah. like, definitively judge dialogue needs to all be witty or poignant or whatever. Oh, a lot well, of the sure, time we will I, rate I, dialogue as good when they're stuttering or pausing or even making bad sure. points. I'm talking but about I think fucking I, nothing. Yeah. I imagine that the observation that's being made here is that there's a lot of films where the dialogue isn't necessarily realistic, but it could still be considered really good dialogue. And of course, mm -hmm. for like Aaron Sorkin in particular, right? People talk in very long, very tightly, you know, very witty uh, sentences. Like the way that he writes is not the way that people typically talk, uh, but it's still good dialogue. It like that it wouldn't be that it's realistic, therefore it's good. Like it's not, it's not derived See, from the realism. I think that's an intuitive agreement, but I feel like if I was to rewatch like uh, any of his films, I might end up being like. Actually, no, the reason I love this so much is because I believe this is fully in character and it does represent a lot of what uh, I believe they would be saying. Uh, sure, but 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 exactly the way that they say it? Like, exactly I think there would be several, person. maybe not 100% of all of the time, but like plenty, that's what I'm looking for in dialogue, is representative of the character. Uh, sure, but I mean, I imagine that, that he would agree with that. He'd just be saying that it's not necessarily going to like map onto the way that it, it plays out in real life. Sometimes it's going to be way more witty or sharp than it would be in real life, and that it's not a determinant just because it's realistic, that there's something else. 
I feel like he was more definitive in the other direction than that. Hmm. Okay. Uh, do you want to replay it? Go. Cool. Making it yeah, so in their stories. But I'd like to draw your attention to the air and sword. I mean, uh, we're that... grabbing someone else to put in here, and I was just I was yeah, saying yeah, that um, I think I think Yao's having a wonderful sleep, and that's awesome. Just shoving him out while he's having a nap. <laughs> and I hope <laughs> Did he fall asleep? <laughs> he didn't make it. <laughs> Go to a sleepy time, and that's okay. Wow, he didn't make it. Hi, Az. Hey, hey Az. Hi, Az. Hi, Az. Hi, Az. Hi, Az. Double Jeez, double that. anniversary, two fifty. Yeah. I know, right? It's Five crazy. year. Five yeah, we're getting on now. You know, getting old. You have to get them pelvises oh. replaced or whatever. That's what you do when you're five years old, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I gotta catch up on the memes in the chat here. Oh God, you're gonna get pretty confused by the context, I'd imagine. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I see Boromir with a pride arrow inside of him. <laughs> 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 Fried arrow. <laughs> that is the link to the watch together. We're currently checking out a video called "How Realistic Violence Ruins Movies." Oh, yeah. Okay. Bet you didn't think that you'd hear fun. that take. No, well, no. I, I think realistic fighting kind of enhances films, but all right. Fine. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't even know if we gave a take on this before we kind of started up, but just for me, it's just always context how you do it. It's gonna be, it's yep. gonna work. It's gonna sometimes not work. Whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That quite literally changed my understanding of writing. The properties of people and the properties of character have almost nothing to do with each other. Mm. Uh, uh, they really see. Like, do you agree with that, Ringy? I. Uh, well, like I said, I find it an interesting observation. I don't think I agree with it wholesale, but I feel like there's something to be mined from it. I not necessarily. That. That, yeah. I feel like I can take a stronger stance and just say I don't agree with it. Okay. But, like, I have a feeling that yeah, you don't I, want to like, say that because you have so much respect for Sorkin. Uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect for him, and yeah. I feel like there's something to, to be gleaned from that. And I feel my read of that is when it comes to writing characters, you're not necessarily... Like, convincing somebody of the plausibility of a character isn't necessarily the same thing as making them completely and utterly realistic. That's kind of my... That's what I, I, I glean from that statement. Um, I just feel like, yeah, I mean, like it, it, the reasonable statement would have been that characters and people are not built the same way, they don't do the same things, but there's a hell of a lot of crossover. Like, I would be uh, like, oh, I mean, that's, like, that's totally okay. fair. But saying they like, all have people... almost nothing to do with each other, it's like, nah, come on. Yeah, there, I think there's a, a huge, you know, correlation between, you know, the two. Um, once, in a way, a more refined version of the other, uh, in a sense. But, I mean, there's yeah. a reason why we recognize them so easily and without... Why it's so intuitive to look at one and instantly link it to another. I can yeah. just say that it's it's kind of like the that by saying it this dramatically is to emphasize it because no matter what, you're always going to be like whenever you're writing characters, you're always gonna be pulling from reality. You're gonna be pulling from real people. So it's to try and emphasize in your mind, like strictly adhering to making them absolutely, completely and utterly realistic in the way that they talk to where they stutter a lot. And their sentences are kind of incomplete, and they don't always necessarily know. Like e even in the most important moments, they don't get things out in exactly the best way possible. That if you're thinking about it like that, that you can miss opportunities to, you know, have like super witty dialogue or really. I mean, one's uh, just. I mean, characters just seem to be the ref like the 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 dramatically refined version of real people. Um, you don't even have to explain the differences. You just show one and then show the other, and like it just. The closeness allows intuition to fill in the rest. Um, I mean, the the characters are the way they are because people are the way they are. Um, if humans were different, characters would be different. Sure. Uh, I imagine you wouldn't disagree with that, though. Like, I imagine you would have to accept that you're you're going to be deriving, like as a writer, you're going to be deriving your characters from reality. To, you have yeah. to like what what other basis do you have other than yeah your inventing a new world. species of creature and a new like entire like yeah you're not going to do that that's not going to be i mean that that's just going to be exhaustingly difficult to have to do that all the time i mean it's pretty obvious why you know we model our art after reality I really don't uh, i know it not. seems like they do um because we we look alike uh, uh, uh characters <laughs> and people uh, but people don't speak in dialogue. Their lives don't unfold in a series of scenes that form uh, a, a narrative arc. 
the rules of drama are, uh, are really very much a, a separate from, uh, from what we know, uh, from the, like I said, the properties of life. But I just like, yeah, that let's like, just, I just, I just don't agree. I think that I mean, yeah. like with this general point, like maybe the super specifics, sure. Yeah, like like a like a character is going to speak in a more generally refined way than they do in reality. But how come I you know I can listen to a character saying things and know exactly what they mean without needing any explanation whatsoever? And if a character was transposed into reality and it was just like boom warped into the real world and carried on as it was, it would be able to communicate efficiently. It would be able to do everything that a person does just in a I guess a more refined way. Um, I mean, it, that, that's how closely they can be. Um, yeah, it's obviously uh, you, not one-on-one, -on -one, but... I, um, I would, especially when, he, when it comes to factoring in the idea that people's lives are not going to play out in a narrative structure that you would see in a film or a television show, I would imagine that that would stem from the recognition that there's plenty of things that happen in your... Like, you could look at your life and have a narrative structure, but you're not going to have, like, when you're sitting taking a shit... Like in your story, probably, or yeah, you know, the time that you're just you... sitting around watching TV, saying nothing for hours. Like these are that you're going to be making choices about what you present and how yeah, you present it's... it, and how quickly or how briefly you present it, and it's not necessarily going to be like using real life as a basis is strange because it always has to be filtered. It has to be presented in some kind of way, whether it's a two-hour you know film or a ten-hour you know television show or a video game that's interactive. Yeah, and, and for instance, most, I mean, we, we almost say that like it's a difference, but I mean, really, I don't watch anyone else take a shit, including fictional characters. So in, wow. in a way, that makes it as, you know, as more realistic that I don't see that. What but if it was there, a there is, Well, I was going to say as well, of we a, don't remember of most medium. of that stuff. All of that gets we washed away. Like in, yeah, in, in our own recollection of significant events, we'll often pin back on all of the things that led to it. We won't be like, oh, but I did take sure, a shit, and I did sure. walk over there, and I did take a drink. Yeah. It's like, uh, this is what I mean. Like, I feel like there's you know? more of an understanding to reverse the quote, to be like, it's actually amazing how much we can understand that movies are drawn from the human experience, like how we've structured them all, what we consider important to put in. So we didn't have to see I so do all that walking in two episodes. No, we, we don't <laughs> need to say that. But... <laughs> that's, yeah, we but do not they had to, to put the walk in as otherwise the episodes would have been five minutes and that's just not good enough. But the, re that's but the reason that enough. we can not, we don't have to show these things and you don't even have to explain why we didn't show, you know, all of these things. Why didn't we show the entire eight, you know, hour sleep of this person and every poop and well, pee and, you know, thing is because you don't have to explain it because we automatically and intuitively tie that to the reality of what a human is and what they do. But people do make those mistakes when it comes to writing of showing things that they don't need to show. Sure. There are definitely books and films and television shows where sure, but it feels like it benefits from recognizing that you have the capacity to curate to a greater degree what you're going to show. Yeah. And uh, I think and that's an element of writer skill, not necessarily the, the, the mundane. Sure. We we all know the mundane in life. We all know that we have to eat. We all know and you that can we use have it. to drink. Well, you can. It depends on what your goals are it as a writer. Be, it can yeah. be utilized, but it has to be, if you are going to utilize it, then it has to have a very specific yeah. point. Otherwise, it, it just literally becomes padding and a waste of time because we we know these these. Well, things. like watching um. We're more interested in the in the specific. That's why we watch these forms of media. These forms of media are very, uh, you know, normally a film two hours long, normally a TV show uh, an hour long with adverts, so 45 minutes long. We have specific time frames, so, so we remove the chaff yeah. and, and we stick with the specific. And, and, and le again, unless it's very much used to emphasize a point, you know, I want to emphasize a point that this man's life or this woman's life is mundane, fine bring that in otherwise it's just irrelevant to to what the story and what the plot should be providing for its audience because i was gonna say we uh the scene beginning in big lebowski where he's just having a bath you'd be like why the fuck are we watching this and they're just like well they burst in the room and drop uh is it an otter in there it freaks him the fuck out <laughs> like you know so. there's there's uh but more to the point of Barrett, you know, right i can't remember but uh if if um if it was to be like a shot of just a character taking a really long pee or something, we would imagine if the film was particularly great, we'd be like, oh, this is supposed to just show 
maybe he's like particularly alone or it's particularly dark and it's just like a maybe the well, Austin to give Powers had a big piss scene but it was a piss that... scene that was for comedic value. yeah that's that's actually a really good point there's all kinds of ways it could be justified of course um for narrative purpose so yeah it's um this is the thing. I have huge respect for Sorkin as well, but uh, I would be curious if I could speak to him about everything he just said there, how long before we'd start to broaden it out and then the statement itself would have become relatively weak compared to what I might be able to dig out of him. Because I just, I don't, I don't know that he fully agrees with everything he said there. I don't know. But obviously, okay. he's way more experienced than I am. So, uh, But as it stands, probably would disagree with him, yeah. I would disagree as well. To extrapolate, I think Sorkin is saying art shouldn't necessarily imitate life. Many feel that news. I feel that's a very generous I don't think reading. That's at all. That's, that's not what he that's said. At all what he said. <laughs> that's not what he said. <laughs> if anything, he said that art does imitate life. That's what well, I. Well, it's just it that it me. doesn't imitate it exactly. There's uh, yeah, I... there differences in the way that you're going to approach creating characters and arranging events. Because it is curated, and you have a goal in mind, thematically, or for the characters, whereas life plays out as it does. Retroactively, there's a story to be applied there, but as it's going, you know, it's not, it's not like it's all, you know, being arranged to lead to the most potent resolution. But, funnily enough, that can lead to the most potent resolution. It can. It can, yeah, for sure. I mean, well, it's a matter of perspective, isn't it? Yeah. How people, what people make of their own lives outlets warp real events to suit a pre-planned narrative and it's not hard to see a connection between that and the myths and legends of history things that may have started in our chaotic complicated world but have since been reshaped to accommodate cultural understandings at the risk of sounding pretentious i'd say narrative makes more sense to us than the real world people can have spontaneous lapses in judgment people can get hit by stray bullets people can die of aneurysms for no reason at all but not characters at least not the one oh god he's so wrong because <laughs> like yeah oh. it's like reality has to like it does make sense like it has to and if you think that fiction makes more sense then i mean you're um, just you're wrong i, I think I, I i understand where he's coming from in the sense that because in real life, you're not like an omniscient sort of viewer of everything that's going on, that it can be difficult to make sense of the things that are happening uh, in your life. And that like the way that narratives are presented with a beginning, middle and end, some thematic uh, element binding it all together, that like that's easier to pass and understand than like all of the crazy stuff that's happening in real life. I, I kind of understand what he means. I still disagree. I know what he's saying. He's wrong. Um, one of the greatest and most effective deaths of all time in media. Nobody needs to be specific when I say this, because you know what I'm talking about. If you do and you don't, if you don't, that's fine. Uh, a, an aneurysm, it's, it's, it's almost seemingly at random, creates uh, one of yes. the most effective deaths in anything I've ever seen. So I can't... I can't buy into this at all. It's, it's always about execution. It's never about, like, oh, realistic deaths, like a stray bullet, or... A, you know, some oh, kind of I mean, I don't, I, yeah, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what that, like, what that all that's about, I guess. It's, uh, him saying that, that making sense of a story can be easier than making sense of real life. Like, I kind of understand that. Ones we agree are good. So I originally wrapped this video with a single sentence about bridging the gap between action and character. But I think this jumbled mess of ideas could be summarized a bit better. All the negative examples uh, I gave share a comment through line. Yeah, give me <laughs> Qui-Gon's yeah, a pussy, dude, let's be honest. Right. <laughs> yeah. This video with a single sentence about bridging the gap between action and character, but I think this jumbled mess of ideas could be summarized a bit better. All the negative examples I gave share a common through line, which is that they hinge on the audience's understanding of plausibility to work. And I'm not saying there's no room for symbolic twists of fate in writing. I am more so arguing that if a story intends to sustain itself beyond the anecdotal, i.e. a saga, a series, a world-building venture, it has to have rules. And, and also, yeah, like, it, if it's, uh, if there's, if a character wins a fight, symbolically, when there's no reason for him to actually be able to win a fight and it makes no sense whatsoever, like, that's a problem. You know? Like, I think that's an issue. So, uh, yeah, symbolism's great, but it, it has to tie into something. It's, it's gotta be explained. Working on an in-depth critique of The Walking Dead because I think it's a perfect example of how to fail at this. I've heard people attribute The Walking Dead's fall off to a lot of things. Filler content, circular plots, hard to believe character arcs, but I don't think anyone's hit the nail on the head quite yet. 
The biggest problem with The Walking Dead is that its action is too realistic. <laughs> I, oh, come on, I dude. I don't know what somebody tells millions so, of people how they're thinking. I don't know if that... Yeah, <laughs> no one's got it right yet. So if... Yeah. <laughs> no one's got it. This, this is the thing, man. Like the, the Walking Dead, when I was even remotely into it, which was 10 billion seasons ago, like uh, the one death I probably won't ever forget. There's a couple I won't forget, but one of the ones is going to be Dale, for anyone who doesn't know. A character that's mm. relatively enjoyable. He's got a good head on his shoulders. He's uh, looking out for people and stuff. He's just like, I think he's walking around and then he just like gets hit by a zombie in and it, his intestines. He's in an empty yeah. field and a surprise zombie attacks. And if someone was to tell me, why do you take issue with that? That's realistic. I'd be like, are you insane? Is it realistic that a zombie just snuck up on him in the middle of a giant paddock? <laughs> no, it is <laughs> not realistic. <laughs> Not realistic. If, I mean, yeah, like I don't. Is that what people think? Like I don't. That's what know he that. thinks. Apparently, that, that Walking Dead Walking is going Dead. downhill because of realistic violence. It's insane. Well, no, <laughs> in, in, in things like The Walking Dead, I, I had a big problem with the fact that uh, clearly nobody in that world has peripheral vision. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, at least nobody, nobody who is uh, like not an important character. All the it's important characters much. have like pigeon vision, where they can see everything around them. Ooh. I like the that he is like I cracked it though. It's the realistic violence, guys. <laughs> I don't mean it's too graphic or too lifelike in any aesthetic sense. I mean when a group of characters is attacked, the writers sometimes just kill one off at random. The fan base of which never, I consider myself like a part a for some time. Right? It would never um, be Rick or uh, like what's what's the other one? Michonne? Like uh, yeah. or uh, well, Carl yeah, dies right any... at some point. Carl. But I mean, even then, Carl. the fact that it takes, you know, like 13 Carl. seasons to get to any of those super major main character deaths. Well, yeah, because I remember the internet um, went nuts when, um, fuck, who, who were the two people who got killed by Negan and his uh, baseball bat? It was, it was uh, Glenn, because he's Glenn, one of the yeah. main and characters. And Abraham, right? Glenn and Abraham? But Abraham was more of a, like, expected one, as I understand it. Glenn yeah. was the surprise, because he's been around since season one. But that's, that's when Glenn dies in the comics. Well, and if someone said, uh, oh, see, the sure, problem with yeah, that yeah, is but, realistic yeah, violence, I'd be yeah. like, oh, I, I don't think that's just, you know... The... Well, I thought, I thought one of the biggest complaints about The Walking Dead is that, because it was around the era of Game of Thrones, that it wasn't like Game of Thrones. Main characters really weren't in danger. Um, they'd typically make it through, and make it through for a long time. Oh, apparently it's swapped. Glenn is the one that's expected, Abraham's the one that was a surprise. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. Well, I, don't, the, yeah. I don't know a whole Glenn, lot about it. Glenn died in the comics there, and there there'd been that's this is where I, I actually dipped out the series because they'd been faking Glenn's death all throughout that season, and it got just ridiculous. It got to the point of of, of uh, parody, I, and hmm. then they just expectedly killed him off at the exact point in which he was killed off in the comics. Well, it's wasn't like, wasn't the fake out that they had a big season finale? Like somebody was going to die, and it was presented from like a first person POV. And then it's revealed that it's Abraham, and then you're like, oh, that'll be it then. Maybe it won't be Glenn, and then he just kills him. Isn't that, like, the surprise? Because it's two characters when you only expected it to be one. Even if it, even if it was in the comics, right? How many, how many people who watched the show have read the comics? Uh, well, I, I think, I think they, uh, the, everyone thought that's when Glenn was going to go. Okay, yeah, just, all right. It was a point where the, um... The showrunner just wanted to try in some way to deflect away from that, but okay, yeah, I like I'm not super familiar with it. This is yeah. this is stuff I've heard I, about it. I read the comics, and and that is the part where Glenn dies. Abraham was dead prior to that, so I think the where it was a fake out was in killing Abraham. It kind of gave the audience the signal that Glenn's probably safe because that was Glenn's death that Abraham then got. But then they just killed Glenn anyway, so. Well, obviously I was out by then anyway, so. He knows this, and they've developed a who's gonna die culture that fuels their anticipation of the next episode. The show and its supplementary content lean into this, and they make you wonder who the writers are gonna choose to kill off next. 
At the end of season 6, they had Negan kill a main character off screen and they made fans wait until the beginning of season 7 to find out who it was. And it wasn't obvious, like a line of causality was deliberately avoided. We had no idea what was going to happen and we definitely should have. I can't think of a greater way to disrespect the character than to kill them or spare them from death for a reason that has nothing to do with their character. The people who still defend the scene because well, they Well, wouldn't the argument be that it has something to do with Negan? Yeah, the, this sucks because I don't. I'm not more familiar with this, so I can't. <laughs> yeah. I can only speculate. But like, I mean, in concept, he's still like theoretically not fully correct because you can definitely do this in a way that does respect character. I don't mind it if you had like a Russian roulette type situation. Your characters got into there was six of them, and you as a writer roll a dice and you say like you know each number represents the person, and I am going to commit to whatever this dice does. I don't think that's disrespectful to the characters. Oh, is it disrespectful that a character does succumb to random chance? No, I don't think so. I don't know about that. <laughs> D Hunter? Uh, I guess it depends on what you mean by random chance. Um, well, li like, presuming that Negan was just picking people out at random, like he didn't pick Glenn. Well, the, the yeah, writer rolled the dice and then made Negan kill based on whatever the dice rolled, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah, you can't blame the character for that. What were they supposed well, to do? Well, it's it's mm -hmm. not that it's bad because it, 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 that means that it's like we, we preclude any and all possibilities where it is chance, where it is just random, and that's just unfortunate for, you know, well, whoever that character is. Didn't Negan kill these two? In the show, because they were they were giving him the eye, so he was seeing I, that there's resistance. Oh, in them. Okay, um, As a, and, and the others lower. weren't weren't looking him directly in the eye. Therefore, they were showing that they were more, um, well, not subservient or docile, but they were more uh, understanding of of his sort of position of authority and power over them. And that's why Abraham uh, and Glenn were uh, were killed in that scene. Yeah, like I, I thought he was just any mini mini mo. I have no idea. The shock value should wait against the red wedding. Shock value and causality. Oh, but I still agree with him that Walking Dead devolved into trying to do shock value deaths for sure. There's no. But that, I, that, I, I would mean, tie that more so to the shitty writing, not like. I, as yeah, as I understand violence. that that show just collapses as it goes on. Yeah. Oh, hold on a second. Um, JX is in the chat and says anyone on the panel has seen TNG's skin of evil? Uh, no. just a second. Yeah. Skin. No, no, I have. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. I've seen it. Yeah, and that's a that's a a main character in a show, and and it was, I remember being a kid at the time watching it. It was absolutely unexpected. Uh, that that we didn't know that Denise Crosby, because of course there wasn't the internet in those days, so we didn't know that Denise Crosby was unhappy with her position on the show and and asked mm -hmm. to leave, and she wasn't happy with Patrick Stewart as well. Uh, and so when that episode came around and, and Tasha Yar was, was hit and it's like, she's dead, you think, oh, she's going to be fine. And then, no, she was dead. And that was a yep. massive shock, um, particularly for the first season. And, and I think it was around about episode 19 or something, approximately. So it was, yeah, it was, it was like the end, 23, yeah. Yeah. so pretty close, yep. Yeah. So, okay. I, I recently rewatched TNG with my girlfriend because she'd never seen it before. And watching it now, it does just happen and then they, they just move on it's like oh well she's dead yeah she gets mentioned in <laughs> like, i don't know how i feel about it honestly episode. um and that's, that's i'm not gonna i can't i like i'm not gonna doubt the logic of it but i don't know how i feel about it um i don't she know was simply, i haven't thought about it too much in the line of duty there was no yeah. setup she was just killed in the line of duty and yeah. uh that's that's what made it so shocking it wasn't like they hinted at it, it wasn't that they that they set it up. There was it was just out of the blue. Uh, we're stuck on this planet. I'm just trying to do my job, and then the creature just kills it. Um, kills it. I'm not sure it was good TV though. It was just writing Denise Crosby off the show. <laughs> That's what well, yeah, I mean they had, they had to do it, right? They, they had to do it, but I don't yeah. know. The episode isn't isn't very good. Well, it's the first season, so. Yeah, it's not <laughs> yeah, they're all, they're all in the very good in the first season. <laughs> was, they, were, they were still uh, the, growing their pains. Way, let's call it that. Yeah, we'll call it that. <laughs> and, then, and then they brought it back in uh, yesterday's Enterprise in season three, and they gave yeah, her a proper send off. Uh, because and, fans they, and were, they gave her that that Romulan child who like time traveled. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, it was all that shit. Yeah. Truly exclusive. You just have to be a good enough writer to stay ahead of your audience. 
The Red Wedding is the work of a brilliant pickpocket who's so dynamic and entertaining that we don't notice what he's doing with his other hand until it's too late and he's stolen our watch and we're taken aback by how simple it was and how it all makes sense in retrospect. The season seven premiere of The Walking Dead is what happens when the pickpocket realizes it's easier to just hold you at gunpoint and take the watch. But instead of leaving you with a begrudging admiration for him, he just makes you feel I would probably, I would want to argue to him, it's like, your problem isn't realistic violence, it's just writing quality. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah but yep. that, yep. but Mahler, that's like every video, but they never <laughs> say it. That's the thing, they never, I, I mean, that's like the universal problem on all these videos, but they never say, they it's never too say boring, isn't writing it? quality. Well, yeah, it's, it's not exciting to say, oh yeah, you don't write it like shit. That's not exciting. You have to say, well, actually, there's a there's a super secret. I found out the thing, or there's three rules. There's a group of clown yeah. moles working against Hollywood. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it, 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 it's all so clickbaity and like, oh, I've discovered the secret, or here's the easy well, yeah. key to success. Or, Realistic violence ruins movies. That's that's quite a like, what a, like, like wow. What right? A, yeah, yeah, what a dull and uninformed yeah. thing to say. But yeah, I don't Re- like regs. There's like. There's like this impulse, Regs, where if this applies to like video games, it applies to movies, it applies to politics, it applies to everything. Like if you can pretend like you have some sort of secret esoteric knowledge that no one else has, you get clicks. And also it's more you dramatic yourself, and interesting, right? but yeah, the truth yeah. is like all like all these ideas, people say you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do that. But it's like all those things you could probably do if you just write it well. You know, mm-hmm. it's like it all comes down to good writing, but that's kind of complex and it's not easy to make a video on what makes good writing. It's kind of kind of messy. Uh, yep. It's not like a super clean, streamlined thing I think you can talk about. There's a lot of nuance involved and so many of the questions have answers that are it depends. Um, so, <laughs> it, yeah, it's... It, it's like, there's a general rule here that like esoteric knowledge is really fun, but it's mo- it most mo- it's most often not true. Just in general, no matter what you're talking about, because if it were true, everyone like it's not like everyone would know it, but it would be common because of its truth value, right? Like people wouldn't ignore the truth that is. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Maybe it's too I, early. I think morning. I know where you were going, and then you started to fall into a place. You're like, wait, people do believe crazy lies, so maybe I don't know. <laughs> that's true. People do believe crazy lies. No, but like, if, if we're talking about you... like, oh yeah, name three lies you believe, Mahler. Uh, <laughs> God, I'm on this path. Well, it's like oh, tr- tr- truth. Truth in general is one of those self-evident things, right? In in, in some ways, uh, <laughs> it's no. self-evident in some ways. Uh, so uh, okay, okay. No, well, 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 I'm trying to figure out what I'm saying here. Jesus Christ! Gravity seems like a clear one. Dev, write it down <laughs> and then tell us when you're ready. Do you, write write do you mean to say like intuition is not useless? Kind of. That's like half of it. Well, I, I mean, did, yeah. bring us yeah. home. I, did, <laughs> I should home. have had coffee before I did. I should have had some coffee before I did this. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, okay. I, th- I think fair. it might be gone. I think it might be gone. I, I think I got what, I think no, I got what that was saying, though, because esoteric knowledge can make people feel special in a way. Like, like you can feel like, oh, I know something that all these people just don't know. They don't get it. They don't understand. Yeah, all the plebs don't understand. It's yeah. the realistic yeah. violence. Yeah. They don't know. That's what it is. A there, lot of these videos are very fart huffy. Yeah, They're very <laughs> self-aggrandizing. Dude, the one we watched with the guy was it... like, "Oh, you know, my friends enjoy these films much like children in, in, involve themselves with the kill, kids' oh, programs." And it's like no that's cute way. and fine, good for them. It's like, have you guys wow. seen a couple of films? Have you guys seen Old Boy, the Korean version, and have you seen yeah, Battle Royale? Really? Yes, I have. Yes, yes. yes uh, and yes. Two films Those which yeah. are absolute masterpieces of cinema. Yes. Uh, that uh, have exceedingly realistic violence and realistic consequences of the violence, which uh, absolutely add and uh, make the films compelling. I'd be inclined to agree. I think a lot of people might challenge you on the hallway fight for realistic, but I think they did that. That was as realistic as it's going to get. Like, that was yes, really I mean, well justified in terms of cause and effect, that scene. He was, he was very tired by the end of that fight, speaking of, like, the Daredevil well, and, um, we recovering. It, it's the narrow hallway, and it's the, the fear that's in a lot of people, especially after he's taken out a few of them and they get in each other's way. They, they do a lot of work in that scene to make it work, and nothing but praise yeah. from me, pretty much. Uh, Better. Also play safe. What he did took no level of skill, and you couldn't have seen it coming if you tried. 
That, my friend, is why I don't like realistic, unpredictable violence in media. Which is, this is a terrible visual for that. Because Actually, yeah, the wait, they were all he added fighting. that. Unpredictable wasn't a part <laughs> of this before. Yeah, it was very pretty. I mean, he even said that he can't fault the logic of it. One of these, you couldn't predict that one of these guys was going to die? I guess he'd be saying unpredictable like the, you didn't predict a stray arrow coming out. and You didn't predict the method of death, or... Or, or when it would happen, you know, just the stray hour, so... So that's not... Yeah, I, that doesn't work, because you can't predict when <laughs> Rob is going to get stabbed in the Red Wedding, or what weapon is going to be the thing that kills him exactly. Well, you certainly can't predict the exact second, you know. <laughs> I know it's no where a stray bullet kills a character. Uh, don't we all? Probably, yeah. Just I haven't like thought about it. Kill a character. Absolutely. And that's the thing, it can be hyper effective. I can't believe we're we're ruling it out in this video. It's like that just ruins it. It's like, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No. Especially the thing he's got to ask himself is the like, did the majority of people who enjoyed the Suicide Squad think this was a powerful and effective moment? And then why? If ru if realistic stuff does ruin it. You know, I'm not I'm not saying that that means that it's good. I'm saying that it's curious to think about if it's so effective. Why? What's working? Why would, especially from an entertainment perspective, why people believing this is a strong payoff? What's wrong with them? What's going on? Because the um, a lot of the time for us we can be like, well, they're not thinking about the fact that the bullet should have ran out by now, or that they had loads of plot armor or whatever. I'm not sure what he would say. I'd be curious. Because that unpredictability is just a back door for the writer to personally enter the story and play God. I mean, they're doing that all the time. That's that job. Yeah, mm, first yeah. off, he's yeah. better go. Um, but, so yeah. Then, a lot of this what? isn't actually unpredictability necessarily. It's... What a weird video. Taking agency away from characters at moments when their choices should be front and center. And Rick, why are you jealous? showing this is the visual? Rick died because of Rick and death. Peacemaker. This is, this is all them. This isn't the writer any more than it is the mm -hmm. characters. I, I just don't like that distinction. I think it's stupid. Violence might keep viewers on the edges of their seats in the moment. Its ultimate this consequences is a really are good a fun. I way. loved it. I, I, it really is. It's a really yeah. strong payoff. The film's pretty good. Yeah, this really is makes good. a big issue with it. Yeah, really good moment in the film. Mental Great breakdown of stakes Kahneman. within the narrative and an othering of said viewers when they realize that their intellectual investments do not have intellectual returns. What That's... the fuck? <laughs> what is that? The fu intellect? No, the, <laughs> if, if anything, it's the opposite. The, in, so the more into the more you intellectualize something, the more logical it will be. And if the fights are who is the better fighter, then they'll they'll like that. That'll be good. Then the more intellectual, the better. Is he actually saying if you think about it less, you'll enjoy things more? Oh dear God, no, please. Oh, my um, God. <laughs> maybe. I don't think so. I think he's just that out of this. his points. To be honest, <laughs> I mean, there's probably a bit of truth to that. To be honest, but... to get excited for next product. Oh no. Um, but I mean, he's kind of saying if you invest too much intellectual energy into some of these scenes, all it's going to do is make you not like it, so you just shouldn't, I suppose? Or is he just saying you shouldn't watch these films? I don't know how much control people have over that. Like, you'll get as invested as you will, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't choose what I'm invested in. That's, that's not something I just get to decide to... And obviously we're not talking about, like, banking. But, like, I, I, don't, I don't get to choose the things I get invested in. You know, it's like it, 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 it's it's like it, it's like you know, doxastic involuntarism or something. It's like it's it's emergent off of all the information that yeah, you I can, get and how my emotions get mixed up into things. You could probably facilitate yeah. and um, exert influence on it. Like if I keep watching, you know, whatever episodes of TV, I will increase the likelihood of being invested in it. But that is oh, still, yeah, yeah, absolutely. you know, yeah. If I yeah, if I start watching. I'm, I'm. If I start watching House of the Dragon, I will be much more invested in House of the Dragon characters than if I never watch it or never consume any media or never learn any names or yeah plot stuff. There, there's also fun in in fight scenes that if you do add some intellectual investment in them, like like if you take the time to dig in and do things like in the first John Wick movie, a big thing people would do would be counting his rounds and noticing that he's reloading at appropriate times, and that was really cool for people because. 
they didn't have to make it that good as far as like, hey, he fired six shots from this revolver and now he's reloading. I know he doesn't use a revolver in pretty much the whole movie, but, you know, it's easy to count the six. <laughs> but but you know what I mean? Like if, it, if it's there, if the writers and the, the choreographers and the director did the work and people do dig in and they find, oh, they thought about this. It's usually pretty rewarding for people, especially if you well, already like it. See, that reminds me of something now, because with Star Trek Voyager, it was the inverse effect, because the, for those of you who don't know, Voyager lost in the Delta Quadrant they 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 have no place to resupply for seven whole seasons. Right. And Janeway is like, we have like 30 photon torpedoes and that's it. We have no more. And then it, you can like watch a YouTube video where she fires off like 200 torpedoes over the course of the show. Oh, like, well, <laughs> you kind of ruined your own show here, haven't you? By not like yeah. keeping track of these things. On the flip side, though, had they made it so that they don't address it when they do fire a torpedo, but if at the end of that season you find that they only fired 28 torpedoes, I think you'd be like, oh, nice. They they well, stuck the, to that. The whole point of Voyager was was something different, that they were trapped away from the Federation. They had all their supply lines cut off, and the only way back home, and it was going to take them 73 years or something to get back to Federation space, and the whole point was for them to go through the Delta Quadrant trying to build relationships and gain allies to resupply. And it was forgotten within moments. It really was forgotten within yeah. just a few yeah. episodes. And they had an unlimited supply of shuttlecraft, unlimited supply of, of photon torpedoes, food, everything. You know, you'd see them complaining about food while eating nice food and drinking coffee and stuff. And um, <laughs> So yeah, they, they sort of took their premise and, and an interesting premise and then just turned it into... Uh, unfortunately, a procedural episodic um, show, which was a shame. Mm -hmm. Well, well. Do you know what's next? Except in the mind. This is going to attract um, attention. Is it Cinema Roberto? No, but it is a familiar face. At least partially. It's been a while, but I was yeah. so tempted by the title of this video. I was like, no way. Uh, I was oh, seeing people make fun of him. Again, is it Cosmonaut? Having that ready. Oh, uh, oh yeah, no, that was yeah. Thank you very much for that. Actually, that video wouldn't have been yeah. able to be watched as easily without your help there. So appreciate it and right. for the site stuff too. Super awesome of you. Um, they were being made fun of on Twitter for this title, and it's it's a title that's just so eye catching. Uh, the, the video is oh, called oh. "We Killed the Multiverse." Wait. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> I'm I I need to, yeah. Where's my medal? Where's, I'm here. Oh, wait, He's right in the By we, do you mean like EFAP right killed the multiverse? Or just we? We is in like, no, yeah, the, the we is in the title, W E. Okay. So, and <laughs> it's all about comic book movies, and you'd be like, what could that possibly mean? The Don't know. It's not, a French, it's not a French <laughs> video. We, yes, killed oh, the we, we. That would make more sense. Oh, no. But who is responsible for the murder? Let's really find out, because the we you. could be a lot of different things. Only it's we us. kill oh, the it's multiverse. Her it's our guy. Who is? Oh no, well, it's the shoe. Oh no, it's the shoe. <laughs> hold on. Oh hold no, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. It's the shoe. We yeah. killed him. The shoe means pain. I'm also gonna jump out. It's time, I think. But thanks for having me on for the short time that you did. Wow, Dev, yeah, you would have loved this video. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. Would he Hold on. Are, are you giving me flack for leaving? You, you gave Chud Logic less flack and he was here for half the time. <laughs> what does yeah, that well, say? I guess I love you more. <laughs> yeah, we expect oh, okay. less of him. Yeah. Our expectations for you are higher. Canadians are. <laughs> well, that's okay. That's okay. You don't have to meet yeah. them. You're not obligated to meet our expectations. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Aww. You'll only be well, silent. Nonetheless, I mean, happy anniversary, guys. Well, oh, yeah, if, if Jay, I know, I know that like it's uh, it's 10 people here, so you, you always get Jay Xy in if I leave. I mean, Potentially. Think, think so. To be fair, a lot of people are very uh, hyper busy. I know it's it's an unfortunate timing sometimes. I think a uh, drink is not going to be able to mm. make it, unfortunately. Neither, I don't hey, think, mm. is Gary. Um, but, you know, oh. it happens and it's okay. We'll do the best we can on anniversaries. No. I don't um, know, Mubshi. Maybe you should get the message finally. Did anyone hear anything just then? No, no. What? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, good. What was that? Damn Damn it. It. Like German smells or something. Uh, <laughs> But I'll I'll see you guys later. Okay, thanks for having me on. Bye, bye, bye. 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 see you later. Bye. Toodaloo. Toodaloo. Yeah, see ya. Bye. bye. All right, let's go. I promise you. Jesus, I know, right? He's yelling at me. Okay, here we go. Hey, how you doing? 
I hope okay, you're doing I'm well. Fine. Listen, oh, I'm not I'm saying fine. anything. Pretty you. bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, I'm a little bit tired. I'm just, I'm just gonna be honest. It's been, it's been. Uh, we've covered some shit today. All right, and now we're covering you. We've still. So. This is probably our longest and most unbroken, like dense streak of responding to videos, though. In history. Yeah, that's right. There's, there's, there's been a wanna, I don't want to hear any this bitching. stream. Okay. I don't want to hear any <laughs> bitching. <laughs> okay. You've heard it, you right. felt it, you have seen it. Hollywood saw the potential to get our money and we took the bait. Fish on a hook ready to be f <laughs> I already okay, don't like I the framing. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. oh, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't I didn't pick Oh man. Well, we yeah, if involved in taking the bait is thinking like, oh man, the flash is gonna be great. It's like well, I didn't take the bait. <laughs> was, yeah, like, no and in terms of like I guess giving praise, it's like you praised multiverse of madness. Yeah, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't oh, no. Yeah, oh, remember. No. All of these YouTubers who are coming out of the woodwork to say, oh yeah, well, Phase X, that was yeah, terrible, but, and, yeah, it awful, I'm, and it was I'm mediocre. Now, go, go back through their catalog and look at all the sixes, seven, and eights that they gave all yep. of these movies as I'm they really came out. That up. And they're it's just really fucking lame that it's like jumping finally on the bandwagon. Because now, now that it's the, popular well, yeah, tank, like, now yeah. everybody agrees. Now that the landmines have been cleared, <laughs> now that the right, reinforcements yeah. are here and it's safe, now that it's present it as like this perspective that you cultivated it's not like everybody believes this now that mm -hmm. these films have been bad i was so there like when it was it written it was bad on day one yep yeah fried but other than our eyes glued to everything everywhere or our swing through the spider verse have any of these oh well, i guess it's not all bad then mr killed the multiverse huh huh mm -hmm. those movies are all right so yeah. there you go films these spectacles utilize their multiverses to say anything to say to show us anything that we have i mean spider-man says something yeah that, that's for sure like, yeah that's not a not does a the flash say anything um hmm. uh, i think the flash <laughs> tried to say something it said don't sometimes there's problems you can't solve that's what the flash was about yeah, right right uh, yeah. Yeah. What, what a heroic even a fart message. makes a noise <laughs> yeah <laughs> kill your mom Kill, let your mother die. What a <laughs> Kill her with tomato die. soup. Let your mom die. It'd be fun. <laughs> Don't That's search a for a killer. Never do that. I thought my <laughs> asshole was clean, but I was wrong. Learn a three hour lesson. One about can nuts. ruins the universe, 40 cans does nothing. <laughs> No, no, no. Remember when the goosebumps used to form at the mere thought of three Spider-Men quipping, two Batman coexisting, and Patrick Stewart being back in the chair? Remember the fan. Um, I which chair say, do you mean? I was, I was, not, happy. I was not happy about that one. No. That was, uh, First one was interesting. Three Spider-Man. Yeah, that was that was kind yeah. of exciting. But like, I was kind of sounded that. like he wanted to Patrick Stewart to be in the electric chair. I wish no. they would just. I mean, I wish they would tackle doing <laughs> one Batman well before they decided to have two together. You know, I maybe or work your five. way up to two Batman. Batman's mm. is it Batman or Batman's? It's Batman. Batmanus. It's uh, Latin. Batmanus. But Mama, so. Oh, that would be Batpenis. Uh, bat 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 um, and would Ooh. we use? I mean, would we use a uh, uh, homo here or weir? Bat would we use, uh, weir? Yes. Were you thinking about that? Point being, back, uh, yeah, I, I, you know what? It's fine. Batman's cool. Dude. I didn't know because it's like if it was a proper noun, I didn't know if you would change that to to keep Batman's, or would you keep Batman, like Batman apostrophe s or b a. I, I don't know which one or Batman. I just, I don't know. I actually don't know. Batman, I would be curious to know though in my pursuit Batman. for knowledge. Well, because Batman. Batman, Batman is a title though. Like like he's it's not he. Well, I guess he is a Batman to a degree. He's a man who <laughs> dresses. Bat, I am Batman. So if another Batman showed up from an alternate universe, they together would be. No, I think you'd be two Batmans. There I think it would be Batman, no, that's right? The because begin. that's prop. Yeah. That's a prop. That's a. I think it's because it's a no, proper I'm, noun, I'm not right? Invested in, in fighting this one, so you know. Not I don't prefer not. Batman. That's for instance, if there were two, feel. for instance, if there were two fringies, right? We wouldn't say F R I N G I E S. You wouldn't do that because you I wouldn't would change the spelling of a proper noun. You would say, <laughs> no, you'd say fringies. Are you but sure you that spell it? No, sorry, I'm not in that investment. F R I N G Y apostrophe S. Yes, you wouldn't change the spelling of a proper I noun that, to uh, pluralize but that's, it. That's possessive, though, right? If it's the oh, did you say? It's, did you say it's both. Yeah, if if it's a. Or... 
Yeah, it no, would, there's if, no apostrophe. If there were two, if there were two fring, it, it's it would be both. Oh, if you have fringies, no. if there's two fringies, you don't change the spelling of fringy in order yes. to uh, in order to pluralize it. Still you no would apostrophe. do apostrophe s. It could be. I think it might be the same as the uh, apostrophe uh, apostrophe no. s for possessive, but apostrophe I don't think that's typically going to be an issue grammatically. But I I'm not you, sure. I might be wrong, but I don't think. Oh, would I it be thought, no apostrophe? I thought there was yeah, no apostrophe. That's, that's what I was I, saying. Okay, so it, so it would be F R I N G Y S. Is just yes. just a simple. Okay, okay. yeah, that's fair. Yeah, the one that took me forever to learn where it has no apostrophe but it is a possessive is its i t s. That is when you remove right. the apostrophe. Yeah, it's because the, it, it is. is it's, no, it's you don't remove it. You just don't have it. Yeah. It is. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, it is. This is not that. Yeah, possessive, possessive of it. Uh, anyway, yeah, we, possessive it is yeah. ETS. Yes. It's problem solved. All right, cool. Semicolon. Yeah. We figured it we out. It. Batman's. Solved live so. on the that, EFAP show. Yeah. Yeah, and art, the Reddit Batman theories, the world, the possibility Batman. that we dreamed of. Nothing is ever as powerful as our dreams. But <laughs> thank you. Oh, the way he says it, the way he yeah, says it, he nothing is ever as powerful as our dreams. We hear that again. As our dreams. Oh, oh, we can hear that again. Oh, it's yes. so inspirational. Yeah, I love it. Being back oh, in the chat. Yes. Remember the fan That's art, a, the Reddit so somebody theories, says the world. Lift. The possibility that we dreamed of. Nothing is ever as powerful as our dreams. But <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, you know that? yeah. 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 Why, why does it as normal ass people? Why does he sound like he stopped mid sentence? No, he was. No, he was. He was the inflection. He was doing the wounded yeah. animal thing. As powerful yeah. as our dreams. Yeah. <laughs> This is the dude. This is something I was I was I'm making sorry. fun of back when I was making the DS2 videos. The 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 video essays, wounded bunny, like in the forest, just being like, <laughs> oh, no, something that's so yeah. I don't like it. Me. It's I don't, I don't like it. Yeah. But also, if our dreams are theoretically our imagination, then doesn't literally everything that was ever written come from somebody's dreams? Like yeah, but it's never, know... it's never quite as as good as it is, even though arguably through hard work you can make something that's a lot better than that initial idea you had i mean yeah i think he's just saying that it's like well we we have all these great ideas but it's always the bad ones that get implemented it's like i don't well, think that's what he means i think he's saying that nothing can live up to what we develop in our minds our expectations are impossible to be matched by reality mm. i think that's nah. what he's saying in their dream a lot of words for that but me personally, I never could have dreamed that the multiverse would be stale on arrival. Would be dying. I mean, would, I, still on arrival. Stale on well, arrival. Now, if I go with... back, if I go back to the first, what's the first multiverse? What movie? is the first one? Is uh, well, the first one I guess would be Into the Spider Verse, is like the super. He fucking adores like a... Into the Spider Verse. But I, yeah, but this would be the, before the trend. I feel like it's probably like No Way Home, right? Well, you that's, just said stale on arrival. Loki. Oh, well, uh, well, yeah. Then oh, uh oh. It's what No Way mean? Home. Did you, did you say it was No Way Home? Uh, well, I guess it's Loki, right? If you're talking about Marvel uh, Universe. High top film. Well, but he, he referenced everything, every all at once, and into the Spider-Verse, or across, so. It's true. So, yeah, it wasn't stale on arrival. The Part of the reason why the trend kicked off is because the Into the Spider-Verse was not stale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's cool and interesting. It's kind so, of funny. I'm thinking of if we should put Endgame in there because they don't know their terms. So maybe no, end, end game, uh, I don't, Endgame believes that there are no alternate timelines are all being, you know, like... Yeah, I out. wonder if they still believe that, depending well, again, on who you ask. That, I, don't think they know. I don't <laughs> think that they can give you a coherent answer. Yeah. Well, I mean, of course he likes Into the Spider-Verse. Like, that's not... I, I, I imagine that he would say, well, no, it wasn't Into the Spider-Verse. I mean, like, I later it was but the it, next I meant, I meant no, stale on the arrival of the stale ones. But the, but the problem is, like, didn't <laughs> he gave a positive review of Doctor Strange 2. That's true, that's true, He was yeah. positive about that film, mm. so you can't run away from that. Like, yeah. you didn't think it was stale. You, you, you liked it. You loved you it. You thought it was cool. Loved it. Yep. Before we mm -hmm. saw an ounce of life from it. Oh, wow, I think we all wanted Yeah. Stories yeah. that actually utilize it, make it mean something, instead of using it to I shoot mean, the story in the foot. Dude, whoa, hang on. Wait, hold oh, on. Oh, is it safe to turn against this Wait, movie now? Have you changed your mind? <laughs> yeah, he was so in oh, favor of Multiverse of Madness. What's going on? on? What, what was, it, what was right. the title of that one called? It was like, it is... Raimi, Doctor Strange, Strange in, yeah. in Doctor Strange Pure in the Madness of Raimi. Sam Raimi. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Wait, 
Didn't he skip this part specifically? Didn't we point that out when? I is think it, is, is right. this the part he hates? Is that is that the way it works? Because I'm pretty yeah. sure Sam yeah, Raimi I, approved I, of this as well. No, he thought it was cool. Remember, this was uh, not his idea. The what mouth thing that was someone else's, and he loved it. Yeah. Hmm. It was stupid. I mean, it's awful. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was terrible. It's really stupid. It doesn't make any sense at all. Man. Why did this happen? How is there already multiversal fatigue? I what do think you mean, already? Because it's, it's shit. Because it's bad. <laughs> There's been a lot of it, and it was it's all right. pissed. Yeah, That's yeah. why. If it was good, we'd be wanting more. Yeah, well, but it wasn't good. As, well, what we've, um, as a comic uh, book uh, reader, uh, DC back in the 80s did Crisis on Infinite Earths because they needed to repair multiverses. They needed to repair mm -hmm. other Earths and they needed to simplify it. Because if you didn't simplify it, you couldn't invest in your characters. Because why would you invest in Batman from Planet X? when you had Batman from planet A, B, C, D, E, F, G, et cetera, all the way through. Yeah. Uh, there, there was no way, you know, people could go, well, my Batman's Batman F and my Batman's Batman G. And they're like, no, 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 but we want you to be invested in Batman A. Well, no, because I like Batman S. So there's, there's, there's no way to invest specifically in a character when you just have multiple iterations of that character. You kill one of them off, who cares? There's another one in another multiverse. So what is the point of that person's death? The death becomes meaningless. Many things become meaningless. Uh, and so multiverses actually expose laziness because it doesn't allow the, uh, the, the writer to, to specify and make you invest in very uh, specific characters in that verse. It, it's, it's not difficult to, to kind of grab, get your head around. I mean, that's why we have... Different it's in film, we have the Bat Keaton Batman, and then that stops. Then they move, uh, you know, after X amount of time to a new iteration in, in the forget Clooney and, and uh, Kilmer, because <gasps> that was just a mess, I think. But then you go into the, the bail, then we were meant to go into the Affleck. Now we've got to the point where we're having a Michael Keaton Batman with a Ben Affleck Batman. Meanwhile, there's also a Robert Pattinson Batman, and there's going to be another Batman cast. Yeah, that's towards, retarded. Uh, Guns Batman. So it, uh. it's all over the place now, and and, and people, are, who do I who do I invest in? Uh, why should I invest in? Why should I invest in this new Batman when there's the Pattinson Batman existing and there's this Batman existing? Yeah, there's no artistic commitment. It's all based on which one's going to make the most money. It's like, and then we'll we'll pursue that yes, one. So which sucks. Yeah, that's true. Um, obviously, though, if they pared down and limited and made for quality these stories, like, you know, The Flash didn't have to be an abysmal piece of shit movie. It could have been okay. You could have had... I mean, we all, we've all speculated forever about how we just like, you yeah. should have just fucking had a Batman movie, but it's not like you couldn't have had... <laughs> Do we, do we have to have a Flash movie? Can we just move it around? <laughs> Make it someone else. I don't know. But yeah, yeah uh, the quality is still going to be significant, but I think that there is a natural unraveling as soon as you start playing with the multiverse. It's like, yeah. how can they not be, right? We Even in Marvel, yeah. you have on the, top. You've hit the ceiling of stakes. Uh, yeah. There's, yeah. I, I can't yeah. conceive of higher stakes. And then when you look think... at Marvel, you just have... All these different kinds of universes and multiverses and quantum verses Time and timelines. Time and there's this like, I don't know what realms. anything of this means. You're just devaluing nope. each other with every entry in your universe. Well, and I you heard the guy one said, one. Worlds within worlds. That's what that means. It's great. There you go. That's done. Yeah, sure. You're just watering down your product. You're just yeah. watering yeah. it. Something instead of using it to shoot the story in the foot. Why did this happen? How is there already multiversal fatigue? I think we happened. I think is don't there? don't yeah, bring me us. into no, this. It's not. It's <laughs> not my fault. If you if you give me a glass of if you give me Granny's peach tea and I drink <laughs> no, it you. and I spit it out because I'm like, oh wait, this isn't Granny's peach tea at all. This is urine. This you can't Granny's blame tea. you can't blame me for spitting it out. You gave me yeah. piss. What do you mean? It's your also... fault for giving me piss. No, it's your fault for drinking. Should have given it a sniff, Rex. I was tricked. Man. Why do you also 
Am I just supposed to accept Dervil? <laughs> yeah, like, Rex is correct. Well, well but why like, am I supposed to? He says we, but like, really, the problem yeah. was more so you. The, the, you. The, if you're yeah. going <laughs> to praise yeah. the ones that are shit, meanwhile, yeah. we're trying to break them down extensively as to exactly how they go wrong, which gets difficult with a fucking multiverse movie, okay? It takes oh, yes. a while. So This fucking video should be me killed the multiverse <laughs> i killed the multiverse yeah i killed oh that would have been more dramatic you should have done that actually yeah I absolutely everyone needs to stop using the royal we only say the word we if you can answer specifically the people you're talking about <laughs> in the past. i think yeah. we can all agree on that we are, because I I think most if not all of us here uh feel that efforts have been made to try and repel people from this content with how shit it is. Um, it, again, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's been a fucking disaster for a while, but yeah. it's like, guys like Hightop have finally caught up in terms of real life. <laughs> it took them ages. Like, that's, been, that's been really bad. You know what, I think that's our fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's our fault. <laughs> <laughs> like we've been mopping up these spillages for ages and then they just walk into the room like look what we did You're like excuse me <laughs> if this person this person praised dr strange and they praised uh miles morales then wouldn't this video have been better coming from the perspective well of, if uh, i made i bought into this i made the error this is why this is why i i, I relent now this is why i i, I retract uh, my my you know praise of the multiverse. I guess this is what Rag is highlighting. Could you could could you like acknowledge that you had a very different opinion? Yeah. Like, well, to be honest with you, I'm starting to wonder this. if this is clickbait because into the Spider Verse, across the Spider Verse, everything, everywhere, all at once, uh, No Way Home, and Multiverse of Madness all got praise from him, and I think he'd stand by yeah. it for the most part. So, <laughs> which are the shit ones? It's like, well, the Flash. He didn't like, like the yeah. The Flash. Yeah, okay. Okay, so it's five to one. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's like, fucking good. Yeah, I would actually say, like, from his point of view, it ain't killed. It's doing okay. Yeah. There was one fuck Five up. to one is stellar. One thing one thing I've noticed a lot with, with MCU fans, and particular MCU fans that are still, like, all in at this point, is they're committed to the idea that all of this is going somewhere, and when that yeah. payoff happens, yeah. all of you are going to feel stupid for not being on board. But we're on board because we fuck Marvel. By the way, wasn't the first multiverse um, the CW's <laughs> crisis oh, no. crossover? I guess so. Maybe. <laughs> and to be <laughs> fair, I remember Brown Table and several others praised the first episode of that. They said it was great. Oh, good. Damn it. We were all like, holy Damn. fuck, that was a disaster. <laughs> like, Damn, really? Oh, these wow. people suck. These people just say whatever they want and then. Well, after, after things have kind of settled, and they could sort of they can play the field, and then act as if nothing mm. ever happened. They have despicably Rags, awful. Track we killed record. the multiverse. We did. We did it. G good. Yeah, we put it out of YouTube. its misery. Rags. Yeah, we murdered it in its sleep. We <laughs> mercy killed the multiverse. <laughs> Why would you do that? Think Does anyone remember when the critic the Jay Sherman showed up on The Simpsons, oh, and it was, yes. it was just mm. fine? Like it was just. Good episode, and it, it was felt just like fun. it was a pretty good. It was a really good episode. It stinks. This should be yeah. we who praised it are the problem. Well, yeah. I, I, well, it, I guess it depends on the conclusion about why it's. Yeah, me. let's see. What, what let's get some more meat from this video. The, see what we got. We're the, the problem. Yeah. Uh, regardless of what his argument, his argument is going to be terrible. But it would make more <laughs> sense if it was. Well, pre-watched. Praise this were the problem. But, yeah, but I, I don't, I don't know if that's going to be his argument. Let's see what he has to say. <laughs> well, I think as is well, saying no, that that's the truth, though. <laughs> oh, that's the truth. Yeah, yes, we are the uh, problem. Yeah. Well, is he? I'd be interested to see if he takes uh, any blame himself. Yes. No. <laughs> I assume no. he does Maybe with the Wii, but we'll see. But we'll not see. actually. Yeah. yeah he yeah. he'll like symbolically throw himself in there, but he won't actually take any blame. But if he says, you know what? I just realized I thought all of these movies were pretty darn good to amazing, and here I am, and I'm gonna totally like I'm gonna I'm gonna really think about that. I'd be like, well, you know what? Good for you, because a lot of people are just gonna sail on. They're not gonna give a fuck. Well, Problem. well, he also said we, so that includes him, right? So yeah, yeah. Fuck this guy, if he cleans his hands, that's what I'm like, saying. He's well, not gonna yeah, just push us says... into the swamp and then stay stay out of it, right? Is he gonna punch his pilot us? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> 
We shall see. But first, can you imagine if Raid oh, I... Shadow Legends? Oh my God! Oh, 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 yes, I can. God well, damn it! Bro, yeah. sponsored this oh, video. You get to hear all about imagine. Dawson collection of over 700 unique champions, a super Real, detailed yeah. tactical yeah. RPG. How many? So good. Incredible. King, over 700. How many champions? Oh my God! Seven hundred. You know why Rage? That's so many. You are code I think. on the screen and everything. How many are we now the point where we can stop pretending it's Graphics a meme intent to get sponsored by Rage Shadow Legends? PV like they're still around. Yeah. Raid Shadow Legends sponsoring well, everybody for you, is man. our fault. Hey, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, so let me tell you some more. My favorite what? thing about Raid is the sheer amount of variety between the wow. characters. We're talking over 700 uniquely wow. designed. I mean, there's over I like 700. I like how uniquely designed. It could be a problem, like... That ha like imagine if you had a fighting game with seven hundred characters. All you think is wow, dude. The amount of fucking really? clone characters there would be in a fighting oh, game with seven hundred. Well, I mean, look, look at these icons. How many of these icons are full plated? Yeah, that's true. It looks like, 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 like oh my god. Yeah, they're just knights. Just just go through the rows. You you oh, can just spot them with your eyes. How many of these guys are just knights? With their how many champions covered? are in league? How many champions are there? Oh, uh, not, it's not, uh, 100. Something? not 700. No, 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 no. Yeah. Um, it's and, between and 100 and 200, decade, right? Something like that. Over the course of a decade of, of adding those characters in. And well, that, yeah. that's one, huge 140. Okay. Like, seven, More... set, telling me that there are 700, that doesn't, that doesn't oh, tell one, me anything. It makes me not that, want to play your game. <laughs> yeah, if anything, it makes me not want to play because oh, now I think, oh shit, this is going to be like unfocused. Wait, um, Goga no said. Way. Goga said two of them are the same icon. Which can anyone spot it? Because like, it's like Wait, where's Wally? Oh, this oh can God. be where's Waldo. But, Ooh, uh, um, <laughs> hey, oh, what oh, fun, fun. Well, I don't, can you where's guess Waldo who is the mystery? I don't really want to search. Yeah. Oh, but this is so much. This is better than high top though. So <laughs> yeah. So we can. They're probably not next to each other. That's oh, where where. I want to say it's like a it. Is it a is it a, a booby with woman? a helmet? Because that's ha half of them are a knight with a helmet. So that's I'm gonna your brain because you don't know what the baseline is. Oh like wait, wait, yeah, I found it. I found it. Yep, I found him. It is a knight. It is a knight with a helmet, and there's a there are copies. Uh, oh, so uh, third row. Uh, he, he's got the <laughs> third row and the one, two, third row, or third row and fourth row. Okay, there are two knights right hand side. Um. It'll oh, be. Yeah, oh, I see him. Yeah, yeah, I see him. Yeah, 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 yeah. but Blue thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, right to the to the one on the right there, the bottom one. Look at the guy next to him. I think that's a copy of the one just one up and one to the left. Oh my god! Wow. Yeah. Here, me, I'll just uh, do a little circly boy right yeah, there. And oh, I think I know what you mean. Yeah, 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 I see. I, I forgot I had the power of light shot here. <laughs> I think there's another. I think there's another shot. couple copies. Yeah. <laughs> Over 700 champions. If oh, you one of them has a blue right. portrait and the other is a purple portrait. He most oh, likely has it. created it, like my homie Skinner. Look at him. I love him. Look he at him. He offers endless customization oh, yeah, yeah, millions yeah. of different combinations yeah. and play yeah, styles. Regular updates are not left. <laughs> oh, dude, why? regular yeah, updates. Why? Combination. Wow, yeah, regular why? content updates. So it's like a video game. Yeah. A oh, player base of over 400 million. Whoa. Wow. 190 countries. You can start playing. Wow. I can't Doesn't wait to never so play them. Woohoo. I'm going to take the bag. On desktop or mobile, the yeah. world is yours. New players can get the bag. world can be yours in just a mobile game. Their you hands can play on Stag Knight, Legends one of the best epic your fridge. Look, it's the Stag Knight. Champions around, as well as the skin for Stag Knight designed by Jontron. Jontron by using himself. the promo code oh, JT my God. Skin before October. Jizz skin. <laughs> over seven. You know, They're you also know what? I forgive it. Because it's Jantron, you know what? There you go. Jantron some Hydra Clash, a clan-based competition to Get see out. who can smack the Hydra the hardest. <laughs> like oh, that looks like shit. Like what? I wanted to remind us of that looks incredible. YouTuber. I've never seen that before. Seven hundred characters. Oh my mm. goodness. Final Fantasy. I don't even think of insane. that many things. <laughs> Regular updates. Bonuses. There will be eight hundred you know There was hundred ninety countries involved in this. There's wow, never been anything such like incredible. Talia. This Another is more useful... international than the UN. Okay. Gliders, two hundred thousand silver. Come on. Worth that's worth thirty dollars. You could probably buy a whole character with that. And dollar sign goes in front of the number, but that, 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 that's okay. It's fine. Uh, ooh, four a energy refills. Dude, an epic skill day. tome. You get the whole tome. Wow, a whole Whoa. tome. It's one full of all kinds of knowledge. Booster.
My favorite oh, part about this game is that they, they, pre they pretend they start love... you at level 1, and then you just log in, and it's like, no, you got 5 million XP, now you're level 10. It's like, that's not real progress. You're yes, it is. That's, it. That satisfies <laughs> me, that's why I play games. He refills XP boost. Dude, look at this, it says worth $30 does... in the top there. That's where all this well, it's is. Worth, yeah, it's worth thirty dollars. Yeah, but one, of, one of my pet peeves in games is when you have big numbers and you don't put commas to differentiate the amounts of zeros and stuff. Yeah. You have. Please do that. If you if please do that, games. It's really, it's really <laughs> great. There's like... a reason why that's that's a reason. It's a reason why numbers are like that. Um, yeah, thank very you. helpful. Please do that. Can it's extremely like, helpful. Give me the thirty dollars instead. I don't really want the silver or the energy refills. Ooh, yeah, yeah that's true. No, I'll yeah, I'll man. cut him a deal. Just give me twenty five bucks. I'll take yeah, that. Yeah, there you go. That, I, I, I mean, yeah. man. So wait. So what you're telling me that one character, some silver, like an energy refill, two hundred thousand silver. Uh, yeah, and that that that's worth thirty dollars. You could buy Hollow Knight twice for that. <laughs> Why would anyone do yeah. that? Well, but yeah, the crazy, you get a, bring, the crazy thing is, we were just bringing up League so. of Legends. That's free to play, and it's way fucking is, better than this. No, oh, yeah, right, no, yeah. guys, you get a one day XP booster. Yeah, for a day, John you get Tron. More XP. John Jonathan Tron. Tron. Die. The, John Tron the, didn't make Hollow Knight. I have become. Dead. Do, do you get Talia, the <laughs> epic <laughs> character? Oh my god, she's epic. She can read the epic skill tome. purple. That's the epic color. Yeah. I don't mention earlier of like, oh yeah, 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 the Raid Shadow Legends meme. Like the game is successful and it's because of these ads. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How do you think they afford to make 700 plus unique it's characters? Advertising it, that's why. Absolutely. No, they can't afford to make unique Whether you characters. Whether you it's a meme or not, the ads are effective. That's why they pay. And that's why we make fun of it. Because <laughs> we hate this shit. He hasn't played this in his life and he never will. He hasn't a clue what he's talking yeah. about. He's reading a script. Yeah, no, he, yeah, I, I, he's, he's going to play yeah. it one night, and then he's going to have something happen where he kills a thing and be like, this is kind of fun. And then he'll channel <laughs> all he of that energy the into the video. <laughs> like, this is yeah, fucking blast, dude. 200,000 silver. <laughs> Those games let you actually play in the first hour or so, and then the game... game well, it's just, it's probably is like off. a... It's probably like in, you know, South Park, the Canadian game. Hey, friend, you've got new buddies, guy. Like, the notifications <laughs> on the phone. Yeah. You got new buddies, guy. Oh, that looks so incredible, the gameplay. Come find me under the name High Top Alex, and if you're fast enough, you can join my... Wow, level 14. He has Remember, nine. Remember, wow. if you're fast enough, you can join. I clan. So just hit my link He's in the description really and I'll see you on the game. battlefield. Tell, Tell me why Goober was your favorite. Or Skinner. <laughs> Tell me why Skinner was your favorite. You said, look at him. He's my favorite. And I'm like, no, explain <laughs> why. He's like, I love his story. Then you go, Tell me it. He's like, he was born in a swamp. Why is Crumble I love Shrek. <laughs> mean. Thanks, guys. This video is very much for you're me welcome. to vent, and I hope you're okay. willing to follow along. But okay. if not, thanks for being you. I'm going. Aw, that's why I'm nice. here. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, Zach. hi. You're I kind of despise what you do. I like this you're guy. You're welcome. I'm going to ask <laughs> a series of questions. This video is about you being at fault. But thanks. <laughs> You. This is more for me. <laughs> we this is, the about, <laughs> this is about how you <laughs> being you put us in this situation, you piece of shit. You're like, oh man. Oh my god, you're right. You <laughs> fucker. <laughs> or not. Feel it free to it was, it, like, this video was All for right. me to vent. It's like, dude, this is the beginning of the video. We haven't seen it yet. You're about to vent. <laughs> Answer me Most in the of comments. This video was a Raid Shadow Legends. Oh my god, what? Are people are calling him. Retire. Here are the approved no squares. Way. Everyone Retire. use these ones. Don't worry, I'm not big mad when you called me a hack talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One. Number one. Why the hell is there a Flash movie with no Flash villain? I mean, the Flash has probably the second well, best. Well, I mean, the villain of the, the film is the uh, evil Flash, right? Yeah, yeah it's reverse, reverse Flash. Is it Flip, flip Flash? <laughs> I don't know. Flash? Yeah, is he? Oh, yeah. I can't remember what that, that's, uh, that's a, that was made up for the Rogue film. Gallery. Oh, and, uh, was made up for the film. What? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Wait. Sorry. What did he say about the Rogues Gallery? Comments or just live? He's just about to say that. I think he's just about to say that the Flash is the second best Rogues Gallery, probably of DC. If he says Behind all time, Batman. it's going to be even better. But I think, yeah, well, yeah. If you say all time, you'd have to say that it's better than either Batman or Spider-Man, which is a hard sell.
Why the so. hell is there a Flash movie with no Flash villains? I understand the spirit I mean, of the this Flash complaint, though. Flash is probably the second best rogues gallery in all of DC Comics. All right, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, guys? Oh, what do you think? What about Batman? Superman? Batman? What about Superman? Superman? Well, Batman's, Batman's number one. Number one. Superman's got Lex Luthor, Doomsday, Brainiac, Zod. Like, you got, you got a bunch of uh, Bizarro, Lobo. It's a big and it, gallery. And the example he's showing on screen is someone that most casual people tend to think is yeah, just but, Mr. Freeze in a different... I have no clue <laughs> who this is. Dude, well, wait, Rags, what do you think of Captain Cold? What? Well, what's his real name? <laughs> his name is Captain Cold. Then it's Cole. not. I don't know. It's not like... It's not Rumor like Eskimordor or something, or, <laughs> like, or, or maybe Park Hill for like a parka. Or, the cooler. Uh, um, uh, well, there's, there's a GI Joe character that goes around in in the Arctic stuff, and he's called Snow Job. <laughs> So a snow job in a Canadian schoolyard would be when a kid gets pushed to the ground and then you kick snow on him. Oh. Uh, okay. actually, uh, that's that what a snow job fun. was at your school? That's yeah. not what a snow job was at my school. <laughs> well, you, you probably went to a more fun school. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, it, it's never fun when you're the guy getting the snow job, which is uh, you know different than the other thing that I'm on. What, what is your problem with Captain Reason. Cold Rags? Like, what's what's the deal? I don't have. I we I we've only just met. I don't know anything about him <laughs> other than he has a. <laughs> he looks like he's a very determined fellow who's got a lot on his mind. And then and I like his. Black. I remember we learned about Godspeed and Zoom as well. Yeah, Definitely. Godspeed and Zoom. I was gonna say that was a long time ago, but it was, was like well, it was. It was you know. I mean, I guess it's a long time ago on the in the in the stream verse. <laughs> a long, a long time, time ago. ago. But... A little um, bit. Bar. Let me God, see. Man. Uh, this guy just—he looks like a guy who's upset and it's cold. <laughs> well, so, which is I mean, fine. Looks like he can't even, see a lot through his glasses. That's why. Before it's to even, prevent you from getting snow blind. Oh. I would say is before we've even moved into the main point. You know, there's something to be said about it's a flash movie. It's his first film. There, there has been no other flash film. This is the first one, and it's not really about him. <laughs> like no. <yeah>. <laughs> No, it's about kind of hanging out. Multiverse you want to give him his best Batman. showing. You know, put your best foot yeah, forward to, to the show but people. Again, would this have been the case if you know if we weren't hearing such positive things about other multiverse films that were coming out around the same time, like Multiverse or No Way Home? It's, God, it's, uh, no it's insane clue, that Ebert behind. Thorne wasn't in this. It's absolutely insane that uh, Reverse Flash wasn't in this film. Maybe, yeah. maybe he was at some I mean, point. Maybe, maybe there was a Flash villain in a very, oh, very, very early. This draft. film was in development hell for like two decades, so yeah. there was like <laughs> forty scripts written for it, and they all got scrapped. So, oh, okay. <laughs> it probably was in one of them. Unfortunately maybe. for me, I, I have to, I have to bounce. Um, oh, oh my no, god. Right. All right, I know, I know. I, I, were you I, waiting I, for me uh, to to cool. be BRB because yeah, we're scared? Like... <laughs> yeah. Where's he going? Where's he going? <laughs> no, I told, I told, I told them all before I came in. I had about an hour. So, oh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, I'll believe so you. For I have now. peed. As you must leave. Yeah, yeah. Go. As wants yeah. to run away. I mean, you know, it's stop up to you, man. I mean, if you want, we're just gonna be upset. Oh, you. No, you're just... supposed to stop him. <laughs> you're doing it wrong. I'm it's gonna like get the Lewis others. if you don't. Reverse start. psychology what medal. Did you uh, finish? We will be uh, finishing in like five hours still. Uh, sure, whatever he said. Eight well, hours. Yeah, Let's hours. just. Well, it's probably like six <laughs> hours. Six hours is probably it. Holy Wait, shit! No, it, okay. Wow. What time was nine? Ten? Eleven? Oh my god! No, really? it's like. Well, no, it's like four. The... No, but the the Batwomans they don't count as like time for the show. Yeah, rags. Oh, oh okay. I don't know who made that rule, but it sucks. <laughs> I don't you recall you eleven the rule or having it be put up to a vote to that I participated in. in for a little bit later. We got eleven right. thirty-six plus eight eleven, right? So oh, okay. that's so how far that we is are. Pretty oh, well then then we do have like four hours plus whatever, however long the. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, so if we yeah left. stiff up her lip, as where you yeah. off? So you doing you doing afternoon tea? Is it? 
I'm doing the afternoon tea. And I, do, I don't want to plug it though because you're doing this. <laughs> that's, uh... that's all right. It's all right. You got you got your shit to do. I understand. That's uh, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, I... yeah it's fine. It's, you can head off and do your thing. It's cool. Um, oh. it's, it's it, 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 uh, that'll be uh, on Az's channel. Good fr good friend of the show. And if you wanna if you wanna check it out, yes. you're welcome to, of course. And maybe Just stay here, folks. Just stay here. Sweet. Just stay here and watch this. It's much more interesting. Maybe if uh, if your afternoon tea wraps up in time, you can come and. Uh, Come give us another visit. Who knows? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Lovely. All right, love you guys. I'm not uh, heading off too. Oh, oh, we lost to the lighters too. Bye bye. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah I reckon goodbye. I'm off too. Well, Thanks for inviting me on. Always love to hang out with you, mate. Interesting. Oh, good. Anytime. Yeah. Have you back someday? Not right now, though. Talk about some cheese or something. Oh, I love cheese. cheese. Like one of Thrones cheese. No, I don't like these thrones. <laughs> well, old. stale cheese. Have yeah. a good uh, resty day slash you're sleep. I don't know. Oh, you're Australian. That. You're probably going to sleep soon. You're going to sleep, yeah. Uh, I should. I, oh, yeah. I should. <laughs> I, I should. won't. I won't. Oh, you can't tell me what to do. Right, bye. Oh, right. Happy bye. anniversary. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Five, five more you years. Them. Let's go. Thank you. Hooray. Yeah. Five hundred more years. years EFAP. Yes. Yes. One year podcast. Hundred year EFAP reign. Forever. Yes. All right. I love fapping. Boy, boy. Up to see you. Bye. All right. Boy, I love. Now that we've gotten rid of the losers, we can get right into this. Hey, what do you what do you mean? I'm still here. Wait. Oh, metal. Oh, I'm gonna tell Mel you said that. What a cold mirror master gorilla grod reverse slash all of the potential to create imagery, create emotion. All the potential to create imagery, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, definitely imagery. imagery. I mean, for imagery. Sure, for uh, yeah, but if this this slash argument... had one thing, it was imagery. There was images, <laughs> I saw them. Yeah, yeah, but do you need to have flash villains to have a good flash movie? No, that's a, yeah, exactly. That's a beauty. <laughs> but I understand yeah. the a, idea. It's of a curiosity. It's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Also, instead yeah, of taking something kind of like, that you, what's the point if you're not gonna? Yeah. Mm. If you have something that people already that's resonate nice. with and you can adapt, might as well. If your idea is piss, might as well take one that's not piss. Is it cool if we spoil the flash? Like, I'm assuming that that's not one we have to protect. Right? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> I'm, kind, I'm kind of offended that you'd suggest we would protect it in any way, shape, or form. But wow. I'm sure that makes sense. How fucking dare the... You should probably spoil a... Yeah, you, you should spoil something else. Like, I don't know. Something that's way I, worse than The Flash. There, there's has there's a lot of... There are things worse than The Flash? Apparently. Well, they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're They've been constructed in labs. Spoilers that I know <laughs> that I've always got to be careful to not say. So uh, I was pretty sure that one was safe. But I think they kind of did reverse flash with other Barry. They just sort of did a version it of it. It was a point. reverse flash, not yeah. the yeah, reverse. Like, I mean, he's like all other reverse Barry. flashes that all have different names. Well, uh, I mean, he uh, is he just uh, yeah, I think is he referred to as other Barry in in the well, movie? I don't even reverse know. flash other Barry. Wow, these names they're so good. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, they, they got nothing I mean. on this Captain Cold. Yeah, the second Ezra Miller true. kind of becomes evil at the end, and I thought that was them being like, oh, okay, wow. so this this is this universe's reverse flash idea, right? Or or am I wrong about that? I don't know. I kind of I thought that. No was I don't know. It's not. It's not a good. I'm gonna be idea. honest. It's it's a little difficult to concentrate on all these yeah. names and people uh, and events. With it's, time um, ticking on, you know, our brains are getting less and less coherent. Yeah, it time happen. marches on. Yeah, maybe fitting with the multiverse. Oh, yeah, so I just saw. Marcher. Oh, this Sorry. random tweet. Uh, hang on, let me do a VX Dr. Twitter here. Doctor Strange update. There you go. Uh, Quantum Mania. Mother of Madness. Right. Oh, go ahead. I mean, you, you, so you could uh, do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Loveness and Michael Waldron are rumored to have been laid off as the writers for Avengers: The Kang Dynasty and Avengers: Secret Wars. Oh no! Is expected to be a major player in both. Films. That's really funny. Is he though? Will he be though? Uh, I doubt that. Oh, no, they need it's, it's, it's a rumor writers. tweet, of course. Well, but I just found that. Benedict Cumberbatch is kind of all they have left, other than Spider Man, who Sony owns. Yeah, and the only reason they really I mean, have like, him left, so to speak, is that he hasn't been like he's been in a Cumberbatch, and he's doing the light show as a wizard. Like that's pretty much. There's not yeah. much to it anymore, you know. <laughs> 
no, no, no. I, I don't mean the character. I mean the actor. Like, I mean, Benedict Cumberbatch will probably come and do more MCU movies, whereas all their other sort of Actually, though, marquee characters. I still do think that his character is probably perceived as more intact than most of the ones in the MCU that remain. Even though he's not. Maybe. Not really. well, mostly because people ignore all the things that went wrong in Multiverse of Madness. Maybe they should some re re watch some reviews well, like, online. The hope you'd yeah, have, I guess, is that... can't the... tell you what happened with him in Multiverse no. of Madness. No one's going to be able to tell you what he went through and what it means to him and who he is now and how he changed. No one knows. So they just chalk it up to, oh, I'm sure things worked out. I I, mm. I think I could make a pretty strong argument that the second he says, like, well, you said things right in Westview, and then Wanda does turn out to be the... Uh oh we're spoiling Multiverse of Madness, right? Oh, it's no, fine. you didn't. As long as you feel the need to ask these questions. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Because I think I'm, I'm the level of retarded that my, my filter for spoiling is very thin, so I'll just start talking about stuff and then not realize I've spoiled something major, so I'm trying to train myself to always address it before I just start talking about the ending of a movie. But anyway, so Wanda becomes evil, and you know, like what? Doctor Strange he does establish that he he was aware Jones. of the situation and just didn't do anything about it didn't secure her and it turns out that was a very bad idea so i think that like the main premise of the movie is yeah doctor strange kind of like, he's not very good at keeping the magic people in check apparently even mm -hmm. though he's like on mission to can see a million different possibilities happening at once although i guess he had the time stone for that that's fair see i corrected myself well so what I was going to say is that uh, there's still a, a thin hope. When you have a scene where Captain Marvel and Doc Strange are in the same room, that someone could write it so that he, like, says something mean to her and we get to have a smile. <gasps> nice. Probably not going to happen, though. Because, you know, remember when he and Tony met? They were mean, and then they were nice. They were on a little arc. Yeah. More of that, Character. please. Is probably the second Let's best rogues gallery in all of DC Comics. Captain Cold, Mirror Master, Gorilla Grodd, Reverse Flash, all of the potential to whoa, create imagery. Whoa, whoa, slow down. I know, That was crazy. like one, that was like a blur of well, names, and I don't know where one begins and one ends. So to actually uh, take what Rags' vibe is and to actually go even further, what? the only reason that any of these fucking clown names have, like, weight is because of the probably <laughs> really strong attempts at writing stories for them. And the realization should come pretty quick that it doesn't actually matter if they were in the story or not. It just matters whether the story was well written. That's that's literally it. Yeah, it could yeah. have been, you know, Kajumbo is the enemy. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't recognize that. And it's like, yeah, but if I wrote it amazing, it wouldn't matter. You wouldn't be like, well, he's I not mean, from the comics. I actually would kind of like the name Kajumbo for a villain. I think he should be like, written pretty good. <laughs> Captain Kajumbo. He gets promoted at the end of the Captain, film. Yeah. That's even better. With a K. The Captain is with a K, though. <laughs> yeah. Captain Kajumbo. I think... I think one of the reasons that this is kind of proven is that, I mean, because we, we, we overlook it a lot of the times, but some of the most famous like, yeah. heroes, Batman. Yeah, Batman, no, it's completely really. in terms of... Um, Batman. You know. Look at uh, uh, Doctor Doom. <laughs> like, But Doctor, Doctor Doom is one of the Doom. coolest fucking comic book bad guys ever. It's like Doctor Doom. You're like, Doctor shut the fuck Doom. up. It, it works because of what's behind the, the attempt of the name, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. So, um, what's another one? What's one more? Just uh, one more. Just we're gonna play like a it. goofy a name, game. or yeah, like a goofy name that's been normalized into not being goofy, even though it's goofy. Uh, um, Red Spider Man. <laughs> well, Spider Man is up there. Superman. But Superman is. I mean, Mister Freeze. Somewhat, yeah. <laughs> Mister Freeze. Yeah, Mister oh. Freeze. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So, Mister Freeze. But he's really cool, though. He is so cool. Mr. Freeze is high tier. Create emotion. Tier. Create something that we haven't seen in a superhero movie before. Imagine a mirror dimension uh, depicted on film. Imagine girl. A mirror dimension? A mirror dimension? Di min a mirror mean, oh, like I thought you said a mirror dimension. And I was like, what do you mean a mirror dimension? That's a whole lot of stuff. But he said mirror dimension. We yeah, have seen the mirror. I mean, not the Flash's mirror dimension, but Doctor Strange's yeah. mirror dimension. You know, that's got a... Yeah, maybe on, on the wall. Because I, I guess he, because I guess he means the flash one because of the visual. So. Really Unless he is actually like saying a different word, like m, m e e r -E -E m e r e. Okay, if he's saying mirror, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> I assume the mirror yeah, I mean, dimension for the flash is a very different and cool thing as well. 
Yeah, yeah, I think, I think they're done in a way that is loving technology. Gorilla City. Be, but has something to say about our society. Imagine seeing that translated, <laughs> adapted with two hundred million dollars. I don't want to see this. I'd or like do I? That. Shit would be banging oh, if done correctly. Yeah, but everything's do banging when see... done correctly. Everything. Yeah. Yes. I, I'm sure that a really good Gorilla City movie would be really cool and fun. That's the thing. A yeah, really good a blah 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 would there. be really good. Yes. I bet Gorilla but City would be a banger if it was done really poorly. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> it would be funny, Gorilla yeah. City, fuck it. There is here no we are. If this is where we are. There is no if. What, what, Why what the hell mean? is there a Flash movie with no Flash villains? Well, we liked Zod and Man of Steel, right? Yeah, but what no, if he was really done no. good? I did, I did fucking not, by the way. <laughs> what is this? Yeah. What is I, this I like mean? making fun of Zod. <laughs> Listen, I mean, we I'm call it astroturfing. Like we're pretending here. everyone loved Zod when we did not. <laughs> Not everyone loved Zod. It's not true. Our he was like, funny. Yeah, he's fucking okay. gaslighting us. <laughs> he's gaslighting us. <laughs> gaslighting us. I talked like you Zod. liked Zod. You did. You we did liked it. Zod. Okay. okay. You did we like Zod. On a bar. Okay. Told me. If you said it again, I will him. find you. I will find you. But to be fair, he could have been in the Flash movie and done really well, and we could have been like, oh my god, how good is that? That's so great. Oh my yeah. god. They salvaged Zod, yeah. Woohoo. Out of all the DCEU villains, he was probably most definitely the best. Probably he most definitely. He was probably definitely. most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm what barely lucid, and I know that what you said was dumb. <laughs> I was, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Why not. are you showing that like a plus? Why? why? Oh, I will find him. <laughs> Why? Why it's so on? funny. The penis chips. That's what happens next. <laughs> they, got in, they got in little Kryptonian space dildos. They went to the sky. They <laughs> just, Michael they Shannon came out the brought wrong something end. to that role. A power. A presence. Uh -huh. Why bank on something new? Why tell your own story when we like the story that came before? Okay, well, what if someone argued we had more story to tell for him? Something yeah. incredible and creative that has vision and blah blah blah, all the things you say, soul and purpose and power. What if? Seaman. Or it's easier to just use him, drag him out, and cover him in visual effects. Yeah, than... see, that's execution though. That's not him. Yeah. Yep. Come on. If he was on... in this movie and he was really well written and he was actually intimidating and interesting, that would have been fun. Yeah, and like he he represented a really important foil to both Kara and the Flash, or represented some kind of narrative thing. Like, there's loads of ways you can intertwine it. Why are we pretending like just having Zod is a mistake automatically? Yeah, Something you know how he feels about farms. He could represent the encroaching industrialization yeah. of oh, yeah, England and the yeah and the. No. Yes, that CG <laughs> was indeed cringe, though. Yes. <laughs> it's easier to trust our nostalgia than to give us the I do not not have, I do not have nostalgia for yeah. some. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Normally, I'm having this a is such a seizure. high top video. Yeah, yeah, this this point already fails, so I'm like, oh, we can skip this video. <laughs> it's nostalgia for a lot of things. Star hey, Fox 64, Beyblades, yeah. the the Caterpie Pokemon card. I like, to, but it ain't it ain't Zod. Okay. Power Rangers. Two. Why the fuck is the first appearance of Tom Holland's Green Goblin Sam Raimi's Green Goblin? Um, I'm not, I'm no, sorry. Did what? you say this when you reviewed? What uh, happened? I doubt he did. did he say this but even if he did, reviewed? it's not like. So no, this isn't a. Why does this require justification when it's a phenomenal actor playing a phenomenal character that has reason in universe to meet our, so to speak, exactly. current Spider-Man? Oh, oh! I think he's covering his bases. Like this is a this is actually a different character done right. So that's why he's justifying it. With, oh yeah, because this yeah. would be the counter, wouldn't it, to the Zod example? Yeah. So, like this is yeah. a, bringing him back and then doing it right. You're right. Yeah, it's a counter. So now he's saying Mr. like it's, but it's well. Let's see what he moves on to say. Like, what is the problem? I'm assuming he's going to develop <laughs> yeah. it. Listen, I'm so, not so just before we move on, but with oh, the way fuck. he phrased that, I thought he was talking about Tom Holland playing the Green Goblin because he didn't say Tom <laughs> Holland. I did too. That's why I was quiet because I was confused and I let y'all do that. I was confused. I thought, I wait, I don't recall. And then I thought it was like, did he do like a voice job or something? But he didn't. A snow job. I was yeah. just confused. Uh, did he do a snow job on Green Goblin? 
Oh my guy. goodness, no. <laughs> and I thought he was still Not talking about weather. the Flash movie too. So I thought Tom Holland's Green Goblin in the Flash movie? That's con- that's a confusing concept. Oh, I this thought. multiverse this is getting concept. really hard to follow. I don't know what <laughs> actors in what movie or who they're fighting or what's happening. It's like, it. it's just, it's Mad Libs. It's all <laughs> Mad Libs. Mad Libs all the way down. Oh boy. I'm not critiquing the way they use Sam Raimi's world to get even more of our money. I'm not even saying that you will are find it. Wait, hang on. Why'd you phrase it like that? You, Why did you yeah, but, yeah, but at the beginning that, that we bought like, it? Uh, you had the SpongeBob webs world, you know. Yeah, it's, a part had, of it too. it's not just Sam Raimi. And it will, and, and it's fundamentally uh, the guy who directed. Uh, the Amazing. Films. It's also fundamentally oh the MCU Tom that. Holland Spider-Man world. That's the the it main uh, backdrop. So exactly. So like, yeah, I need him to be clear on this one. What again, is the is, problem? This is again after having uh, Green Gob, after Green having Gob. done uh, two of his own f- from his own universe. Yeah. So I need I need uh, to understand. Goblin Sam <laughs> Raimi's Green Goblin. Green. Listen, I'm not critiquing the way they use Sam Raimi's world to get even more of our money. I'm not even saying that you will find a better Green Goblin than Willem Dafoe. Oh, what do I do? I it up. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Ow. I'm saying uh-huh. that you didn't even give John Watts and MCU Peter Parker a chance to showcase... Uh, I think John Watts would have adored uh, working with Willem Dafoe uh, and his Green yeah. Goblin. And that, by the way, that's I mean, that's so like to say like you didn't give him his chance. What if he considered this his chance with Green Goblin, as in like he wanted to work with Willem Dafoe, he wanted to integrate. This is the thing. As much as people can try and shit on um, No Way Home or using Raimi's elements, it's like Willem Dafoe in this film was banger. Yeah. 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 So. No but I mean, like. It, it's not really analogous to the Flash because Tom Holland Spider Man did have two movies where he does fight a very, very iconic Spider Man villain in each one. Well, and and it, and and did you realize as well? Why did he say the first Green Goblin is bringing? Because it's like, yeah, because we could get this universe's own Green Goblin. That could still happen. Me. Yep, that's always possible. But there's a universe, I suppose, where we did get that in this film, and we didn't get Willem Dafoe's uh, performance, which I think would be like th- that's 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 a loss. It was really fucking good. Yeah, right. like, I, I don't like that we've balanced this as yeah, but it's Raimi's. Like, okay, like, why is this a bad thing? He's he's like balancing it be- between um, how do I say this? It's like he's saying it's bad. In the other thing, yeah, I mean, it's just confusing right he's now. He's saying it's uh, like not right. I think he's saying it's not right that uh, an iteration of Spider Man should have Green Goblin be from another universe instead of his own because Green Goblin is like arch nemesis, you know, yeah, big bad. He should have his own one, but I mean, he can have his own one. It's funny, eventually. he appeals to, well, yeah. you know, p- the power and the potency of storytelling, and he's just like automatically assumed it would have been better than what we got in terms of a yeah, Green Goblin yeah. performance. He- and the end of No Way Home, the end of No Way Home does set him up to be like, okay, now he's going to go on his own sort of just Spider-Man adventures, not having well, any connection it... to Star Trek or like he just has a so the suit that he sewed up himself and he's now swinging around. I guess spoilers for No Way Home, <laughs> but I mean, and also I mean, I, I, they had an opportunity with Tony Stark dying. You could easily say, okay, the Stark Corporation is maybe in a bit of turmoil right now because they're trying to figure things out without having Tony. So that gave Oscorp a chance to kind of rise up. And then Sony could very easily be like, okay, now Spider-Man is dealing with Oscorp stuff in New York because they're this competing firm that has all this crazy stuff going on. And maybe he does become friends with Harry Osborn. And that well, he and, and if he meets like, Norman <laughs> before all this shit goes down, that's an especially interesting dynamic, isn't it? To know that that's gonna he's gonna become the green goblin at least in theory he yeah. has in other timelines you know there's 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 yeah. there's, there's, there's an if, option there a different story to tell and what that norman could be just a really good dude at least at first and it's like he's thinking like well i know this guy's evil but like what if at that point he hasn't gone through his evil arc so peter's anticipating it like there is already a story kind of there and uh, i think acting like well this was his green goblin i guess but it was toby mcguire's it's like well for now, I guess. Like, I mean, that's the story they told in this movie. But and let's I mean, not they, forget they having 
versions of people. Like we have seen sort of, and it, didn't they also kind of say that it isn't Raimi's Green Goblin who's actually there? It's like kind of a different one. Um, I'm, like, I'm more than happy to concede it's, it's a variant of like, Raimi one. It's, it's branched like from, it's Raimi. obviously Raimi's uh, like designs or at least intentions, right? Yeah. Like if you want to say he has a, a grip on that particular iteration, then I'm totally fine with that. I don't, I, this is the thing, I don't see it as a bad thing. Um, having him there and having Tobey Maguire Spider-Man there, having that big interaction at the end, like these are all really big potent payoffs. You can't you can't really get that if you use a completely new Green Goblin. I mean, you can you can have something similar. You can write it in different ways, but this feels a little bit like a reach to me. Like, isn't it awful that the first Green Goblin we saw for Tom Holland to fight was not his own universe's one? Like, I don't know. Isn't it about execution? Yeah, yeah definitely is. Something it's a, it's new. A strong a conflation new of um, personal preference and actual execution. It's um. It's something he's very not good at, Mr. Mr. Hightop. Who take on Norman, on Auk, on Sandman, on Lizard, on Electro? I'm sure we might get those takes. I'm sure we will eventually see what and whom those characters look like in the MCU. But you will uh, never, ever, ever, oh, ever, 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 ever get another Green Goblin that killed Aunt May. Oh no! Uh, I guess, uh, so and maybe what, also, he can do the other terrible things. The, the, like the, the voice, also like uh, I mean, what 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 is your point here? This Green mm -hmm. Goblin did, and that was really potent for Peter. He was in huge. Story. Yeah, which would predispose him to really not trust another Norman Osborn, even if he seems like a reasonable person. Yeah, that's well, a lot of I potential. Mean, you know, it's funny coming from me, but there's a lot of people that Peter's gonna care about in the future that. You know, they're going to yeah. have expiry dates. Oh, yeah. Your Gwen oh. Stacy's, your Harry Osborns, you know, they're, they're, they've got time limits. Even your Captain Stacy's, right? TikTok. Oh, your Captain yep. Stacy's as well. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of dead Spider Man allies out there. There's a whole graveyard of Spider Man. <laughs> Some of them were killed with his radioactive semen. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. oh that was a good one. on the Spider Yard. Yeah. That now they're making a one. sequel to that story. The only things that ever made Peter Parker feel loved made him feel the fire of hope and extinguished oh, it I, right before I his get, eyes. I can't with this fucking emotion. Yeah, like, it's yeah just, he did. Yeah, he, he sure did. Yep, he did that. Um, I mean, he's just, he's just explaining why it's potent. Goblins. Like, why, it, it being Willem Dafoe's rabies goblin does not make this less potent. I don't understand how you can make that argument. Yeah. No, it still does the same. Uh, whatever. Let's move on. I'm not sure we were ready that Peter was ready to meet two Spider-Men that have faced, what? that have loved and lost so many times wait, over. Wait, is he si oh, Okay, sure okay, okay wait, wait. I, so... I guess I was ready. I handled it okay. I feel, I feel oh, like, uh, does that mean... Is, I was is able this... to, you know, deal with it. At the end of the day, is the story bad? Because he's not saying it, right? He's just, he's just like... He said, he, he said we're not ready. Like... We weren't ready, Weekend. We weren't ready. I... I... What you, well, I'm sorry. I, mean, we? I, <laughs> I feel... I feel like when I went into no. the theater that I was prepared for pretty much anything that they were going to throw at me. Mm. And I remember being okay. I was like, okay, you know, this is, this is good. I like this. This is pretty good. And I walked again, out of here. I, I don't think I was traumatized or anything. I, I think I did okay. I don't know if I was like prepared he... specifically for this, but it was underneath the umbrella mm -hmm. of things that, that, that I'd be okay with on account mm -hmm. of it being a, a film, film in a theater. I see. You know? All right. It's well, like yeah. a thing yeah. he doesn't really like. And now he says, I don't think we were ready for him to be ready. Him to be like, ready. It's like, what are you, like, you, what are you, you saying? <laughs> <laughs> you saying? I don't, why can I, I hear, don't, my, why can I hear no. myself? No. Yeah, what's going yeah, on? What's going echo, on with echo. Oh, Hi, Rex. Oh, oh, hello. How are you? How are you? Come on. We can. We are. Lewis. What's happening? Lewis. Are you? Are you guys hearing echo? Because I'm not. Does yeah, that mean it's yeah. me? Yeah. Oh, definitely, it's you, Mark. definitely you, Mark. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. Hello. Mark. Someone in the chat. To turn off echo cancellation, and I noticed that in addition to being echo cancellation on my mixing board, which was off, there is also in Discord. So, when oh I no, you turned on echo, ec you enabled no, no, I, echo. <laughs> uh, echo. So I, I, what's the what's the enable? You enabled echoes. You uh, you gave power to echoes. 
I, I turned it off, hoping that would make me sound better, but it, it caused it caused my my, my I guess second flub total now flub. Now enabling echo later four thousand beep boop bop boop beep, 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 beep. I, I need to go back to the robot factory. I'm a, I'm a poor, poorly designed cyborg. No. Work in progress. Work in progress. Get that negative self-talk out of here, Mark. Oh, no. He himself had yet to learn or relearn that with great power comes great responsibility. Relearn. Is that the thing? <gasps> relearn. Learn or relearn. I was like, all right. That, with great power comes great responsibility is not binary, and people need to fucking understand that. It's a hell of a lot more complicated. As if ethics is all binary. Like the trolley problem is you learn it, and that's it. There's nothing else to it, you it know? It is like... It is binary. You pull the lever or you don't. Yep, it's done. There's nothing else to learn. There's no other permutations. There's no other complications. Mm. There's no other questions to deal with. It's just you know it or you don't. It's not like every Spider-Man trilogy deals with different versions. If I say it as if there's more than two. I guess there's two of the amazing Spider-Mans. But all of his films are always like variations of understanding responsibility. Ability. And who only learn that because someone else's villain, someone else. Why are you phrasing it that someone way? Else, why, <laughs> like, they belong, or that, like, villains belong to certain heroes. That's not how it works. He, it sounds like he's almost gonna cry. Like, he <laughs> well, learned. Don't that you think it's him all the time? Grim Goblin, Grim Goblin is Spider-Man from the MCU's villain. He killed May. Yeah. He's the main villain of that film. He is his villain as well. It's so as weird Tony that he's Maguire's implying Spider like villain. there's this gross stain of Raimi now in the MCU. And it's like, what do you mean? Why, where was this energy when the film came out? I don't know, uh, but he, I'm sure he had some like there must have been some sentiment of like this sapping Maybe? Raimi. I don't know. I don't it's all going to be under the umbrella of just key jangling and just bringing back all the old things, and now he's not even going to look if the things that wa were brought back actually. Well, well I hope we get a big well section shitting on multiverse of madness. Yeah. I you think know, that's what we are heading toward, to actually. <laughs> okay. This is okay. a turned victim got From dragged into another universe. I love how you phrase it dragged into. Dragged. 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 Delivery. It's so melodramatic, the delivery. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, that's not a that's fucking a soap nice. opera. No matter yeah, what they do or how well they do it, another Little filmmaker's movie. vision of Spider-Man will always have arguably... This was John Watts' vision of Spider-Man. This was John Watts directing Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin. It doesn't make any sense at all that because he appeared in someone else's film first, that that means the director... That's like saying, like, look at Joss Whedon trying to pretend he has some level of control over Loki when it's clearly Kenneth Branagh's Loki. Like, what? <laughs> that doesn't make any fucking uh, sense. I don't agree with, yeah. Look at that. The, the Russo's trying to use Thanos. Don't they know that's Whedon's Thanos because he appeared in the fucking post credit scene of Avengers? That's where we first saw him. Yeah, get your hands off Thanos. You, yeah. I believe the most important place in the life of this current Peter Parker. Maybe that was the idea. <laughs> Peter Parker. Yes, Peter Parker. Peter Parker. Oh my God! Four minute mark on a high top video, and it's it's getting it's pretty emotional. It's pretty every after he's done with every recording session, he's just a wreck. Yeah, we believe that there will never be better takes on these It occurred to him that that it occurred to him that. It might just be the idea that, hey, this Green Goblin shows up and has a major effect on... Am I sounding bad again? Nope. No, no you're fine. I mean, you okay. sound okay. It's the I, things I'm... you say. Oh, 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 oh sorry. <laughs> they're fine. Okay, well, well, we, we can move on, I guess, then. <laughs> I said they're fine. Oh, okay. Well, it, it was. he just admitted that he's like, well, I mean, maybe it was the intention that this Green Goblin came to the MCU and had an actual tangible character effect on that world spider-man yeah that was probably the idea man like what, a, <laughs> what kind of point is that peter parker should have said hey hey you you get out of you're here you're someone else's villain <laughs> yeah you're you, you, not you my green goblin. go back to the universe you came back with from you're not my green goblin you're another peter parker's green goblin no touchy place in the life of this current Peter Parker. Stop Maybe dragging. that was the idea, no. that we believe <laughs> yes, that there will was. never be better takes Funny. on these characters, so why not use no. them? That was a different take. Not it's not It's not how it works, that a character just because from somewhere else can't be delivered in a different way. Doc Ock is not exactly the same. The, the, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, he likes Spider-Man PS4, and, and Doc Ock in that game yeah. has a very different uh, storyline than Doc Ock in Spider-Man 2. Well, and, and yeah. the, the implication, of course, is that, like, any other... What if it was, like, fucking... A... Why do we just automatically assume it would have been better? Why? I don't get it. I don't know. Well, I think we scored pretty high with uh, well, the, well, the reason why they chose to do this was because they never believed that they could do better. I mean, it's just an opportunity that presents itself to leverage these characters in service of your story at this time. At a time when the actors are still reasonably young enough to do it. Like, I mean, exactly. if they if bring Tobey Maguire back for a multiverse MCU movie, it's probably better to do now than 10 years from now, if, assuming there is still yeah. an MCU. Most beloved well, takes well, instead that's of true. dreaming something. <laughs> that's why I What Raimi did 20 years ago is unmatched. I do believe that. But I would. So what's the, I do what's believe the problem? I do believe I that. I do believe what's that. The you could, it could be implied from the statement that I made before that. <laughs> I also believe that given the chance, a filmmaker, a writer, a storyteller could dream up something so like, unexpected. You don't have to a, do that. A filmmaker, a writer, a storyteller. You can just say, like, a filmmaker. A grip, a best yeah. boy, a, a, yeah, a makeup yeah, artist, a costume designer. Boy. A boom mic operator. Sorry, guys, but like, once you notice that that he often does this, it was a three. It was a three. Yeah. Synonyms a lot of the time, and rattle them off pretty quickly. Like, once you notice it, you can't unsee it as a a a. a trope, and the last one is the much more impassioned one. Yes, mm. exactly. Yes. yes, a film, a story, maker. a film, an experience, an yeah. artist. He needs to have heart, to have power, to have for... conviction. Yeah, like it's <laughs> so predictable. He does it all the time. It's uh, he's yes. gonna be at least one more time before this video is through for sure. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. yeah. The wow. uh, the, the, I stand by what I said earlier. We roll the dice on a brand new or a variant version of whatever Green Goblin, and I think that we're probably gonna end up with something worse than what we got because he was fucking phenomenal in No Way Home. Yes. Original, True. but why even try? Especially these days, when why? you know as soon as the rumors start rampaging and Willem's iconic goblin laugh starts echoing in our ears. Yeah, but it wasn't superficial, was it? Yeah, it wasn't. That which should be a reason for it. That you it's what really separates this film from the other MCU multiverse projects. Yeah, this one yeah. actually uses these characters in service of the story. Oh, guys, crazy. Eh? Oh, guys, the. This video, it doesn't have a lot to do with the multiverse. Not yet. Maybe yeah. he'll justify it? Maybe. Well, well yeah, wait, because yeah. we I'm killed the multiverse. Waiting. This whole thing is a completely different thing. Yeah, yeah. that's what I mean. I'm, me. trying to, I'm, try, I'm waiting for the, uh, for the context. Like, I'm waiting oh, yeah, for it's all under the umbrella. Like, because we use the multiverse things, we can just bring everything back. And now everyone is uh, creatively bankrupt. And we're not going to do anything else except bringing things back. So we oh. kill the universe or something. I don't know. Again, the Green Goblin kind of looks like Alien just a little bit. With his long, um, if you, ooh, smooth if you take out head and his teeth, his little teeth up front. And he's kind of got his... And it's, yeah. yeah, like if, if there were no eyes there, that would he'd look pretty... He'd look kind of no like eyes, Alien. No eyes, no ears. Like yeah. Alien a little bit. Mm. Yeah. Why Indian don't they... Top. Yeah or hit on your hands. They knew that we Ow, would be seated, popcorn in hand, ready to relive. Oh, what we he just once stole popcorn loved. from him. Three. Why, okay. in the middle of a okay. Doctor oh, Strange good. movie well, about right. trying to find happiness, is Patrick is that what it's about? to get his next snack? <laughs> what? What is that? <laughs> what? Okay. That, is, that okay. is an interesting question to ask that's very specific. I think Multiverse of Madness at least tries to use the multiverse to say something thematically. Damn. So No Way Home didn't? What? Okay. Oh, okay. man, okay. It's, it's M.O.M. is the one that has meaning, of course. The Flash um, tries as well. It yeah. fails, but it tries. But the implication is that multiverse is the only one, which is I not think true. that the Flash is more yeah. coherent as a message than MOM. MOM's is yeah. really fucked up yeah. in a lot of ways, right? Like M O M's got like seven not... different things it's trying to say all at once. Well, one of them is that um there are there are constants in the multiverse. Across the multiverse, which is just uh, I mean, if you wanna, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, the Flash doing the whole, like, you know, there is just some problems you can't solve and you need to understand that, you need to move on from them sort of thing. It's like, that's a fine yeah. message, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Well, and then he he changes something anyways. Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> there's damage in the in the flash, but there's also damage in MOM. Like I will say, I guess I'm already annoyed because it feels like in one and two we didn't load in anything positive for those films, and then the third one it's like loading in. You know, why is it that a Doctor Strange film that is about this theme has this bullshit in the middle? It's like, ah, right, because it is the better one of the three, huh? This is, yeah. the, this is the better Does he actually think this films. is the best? I thought he, pr I guess I, he probably I, does, I, yeah. I think he, does. I, he probably does, yeah. Let's I, I, yeah. Like, it is the worst I one. Friends, I have a couple friends who absolutely love this movie, and they're just like, oh yeah, man, it's like, it's MCU, but it's also like Sam Raimi, uh, Evil Dead stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. Stinky. Yeah. Sam Raimi stuff you can possibly imagine. There's no the visuals. any of it. And Use even the visuals this. are nerfed. Because the visuals in Evil Dead are like ultra gory. They're yeah. absolutely not in yeah. Multiverse of Madness. It's nerfed, for sure. Plot the Force mm. Doctor Strange to reflect. Can oh, Stephen Strange, Strange be happy without Christine? <laughs> in what universe or reality I mean, does he remain like a, a selfless hero out of nowhere, instead of a hubris-filled uh -huh. world ender? And yeah. Oh, yeah, because he's an uh, incel. Yeah, world you, ender. Yeah, you bought into Absolutely the, the sad as hell Doctor Strange that the most evil Doctor Stranges are all about trying to get with Christine. It's like, come yeah, on. Like that, she just isn't that mm. important. She yeah, isn't, uh, I don't know what they see in her. She's kind of annoying and dumb. <laughs> yeah. I didn't mind her in the first one. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Well, yeah we're talking about her in Multiverse though. of Madness. Yeah. Oh, I think I think oh, my God, everything's in broken in that film. Yeah. Yay. In what reality can he be that hero and also be happy? So now I'm going from a fun to funny to I just want to die. Go, go, yeah. go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. That's God, so smart on paper. The potential so of that is beautiful. Oh my Too bad. God, the this potential is so for that like, is beautiful. Oh, oh, I'm going to go sniff my farts. Beautiful. Mm. Oh, they feel so <laughs> real. Movie is gets that bogged question down. even complicated, though? Like, I mean, it's like, okay, can this person be a hero and still be happy? It's like, well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah. It's probably. kind of like what all superhero <laughs> movies are about. <laughs> Like, I mean, there's like, like an element running through it about that. The whole premise of him not... How do I feel? They, they, like, they, they chose to start the movie with him going to Christine's wedding where she's getting married to another man. Like, that that didn't have to be what happened after the first movie. Oh, I get confused. You're right. Um, even if it happened so briefly by the need to play the hits. Charles Xavier, Captain Carter, Black Bolt fan ca I'm sorry, play the hits, Captain Carter? Only play yeah. the hits, Captain Carter is a hit. Bang, smack. Smack, smack I've been waiting, I've been waiting to see Captain Carter, and boy... Boy, was my, present once I was in a what if scenario yeah, or whatever I it was. I sure was disappointed both times. <laughs> there, were five, <laughs> there were five or six fans of the Inhumans who really were happy to see Black Bolt again. Man. But Man, not for long. <laughs> yeah. Captain Colder. No one watched care. that show. No. To What's see he any about? of these characters in a Doctor Strange movie, especially one that seems like it has or had something to say about grief and about giving up so much of yourself. Why weren't you talking what about What does that have to do with it? Spider Man and what it was trying to say about, you know, responsibility. Fuck that movie. It had Raimi's also, Groblin in what it. What do, what do these characters have to do with the message of the film being what you think it is? Well, that's that, his point. Is that he's saying that they have no it. purpose in that's this film or no place. We've crossed the halfway point of this video. Mm -hmm. she, also do. she imagined those children also so she didn't well, really and also, part of part of the problem here is you're focusing on one of like many contradictory fighting for screen time themes in this film mm. like the idea of oh the happiness it's like that's that's one theme out of a few that are fighting for air yes of others. Do we really care to see any of these characters other than Charlie? Probably not. So oh. why? I don't oh, know okay. he was on so Charlie. Okay, no one calls him Charlie. Because you don't you don't care about the Inhumans or Black Bolt, so Or Captain of... Carter, though he just Captain. described them as the greatest yeah. hits. Or Mr. Fantastic. Reed Richards. Yeah, like that was yeah. a big one. Yeah, like it's and and yeah. he, I I don't and know. Favorite. I mean was again, was this at I, I can't remember. Did we watch his his video on Doctor Strange? Was this energy like in that and one? He talked about he talked about Raimi a lot. Right, yeah. the style, a lot of style stuff. I don't think he really talked about the Illuminati at much no. at all. 
Right. I that think was, I recall we, we, we pointed us, out that he it? skipped skipped that part. It's like, uh, are you going to talk about the whole head explosion uh, thing? Uh, and then he did. Anyway. And like, oh. Yeah. The entire group scene moment was so transparently, clearly shot, reshot, ridden, rewritten to appeal to. You mean like everything right now? Yeah. All of them? Yep. The I least common denominator. Here. Us fans in the audience who thought that Deadpool the might be. The least common least denominator? Common. You mean the lowest common denominator? Yeah. Right. Oh, I mean, yeah. The I least common important. would imply that it's unique. Yeah. Yeah. Here, that Toby Maguire <laughs> was going to show back up since Raimi was directing. The content creators who speculate on Ben Affleck's Daredevil bringing Jessica Alba Sue Storm to life while Chris Evans' Johnny Storm fires some quips back at Doctor Strange who jokes that he looks an awful lot like Captain America. Disney owns everything, so anything is possible. We provide free press and hard-earned cash to go see a movie on the Slim Ch but you praise all these movies. I don't understand. Yeah. You, you, you just what snatched. What are you snatched all these uh, talking points from other creators. Yeah. <laughs> these aren't yours. You made this shit up. Yeah, well, you, again, if you, you were, were part of the machine that you're railing guy, against. If you yeah, said this in your guy, it would be interesting. But you're saying I mean, it yeah. now. In it's not interesting After you at praised all. all these movies, you go like, huh, see, you paid this all this the... money to watch those movies that I said were good. You probably went on my recommendation sometimes as well. So <laughs> we killed it, guys. This you gave Disney more now. money than I did. This is Just the saying. popular take. This isn't the contentious take, so it's not very interesting. Yeah. The royal we. It's terrible. Now that the dust has settled and it's safe to have these opinions, now that you <laughs> well, have you know. the safety of hindsight on your side, you can say all these things. What's funny, by the way, is uh, he's not got the, the read that I think his audience would expect him to have, which is that Raimi did that on purpose, and its purpose is to have a meta-criticism of the nature of like multiverse stories, it's like look at all your characters. I just fucking killed them because that's what the multiverse mm. is—a meaningless mess. Like a lot of people would defend the fact that all that happened that way, but High Top's chosen to say it was meaningless, it was pointless, and stupid. Oh. Well, Controversial, maybe. Ooh, that's an interesting distinction. Chance that your favorite version of your second favorite Marvel character will briefly make an appearance in a universe-altering adventure. Because frankly, most of the audience did not give two shits about a Doctor Strange movie or a Sam Raimi movie, but bought the ticket because Multiverse was in the title. Not. For I think I don't know that, about that is. I think you. You I don't know. just said that, but I don't know if that's true. I didn't go because it was... I oh, but I guess we moved on. We're, we're not really shitting on Multiverse and Madness. Yeah, he's just like, <laughs> he just said so very confidently and dramatically, people went to go see the movie because it had Multiverse in the title, implying it wasn't mm -hmm. because of Doctor Strange, it wasn't because it was part of the MCU, Even though, and it, it wasn't because of Benedict Cumberbatch, Even though that was part wasn't of because of Sam Raimi. Which they don't normally yep. do. They don't normally market their films about well, who the director his is. video... His video called it, it was all about it being about Sam Raimi. That was his yeah. video about it. Sam Raimi took your know, primary focus. But he's like, nah. All right, what's number four? What's, or, what's point four? Why do we keep four? traveling through the multiverse, yet see nothing new? In The Flash, what? Barry Allen goes to a different timeline. We would assume that this is Tim Burton's timeline. Batman has the same costume, he says the same lines, but nothing about the aesthetic of this new world, this universe, is different. It does not look like the brilliant work of Anton first, or even a pale imitation of it. It looks like every single other superhero world. In multi Yeah, this is an old ass uh, talking point too. Yeah, yeah sure. Mm -hmm. I sure hope yeah. he doesn't say, at least in Multiverse and Madness, the Illuminati world was kind of, like, different. <laughs> at least he walked on After a crazy in. montage of different oh, possible okay, universes cool. that all look okay, way good. more fun, way more creative, yeah, way more good. full you of got possibility. The right we get a and World War Trip. Did you just do the triplet yeah, you, thing again? He did oh, do it. He did do it, but he's got the right shot. take. He's yeah, this the is right the right take. Lights are reversed. Oh, he got the lights take. That's funny. <laughs> that, 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 the rare that high top W. Yeah, nice one. Yes, you are correct for saying the lights switching is fucking lame, high top, and anyone else but, who has that take is also, correct as well. The, the yeah. broader point is, yeah, it is incredibly lame that, you know, all of these other really wacky universes that are very different from, you know, what is recognizable. We just flash past them to go to basically the same place, except it's kind of more futuristic. It's flowers. It's more like eco-friendly, and yeah, the, the traffic lights you... are reversed. Mm -hmm. If you can just go to an alternate universe and basically blend in really well and just live a life and talk to everybody, it's it's really just close a missed to your opportunity, world, isn't it? You know, you know? Yeah. like why didn't we have it in a? I, I think it's something we've talked about before. Just a different universe where the Chitauri won in uh, uh, Avengers. 
So it's Earth uh, power in charge. The one I always bring up is, or as far as like the alternate timeline goes, is the one where the different half of the Avengers got snapped, and so like you uh, see, yeah, that's interesting yeah. permutation. Yeah, like what what did the solution happen when it was like uh, everyone who was gone were the ones who had to deal with it because it might have worked out differently than Endgame. A world where rich. hamburgers ate people. Oh my god. Ooh, man, in no I'd way home, we, we never see nervous. anyone's world other than Peter's, which still looks like it was shot on a green screen in a Best Buy parking lot. The entire Sony... Yeah, the two shots that everybody points out. Yep. Yeah, I was going to say, that was easy, but um, also... also... The reason why it's in Peter's world is because it's very much his story. It's about him. I was about to say, it feels weird, world. doesn't it? It's like... Yeah. Why using rabies thought, stuff? Thought, and then it's like, well, oh, but we'll make, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Why what's using, using his stuff own stuff is like out of the question. You got to make yeah. it more interesting if it yeah. regards the multiverse instead this of if your story was only regarding the uh, people from other multiverse, not like locations. Exactly. Your script is only fifteen minutes long, and there was like one minute that was an ad, and you're still contradicting yourself. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Versus filled yeah. with brief it's multiversal no connections that will probably Pretty never good. go anywhere worth traveling. Why? Okay. Because boardroom reasons. Because the vulture showed up at the. Uh, that's a really great visual to highlight that this is something that's been going on well before multiverse. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, that was <sighs> ten years ago, nearly. Yep. The end of Morbius, and nobody cared because Craven the Hunter is an R-rated anti-hero. Because the foundation of every sleep. single one of these movies <laughs> is the expectation that we will give a shit because of the two percent chance we might catch a glimpse of Spider-Man. Yeah, Ooh, exactly. people like you. Movie? What is yeah. this we? Because every I mean. theory <laughs> and every clue and every little thing. Ooh, what about this? What about Stop that? Saying, this? Stop you. saying we. This is a fucking consumer mindset. Like, we, we. Yeah, He's we, waking up finally, this? okay? He's having a moment. <laughs> He's having let's, a moment. Let's let's guide like him it. towards the light. Yeah, so this is the first step on your road to recovery. But remember, remember, like it, this should be your your apology to the world. Right? <laughs> and you need to acknowledge that you it messed feels up. like if anything, the superhero multiverse restricts creativity. Filmmakers having to imitate no, and somehow it doesn't. It's a lack of imagination. Yeah, yeah, I mean, as much as we can yeah. talk about how it, it it unravels and stuff, it's like you can still do whatever the fuck you want. Yep. Lack of imagination. Integrate decades old universes that were far more out there, far more stylistic into the bland landscape that audiences have come to expect. Keaton can never get nuts. Raimi's villains will never be shot with the same <laughs> panache. And Patrick Stewart genuinely doesn't seem like he knows what movie he's in. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> he's so mean ruined. to the old man. Is Something this rude. the Enterprise? <laughs> Engage! Someone give Patrick a throat engage. bombing, please. <laughs> Second <laughs> star to the right. Thanos, engage. I, <laughs> I need <laughs> my glue, <laughs> sir. Even with the best these potatoes in a bit more for me, please? It's the best crew, the most money, and most resources. The studio's focus is not on the creative potential, the vast possibility of multiple worlds. Yeah, so there's nothing to do with the yeah. multiverse. It's just about the creative side cool. of this. Yeah, make it Black so. Imagination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and why they keep? Why are they keep doing this? Why are they keeping keep keep making these shit films? Because you fuckers <gasps> keep praising them, <gasps> and then a year later, actually, it wasn't that great, guys. Yeah, Come on, right? and after they were making money. Yeah, the only one he didn't praise the fuck oh. out of was The Flash. That's why this is a bizarre yeah, video. Which, which is the end of the era when people were even, like, on board Yeah, and this. he described it as stale on arrival. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Liar. Stale on arrival <laughs> in hindsight. But at least Mothra's Man has had something to say or whatever. I don't oh, yeah, said stuff. It is on showing you something that you have seen before, but diluted to the barest of bones. Oh, dude, don't, wrong use, don't visual. say that. Okay, Why would you visual, say that and use that as a visual? Performance. Why are you saying that's diluted? Why would you say that? That you're implying that the the version of the Green Goblin we got in No Way Home was a diluted version of the one from the Raimi movie, and that's not. Anything was supercharged. Yeah. yeah. I don't think he saw the movie. Well, like no, the, he, of course he saw the movie. If, I, um, he saw the movie and creamed his pants about it. Well, I mean, how can how can you watch No Way Home and then pick out Green Goblin of all people, of all the characters in that film, and be like, yeah, that was diluted, kind of watered well, cause down? Because he, he's bad at his yeah. job.
Yeah, he's seen it. He's There's a reason he's a regular on EFAP and we cover him <laughs> as much as we can mentally handle it. Because High Top Film sucks. He's like all the... It's like... like all the others. Asterisk, not all. But he's like all the others, you know? That he's shit. He doesn't think about this. He doesn't script. He focuses on visuals and, oh, my inflection makes it seem so dramatic. Oh, my God, here's a picture of a shoe. Oh, wow, isn't that so <laughs> down to earth? And, but he doesn't, like, think. There's no, like, Shoes. engaging thought process. He, he's, he's on that tier one level of movie, you know, consumption. Well, thing, I, am I it's not it's not like he turned up and just went crazy and punched people. Like we had Norman, we had the conflict, we had the the motivation, we had like the reveal, the the him realizing that Peter realized that he was the one that was behind a lot of this. And then the fight scenes, like being raw as hell. Like I don't I just it's so hard to believe that you're just like, ugh, diluted. You're like, okay. <laughs> All right. You do you. You do you. All the soul that made it work in the first place. Oh, but yes, so we continue magic. to pay for it. You can. We. <laughs> you, also, you gave Disney way more money than I did. I guarantee well, and, you. And that. you would have encouraged other people to give them money. Meanwhile, we're sitting here yes, like, don't, every... don't go near these fucking but, projects. Yeah. Here, let's let's go to, to high top flam. No, sorry. High <laughs> high top. Film Spider Man. <laughs> I'm uh, so typing is difficult. Um, <laughs> Spider Man. Oh, I shouldn't have said Spider Man. It should be No Way Home because there's more Spider Man. No, not me. I'm sorry. It was like No Way Home. Me Way Home. I taught film No Way Home. So one year. No, that's the other one. And Fuck. also, what the, can what's I, going on? I don't know. Can I also I'm just add well, well, while Rags is doing something? Can I just point out he hasn't really complained about. How this killed the multiverse. It's like how, how multiverse elements ruined Spider Man, No Way Home, or The Flash. But oh, it doesn't really kill the multiverse. I think right? we're getting there. Okay. We're getting so there. he's so his his video on Doctor Strange has two hundred ninety one thousand views and it was a very positive review. How many tickets, you know, did that end up generating? You know? Yeah. It's not like no one watches these. You know, that, that's a good amount of views. It's advertising, you know? isn't it? So you can't... Yeah, you can't be like, oh, how is this? How is... Who giving We did money? this, like, everybody. No, motherfucker, you're making we positive did. reviews, sometimes glowing yeah. reviews for these movies, and you're you're going to generate a ticket sales from doing that. You can't be like, oh, they were just... They were playing our fuck SpongeBob is on a fucking piece of... <laughs> what is it? A, a lure. It's on a fish lure for fishes. And that's us. He's We're referencing the opening visual, yeah, but the the bait thing. Yeah, I am. See, I my remember brain that. Fried. I was there. I was the, there. Yeah, I was SpongeBob there made the the written. rainbow. He's the thing. He's doing the thing, and then he's the the pa past high top and present high top are enemies, and they hate <laughs> each other. And they're they're it's mortal enemies. Cycle. It is a vicious cycle. Trapped in the eternal battle. Like, oh, that bastard! That the next oh, movie past comes me, out. That asshole! How could he have yeah. done this to me? Oh, mm -hmm. I with my last breath, I spit at thee. And then the next movie comes out. Like, this was really good. And a year later, ah, oh, we can't believe we killed it again. Ah, oh, damn it! You smell toast. I don't buy bread. <laughs> <laughs> bread, bread is. I don't buy Probably. bread. I sometimes get it, coincidentally, but not purposefully. I don't that even know why I find it funny. I don't have bread in the house as I don't well. Have, but the way you said that, I don't buy bread. I don't buy piece bread. Of shit. I, haven't, I haven't bought bread in a long time. What I'm I getting here is that things. Rags gets accidental bread that happens to him. Sometimes, sometimes. bread product is in things that I get. But uh. it's not, I don't go and buy a loaf. Sometimes bread happens. Sometimes bread happens. I, have I mean, buns, maybe we so are starting not to, but as soon as Deadpool 3 opens with Logan rising from the dead, or the Secret Wars trailer ends with an AI-generated Andrew Garfield voiceover, or the Crisis on Infinite Earths movie has a Bale Batman cameo, we will be in the theater dreaming of a reality, many we? realities that will- No! Shut no, up! The way I go is- Is he oh, being- He's being well, ironic, It's probably right? gonna be dog shit. I'm gonna watch it. He's probably be right. <laughs> and then it's gonna be terrible. I'll be there. 
And then I go back home, <laughs> do notes, and talk about it online, and tell people, please, for the love of God, don't watch this trash movie. I did it. It's not worth your time. No, Mil stop, t stop saying we. Stop it. We'll never well, what, what your French really know. What I think is really crazy is you know, like he's talking about it's like, well, all we want to do is see these characters yet petitioning for them to be in or, or acting as if the audience wants them to be crossing over with the current version of those characters. But I mean, the other option is just what, like, like you were saying about the Flash movie. Why not just make a Michael Keaton Batman movie? If you've got Michael Keaton for a $200 million or 300 million, whatever it was, movie in which Batman appears, why don't we just go all in with that? Because we'll pay him more and we'll have a better movie and we'll make more money as a result. Like, I don't, I don't know why that seems like it's not an option. We're just like, we just hope that Deadpool is going to show up in a DC film finally, because that'll just be the ultimate cross. It's like, what? wait, why? Why not just, why not just want a good DC movie and a good Deadpool? Oh, and movie? would this video exist yeah. if all of this were well made and then it wouldn't? It's like, I guess not. It wouldn't be, like, be exhausted. Yes. It, it's exhausting when it's bad and it's always constantly bad. That's why it's exhausting. Oh, we can. But this is another right? video. Yeah. It's another video in a row where they're, they're not like, oh, because it was shit. Have you seen Fade Unlimited Blade Works and Heaven's Feel? I know that's going to sound I, Greek. I, I, I have Unlimited Blade Works, yes. Have you have you seen Heaven's Feel or are you aware of it? Yeah, I'm aware of it, yeah, but I have not watched it. Okay, so these are two versions of the same story that are based on a video game which has two major branching paths. And yeah. they're they're not crossovers or multiverse things. It's just, hey, here's the story if the character chooses this path. Completely different movie and actually different format because Unlimited Blade Works was a season of a TV, two seasons of a TV show, whereas Heaven's Feel is three movies. And Heaven's Feel is like, here's that same story from the other path. And they're both pretty good, very, diff yeah. very, yeah. very different. And like everyone, people like that. So it's like, it's not like having separate versions of similar stories is something people will not accept. I, so I just, I don't no. understand the desire for multiverses. I Why do they have to I think his problem is he doesn't recognize that it's not really the multiverse's problem. It's how you execute on how you write Bad the writing. multiverse. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it's like he's almost there, but he got the, the wrong lesson. Right? In the case with a few videos today, that whole, like, so close but so far. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he did I mention, like, creative that. bankruptcy, but it's, it's just ultimately, like, even, even low creatives could write, you know, in a way that was coherent. <laughs> yeah. 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 Expectations. It's a lame dick joke that we will continue to fall for. There you will fall for it, my friend. I don't know if why you We will this. continue to Stop. fall for lame dick joke. Is the idea of killing the multiverse then is not like financially but creatively? Yes, so. There is no way. point to even doing this shit if it's only to get grandma's money because she- Well, hang- hang on! There's a hell of a lot of meaning to pull out of the interactions Peter Parker and No Way Home has with the Raby villains. Mm -hmm. There is. Yep. Okay, well, well, we that just, was bad. He already- he already conceded that the Multiverse Madness had things to say about the Multiverse, so why have we now switched to just to get grandma's money? <laughs> He remembers when Michael Keaton was Batman, or because soy boys like me can't get over uh, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. Oh, oh, he had no idea he's the soy boy. He got it. He admitted it. Fresh, nor exciting. Boy. We are being shown worst versions of what has come before What's and clapping music? while they do it. You know, what the, no, what do you mean? Nobody claps for fucking Flash. What <laughs> do you mean we? No what one's there to clap. Clap. I clapped when it was over. I'm I saying we, I beg you. I, I, I did not the fucking theater. clap at the end of Flash, goddammit. <laughs> I didn't go to the theater and see Flash. Yeah. Smart. <laughs> Smart man. I feel like we just opened the door to the idea of a cinematic multiverse, and yet somehow it's already overdone stale. It feels like we want to bad. shut that damn door and go back That's to... why. Shut Sorry, that damn door. You fucking showed Ant-Man. You picked the worst choice to multiverse. show how bad it is. Ant-Man wasn't multiverse. Well, it had multiverse elements, but it the wasn't like a multiverse. The quantum mania. The quantum realm. It barely like counts to have universe. Kang's no, ship. Know, it, it's just, yeah. Wow, know, look know, at you splitting hairs. That's, that's as far as you can like go. Like dimensions sure. in an incursion. Self-contained stories that actually have something to say. We you already said say. MOM had something to say. You can't go back on that. Uh, <laughs> like, they all had stuff to say. Some of it was cringe.
You have to shut that door or reinvent what's behind it because at this rate, soon, every single big budget rate, movie will have a cameo from an actor who played the same role or a mostly forgotten character that 12-year-old you once loved. When I was 12, me and my nerdy friends would joke about who would win in a fight, Keaton or Bale's Batman. We would dream of seeing Andrew I Garfield to take on Toby. That. What? No way. Uh, the, so dramatic, the voice. A yeah. Tell, Tell me why. Like, why? Holy shit. Why oh, laugh at the idea of Lou Ferrigno's Hulk joining forces with Ed Norton's? But it was all in jest. Because of it was all in jest. It was all in jest. It was all in jest. Forsooth, on Midsummer's Eve, whence forth? Sirach. <laughs> <laughs> it was in jest. The second multiverse stuff started happening, he would be shitting all over it. He'd just be like, oh my god, they're they're doing the thing we joked about in the schoolyard? That's so dumb. But I guarantee you, I, I haven't watched much of his stuff, but from watching this, I guarantee you he was fully on board for a bunch of it. I want to ingest some poison right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was simply a jest. I got it. Do you bite your thumb at me, sir? If that ever mm. happened, on the slim possibility Thou that Bo's it might, pizzle. we knew that those movies would probably oh suck. But these mm. aren't fantasies of an underdeveloped you didn't know that as children. Oh Shut God, the fuck up where we are at. The multiverse isn't being used to show us worlds we've dreamt of, show us reflections, meaningful mirrors to the characters we love. It has been taken over oh, by our desire to off, relive say it. the past instead of looking towards anything new. <laughs> This is still masturbatory. I feel like it Fuck. is new <laughs> to have Peter decide to do the right thing and it gets one of his closest members of his family killed. I feel like that is new, especially in like a big budget movie as well. Uh, where's the where's the idea that no one wants anything new coming from? Also, <laughs> what does this um, we, Mister? <laughs> you know what? I'd be willing to concede, by the way, that MOM is new stuff. Like it's insane, but it's. Sure, it's new. Yeah, <laughs> what's a movie like Multiverse of Madness? Quantumania was I new. I guess there's so, never yeah. really Modok like was that. new. <laughs> the flavors yeah. of Sludge are different, sort of. Hell yeah, they are. They're in slightly different barrels. Yeah. Now, when you watch Gladiator, probably in your youth, did you ever think that you would see a film in which Russell Crowe is playing Zeus in the way he did? In Thor: Love and Thunder. No, not really. I, I sure didn't. Remember I think that if you go and watch, I think if you rewatch Gladiator, you can pick up on some subtle hints, hints. and clues that Taika Waititi left for us to discover. <laughs> He's in the background Someone over there. You can spilled. see him. There he is, sprinkling clues all over the Colosseum. Look at that little clue sprinkler. Oh my it's goodness! Look at that. That's actually. Blue, it's a sign. It's like Blue's Clues, like, like we talked yeah. about earlier, the formula. Yeah. We did that. You, me, and everyone. No, <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I didn't. We, these movies came out. We? He's, he's lying. I, I this is slander. We, it, these oh, movies came out. We gave No Way Home a 5 out of 10. It was all fucking downhill from there. <laughs> and we, I washed my hands of this. We are Nintendo not to blame. Wii. If anything, we cleared the landmines for you to make this shit video. You're welcome, by the way. Green, who <laughs> yeah. witnessed the scariest episodes of Justice League, the most ludicrous <gasps> moments of Spider-Man, who was rocked when they first read Crisis on Infinite Earths, who believed in the pure idea that multiple versions of our favorite characters can coexist. Always with Is he gonna like cry? <laughs> Yes. Why are you crying? Cry? Exactly. This is exhausting you know, to make yeah. that this voice. Is you know, I'm, I'm checked out, I will say. Like, it's We've just, almost uh, fucking made it, guys. Oh. I know, so I know we know have almost made it. And every single sad. time when it's one of these high top videos, it's always so vacuous that it, it just... <laughs> It's because yeah. he's in space. It's hard to think <laughs> engaged. It feels he's like so bad. little of substance is being said. Yeah, you know yeah. he's got his eyes closed when he's saying all this. It's being and presented he's just, as so oh, lofty, but it's, it's hollow. It really is. I think it's, I profiled him. Mean, lofty and vacuous like Superman in space. He's yeah. been on a couple dates where he showed the girl his video, or guy, I don't know what he's into, but and they were like, oh my god, you're reading things so poetically and nice. And he started playing it up more and more to the point that it's and become the, my Dr. Octopus. Well, he was always like this. <laughs> Save our world. 
It was an innocent mistake to believe that Hollywood <laughs> would understand what made listen, those multiverse listen, stories, listen. those childlike it wasn't fantasies, <laughs> so Holy special. Shit. So special. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is official. Oh, no. Okay, it's okay. A mistake. Oh. Shut up. Mint yeah. has been diluted uh, like into the, a twisted nostalgia factory Dolly filled madness. with empty promises that we keep <laughs> okay, funding. Maybe promises, promises. Stop, stop saying we. Stop it. Stop it. Bigger. Stop input. Not stop. Oh, input. Okay, okay, do we do it? Okay, cool. Let's do it. Excellent. Yeah. Oh my God. I am Jeez, not guys. Guys. Thank you so much. Okay. All of you no, are bad no, people. No, no. Moving no, on. No. That narcissist oh, keep did it. And we keep no funding paper. them, but it was an innocent mistake, so don't worry, guys. Aaron, it's fine. It's like these guys keep funding him. I'm not Adam taking any responsibility, oh. but we did. We we made an innocent mistake, though. Wow. No more. No more of that. No more no of that. More. No more high oh. top. I've reached my yearly limit of high top. <laughs> oh. You've topped out your wow. high top. Wow, that was... That was that was uh that was profound well it's just it's just like all the other ones all the other <laughs> yeah. ones, ones, ones. hello they're very similar <laughs> a tough <laughs> adventure that It'll tests be... the limits yeah. they can't yeah. keep getting away with us they do okay, okay. they do can and do <laughs> no um but yes that's that'll probably signal the end of part two for this uh, <gasps> oh my goodness i have set in motion the next but whammon, it's got 15 minutes. We gotta kill that many oh minutes. Wait, 15 minutes? Oh my god. No, it's not 15 minutes um, long, it's in 15 minutes. Ah, uh, right, okay. Uh, uh, well, I mean, I, I mean, now is probably again another opportunity to mention Do it. Found vinyls. Yo. They're on sale right now. Yes, everyone. Incredible vinyls. A little bags and a little fringy. And they're up on screen. Look at them. Did you guys know that if you buy all three plushes, you get a 15% discount? Vinyls. Not plushes. But yes, if you got all of them together, you get a discount. Bring you new. Wait, I got mine. If you don't get yours, you're worse than me. Do you uh, really it really helps us out a me? lot. It actually right. does. It, it it really helps us out a, a bunch, limited, and they're really great. Cool. Very limited time offer. You see that? Yes. You've got about 18 days left, and then that's it. That's yep. it. I days. support FOMO. It's a limited time offer. Yeah. No, no, guys. 15 percent. Um, this off. is no, the EFAC season pass. Um, you have to buy <laughs> our merchandise. <laughs> Or this else you'll never be able to again. Wait, this what happens if you take battle. the goo, pour it on the popcorn, and then put the film reel in there too? What happens? Yum! Magic. Things, it'll be Blow. crunchy. It, I guess yum, really yum, gang, gang. Film reel. Popcorn, gang, yum. gang. Ah, ice cream, so popcorn, yum. so yum. <laughs> oh my goodness dun, 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 gracious. Dun. Um, that was the thing. Yeah, please. Yeah, take a look. Buy them, perhaps. Uh, buy multiple. So what are the fucking family. Batwoman Premier chat just said? Where's the Ahsoka reaction, you massives? It's like, hey, <laughs> come on. <laughs> the amount of shit we gotta do, guys. Are you fucking serious, really? <laughs> Watching Batwoman. <laughs> They're like, oh, oh wow, did you just do a twenty-four hour stream? Okay, it's okay. Holy we shit. have Ahsoka oh, at home. Thank you. Where do. is it? It's fucking three days Where? ago, and you expect it to be like? I do done not already? have Ahsoka at home. <laughs> <laughs> they want us, no they want to see us make fun of the house. orange lady, okay? You have to understand. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, but like, it takes time. <laughs> yeah, in your like, little like, temporal like world. Time. They're doing like a 24 hour <laughs> stream with multiple like e EFAP TVs coming out at the same time. It's like, oh, yeah, where's this other additional this massive <laughs> amount of content? <laughs> In Consult the before it goes. Oh god, been it's, it's been quite a day. What what are we? Uh, I, I'm uh, here's a here's a sort of thought experiment. What's? I think we already kind of know what the best video that's been covered so far. But what's the, what's the worst one? I think this was one. I don't know about that. I can oh, I can understand him choosing not... that one, like in terms of his feelings. I can understand it. It's it's really annoying. Yeah, but. No, it's it's like um, what was the mm. Mario one? That one just the Phil Mento one was really rough. <laughs> mm. uh, the one after the Phil Mento one. Hmm. 
Yeah, I haven't watched the Mario one with you guys, so this is my worst one. So. Oh yeah, that's true. Well, that's Mario true. I watched everything bad, on. Yeah. Oh, I think that one was tough. Oh. Mario, my that Mario one was tough. What's that, sorry? Wisecrack is my vote. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> That one was I awful. I left during that one. I don't, I, I don't know how that, that one got, that one. but I'm, I'm sure it wasn't games, great. And completing them was really bad too. The selling one and the other one that introduced Lewis to the world. Yeah, I don't <laughs> like the Wisecrack one where they had DLC for... Is that it? The DLC for uh, no, Plot no, Armor? No, or... That was the Nebula dude. No, that was, that oh, was the Nebula dude. Yeah, Which, that wasn't like the worst one. Uh, that no. one, there was some valid general writing advice being provided. It was just a very... Uh, bizarrely structured, confused video, as opposed to being like just riddled with flaws. <laughs> yeah, the wisecrack one was that was the one that I found like that's embarrassing. I would be embarrassed if I were attached to that at a like at a production. Real. There was there was very limited amount of original arguments being presented in that video. Very little the, wisdom. Yeah, the, yeah. the arguments that were being presented were just from what looked like a blog. Like I'm, I'm not aware of that website. Is that like a reputable news site or something? Like am I, am I underselling I mean, it? You know, when you talk, when you talk about like the value of uh, ethical, like the value <laughs> of. A... <laughs> 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 oh, that's funny. That's great. Oh. Y'all had sleepy times. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> oh, we'll be welcomed into that wonderful realm soon enough, Rags. We'll Absolutely. get there. We're going to make it. Hello, Father. Hello, Father. The dream police. Oh, look at that. All of the words on screen from the... Uh, the Shnee? Shnee. 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 Saved. Ooh, yeah. That's all these German quotes, for snow. Too. It's German for snow, by the way. It just says Shnee. Shnee. Oh. Shnee. Yeah. Well, then what do you call your knees, then, if schnee is snow? Schnee. What? Yeah, you heard me. Wow. No, you, I didn't, actually. You schooled you. What? Knee. Knee? Yeah. Oh. It's almost spelled the same as well. It's K-N-I-E -E instead of K-N-E-E. -E. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's why I asked, because of the confusion. I was just... Mm -hmm. No, it all makes sense now, I'm yeah. Checking. Yep, I think it all adds up. This, sure. is, a, this is a valid and sound argument. Um, let's see. Uh, wow, here we are. What time is it for you? It's 10 a.m. for me. That's pretty cool. Oh, it's 5 p.m. That's exciting. 4.05 for me. It's Ooh, 11. am or pum? That'd be the pum. <laughs> it's, uh, Ooh, it's, it's, it's Monday now. It's Monday. Oh, it's <laughs> Monday, 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 Monday. Monday. It's, yeah. it, yeah. it's 11 it's still pum Sontag for me. For me. Oh, oh, oh Sontag. Oh, yeah. Monday. <laughs> Monday. Monday, Monday. The thing is, Still I imagine that after the break, it will start to get a bit more re-energized. <laughs> uh, Do you think so how, that? How long I could go either direction going? after the break. <laughs> well, actually, here's a, how how long is the uh, how long is the the old Batwoman? That is a fantastic question, that, and I, I know long. that. There are people. <laughs> all right, here we got we got to work together as a team. I know there are people who know how to find out how long a video is before it even premieres. Can anyone do that? I don't know how you do it with what magic, but people can like I don't know. Yes, some... cast your spells. Yes, your wizard spells. There's got to be someone here who knows how to do it because I've seen people do it before. <laughs> so use Steve use your magical powers. Shadow. I don't know. <laughs> so is it 35 minutes? And it's like. Maybe. <laughs> can we come back? Maybe. Can we make it more? You want it to be more? As if it's um, more, then that's the longer or further away we are from ending the, the anniversary as well, you know, in total. Well, it's just such high quality content. I just that want is more true. of it. I want to that eat it up true. like a delicious strudel. Yum. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Popcorn, yum. Uh, let's see. So it's a lol yeah. play it twice. Interesting. So you can miss all the Easter eggs and subtle jokes that you missed the first time on that Batwoman like episode. That was so long ago. It was so long ago. It was like another life. Yeah. It was dark back then, and now it's light again. It's dark. I Wait, this isn't the Gotham Knights reaction. Away. They're on the way. The Gotham Knights reaction. It's going to be a beautiful Gotham box Knights set. High tier. Good night. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. so glad we watched Gotham Knights. It was so good.
It was mm. so good. Finally, Such a good show. I was saying the whole time, I'm like, oh, finally, some good Batman content. Yep. My favorite Fine. part was Quality. when Batman beat the Riddler and the Penguin when they teamed up to stop Gotham from being With Gotham. Yeah, hey, was hey, Mauler. Yes. Hey, Mauler. Yes. Hey, Mauler. Yes. Your bat is dead. <gasps> What'd you say? Your bat is dead. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> How many times will I have to see this before I die? Your bat is dead. <laughs> Who killed Batman? It was Skeletor. That's a, that's didn't you that know coming. for a fact this the show would have been easy ten seasons if they had actually brought Skeletor in. I'm gonna be honest, I was not uh, I was not expecting Skeletor to kill Batman, but <laughs> So why want Skeletor to come in and avenge Batman? This is the kind they look through the broken the window, they can just see him do his little run at the <laughs> Your he bat is dead, He-Man! <laughs> he wasn't a bat at all! He was He's a little pussy! Man than bat. I think it was a hundred percent man! Oh, someone did the thing and found out it's 36 minutes and 8 seconds, the video. Okay. Oh, okay. That is a solid amount of time to stretch them Lego Renos. Yep. Yep. I think I'll I'll head out, guys. But if I'm still awake and this stream is still going, maybe I can hop in. Sure. Maybe. Worry, yeah, it's like, it's like eleven yeah. pum here. <laughs> so come on, home stretch. Well, yeah. Right. So. Palsy. Well, thank you for having me. Happy anniversary, guys. Uh, thank you. I, I hope I the hundred year EFAP reign will continue. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, rain. Congratulations, rain. guys, and uh, I'll see you guys later if I can drop by. So, bye, see you, dude. Yeah, we will see bye. you later, bye. guys. Bye, bye. You bet. Bye, bye. See you later. Toodaloo. Bye. Huh. Muchas gracias. Hasta luego. Buenos dias, por favor. Buenos dias, no niños en la canasta. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I agree with every word you just said. So, when is Mootle see. Hot Tub stream? Wait. Metal? Or are we looking at? What? Oh, now, that must be someone from my chat. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a fair question. I think you dodge it. You just try to dodge it because you just don't admit that that's. You know what? I uh... think hot tubs are way too expensive and I don't wow. have space for them. My tub. Wow. Do you could just fill your building. room wow. with hot water. Have you thought about that? Huh? Oh. Just fill your room with hot water. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, that seems a bit destructive. Easy. Gang, gang. Make it get it all. Yeah, very good. Electricity, I saw water. yesterday what could where, go wrong? where some guy was doing this NPC yeah. stuff and he cracked up, like he started laughing, he couldn't keep it together. That was kind of funny. Like he was doing his, his shenanigans and he just started laughing. You see. That fossa tough to tough crowd, I see. All right. This is it's, not a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a crowd. There are six of us and three of us are arguably not even present. Yeah, <laughs> it is that kind of so time where NPC. things start to There's phase. Like you phase it and people. out, and yeah, you sort of phase through the out. multiverse. You're gonna walk through walls. Yeah, disappear oh, and fly. Maybe yeah. I will. I'm not doing an NPC. Do you think if you do an NPC stream, it's like really successful the first time? You just get addicted. <laughs> it's like fuck it. I'm gonna do another one. Mel's sitting well, there. I, and he's I, just I, like this I, is dumb. I, gang, gang, and then he gets ten thousand viewers. He's like, what? What? what the uh, uh, gang, gang? <laughs> There's got to be a number that would make it Salsa worth it. Lot, so yum. Oh there is God. totally it's a number that would make it worth crowd. it, but could you yeah. deal with losing that much dignity? I don't know. Ooh, no, I don't think so. so yum. It, what it, it would have to be an amount that it's like, well, but if I do this for a week, I can I can retire and like have my <laughs> <Forever>. family. <laughs> like I can be financially secure for the rest of my life. I'd be like, well, at this point, it's irresponsible if I don't do it. So I don't know what is the correct choice. Hey, we did all of this on the first stream, okay? We had all those questions. We're never doing it again. <laughs> oh, yeah, a trolley problem, but I didn't even mean to. I think that's going to go down seriously. It's like one of the favorite highlights for the fans. That, fo that part was insane. <laughs> Everybody shouted yeah. about, like, what should be done? It's a shame they're useless and we should stop doing them, but... Oh, well. <laughs> what, the trolley problem? Oh, yeah, because Wisecrack, yeah. that, 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 that was, was, that was well argued. <laughs> yeah, that video we covered yesterday. Dude, that was, that was video number two, right? Was it, was it three? Was it two? Glad Last we knocked that one out. Three, it was three. Yeah, it was three. Yeah, yeah that we had was the one two on uh, completing games. I gotta say, I was not expecting that second one to be about like childhood trauma. Of <laughs> <laughs> feeling, like you have to complete video games, otherwise there's something wrong with you. Like I, I have friends finish this game. 
What them game. bullies told you, it ain't true. You can do whatever you want. You can be the man you want to be. You don't have to complete those video games. <laughs> oh, boy. You don't uh, have to get that 1,000 G. GG. 1,000 G? When they get added DLCs, they'd add like 250 G on. You'd be like, oh, my God. Now it's a 1,250 G game. How do you spell DLC? Gang, gang. DLC. That's kind of, yeah. All That's... right. So, um, let mm -hmm. me see. Yeah. Where does that, what is, uh, where does that leave us? What, what exactly is the, what's our situation here? I'm trying to get a lay of the... Oh, we'll sort all that out oh, in a moment. Up. We'll, uh, because we're about to start up the Batwoman episode, so we'll be heading off oh, in a chocolate. moment. The moment we get that the big old... You know, that wonderful da, sound. Da, 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 I don't know if edit for that. Yeah, I wasn't thinking of that one, but that would be better. For the premieres, the premieres noises, yeah. Can we you, you petition can YouTube your to allow us to use the Batwoman <laughs> intro <laughs> music in your video? Tell me that wouldn't improve oh. YouTube. That would make YouTube better. Make and it would YouTube make Batwoman loud, better. Not again. It would improve everything it touches. Hey. Um, let me see. What is... What, what's, what's chat thinking about? Let's see. This guy said... Social anxiety and therapy. That's yeah, true. Mm. Very, very true. <laughs> Muller okay. is going insane, guys. How dare you? Maybe. It's already insane. When oh, I was making those noises, it was referencing the premiere video. I'm not that crazy. I wasn't just doing random shit, okay? It's a wild, wild west. Wild, wild west. Premiere will begin shortly. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh. Oh, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, chat. yeah, yeah, Chatter. I am going to be watching the wrestling in about two hours. That is right. Wow, you're going to ditch that us for the I... wrestling? How yeah, that's you? been planned for a while. It's so fucked you, up. You'd rather watch a bunch of sweaty guys touching blame, each blame. other's most intimate areas <laughs> while rolling around on the floor in front of millions of people. Yeah. I see how it is. It's it's in the, in in uh, Wembley Stadium. It's a really big show. I actually, want, I actually meant to go there in person, but Pretty sure it's a large show. Didn't let me buy any tickets. Ooh, this yeah, is one of the very few sanctioned EFAP double chat moments. Oh, it's starting up. All right, you all get in there and you watch all yourself right, some Batman. Let's Batwoman. watch. Go. We, watch that shit. Go. we will back. be back soon enough. Ah, after this the episode. noise. I, oh my I God, tried man. to warn you, man. I tried to warn you. Tried. I I didn't. Tried and failed. Get in there. The link up, in the in the chat. And uh, yeah, we'll Check be back out. for part three. Which will be X amount of time from now, and it will last X amount of time. Bye bye. Uh, loot. Bye bye. Uh, see you later. Bye. Cock. <laughs>